making a hypocrite. Yeah. But I think it's kind of a douche move mm -hmm. to basically say you're going to play with your son in the NBA so that he gets drafted. That's the, Tiger plays a sport where I think the fans are not as harsh as other sports. is finally here and if your windows won't open for fresh air or won't seal tight to keep out pollen and bugs then let's talk window nation
sex doll. Courtney Cox. My favorite itty bitty kitty committee. Uh, Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Uh, <laughs> M- Minerva Mio Gongal. Uh, uh, and I don't necro. Me, me cat? And accompanied by Look at my booty in these tight pants. You know, can't what, stuff it in your mouth if you're on the phone. Two big brains behind the glass. Ryan Hoyer, the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. Another stroke of Sweeney's. Curtis and Shime. Uh, Derek Jeter. Oh, God, we have to dump out of the F Derek Jeter on the show. I think he said f- like f- like. F- ah, ah. Let's just let's just avoid that word. Now let's get down to business. <laughs> Time to party. It's time for the Greg Hill Morning Show. Good morning. Good hello, more morning, everybody. <laughs> hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, my neighbor. On Boston Sports Original. W E E I. I'm my people. W E E I. When I say Greg Hill and you say show, Greg Hill. <laughs> Greg Hill. Show. <laughs> Greg Hill. Show. <laughs> All right. Woo! It's go 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 time. Let the games begin. Let's go. Let's go. Tick, tick, boom. everybody good morning what up what up happy friday mm, how about that drive in oh yeah just a heads up i it's a deluge <laughs> and so i don't know yours was ridiculous terrible My, mine was curtis your drive in this morning was ridiculous uh, honestly it was the worst it was worse than any snow drive we've had in the last several years the roads are awful really it's, like, it's i uh, mean there it is pounding ass rain right now are you uh saying condition wise or other drivers who don't know how to drive in the rain wise it's i would say both okay uh the people that try and go in the fast lane this morning and then speed and have to swerve right back in because they're <laughs> hydroplaning uh not exactly the way to start the day but i yeah. made it and good day <laughs> all right well um, if you have to go somewhere, allow extra time on a Friday morning or just mail it in like the Celtics did last night and work from home. Yeah. I got to, I, I need to get my <laughs> daily temperature check from Jermaine Wiggins yeah. on the Boston Celtics. You're good, go, man. go ahead. You're good. Don't worry about it. They got fine. two more games. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It, there good. was a perfect headline. I think Boston.com had it. That was the Celtics sleepwalk through yeah. the game against the Knicks. That's what they did. They're, they're over the regular season. They just want yep. to get to the post. Okay. Nothing they do uh, is going to uh, change their positioning or where they are. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I understand no. they have locked down home court yeah. and the number one seed, but do you want them to kind of give it the old college try on the way on the rest of the way toward the toward the playoffs or you don't care at all? Yeah, I don't care at all as long as okay. you come to play. Okay. How the Bruins do at the end of last season going into the playoffs? They rolled. It's, it's two different sports. No, no, I, no, no. I'm just talking about all I'm talking about is at the end of the season when you lock down the one seed, you got home court throughout. Okay. And I think that, you know, they're, they're humans, just like all of us. You get to that posi- position where, you know what? All right, I'm going to take my foot off the gas a little bit. Mm-hmm. But as what, long as they turn it up come playoff time. Can I ask you, as, uh-huh. a, as a former legendary New England Patriot, uh-huh. was there a point when you played for Bill Belichick mm-hmm. where he ever allowed you to take your foot off the gas? Different sports, though. It's I, apples and oranges. Oh, you, just com- you just compared the NBA to, <laughs> to the NHL. Right? So, no, 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 but I, because those sports I, are similar in the, in the amount of games you play. Okay. All so right. those sports, like you can wrap up. In the NFL, it's very difficult to wrap up the one seed in home field advantage with five or six games left to go in the season. Mm-hmm. Where in the NBA and the NHL, you can wrap up home home court or home ice mm-hmm. and your playoff spot and still have seven, eight, nine ga- games left to play. Okay, so back-to-back blowouts, a uh, week and a half away from the playoffs, mm-hmm. don't concern you at all. <laughs> I, it no. didn't seem like it concerned Joe Mazzula either. Uh, and trending, there's a sound, that I have a piece of sound in it that's very interesting. Okay, well, I mean, he was, I don't think he's very interesting about anything. <laughs> I don't know what you're planning on using in trending, but 
he was frustrated with mm-hmm. the effort. I mean, he called out. Yeah. Yes. That, is that what you're using or not? Because oh. we can we can hear that now. Okay. Um, this is Joe Missoula last night on the effort. I did not like the effort level in the first half, but like you said, I think it's just a tough spot to be in. You know, I think uh, um, I thought our guys have handled that as best as they could. And you ran into our last two games against two teams that are highly, highly desperate. And um, as much as we want to be able to simulate that, that's just not the position that we're in. But uh, I actually don't mind uh, the result of the last two games because I think that's important. Like, you know, going in with a bunch of wins and feeling good about yourself isn't uh, any better than, um, you know, having a little bit of a bloody lip. Uh, because of a game, so the, the, the best they could over the course of this stretch, however it's been a week and a half, but no, I didn't like it in the first half. All right, See? Courtney, good I job. I, so a couple good things there. It isn't. I'm going to ask Joe Missoula if I ever get to talk to him. Uh, it isn't better to go into the playoffs uh, having won a few games and beaten up on a couple teams. Sometimes That's you could be overconfident is what mm-hmm. he was trying to say. Whereas if you like go, the Bruins. if you go in and you kind of get your your lip bloodied a little bit and you got you get knocked down to earth a little bit, you kind of like all right, we need to wake up when playoff time comes. Yep. So okay. it's, you know, I guess you could play it both ways. All right. I'm well, concerned with the Red Sox. I'm not concerned with the Celtics. <laughs> well, the good thing with the Red Sox is there's 197 yes. games left, so um, you don't have to panic just yet. All right. I think the Red Sox uh, need to stop scoring first. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it just one more thing. What, now that we're, we're talking about all the different sports teams, Curtis, how do you think BU feels about the bean pot uh, this morning? <laughs> what a pathetic university. Mm. Once again, the school celebrates meaningless midseason regional <laughs> events and sucks on the biggest stage. Boston College yeah. shut out the Wolverines of Michigan. They will be taking on a true hockey power, Denver, Mm -hmm. on Saturday night. Yeah, congratulations to a couple of the Eagles alum in the room. And and, uh, your team will play for the national championship tomorrow night. Good job. Congratulations. I think the last time they won, I was a sophomore in college. Mm. And I had probably the best party I've ever been to in my entire life when Mm. they returned. Oh, it's been Mm. that long since Oh, you do players on the hockey team? (laughs) What? I said you do players on the hockey team. I did, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I, I didn't. Was... I didn't kiss any of them in college. No. No. You sure? Not while I was okay. in college. Not... <laughs> not while I was in college. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you clarified yeah, not, that. Not at all. <laughs> How are you, by the way? You stayed later at the event that we went to than I did last night. Can... Are we getting a hungover, Courtney? A hungover Friday from Courtney today? I'm. I don't feel my best, okay. but I, uh-huh. I. I limited the wine. Yeah. I will say though. The most classic thing happened last night where I was so amped to go to this party last night oh. because Melissa and Joe Gorga were there. All right. Real Housewives of New Jersey. Okay. Legends. I know who they are. The coolest. Like, yeah. I was so excited. Teresa's brother. Yes, exactly. I go into this room where they were sitting. I get introduced to them. Then I call Greg. I'm like, where are you? He said, I'm out in the front. I said, come back here. He comes back. I mm-hmm. say, Melissa and Joe Gorga. Greg's like, who are they? Who? Yeah, he has no clue. I said, I said, oh my God. Shine like an old head. I said, who? Yeah. I would have said the same thing. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I said, they're iconic. You need to meet them. He said, oh, okay. Kind mm. of, you know, wait, wait, yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> Joe and Melissa leave. Greg leaves. I don't see or hear anything else. This morning, Greg walks in. Oh, I met Joe. Got his number. I said, Joe who? He said, the guy that you were talking about. I said, Gorga? Uh, the guy you didn't know you got his number? Yeah, why you didn't get her number? I know. I'm Man. sorry. And then he said, oh, yeah. we were Me and DMs were talking about going to Nantucket, the four of us. I said, wow. the six of us. I have no idea who the guy is. So wow. it really wasn't a I mean, very nice yes. man. We have to call uh, him. This morning? Yes. That's on the show. A, yes. I would have no, I wouldn't have a single question to ask him uh, or her because I don't watch the yeah. real Housewives of anywhere. I, would I have, have no one idea million. who this is. Why Kurt, do you spell Curtis, the last name? Gorga. Some, is it Gorga? Gorga? Yeah. Curtis has no idea either. But, but I, I, mean, I that, he was so nice. Right. And, and then, but uh, but it was very, it was just exchanging pleasantries between right, he right. and I. And then Greg, you know, became best friends. Oh, wow. Um, I'm so, um, it just goes to show you Greg's uh, swag when he gets out around I know. celebrities. Well, sometimes it can't be denied, Wiggy. Yeah, you know what Especially I mean? Especially with, uh, with major celebrities like the people that are on the Real Housewives of, of Bravo. New Jersey, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, New Jersey. <laughs> yes, it's did very... you ask for his number or did he ask for yours? He asked if I would give him my number so that we can communicate in the future. All right. It's not a very, bad. seems like a very nice man. What? Well, I, I don't know. Would, would you not, with Santo? Uh, no. No, 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 guys, no. 
Courtney was flying solo last oh, night. Oh, okay. Well, I was with I, my friend, my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, Should have got yeah. Melissa's number. I would have loved to. She uh, looked gorgeous last night. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh uh, unfortunately, my celebrity crush stayed for exactly 12 minutes last <laughs> oh, night. Oh, did she so show I, up, Emma? She showed up, took a few pictures, and then she was. What do you think out of she there. made for those 12 I minutes? I know what it was. I, uh, you know what she got paid? Yeah, well, it is. Six figures? Well over. Well wow. over six figures. Yeah. And she was literally, Emily Ratajkowski was there, and I love her. Mm -hmm. uh, I, of course, was with my girlfriend, and so mm -hmm. I'm taken. I didn't want to talk to her, but wow. she was there for, uh, like, I don't know, 15 minutes. And walked in with mm -hmm. a million people surrounding her, so you okay. couldn't even get close. Yeah. Right. Went to the back room, stayed back there. All mm -hmm. right. People couldn't get in, and then left. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, well we can so call. You're saying she macked it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she definitely did that. By the way, great restaurant opening. A friend of this show, Michael mm -hmm. Schlau. All right. Has opened his new restaurant in the Encore Casino, mm -hmm. and so it was, nice. It was it's seafood, yes. uh, seafood themed. Yep, called um, Sea Mark. Sea Mark is the name of the restaurant. It's a great spot. I would highly recommend you go there this weekend or, or whenever you get over to the casino. Great so. speakeasy in the back. Yeah, yeah very it's a, cool. It's a really cool spot. So, uh, good time had by all. all right. uh, Welcome we'll to get, Bravo, Greg. We will get Joe Gorgonzola on the <laughs> on the, uh, on the show. <laughs> Well, I might like him if his last name's what? Gorgonzola. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, you know what? You know what today is, don't you? No, what's today? What? You don't know what today is? No, I think I'm in the dark. This is how far you've gone wow. from, from being uh, uh, a big boned person to now a skinny mini. What did I miss? Today is National Grilled Cheese Day. <gasps> uh, oh. And uh, arguably the single greatest sandwich ever created in in the world of sandwichia. <gasps> I would I would I would say it's hard to beat. On a day like today, mm -hmm. grilled cheese sandwich dipped into some kind of a tomato soup, a creamy tomato bisque. Yeah, yeah, uh, I would say so. Uh, lead grilled cheese sandwich will be awarded Ooh. shortly on this show. Fabulous. All we right. should do an order from Roxy's this morning. Mm, I brought my blueberries. I'm watching my weight. <laughs> A lot of competition around here now when it comes to the weight. Well, you know, Shime has uh, raised the bar a little bit when it comes to being fat on this show. Well, <laughs> we can, you know, just trying to make everyone better. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, we got to get to trending soon. We're running up against the clock yes. here. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yes, Curtis. We will stay right on the clock Thank this morning. You. That yeah. is my mission. Oh, you better um, stay on, especially at the end of the show. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oof. I'll well, tell you what. Geez, I, Foyer, I heard the uh, uh, first. Uh, Foyer went at it with you. It, we went out it with Courtney, I guess, right. in the hallway, and then he went out with me on the show yesterday yeah. about when we end our program. Yeah, he, he, don't like hot. It. he don't like it. Must and, not have gotten uh, his four minutes yesterday. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He's definitely so. backed up. Yeah. He's definitely backed up. I mean, the two of you, you guys played together. I, for, I, 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 yeah, I thought we were tight end bros. You know? I, I thought yeah. you were too. I didn't realize he was so, like Courtney said, backed up, mm. and he yeah. he wants he wants he wants us out at nine. 54 and, and he does no like, exceptions and he does uh, not like me um yeah. prolonging the i end mean of today's it. a friday we could just get out at like 9 50 if he we wants could to get out of here early yeah we could do that do you think he would allow us to stay later if he if we had one of the stars of the real housewives of new jersey on <laughs> uh, yeah. if i was able to land that interview this morning for yeah Courtney? he's a reality guy i yeah. think he might be he might be okay with yeah it. i think he'd be okay with that All right. i would just quote john curtis if i could <laughs> yes. i think many people in this building are catching ants and missing elephants. Huh? Huh? Is is that a shot at me? No, not okay. at all. Okay. okay, I didn't know if I was the elephant. Yep. Yep. That's, that's a, that, good, that's a good one. And Shima got a great snack for you. Ants on a log. Ants mm. on a log. <laughs> Very healthy. What are those, like raisins on celery with peanut butter? Ew. Is that what they are? Yeah. Gross. All right. Well, we got a lot to get to on the show this morning. Mm -hmm. Leads coming up in 10 minutes. They said it at 7. That's a quick back and forth on what they said yesterday. And we will discuss what one Tom Brady said mm. about returning to the NFL about this to be season. My lead. Was that going to be your lead? I mean, I, you can have that as your lead. Another victory lap in your block. Yeah, your victory laps. You happen to be walking, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, they so yeah. They we, we, you can do it as your lead, and then yes. we'll we'll get to it. Like Toko, uh, it's fine with me. We'll do that. And news with Courtney coming up at seven thirty. <laughs> I hate to say it, Wiggy's been right about like everything of late. Whether yeah. it was the goalie on the shop on the chopping yeah. block oh. or yeah. Tom Brady missed, coming back, missed slightly on the thirty million for Cam. Newton. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. We swing a miss. Yeah. You know. it, it is the Wiggy show. Yes. Yeah. Cam Newton said that uh, he would have the same deal uh, and that 
uh, Kirk, Atl- are you talking Atl- about the Kirk Cousins that stuff? That Atlanta gave to Kirk Cousins yeah. if uh, if he were white. Uh, so. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was James. Yeah, so we can get to that too if you want during they said it. Yeah. So. I mean, right. Cam's my boy, but I don't know about that you one. You don't know about that one? I mean, a little bit ex- <laughs> and a little bit pricey for um, Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. He made some valid points as far as coming off the injury, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about. I don't know that he would get the same. Yeah, I don't know about that one if things were different. Cam right. Newton would have gotten that deal if Bill Belichick started practice earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So all of that coming up this morning right now, Courtney, and what is trending this hour? Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now brought to you by Shaw's. The big news yesterday, O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. Did you send it in the group message, Wiggy? Um, I don't remember. Someone did, and I had to stare at it. He's one of those people, in 76, very young to go, right. but a battle with cancer. Uh, he seems to be having fought that for quite some time. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Um, but he's somebody like a Hugh Hefner that you just never think is going to die, and it hits you weird. Oh. And yeah. to see it's people... Usually, it's usually the the people that are around him and close to him that die. <laughs> He so, was getting mad so love, though. So you're right about Huh? He was getting I'm not mad sta- love. We can talk about OJ. We should. Wow. I'm not standing for it. Any, the, the love for the guy. Yeah. He's getting to the world. Yours truly. Uh, the, like, it's <laughs> sickening. Yeah. It is sickening. I don't, <laughs> I, I c- could not care less. Uh-oh, you're going all uh, about Caitlyn what the, Jenner? I could not care less <laughs> about what the man did on the football field. It's uh-huh. meaningless to me. Mm-hmm. He, in my humble opinion, he murdered two people, uh, and he is a gross human being. But anyway, yes, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. The Sox blew a lead in the eighth, and it took 10 innings, but they fell to the Orioles for the third straight, getting swept by Baltimore in their three-game series. 9-4 to four was the final yesterday. Garrett Whitlock got the start. He went five innings. He gave up one run on four hits while striking out four. Now the series with the Angels kicks off tonight at Fenway at 7-10. You can hang out with Rich Keefe at 6-10 for the Mass Mutual pregame show. And then Joe, Joe Castiglione and Will Fleming have the call on the Shaws and Star Market WEEI Red Sox Radio Network right here on EEI and, as always, on the Odyssey app. The Celtics fell to the Knicks last night, 118-109. to Kristaps Porzingis talked about the difficulty to give Max effort with everything locked up. Here's that. No, we tried, to be honest. We tried. I think we still, even with knowing that, you know, we still came out a little bit like uh, not playoff intensity like or, or the same intensity that the Knicks had today. Um, it's, it, it's tough. We cannot, like, trick ourselves into that kind of mode, you know. It's just, it's, it's, it's real, realistically, it's very tough. Uh, but later, we did turn it up as we felt a little bit like, okay, this is, this is not who we are, obviously, you know. But uh, but uh, they they had uh, they, they they really showed up today. All right. So it's not who they at are. At least they know. Like at least they're realizing what they're doing. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. The first round of the Masters will resume today at 7:50 a.m. Tiger will start then on the 14th hole. It's going to be a tough day for Tiger. I thought he yep. balled out yesterday. He oh, did. He, he was did. awesome. Huh? I love the delay. I got to watch his entire round. Yeah, basically. It was amazing. It was cool. I mean, I, we can talk about this later too, mm-hmm. but. At this point in 2024, mm-hmm. where we have, where we have arrived technology-wise, why can we can we not get live coverage on television of the early part of day one of the Masters? That's like, a Masters call. That's not. That's just how they operate. Okay, but somebody there there needs to be some pressure put on them. It's ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to wait until four o'clock to see everything. I watched this. everything. Oh wow! Yeah. You're asking the least inclusive place on the planet to be more <laughs> inclusive. <laughs> Well, Tiger will then tee off at 10:18 for his second round. 23 mm. holes today for Tiger. Uh, Damn, Bryson I play 23. Well, that's yeah. the He's issue. Yeah, finish round one and then play round two. Yeah, Damn. Bryson DeChambeau, the solo leader at seven under with Scotty Scheffler, one behind. That him. man was cooking yesterday. Where's my boy Patrick Reed? I believe he is two under. All right. And I don't know much, but I know DeChambeau is not going to win the tournament. All right. Ooh. Really, Curtis? Choke, choke, choke. Oh. Oh. I like Shambo. <laughs> Especially with Scheffler on his heels. Not By the way, has there ever been a guy that was more born to be a golfer than a guy named Bryson DeChambeau? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, Frozen Four, we already talked about it, but BC and Denver are headed to the championship. BC right. took down Michigan for zip, while BU fell to Denver in overtime 2-1. to one. 
An all-natural chicken is full of flavor and right now on sale. Today through Thursday at Shaw's and Star Market, get value pack all-natural boneless chicken breast or thighs for just $1.97 a pound when you use the digital coupon. That's limited to two per customer. Shaw's and Star Market, the official supermarket of the Red Sox radio network. That's what's trending. Here's Curtis with your weather. Thank you, Courtney. 57 degrees and absolutely pouring rain right now. The rain will stop around midday and then it'll be windy with an afternoon high of 62. Alex Cora on Jones and Mega.
Yvonne Birkin She's been telling me all night long Guess I'm eating groceries The list goes on and on It's nine to five, ain't working Why the hell do I work so hard? I can't worry about my problems I can't take them when I'm gone Here comes the two to the three to the four Tell them bring another round, we need plenty more Two stepping on the table, she don't need a dance floor Oh my, good lord Well, speaking of working hard, it appears that some, I guess because of the weather, in the Twitch chat are calling in today. Is that a thing when it rains? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think even if it don't rain, like, I come, you know, every time I leave here, the office is always empty on Fridays and Mondays. Yeah, I don't think anybody works on Fridays yeah, and Mondays Yeah, I think anymore. that's just a yeah. normal... And why... Or, why would you? Right. I mean, I feel like several of the Celtics called in sick last night. If you so, could. I mean, I, I'm not, it's not really. Why? Who cares? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. raining. It's a Friday yeah. and the Masters yeah. are on. All right. Well, are we going uh, themed rejoins today, Shime? Because it's Friday. We could do, if you want, rain, lightning, thunder, snow. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no snow. Uh, storm, if you want, theme. Sure. Yeah. Okay. What was that song? Um, it was good. Uh, that was uh, the new Shibuzi song. Shibuzi. Uh, Shibuzi. Uh, I think it's called Tipsy. Tipsy. Oh. Mm. I like, I like Absolute uh, banger. Literally just came out today. What was the other Tipsy back in the day? Who sung that one? You. Uh, you were the other Tipsy <laughs> back in the day. Is that Trey songs? <laughs> what? Was it? What? That was excellent. Like, was it Thank Jamie Foxx? No, 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 no. No, no. It was like a It was a rap song, right? Yeah. Um, it wasn't one of the St. Lunatics or one of the Nelly's crew. Maybe. I don't uh, I'm probably the last person you want to ask. You pulled it though, Jay Kwan. Jay Kwan. He was part of the St. St. Lunatics, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, and they said... T-Pain also had a tipsy song. All right. Okay. Subaru <laughs> of New England text line appears to be on point early this morning. Mm -hmm. Excellent te uh, text message on the passing of O.J. Simpson. Mm -hmm. We cannot skip over the fact that without O.J., Bob Kardashian is really a nobody, and a sex tape with his daughter is a nothing burger. And we would, um, America and the world, right, would have never had to deal with the Kardashians, right? Yeah, without, they still would have. Without, without OJ. OJ, that's a good point. What do you mean they still would have? They would have found their way. No, they would nah, not. They, no. you, mean, you mean they would have? She would have been able. Kim would have been able to sleep her way to fame. She without, didn't. Uh, without yeah. huh? Kim's real fame, and I don't, uh, I don't know much about it. Them, but Kim was Paris Hilton's assistant yeah, but for a very she, long time. When did she blow up? The sex tape sure helped her. Ray J. But the reason why she blew up was obviously the sex tape. But it is a good point because that was one of OJ's lawyers. Yeah. And then the sex tape blew up. And then the whole is OJ Chloe's dad right. was another whole element to that. Bob so, Bob Kardashian yeah. was not only one of the lawyers, yeah. but he was OJ's best friend. Yeah. I will, till my dying days, which Curtis might say, or Shine might say is right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a lot of years left, though. You, you got do. a good couple months. Um, like Heisenberg? I, will, I would suggest <laughs> that when, uh, after the murders occurred, uh -huh. and O.J. Simpson found himself in a hotel in Chicago okay. to go do some go to some kind of a Hertz, you know, uh, uh, meet and greet meeting thing, whatever, because okay. he was the spokesperson for Hertz. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then he was asked by the police to return, and he did return, and he pulled up while the cameras were at his Brentwood mansion mm -hmm. and got out of the car that had driven him from the airport. Bob Kardashian came over mm -hmm. and removed a, uh, like, a luggage bag. You know the ones that, what do they call the ones that you have your suits and your shirts in? Uh, the long oh, garment, uh, garment, garment, garment bag. bag yeah. uh -huh. Garment bag. Removed that from OJ's car uh -huh. and took it away. Okay. And so I have forever felt like the evidence was uh, in that bag. Whatever he was not left, you know, thrown into uh, the backyard, right, uh, was in that bag. And that Barb Bob Kardashian knew exactly what he was All doing right. when it came to helping OJ Simpson. All right. So, uh, but anyway, we will have time to talk about the passing of OJ today. Uh, if that is is necessary, and I guess it is. Was we that the biggest singular event of the nineties? Like, yes, uh, you got yeah, the you the, got the, the uh, Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. Obviously, you yeah. have the Olympics in Atlanta. 
But, but did you guys all like huddle around a TV to no. watch yes, the Bronco? Yes, yeah, yeah, because yes. remember this split the this split races. This was black and white. Okay, but that but that's yeah, a, but that yeah. was part of these. Uh, it, it, it was yes, it was. The, but the bombing was, in um, what you no, say? Oklahoma Wiggy, it was, City. Wiggy. Oklahoma City Wait. didn't have his Greg. It, this was right in the wheelhouse when I was in I was in college. You were around, and this. <laughs> This, I guess I was around. No, but but this is was like you know if you were a black person you were rooting for OJ. Yeah, I understand. And this was like the Oklahoma City thing. It was a tragedy. No, no, I, but not, it didn't divide races no, like OJ no, did. No, I'm not denying the fact That's that I think I think Curtis is right that it was the biggest event yeah. certainly of the '90s. I just don't know it was the biggest event because of a racial divide. It was no, a no, big but, event but because that made it huge. It though. was a big event because the guy was. Arguably the most well-known, right. uh, highly paid, endorsed athlete that there right. was, and he and he and he appeared to commit murder, and then he was in a Bronco chase, right. threatening to kill himself. Which you know you threaten to kill yourself uh, in a Bronco if you haven't committed a couple murders, right? If you haven't killed mm -hmm. the person you love, yeah. that's what you do, right? Like I, I the, the, but the, it wasn't just because he had been retired for so long from football, Greg. I, I know that you you might feel it in your mind, but I'm telling you, in the minds of many black people during that time, that that played a major role into it. So when Curtis brings up the point of right. th that, you have to factor that well, in. Well, I think if you're looking at things that were dividing this country based on race. In the 90s, mm -hmm. I would say that Rodney King and the riots out there yeah. afterward were a, were a much bigger event when it came to dividing this country by race. But the OJ thing happened after Rodney King. Right. So that was part of this whole element which made – and then OJ was this black athlete. So that just made it – even more of like you know, Courtney, you you, you were three. Four, you was three, so that just made it even more of like more eyes were on it. And I would also add into the OJ discussion. Obviously, nowhere near the fame, but Johnny Carson, I think, also represent like this very successful attorney that happened to be African American. Johnny that, Cochran, yeah. Did I say Johnny Carson? Yeah, I was like, wait, <laughs> I was like, did OJ go on Johnny Carson? <laughs> uh. At least it Johnny was, Carson. Uh, I Karnak. Uh, Hold on a second. What is <laughs> what is Curtis doing right now? I never even watched Johnny Carson. Uh, okay. <laughs> never watched. That's good old. ASMR. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think you, if you have to fold Johnny Cochran into the mix right. there, because, and Ma and Mark Furman, right? Well, no, right, Mark Furman in his testimony, yeah. and that that really was also sort of the that was what created the boom of cable news mm. because people needed it. That was the first in uh, just demand of twenty four seven updates because everybody wanted to know the latest. That spawned I, Court TV. I believe it was the first nationally televised trial mm -hmm. and so it launched that whole thing that you and i love oh. right? um and so people would i would do my radio show in the morning and then i would go home immediately and uh grab the old uh knob on the television and flip it over to court tv oh. or or abc like the networks i don't think there was even court tv until after the oj mm -hmm. thing right after the trial and yeah. i will never yeah. forget being in middle school and the principal got over the loudspeaker and announced the verdict. Like, it was bizarre. Well, the Bronco chase happened during the NBA playoffs, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. They were interrupting the Knicks and the Houston Rockets. Was it the Knicks Rockets? I think. That's yes. Right. Jennifer, Hill, Jennifer Hill was pregnant with Julia Hill. Mm-hmm. And so I, being an attentive husband, uh -huh. was there watching that game with her in bed. Uh, and all of a sudden, they, they on they got the split screen. Yep. You got the game going on. Mm -hmm. And then you got OJ. They're announcing that OJ Simpson is on the run in a yeah. white Bronco with Al, Al Cowling. Yes. So how the did they get the audio of the LAPD cop that was trying to talk OJ off that? That remains in that era. How did oh. we have the was line? Was it the dispatch? 911 dispatch? Yeah, 911 calls, I think, have been recorded for a long, but, long time. Agreed, but it was live. Yeah, because but, the, the guy who was driving Al, what's his name? He Al called, Callings. Al Callings. He, <laughs> Johnny Carson's brother, <laughs> yeah, Al. Johnny, 
obviously he was ta- I guess he was talking to the dispatch and obviously they recorded and then they ended up playing it all afterwards. Yeah. Oh, so crazy. it wasn't live. It was played later. Yeah, I don't no, I don't think it was live the okay. whole yeah. And that was his friend who was driving him? Yeah, that was his, his uh, buddy. Yeah, OJ's yeah. buddy. And the other thing that that's another one who helped him get away with murder. The the um the helicopter coverage of events mm-hmm. really began there, didn't it? Like where they were following. There was a great yeah. yep. thirty for thirty with one of the um helicopter pilots for one of the KABC stations. Yeah, and he talked well, about I, how that spawned everything. Yeah. Too. Oh, okay. I mean, at that similar time, they had the the shootout. That I'm really. This is is this Ask a Boomer? Are we doing Ask a Boomer? Oh, right I love now? it. They had the shootout that happened between these guys who were robbing a bank and the and Cali and the LAPD. Yes. That was all on helicopter. And it was on the streets of Los Angeles. There was probably, I, I don't know, 50 cops. Yeah. And, and these they guys, were full on, and full on like, Kevlar. yes. And that uh, is what the movie heat is based mm, on. Yes. Which is an extraordinary film. Wiggy that shootout. You was should watch. Have you seen? No, heat? I've never seen it. You Did should watch it with Pacino. Santo. This okay. Weekend. Curtis, yeah. you ever seen heat? No. Yeah. What? I, 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 can we talk about the Miami Heat? God. <laughs> De Niro and Pacino, but that shootout. Oh, I was, think I saw that. Was crazy. It was sick. Because these got these bank it was sick. They were in full on body armor and just like the cops were shooting, the bullets were just bouncing off them. Yeah. And you were nuts. watching from the cameras that were in the helicopter. That was live. Yes. Yeah, you yes. watch. They had a bunch of cameras and that it one. was the first time yeah. that you could really do that. So, wow. But the entire country was watching the trial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, this is Mike from Florida. Good morning, Mike. Happy Friday. Hey, happy Friday, guys. How are we doing today? What's up? Um, so I just, you know, talking about OJ, um, you know, hello, Twitter world. <laughs> no more of that. But anyways, there's a documentary that um, it, it's, I think it's not like brand new, but it's on Hulu right now. It's LA 92. And it's about, you know, Rodney King and the riots and everything that kind of happened, you know, before the OJ thing happened. And I was kind of too young with the riots to really uh, to understand the scope of it. Yeah. Wow. I mean, th- th- that documentary is, is eye opening because you really see how that the court system and the LAPD had failed the black community. Yep you know, before the OJ thing, and because of how, like, on edge everything was, you know, it's no secret that I think part of the reason why OJ got off for, you know, a double homicide was because people were terrified of having that happen again, and had OJ been found guilty, as he should have been, uh, there might have been more riots, yeah. and, you know, it, it, it's the an whole situation, point. and that... That that documentary that I you know I just watched it last weekend and it was just unbelievable how you know they, the the police officers that had beaten Rodney King they got off because they moved the the you know the case they moved the trial to outside of L A County yeah um, and they were all white jurors I don't know how that's possible in in a <laughs> modern society but it was and that's yeah. that's what caused all that Wait, wh- and OJ got off because of it Mike what's the documentary called again. It's called LA 92. All right. Thank you, Mike. We got to take a break. Hmm. But we're talking about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you, like you said, OJ was, I mean, he was the most, like, at the point, he was, <clears throat> excuse me, there were two sides. Vo- one side was rooting for him. Then it was like afterwards, everybody, like, OJ did it. Yeah. And then OJ's in, what a monster he is. Yeah. And now he's died. And everybody's like, all right, P.O.J. I'm not. No, I know I'm that. not like R.I.P. OJ. No, I know that, but the love that he's getting. Just I'm glad like, the guy's gone. No, but I know did, you didn't would take OJ, did, Didn't O.J. prior to the double murder? Didn't he get some of the same backlash that Tiger guts now? That he wasn't like he was living with Nicole Brown, and that he wasn't really with and supportive of African Americans in yes. America. Yes. Yes. yes, 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 he did. And so that turned on its head. Yes, that was always something I found fascinating. Yeah. Like it with was... Tiger, that didn't happen when he got in trouble. Yeah, but All with right. OJ, it did. All right, we got to take a break. We will get to this morning's leads coming right up next. From the Rubenstein.
Chime, you got me stumped. That's right in my wheelhouse, too. Is that from the 70s? It's got to be. I believe so. Yeah, 76. Uh, what's the name? You of know it? the artist. I is, know that. Is it called Georgia? It is. See, I immediately, when I think of Georgia, I think of Ray Charles, mm -hmm. but that's not Ray Charles. No, I, I uh, the Ray Charles one was a little too slow with the piano, which is why I chose this. This is your guy, Boz Skaggs. Oh, I love Boz Skaggs. I prefer Lido Shuffle. Yes, which I've uh, used as a lead before, but I felt Georgia being uh, the Masters weekend was uh, apropos. Okay, so. can you let it breathe for one tiny little second here it? since it's a Friday? Uh, like fun it. fact, Greg. Yeah. Lido Shuffle. Do you know what Lido means? Uh, well, I know there's a Lido, California. It's a beach. No. Um, <laughs> uh, interesting that the topic we are on or were on was OJ Simpson. <laughs> Who was the judge in the OJ oh, Simpson trial? Judge Ito. Yes. 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 Yeah, it yeah, judge rhymes Ito. with Lido. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, Did you ever see the Pauly Shore jury duty movie? That was yes. basically yes. Yes. pretty good, ba like a yeah. bad movie. That's a good rainy day watch. Um, by the way, I was a senior moment apparently on the origination of the Heat film. It was the other way around. So the Heat movie came out before that massive shootout in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The the uh, the bank robbers took their inspiration from, from that the film, okay. not the other way right. around. So I stand corrected on that. All right, let's see if we can squeeze all the leads in. Good morning, Shime. Hello. Good morning. I'll make mine quick. Uh, it was uh, fantastic to watch Tiger Woods play yesterday. He got himself in a bunch of bad bad spots, and he came out of it like classic Tiger. Like, he, he looked locked in. He looked kind of in the zone. He didn't look in pain. It was awesome to see him first drive of the day, smack it down the fairway, yeah, birdie walk hole right one, after it. Birdie hole one. Then he gets himself in trouble on hole two. And, and still gets, pars. And, and gets out Saves of it, par. makes par. Yes. That's agree something with that you. happened to him in the early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was just... It was so fun to watch Tiger Woods play good golf and not look in pain and not look decrepit. Yeah. And I, uh, I'm excited for the rest of the weekend, and I'm curious to see how today having to play 23 holes will uh, will do on his body. Courtney, I love the new merch. Oh, Tiger wearing the new merch, very very good. And so. I was saying to Shime when he uh, drove on the first hole, he looked so dialed in like watching him just take his glove off so he he knew he crushed it yeah he just looked like he didn't have a single worry no. about himself or his yeah. health or his back or his leg nothing he will tee off and finish round one in about an hour is Correct. that right shine yep, just shy of an hour seven seven forty five this morning all right thank you shine curtis good morning good morning greg we're run, running up against it i just want to say good job wiggy you've been right about almost everything lately so Appreciate congratulations it. to you <laughs> thank you james was right all along you're right. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, watching Tiger, enjoy it. Whether you hate him, whether you hate watch, like, you know, I do with the Yankees, or you love him, you will miss him when he's gone. And the fact that through more than half of round one, he's under par, just enjoy this because it's probably going to be the last second or third time you'll be able to watch him and have a chance at the Masters. So, Wiggy's um, so... Enjoy us today. Yeah. And uh, Tom Brady, if he's right, if Wiggy's right about Brady, then I will just rename the show. Let me ask you this radio-related question. <laughs> yep. Do you think the Wiggy show would be on time when it came to hitting their brakes? No. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> think... Right now. <laughs> it would be clock-free. Yeah, say that right okay. now. But there'd be no breaks. There'd be no, no, no breaks, no, no, and no, there'd no, be a no. lot of food in the studio because of the there be Would there be breaths? Like, would you yeah. Would you stop talking long right. enough to breathe on the Wiggy Our breaks show? would be like on Howard Stern. We would just kind of pop them in mid-conversation. <laughs> uh, this conversation's brought to you by, uh, you know, Transition yeah. Medical yeah. Weight Loss. Uh, yeah, I don't get why Tiger's <laughs> still playing golf. All right, all right. Courtney, good morning. Good morning. A quick follow-up lead for me yesterday, Shohei Otani and his uh, interpreter, Mizuhara. It's getting crazier and crazier. They're saying he stole, me I think the number is close to 40 now. Ooh, um, $40 million. $40 million. He quote-unquote stole. Correct. And Shohei and his financial advisors, which mm -hmm. I'm sure he has a plethora of, plethora of, Yep. didn't notice it. Correct. Okay. And the text messages yeah. that have come out, while they haven't found any between the bookie and Shohei, Mizuhara, back in 2022, uh, texted him, I'm terrible at this sports betting thing, huh? LOL. Any chance you can bump me again? As you know, you don't have to worry about me not paying. Then, when the news broke 
about the four and a half million that had been trans mm -hmm. uh, transmitted from Otani's account. He uh, had t texted asking if the bookie had seen it. The bookie responded, yes, but that's all bull. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. I totally get it. Mizuhara then said, technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. I, why would the bookie say mm -hmm. it's a cover job if it wasn't a cover so job? So what do you think then? Because if it's that much money, are you saying that... I, I'm aware that I, be, I believe Shohei knew his boy was gambling. Mm -hmm. So if it's that much money, is do you think... Shohei might not have known how much money it is, or do you think, or you think Shohei was part of the I think Shohei was gambling? Shohei, Shohei has a gambling issue. Yeah. That's okay. what I believe, and yes. I believe that the reason the smoking gun mm -hmm. is the way they structured the contract. I'm sorry that, in the light of knowing how much money he had squandered, delaying the payments <laughs> to that effect is to me his handler saying. We need to make sure that his family is taken care of mm. when he's done playing mm. because he's going to blow through everything he has. Nailed it, Curtis. Wow, Curtis. Nailed it. And he as think of Major League Baseball mm -hmm. and the massive issue that they have when their number one star, right? The guy that people were comparing to Babe Ruth, right? is addicted to gambling. Like, like, think about that. But the, but think about that. What you just said, and and I kind of agree with Shime a little bit. If the guy is addicted to gambling, don't you think we'll know? Like Shohei actually laying bets. There's no way that you're addicted to gambling, but there's no evidence. He had this guy doing it for him, so he wouldn't get busted. And they still got busted. But then he's not gonna. He's not gonna just not stop, gonna stop cold well, turkey. You can. I mean, you, no. people stop doing things. Come on. If what you're are you talking about? If you're addicted to gambling, it's good. you could stop, but it's gonna take you some time. We gotta take a break. Okay. Oh, great lead, Courtney. Good Thank job, you. Courtney. We will get to Wiggy's lead and to my lead coming right up next. You're listening to the Greg Hill Show.
take a number I was lightning before the thunder Well done, Chime. Uh, we're doing a some kind of a storm, rain, thunder, lightning rejoin theme this morning because it's a uh, 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 themed rejoin Friday. Correct. correct. All right. That okay. is correct. Excellent choice. And some thunder and lightning out there, Curtis, but really just a deluge, right? I mean, uh, it's coming down in buckets yeah. out there. Cats right. and dogs. And it was. Courtney mentioned it first thing this morning. It it, it 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 certainly was miserable getting in here, and that was before there was a lot of traffic. So my advice, if you're sitting at home, waiting, listening on the Odyssey app, watching on Twitch, waiting to go to work or wherever you go, go drop the kids off at school or whatever, just uh, mail it in. Uh, do what the Celtics did last night uh, and did the, the last uh, couple games, mm -hmm. actually. Just mail it right in. Wiggy has no concern whatsoever for the Celtics. That's weird no. to me. Uh, but good morning. Hello. A uh, couple leads left. Wiggy, good, good morning. Hello. Good morning. So, uh, you know, generally my percentage of being right on leads is pretty high. Really? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and, you know, some of the things I How said. How about that one about Bill Belichick never leaving the New England Patriots? I don't think I've ever said uh, that. I think, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think. know if did I you make a, Didn't you make a bet on that? No, I don't uh, think I've ever said that. You, excuse me. Hello? Am I here on an island? Or? Yeah, you might. I, 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 I forgot, forgot that. that. I don't yeah, even I don't know, know what okay. you're talking about. Okay. I mean, the Cam Newton one, okay, I was wrong about okay. that one. What about you... Shohei coming to the Red Sox? Uh, no, was, I was I was petitioning for that. Okay, that didn't okay, work out. Okay. What about Haim v. Alex Cora? Um, also, I said one of them two would be gone, and I was right again. Okay. And I will be right about this one. All right. Uh, Curtis's boy, my former quarterback, Tom Brady, will be playing in the NFL sometime in the near future based on what he was saying. I don't even know what kind of – he was at, he was at the barber shop. It's yeah, a new yeah. shop show. His, his yeah. post-playing career has been bumpy. Yeah, and uh, we can play the audio. Yeah, I have uh, the audio if you want. We were going to do it during the set, right. but leads are late, so we'll just combine. Mm-hmm. It'll be, it'll, it'll be like on National Grilled Cheese Day, mm -hmm. a grilled cheese uh, dipped in tomato soup. We can combine, they said it, and the rest of the leads, et cetera. Uh, so, yes, Tom Brady, there's a podcast in which a dude cuts your hair. Yep. Yeah, he's uh, a uh, guy that popped off on TikTok. I know Curtis hates that, uh, but he <laughs> blew up on TikTok, partnered okay. with No Bull, started this podcast. And since Tom Brady, now partnered with No Bull, uh, was the first guest on the podcast. Okay. Uh, let's take a listen. Let's say one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders somebody. could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape. Always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Oh, my God. Well, okay. That is somebody who... He, uh, by the way, uh -huh. he makes sure to get the Patriots in there. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, I, I kind of love. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I love that. But um, that is somebody who clearly... What if Tom Brady night is the night he comes out of retirement? <laughs> that's a possibility. <laughs> but, you know, we, we've kind of talked about this and Tom trying to figure out what his next step is after football. And we, we're all waiting for him to be on the broadcast. But that, that itch... He's going to scratch it because there there will be a team now out there that knows, oh, wait a second, Tom said this, we're a playoff contender. Yeah. Hey, Tom, any chance you'd like to come back midway through the season? Everything's everything's aligned I perfectly. mean, how hard would it be, you would know this better mm -hmm. than anybody, how hard would it be for him to, to be back in game-ready shape? Like, oh, not hard for a guy like him. He said it like he he said it himself. Like he's always going to be in great shape. Okay, but the older you get, the less you can take a hit. I mean, I right, guess nobody, really nobody's nobody's really allowed to hit. Uh, right, they don't really Tom touch Brady or right. a quarter, or a right. quarter, or a quarterback. It's, it, it's really That's... the mental game, right? And his mental game is so far ahead of everybody else that he could he could easily step right in and you know go out there and throw you know. 25 of 40 for 300 yards and two touchdowns and had been sitting on his couch. If Joe Flacco can do it, 
You don't think Tom Brady could do it? Yeah. I think this has to do with one player, Patrick Mahomes. Mm. I think Tom is terrified of seeing Mahomes do what he did to Montana. Mm. And he also has had a bumpy post-playing career with his wife and with his jobs. That was all part of this no bull company that he's partnered with. And just the inorganic ways that they tried to bring that company into it. I don't know. I'd love to see him come you, back. So obviously. you think it's just uh, it's just shilling for uh, for eyeballs? Uh, I think and, so, and, I, and but, clicks. But guys. I do think he's being honest. Like he definitely misses football. Right. I mean, talking about Shohei being addicted to gambling, Tom Brady's addicted to competition. Like his father told sixty Minutes, he's concerned when Tom stops playing because it's been his life. And yeah. as you've seen, it's kind of weird. He does these, like, thirst trap photos, which look great. <laughs> like, sitting by his pool, by himself. He's doing these weird Instagram things with Gronk and Edelman. I don't know. See, if I were the Patriots, mm -hmm. I, I would reach out. I would say, listen, I right. heard what you said. Right. And here's the way you do it, Curtis. You draft your guy, Marvin Harrison Jr., mm -hmm. at number three. Mm -hmm. Right. And you let uh, Kobe Brissett play for the first... You know, seven, six, seven weeks, six, yeah. seven weeks, and then you bring Tom yeah. Brady in. But I think he would probably, I think he would probably turn New England down. I think it would be. Places, he just said he said the Patriots. I maybe. think he was being a little joke in there, but I think it would be places like Miami, places a place that where are, he has a chance to win one more time. Legitimate contenders. Yeah, a place like uh, San Francisco where he could walk in and that off a place like Atlanta. A place where he could walk in, get the playbook, and boom, you got enough weapons on offense that you could mm -hmm. go out there. That's where I think, and there are going to be places like, especially with the quarterback situations yeah. right now. What if Dallas is an issue for the first six, seven, eight weeks of the season, mm -hmm. and they get Bill Belichick, and then Tom Brady joins Bill Belichick in, in Dallas? You, you know who a dark horse <laughs> would be, and it wasn't mentioned, and I hate the city and the and the people that uh, that have uh, live there. The Eagles. Mm. Jalen Hurts is not playing well or he gets dinged. Mm -hmm. That is a Ferrari. That yeah. organization. The coach is on his – he got almost fired this past offseason. Jeffrey Lurie's a Boston guy. I could see that. Yeah. That, that division is not too good. Right. It could be winnable. The NFC – He. it wouldn't make sense for Tom to go to the AFC. The AFC is loaded. The okay. NFC is where to go. Yeah. So your lead this morning is that you expect to see Tom Brady – Yeah. On an NFL field, this at some point this upcoming yeah, it's season, it's just too much. It's like too many. Like, there's no reason to say that. Like, the, you could just be like, "Yo, I'm now, nah, I'm done." Yeah, yeah. All right, Wiggy, great lead. Thank you. Yesterday, Greg Norman arrived at Augusta National for the Masters. He has not been there on the property since 2021. That's the shock, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. he is the CEO of Live Golf. Okay. The founder CEO. All right. Uh, and he was actually forbidden from attending the Masters last year. This year, mm -hmm. he requested tickets and he was denied. So he went to the secondary market and bought himself a Masters ticket wow. and walked through the front gates yesterday. I, I This is the most ridiculous thing I think I have ever heard or seen in my life. There is a merger underway right. between Live and the PGA. Right. Because the PGA finally figured out that they got to have all of the very best golfers playing in their league or they are uh, facing some stiff competition at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a merger underway, and these old heads in golf mm -hmm. at, at, the, at, at Augusta National and elsewhere – Want to blame Greg Mor Greg Norman for starting uh, a a startup competitive league, which mm -hmm. has helped, I think, the entire game of golf. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous to blame him when there's a merger underway. Like, like shake hands, uh, give him a hug, uh, say thank you. Like, yeah, people like, just don't like him, though. That's the thing. Okay, it's just another reason to not like him. Okay, but there's a lot of people that don't like Tiger that kiss his ass because he's good for the sport. And I feel like the one person who's the biggest fraud in all of this is Shime's boy, Jim Nance, who attacked the golfers, citing the victims' families of September 11th for doing business with Saudi Arabia, when now the PGA Tour is about to be fully in bed 
with <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And he sits there on, you know, his little ivory tower at Augusta National, checking out the world from his perspective. At no point, I mean, there's nothing worse than that than using the victims of 9-11 to make yourself look good in competition with another tour. Well, Jay Monahan did the same thing, and he's a jackass, too. Well, I'm not saying that he's the only jackass. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just adding him to the list. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, listen, I would I would love to see a live golfer win mm -hmm. this tournament. Mm -hmm. I am hoping and praying that a live golfer wins the Masters so he can shove it up there, you know what, because... Well, the defending I, champion is a live guy. Yes. Yes. And Phil looked a little odd yesterday. What do you mean? Like, I thought he looked frustrated every oh. time that he was on camera. Well, yeah, he's not. He like, missed a few putts. And yeah. every time he did, he was like, like, he looked like he was going to break his club over his knee. Oh, yeah, it's really? a guy who finished, what, in the top three last year? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, those are today's leads. You want to continue with They Said It? What do you have next, Shine? Uh, so let's go to uh, Adam Schefter. So this, uh, he was talking about the NFL, the upcoming NFL draft. And Patriots fans, you may be able to relax a little bit if you're not interested in J.J. McCarthy because Adam Schefter doesn't necessarily believe he's going to go in the top five picks. Do I think he's going in the top six? He could. Certainly, there has been a lot of momentum for what he's done, who he is. And I think... Part of this is that people have gotten to know the person that J.J. McCarthy is, and they see what he's about and the leader he can be. To me, the ceiling is probably two or three. The floor is probably 11 or 12. I think the probably it'll come in somewhere in between, split the difference, right? In the end, ultimately, uh, my guess is he goes around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, question, if he's Elliot Wolf's guy, mm -hmm. And you can get him at 11 or 12 or whatever the number is, according to Schefter, your guy, uh, then do the Patriots trade down? You can, but then it's risky because it, right now sitting at number 12 is Denver. So if you trade down, well, let's say Minnesota, and Minnesota goes up to three and you go down to 11, who's to say that Denver doesn't leapfrog you to get J.J. McCarthy, if that's their guy. So it is a risky situation to do that. I think there's a clear reason Schefter is saying this. Like, I think it is evident that Minnesota has desperately tried to get up in the draft. They can't get to three, so they know they're not getting Drake May or Jaden Daniels. So now they're just content on waiting till it gets to about seven or eight where the Titans and Falcons are, who don't need to pick at seven or eight and can come down to 11, and then they just jump up a limited amount don't use all that draft capital that they have. Only use some of it. And that way they still get their quarterback ahead of Denver, um, but they're not trading all the way up to where, like, the Patriots, Cardinals, Chargers are. But so why is everybody in the league whispering that the Patriots are in on J.J. McCarthy? Well, I think this is new information, which is why Schefter's saying this. Like, I think he is figuring out because, I mean, Schefter is the most in-no guy in all of football. Like, I think he is figuring out that, oh, those top three teams definitely aren't moving. They're not taking J.J. McCarthy. And then Marvin Harrison is going to go four to the Cardinals. And the Chargers are going to do whatever they want. They're going to pick somebody at five. Yeah. And then the draft starts changing around six, seven, eight. If New England doesn't move off a of three, then that tells you you're getting a quarterback. A quarterback. Yeah. And it could potentially be J.J. McCarthy. Okay. Well, that is some of they said it. We can continue with the rest coming up in just a little bit. Courtney has the news at 730. And during the news, the new TikTok trend when it comes to the MBTA is not going over so well in Lynn. So we'll get to that and the rest of the news coming up. Speaking of Courtney, here she is with what is trending right this moment. Your home of the Sox. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now brought to you by Team Malone. The big news yesterday, OJ Simpson died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. The Sox blew a lead in the eighth, and it took 10 innings, but they did fall to the Orioles for the third straight, getting swept by Baltimore in their three-game series. 9-4 to four was the final yesterday. Garrett Whitlock got the start. He went five innings. He gave up one run on four hits while striking out four. Now the series with the Angels kicks off tonight at Fenway. At 7-10, you can hang out with Rich Keefe at 6-10 for the Mass Mutual pregame show. Then Joe Siglione and Will Fleming have the call on the Shaws and Star Market, WEEI Red Sox Radio Network, right here on EEI, and as always, on the Odyssey app.
The Celtics fell to the Knicks last night, 118 to 109. And the first round of the Masters will resume today at 7:50. Tiger will start that on the 14th hole. He will tee off at 10:18 for the second round. Bryson DeChambeau, the solo leader, at seven under with Scotty Scheffler one behind him. And the Frozen Four, BC and Denver are. <clears throat> Excuse Are me. you okay over there? Emotional for BC. For, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My Eagles. Yeah. BC and Denver headed to the championship. BC took down Michigan for zip, while BU fell to Denver in overtime 2-1. to one. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> and do you or a loved one remember receiving free samples of cigarettes when you were a child? And have you been diagnosed with lung, bladder, or throat cancer within the last three years? You may be eligible to file a free lawsuit. Call the lawyers at Team Malone at 1-888-SMOKE-18. That's 1-888-SMOKE-18. <laughs> That's what's trending. Here's Curtis with your weather. Thanks, Courtney. 58 degrees. We got the rain around until about 10 this morning. A cloudy, windy afternoon high of 62. If you missed Jones and Mego yesterday.
Request for Coach. Good call, Coach. Yep. I'm guessing your uncle oh, yeah. introduced you to the Scorpions because yep. you have said countless times that your uncle introduced you to rock music. Yeah, to especially the era of the hair band. Okay. Unpopular opinion. Mm. I, uh, my drinking is well established. Scorpion Bowl, the most overrated drink on the planet. <laughs> I, I don't know when they light it on fire in the middle. Kind of cool. And it was like, it didn't even get you drunk. It was all <laughs> sugar. It was yeah. just this like... Now you're getting it made by the wrong people. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe I just had too much of a tolerance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Monday, our annual Boston Marathon show, the 128th running of the Boston Marathon. Unlike today, the weather appears to be perfect for spectating on Monday, Curtis. So we will be at the Capitol Grill at the finish line on Boylston Street from 6 to 10. And then we got the big Greg Hill Foundation annual marathon party afterwards, and it should be a beautiful day. Our show on Monday presented by Sitco. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. Um, Very and then excited. two weeks from today, believe it or not, it's the first road show, and we will be in Vermont at the church in Brattleboro for the first road show. Night before on draft night, mm -hmm. we will be at the Poor House in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, and that, of course, is the place that features the Wheel of Shots, speaking as Curtis was, right. of alcoholic beverages. So, uh, and the wings. You and love the wings. The wings. Yeah, the they wings have very the good port. wings there. Yeah. So come watch the draft with us. The future of an entire uh, local f football franchise hangs in balance, waiting to see who they select at number right. three and, and if they still select at number three. Right. And uh, there's really nothing else to say about the draft. Uh, I think it's all been said 14 <laughs> or 17 times on this radio station and elsewhere. So, And I have I, been asked a few times what church. It's the Stone Church. The Stone okay. Church. Yep. Okay. In Brattleboro. Yep. All right. All right. Um, Shime, we had something left. They said it wise, correct? Yeah, we have one more audio cut for you here. This uh, we, we talked about OJ a bit this morning and kind of the impact uh, that whole situation had in the 90s. Well, Skip Bayless decided to talk about O.J. Simpson. Greg, I don't think you're going to be a fan of uh, what Skip Bayless had to uh, say. I had the luxury of seeing him play a lot, and I had the luxury of getting to know him a lot. Obviously, yeah. we all are painfully aware of what he was involved in off the field. It's too horrifying for me to even run back through the literally gory details of yeah. what happened. I do want to honor him as a football player. Uh. And as charismatic an athlete as I ever knew, including Magic Johnson, there was nothing like O.J. Simpson. You can make a case he was the greatest running back ever. <laughs> you can make a case he was the greatest college running back ever, because if you see the highlights of that run against UCLA out here, whoa, it's spectacular. I, wow, he's emotional. I said this earlier. <laughs> I, the, the obsessive need to balance... What you say about O.J. Simpson in the wake of his death is ridiculous to me. I could care less if he was the guy. First of all, Walter Payton, probably the greatest running back ever in the NFL. Walter, thank uh, yeah, you. Yeah, pretty uh, good. Okay. I like Barry Sanders, but Walter's a good one. Okay. Uh, whatever. Pick, mm -hmm. your, pick yep. your poison. I would just so, recommend. Marshall Falk. I like, I, I, whatever. Yep. I, get what, Curtis? Given our market manager, just say Walter Payton. Uh, all right. <laughs> Chicago guy. Sweetness. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it, that's ridiculous. That statement that he's, that we, he might've been the greatest ever his charisma. The guy killed two people, yeah. <laughs> but the best part about it, Greg, is that 
OJ's a sociopath. You never got to know him. You saw what he wanted you to see. Nobody actually knew OJ Simpson. <laughs> yeah, but look at our text line and Twitch right now. There are still people that think that he didn't do it. Yeah. So I they think are, they just those are the there people. Are, yeah. There are pe- are there are, is, are there people listening right now who mm-hmm. think OJ Simpson didn't do it? Yeah, they think some people he was think, found liable. Do you think he did it? I think he had some involvement. Some people think what? his son did it. What? His son did it. Yeah. Some that's uh, some people he was trying to cover. What do up. you think happened? Um I think probably because he was abusive to Nicole, right? Yeah, he, broke, some situ- he broke her arm. Yeah. I think he was he running hot. He beat the crap out of her. Yeah, yeah I think and he had she, to And she it. had to, she took pictures to document yeah. it the entire 12 years they were together. But yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, I think he did it. Okay. I think he Thank did. You. I think Thank he uh, snapped. Thank you. Yeah. Like but any, I'm saying there any are people mention, out there. Any mention of his death should be what a horrific human being he was, mm-hmm. how he got away with murder, didn't get away with it in a civil court, was found liable for, for murder in a civil court, and never paid the Goldman family a cent, which the court told him to. His pension was untouchable because you you can't get go and get your pension. Then he did jail time because he was uh, trying to get his stuff back at mm-hmm. gunpoint. Guy's a scumbag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's and, gone. And like these people yesterday, like R.I.P. O.J. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of those. Yeah, I mean the guy was an unbelievable football player. Murdered a couple people, but <laughs> it sucks like, for his kids. That's who it sucks for. That's who I was thinking about. They yesterday. were there with him when he died. Like, right. do you think they think he did it? Well, I mean, their mom died. Two of them, their mom died. That Nicole yeah. Brown was the mom of two of his kids. So like I don't now, think those kids were. I don't know that those kids were there. Right. I, I mean, think. Older. I think about the yeah. Goldman family and all they have endured. And I think yesterday was finally a good day for them. All the yeah. ways in which OJ, as you said, Greg, refused to pay a nickel. And think of that. Your your son's murdered. It's the afterthought of the biggest trial of all time. And when all said and done, he gets acquitted and never pays you a cent. But finally, and at last, he's dead. So yesterday was a good day for the Goldmans. Yeah. I, I, it, it, in, like the whole thing about the, this need to talk about, to balance what you say about him because he was a good football player. Especially when there's no I, balance anywhere in our society anymore. Right. One channel likes the Democrats. One channel likes the Republicans. Yeah. You're like you don't ever have balance in anything. Uh, this is Jay from Lowell. Hello, Jay. What's going on, guys? What's up, Jay? Listen, whether you like it or not, he was found not guilty. Okay, you can't take his football career away from him because of what he did after his football career, what he assumedly did after his career, because he was found not guilty. How can you take his football career away from him? So you can take a Heisman away from a dude who's smoking weed, but you can't take right. a Heisman away from a dude who's accused of murder? Reggie Bush doesn't have well, a Heisman. You shouldn't be taking a Heisman trophy away from anybody that's smoking weed. That's just ridiculous. Right. But, but they take Heisman I trophies mean, he was away. found not guilty. Well, they took the Reggie Bush one because they felt yeah, like his parents of were it, taking money. There was money yeah. in, in the recruiting thing. Yeah. Yes, I get right. it. I mean, they take down Final uh, Four banners at UMass because of John Calipari. They remove things all the time. So yeah, because I but he was found not guilty though. So how can you say nobody in the listening audience is unaware of where he was found in that trial? Everybody knows he was found okay. not guilty. Yeah. No, Jay, I get what you're so saying. You, don't, so, you have no, you don't like our justice system, that is what you're saying. No, I'm just saying that as a person with an opinion, that you can have the opinion that OJ Simpson and his football career should not be celebrated because of what he did off of the football field. I guess he shouldn't. No, he shouldn't. And he was found not guilty. Jay, do you, do you, in a discussion, <laughs> when, when when you were discussing the dynasty with your friends, did you find you, did you find yourself feeling that you had to say, well, Aaron Hernandez killed a couple people, but really good football player, really good tight end. Like I, why, why does it was have he to found be guilty? Oh yeah. uh, no. <laughs> No, no, he was. Yes, he was. No, he and was found he, not guilty. And then no, they were gonna, guilty. And then the second what? trial. No, he was found guilty. Found yep, guilty. exactly. He was found guilty. He was yeah. in prison. Jay, what do you think happened with OJ Simpson? Jay, Jay, what do you think happened with OJ Simpson and Nicole Brown? 
I think OJ did it. What? But he was found not guilty. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that's our justice system. He was, was debating guilty. that our justice system he was, does. Like, he was found responsible in the civil trial. Right. Yeah, but we know how civil lawsuits well, are. Well, right we now try. we're told civil trials are everything. Exactly. Watch the news. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's because those civil trials are going up against uh, Trump. Uh, oh. <laughs> and that's only coming from one side. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, with, it. I'm with Jay a little bit in the sense that, like, I get you have an opinion about OJ, whether you think he did it or he didn't do it. But it, it's really about the justice system. Unless you're found guilty, if you're not found guilty, I think maybe you don't honor him, but he, he still was a great football player. Yeah. He still did a lot of things on the football field, and he wasn't found guilty in the court of law. So you know how people are, though. 401 text. Jeffrey Dahmer was a fantastic chocolate factory employee. <laughs> Oh, well, he was found guilty, though. <laughs> oh, oh, he he loved found, him some he chocolate. Guilty. Okay. And this I believe is... in the eyes of the law, Aaron Hernandez is not convicted because he died prior to the appeal being heard. Correct. And he was acquitted in the double murder. So yeah. Jay from Lowell Yeah, is but he was found guilty in the uh, Odin Lloyd case. But that there was an appeal process that he was unable to complete. Okay, so I the, get what you're saying. Technically, I get what you're just, saying. If we're going to do mm. technicalities and we're going to go based on the exact verbiage of our justice system, you can make the same argument. Obviously, I believe Aaron Hernandez killed Odin Lloyd and committed the double murder. But you can't utilize the he was found not guilty thing when discussing this because obviously court systems and society is not infallible. They make mistakes. Eight four, 847 text. Mm -hmm. John Wayne Gacy. Fantastic birthday party clown. <laughs> he was an exceptional balloon animal artist. <laughs> I hate every time his face pops up on, is it Netflix where the documentary is, where he's like in the clown getup? Oh, nightmare fuel. Oh, really? that, that causes a lot of yeah, anxiety for you? Yeah, that to me is my worst nightmare. <laughs> I mean, I think David Koresh was a hell of a musician. <laughs> this is Andy from Hudson. Hello, Andy. Greg, how are you? I was thinking about you the other day down at the Wayside Inn, and you're not in the old oh. neighborhood anymore. Oh, you know what? That, that used to be the go-to when it came to my grandparents. They used to take me to the Wayside Inn and Ken's Steakhouse. Uh, two yep. incre the, I would argue the salad with the dressing at Ken's Steakhouse is the best salad in the United States of America. It's not a wedge, by the way, Wiggy. But anyway, go mm -hmm. ahead. Yes, Andy? Well, um, Wiggy's going to probably have to back me a little on this, but if you believe in forensic science, O.J. was not the actual killer. That doesn't mean he's not guilty because conspiracy is just as guilty. And the reason this is said uh, on this thing that I watched is they have O.J. at point A at a certain time. He, he's next seen at point B at another time. He had to make the – if he was the killer, actual one that physically killed him, he had to do it within that time period. Yeah. They have the exact – um, location, temperature, wind speed, all of that, and they have pictures that they took. It's it, it may be bizarre, but if you believe in forensics, it was a bowl of ice cream. They saw where how much had been melted. Yeah. They tried so hard to recreate that with all the statistics that they had, the temperature and everything. They couldn't do it in the time period. So I believe oh, Wiggy's right. I believe his son or AJ did it. He's just as guilty because it's conspiracy. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he was actually. I think I think he pulled it off. Wait, you where think he helped? So you think Al Cowlings or his son Jason did it? You you're somebody who does. You don't think OJ killed those two people? Well, on what I saw in the time period where he was seen once and then seen again, he only had that period of time to do it, and it's impossible for him to have done it. Okay. So I think he's guilty of conspiracy, which is the same as murder. <laughs> in one of the thousand documentaries I've seen on this, yeah. they discuss in gory, appalling detail the violence required that using a knife to stab his wife mm -hmm. and that it was had to have been a rage. Crime of passion. Pa crime of passion. That's what we call it in the true right. crime business, Curtis. And that, to me... Who's always the suspect first mm -hmm. in a murder? The Spouse. husband. Mm -hmm. But the son also couldn't stand her. Okay. And there was there was some evidence linking the son. Like, I agree that OJ had some involvement in it, right? And so I agree about that. 
the biggest thing that we're talking about is that now a lot of people, you know, are going to social media to basically be like R.I.P. to the juice. Yeah, it's nuts. Skip Bayless is it basically, mm -hmm. you know, our jobbing him. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, give me a break. And the LA coming up today at ten, Skip Bayless, <laughs> Osama bin Laden, great dad. And the and the police hey, Twitter world, yours truly. And the police didn't help out, you know, with all the stuff that they did during the trial. I mean, you, you watched it like I watched yes, it. You mean Mark Furman? Mark the, Furman. He was a racist. And just yeah. the way that the whole evidence was kind of like. Bin Laden was a vegan. You know. <laughs> uh, this is Paul from North Attleboro. Good morning, Paul. Happy Friday. Hey, hey, you too. Thank you, guys. Hey, um, Curtis, I have a bone to pick with you. Um, I found myself at Stop and Shop. And I was down the snack aisle, the fat snack aisle, and I grabbed some of those Boston cream yodels. Oh. And now I'm a, I'm a full-fledged addict. I'm a two-pack, <laughs> a, a night addict, and I need a, a number for addiction recovery, please. Uh, well, Paul, I have to say I am so happy that I have hooked New England mm. to the great Boston cream yodels. They're That's, delicious. Same thing happened with Monkey, Johnny Egan. He's apparently addicted to the Boston cream yodels that you've been mm. talking about. I mean, I can't do much, but I am a pitch man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you right now, Boston cream yodels, you can find them anywhere. And I would say Shaw's has the best deals. Yeah. So stop it, shop, yeah. go to Shaw's, pick up your Boston cream yodels, Drake's cakes. They make everything better. Monkey throws them in the fridge so that they're Ooh, cold. That's the best way to do it. Oh, really? Yodels, oh, fat guy, the right. best way to yeah. do it is to make them cold. A hundred percent of the time. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, a thousand percent agree. Good I find myself more of a funny bones guy. Can you get? I'm a peanut butter person. Can you get the? Can you get the funny bones in here? I'll bring some funny bones in tomorrow or okay. Monday. On I, Monday. I was upset. All the coffee cakes were gone by the yeah, time I like that the, I got the in coffee cakes. Coffee yeah. Drake's cakes, coffee cake. Very Greg, good. do you believe like if I want Curtis's uh, deal with Drake? Is that Drake's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want that endorsement canceled based on some of the things you've done off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Be careful. There will be people that will be saying that. But do you believe, like, if you were to take a national poll now that OJ's dead, yeah. do you think that if you would have said, did he do it, do you think there'd be more people that would say he didn't do it? No, well, they just did one in Twitch, and it was 82% said that he did it. <laughs> oh, they did? Oh, oh, that they he did? Yeah. Okay. Okay, All good. Right. Yeah, you can watch the show on Twitch mm -hmm. every day. Just go to Twitch and follow WEEI. Because I right. feel like people think he had involvement in it. But he I didn't feel actually like I, commit the crime. Wiggy, I feel like 99.9% .9 of the people know that he murdered the, his <laughs> ex-wife and a waiter who yeah. happened to be returning a pair of glasses. Cut their throat like, yeah. like a psycho. Yeah. That's what I think 99% of the world thinks. Who can think on their own? And he wrote a book about it. So, uh, and, he, <laughs> and I think and it was How to Get Away with Murder. He, yeah. he wrote a book that said, if I, if I did it, here's right. how I would have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wiggy like, still thinks I'm innocent. <laughs> hey, I didn't say he was innocent, yeah, man. Okay. I right. didn't say he was yeah, innocent. Did. No, I you didn't. Said I said that questions. he had involvement. All right. Yeah, you I got, got a questions like a lot of people. Wear your mask, get your shots. <laughs> oh, you got to take a break. Tell we'll, them juice. Uh, we'll get to Courtney and today's news coming up next. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL.
This is a sicko. The news is sponsored by Northeast Men's Health. The experts in men's sexual health with four locations, including their newest in Woburn, with appointments as early as 7 a.m. Visit NortheastMensHealth.com for more. It's just Uh-oh. constantly dripping. On WEEI. A scary story in Framingham after an anonymous 911 call came in Wednesday night. Officers responded to the house on Fenwick Street. They found a guy inside dead with visible trauma to his body. So now big investigation underway, obviously. But the 911 call itself sends a chill down my spine. Um, We can hear from one neighbor, Steve Constant on BZ. Having something like this happen is kind of scary. My wife and I have been here for close to 35 years, and it's a great, great neighborhood, uh, peaceful, quiet, and this is all new to us. Mm. So they have some neighbors that are saying peaceful, quiet. Then there are other neighbors who have come out saying that house in particular had people coming and going at all hours of the day and night. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Well, clearly the person who called 911, can't they trace the call? Or like, it came it, from inside the house. Oh, it came from inside the house? Yes. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. terrifying. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, how many days until the Karen Reed trial? Uh, it starts the 16th, right? Is it going to be live? Or the on- 17th. Uh, Brian I- Koberger and Karen Reed are back to back I think days. it starts Tuesday. Okay. Uh, like, is it going to be live on television? I'm going to be so annoyed if it's not. It better be. I, I, I don't understand. Like, if you're Fox 25, how do you not have that on television every single day? Right. I can't believe the trial's happening. Like, me It's either. wild to me. It is going to be like, a mass hole special. I, I just, like, all this stuff mm-hmm. and all these, like, the you're basically going forward with a trial on a woman who the FBI says... Uh, the, the her vehicle didn't do the the damage that they say it did when Correct. it when it comes to the death of John O'Keefe. Yep. I wonder if they're going to be able to use that in court. Well, like they're going back defense. and forth fighting. There's her motion after team. motion after motion where they're fighting about all that mm. stuff. Like the the DA's office is trying to stop them from using a third party defense. Mm. Like basically, they're trying to they filed a motion with the judge to say you can't bring up that that another person might have done it. Like what well, I mean. Is this a, like a, do we, do we live in America or <laughs> yeah. like Greg? Uh, are you just catching up on the justice system? I, I, I guess. So. I also yeah. can't imagine a jury finds her guilty. No, <laughs> like no, I, no, I don't you think You would so. think. I, I know. I know. You would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boston police are investigating a brazen theft that happened at Miss Ma Boutique on Newberry Street. Curtis, I know that you'll be on Newberry Street a lot for James's schooling. Uh, yeah, Doesn't nearby. seem very safe. Uh-huh. Uh, it happened around noon yesterday with thieves taking over more than $1,600 worth of clothing. If you're watching on Twitch right now, Twitch Mitch in on a Friday. This he is just like is in, the middle of, in the middle of the day? Yep, middle of the uh, day. Was nobody in there? It seemed pretty empty. <laughs> oh. I mean, the yeah. owner was. Okay. Uh, we can hear from the owner, Cheng Ma, on WCVB. This one lady was distracting her and asked her all the questions. And there's two guys in the different uh, corner, and they start putting everything in the bag. It happens almost every day with the shoplifting. But this is even worse because it's like a big amount of stuff. Every day? Wow. <laughs> they, they weren't even moving fast. One guy had a limp. Yeah. They, I mean, they because the, nothing's going to happen to them. Oh. Right. <laughs> so yeah. why why rush? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a limp. Like, yeah. we got time? Okay. It's crazy. Police say that a TikTok trend is behind the break-ins at the Lynn MBTA garage. Uh, several people have reported their cars, like over 36 in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. have been broken into or vandalized at the parking garage on Broad Street in Lynn. The reason for the connection to TikTok is the cars that are being hit are Kias and Hyundais. And right now, there is a TikTok trend of how to break into Kias and Ah, Hyundais. How to commit Grand Theft Auto, y'all. Yep. It's It's the Grand Theft Auto Challenge. Aren't they super Uh, easy, too, to, like, steal those cars? That's what they're saying, yes. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So, not good. I mean, still think that Americans have a right to TikTok? Well, yes. I mean, Uh, mean, mean, that's not... TikTok's fault, right. Greg. That's the thief putting a video right. on the internet yeah. uh-huh. saying this is how you break into a car. It could be okay. the same with YouTube. They've right. been doing that for I'm you charm, know. I agree with you. Not long they've been I doing that charm. Forever. Forever. I once saw a kid steal a car I, in less than five seconds. I don't want you to feel like you're gonna lose your precious TikTok cook. Oh, cooking, I'm not I'm not videos. Say. Like, don't worry no. about it. It right they make now, too much money. 
Um, have you got the new cheat codes for for Grand Theft Auto yet? Uh, I know. I don't think they're. Oh, I love yet. the cheat codes. <laughs> right you now, do? up, up, down, yeah. left, left. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to like. I mean, once you beat the way I feel about it when mm -hmm. it comes to Grand Theft Auto, mm -hmm. is if if you're able to beat the game, uh huh, legit, right? Then go get the cheat codes and do all the extra stuff. But how many do. people play the actual full on from beginning to end? I did. Uh, I did on Vice City. It play, I I real. I was relentless for going and trying to go to make it all the way. Okay. All right. I feel like people just like the cheat codes and like to cross havoc. Yeah, no, oh. not, not me. Huh? Right now, my TikTok is filled with people doing their masters merch haul. Uh -huh. Very entertaining to watch. Really? Well, well, what do you? What, what is? Oh, what they? What they what are they, buying? What down they're there? buying? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's a T-shirt that's very Taylor Swift era's tour themed, yeah. and it has the pimento cheese. I bet a lot of tiger It has gear. the egg salad. Yeah. yeah, very, very cool merch. Uh, a woman in North Carolina threatened to throw a shoe at the mayor of Raleigh mm. because the mayor was looking at her phone during a city council meeting. That is pretty rude. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, you can see it all go down, but we can hear a little bit of, uh, of what happened <laughs> from WRAL. <laughs> Marianne Baldwin, if I can keep from throwing the shoe at you, you can keep from off your phone while listening to your constituents talk. Mm, yeah, that is okay. rude, though. That is rude. I mean, yeah. Austin Powers said, yeah. who throws a shoe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that uh, 41, George Bush was uh, doing a press conference oh. in Iraq. 43. Yeah, I remember 43. that. 43 was doing a press conference in Iraq, and right. he was hit by a shoe. Yeah. Oh. I bet Milbury really appreciated that. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, you want to take a break? Okay. All right, we will get to the rest of today's news with Courtney coming up next. Tonight, Sox and Angels. The Mass Mutual pregame show with Rich Keith starts at 6.
This morning, according to our weather smoke and all day, I guess, lightning, thunder, rain, wind. All of it, Curtis, but it's gone by tomorrow? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm done for the day. Sean just showed me how to get Tiger on the computer, so I am <laughs> knee-deep. Uh, oh. Sorry, it's going to be rainy till about 11 a.m. Tiger, Tiger, just... Tiger Woods has teed off at Augusta mm -hmm. yep. and will complete his first round and then get back out there. That is, we talked a lot about that yesterday with the rain. And whether or not his body can take it. So he's going to play, what does he have to play today? 23 today, Shime? Uh, yeah, because he has to finish the five from yesterday and then play the full 18 today. Ooh, okay. Man. All right. Well, it's a um, long day. Ain't it? I know. Currently on Jesus. the green at uh, at 15. Okay. Or 14, sorry. Um, we need to get back to the rest of the news with Courtney. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. An irrational fear realized the Moorestown Library in New Jersey. They're in hot water and had to apologize after they said they distributed solar eclipse glasses that may have been counterfeit. <laughs> uh, right. They were able uh. to make a Facebook post right before the solar mm. eclipse. Uh -huh. I don't know how many people saw that right. before they used the glasses to go out and looked directly at the sun. Yeah, real problem. Um, but are yeah. They, so are there people in, Mo you said Morristown? Morristown. Are there people with burned retinas all over the place? There probably or, are. Yeah, there uh -oh. probably are. Oh, boy. Somebody's going to sue. That's going to be, Somebody's yeah, trying to get it back now. That's a real issue. They said they, they bought them from Walmart and that <laughs> It's a Walmart issue, not okay. their issue. I mean, all the glasses yeah. need to do is just dim the light. It's not yeah. like there's any special force in between the yeah. the shades. Have you encountered anybody this week who burned their retinas uh, during the eclipse on Monday? I have, I have yet to, but there might no. probably somebody out there. Uh, yeah, I think there. there are some people that I know that were scared that they damaged it, but uh -huh. may not have. Okay, all right. <laughs> James well, is great. Thoughts and prayers. Yep. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers. Hold on to those glasses, too, because you can watch 3D movies. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say because there's another full totality solar eclipse um, coming nope. in two weeks. Oh, we're I'm not, not sure. bringing that up. We're not sure. <laughs> okay. I don't want no um, strays. Next story. <laughs> the best roadside attraction in the United States is being voted on right now to find the best in 2024. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Yeah. Okay. This is interesting. Yeah. What, what, how do you define a roadside attraction? You Something know, that's at the side of the road? Yes. You you know how uh, when we are what's the town that we go to for is it when we go to Keene with do they have the big um chair uh the big chair is in uh I think that's in Groton is that it's the furniture capital of the world where well, where's where's the big chair Westminster is it Gardner? Gardner. 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 It's a G-Town. Gardner. All right. Yeah, big chair. Okay, yeah, so, so that's that kind the of type. Thing. Yeah. All right, so that's what so it is. So there's okay. a bunch that you can vote on right now. USA uh -huh. Today is doing the voting. Okay. But here are some of the, the really good ones. All okay. right. We've got Lucy the Elephant in Margate City, New Jersey. All right. That's Ooh. Lucy, if you're watching right. on Twitch. Okay. okay. Now, does the elephant do anything? No. Nope. Like, uh, does... Uh, like, at a certain time during the day, does smoke come out of the elephant's butt or anything like that? I don't believe so. Okay. Can All you right. walk through the elephant? You probably can walk below it. Yes. Okay. Uh, be careful of the tusks. Uh -huh. right. uh, the Dalmatian fire hydrant in Beaumont, Texas. Is that a giant fire? Oh, look at that. Right. I like that one. Right. Wow. Yep. Look at that baby. That's as tall as a building. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can see all these on Twitch if you're watching the show on Twitch right now. Okay, so far I like the elephant. Yep, okay. Rose Hill, North Carolina has the world's largest frying pan weighing at two tons and has a 15-foot diameter. Mm. It honors the area's poultry industry. Yeah, they got that. actually got that out of Shime's kitchen. 
Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Doesn't, he doesn't fry. He doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> I don't fry, need it anymore. He doesn't fry anything anymore. Nope. I don't see the frying. Yeah, pan, they didn't though. put the frying pan. Like, up. What, what is where the pitch? The photo that we're showing on Twitch is two people staring at something with binoculars. I think that looks like a pamphlet from James's new school. Is, is, right. is it Twitch? <laughs> Who's on Twitch today? Twitch, Twitch Mitch. Mitch. Um, uh, I will find one and send it to Twitch okay, Mitch. Okay. All right, I, want, um, I want to see the. I must see the giant yeah, frying pan. Yeah. The okay. Prada Marfa. I've seen this. Uh, it's in Valentine, Texas. What? It looks like the Prada store, uh -huh. and it's in the middle of nowhere. Okay. But it's actually just an art installation. So there's no Prada oh, bags Curtis would inside. Like that. That's uh, that's. Is that modern art? Modern I art. I love Curtis. modern art. Um, people love to go and take Instagram photos in front of there. Very right. popular. Define define people like <laughs> in, more than one. Influencers. Really? Yeah, and, like you. Oh, influencers go yeah. there? Yep. Okay. And probably the best one. Giant, the, the, the giant rubber band ball? Nope. Oh. Biggest ball of yarn? Nope. Mm. That is on the list, the ball of yarn. The Paul A. Johnson Pencil Sharpener Museum in Logan, Idaho. Oh. Logan, Ohio, sorry. Oh, okay, that's it right there. <laughs> yep, there it is. I see. And obviously, Wait. obviously, Paul was a big collector mm. of pencil sharpeners. Mm -hmm. Shime? Ask a boomer. You used to have to have a, like a pencil sharpener uh, at your home. Uh, you would affix it to uh, a wall, and you had to, to a turn. wall or something. You had to. You, well, you could do those. the crank, or you could do the uh, the, the automatic, like the grind, like the battery operated, the electric one, and just sharpen your pencil so you could write somebody a letter. Yeah, we used to have those in uh, in in school, like in elementary school. We even had the yeah. little handheld ones. You just got to. Yeah, to have the number two pencil if you were taking uh, the SATs. Yes, or, any kind uh, of uh, Scantron exam. For me, it was. Uh, Hold on. I'm having a senior moment. Oh, no. There used to be these things that we would read the in school. No. You, you, none of you did it. Maybe Wiggy. The color-coded uh, stories that you would read, and then you'd have to take a little test on the story. Do you know what I'm talking no, about? I have no like idea. Like a reading comprehension test? <laughs> yeah, but it was a specific card thing. Like, there's got to be somebody who is ancient like myself. Yeah, I have no idea who knows about. what I'm talking about. The Either SRA? The like SRA. Nailed it. Was that on the Twitch line? Or yeah, that would be uh, the tw in the Twitch Puffy Faced Gresh. Yeah. Get to it quick. P puffy Faced Gresh. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. SRA. The SRAs. You, none of you had to take the SRAs. No, no we no. had the ERBs when I oh, was a kid. They were so fun. Like in the third grade or whatever, you'd, it would be SRA time. You'd go grab a color. You move through the colors. And when you finally got to the gold, you were done. School no. was over. No. The year had ended. And uh, Twitch Mitch, good job. That's the that's the frying pan. Okay, that's, that's a giant the frying pan. That's giant the loser. frying pan. Yeah, wow. that one though. That don't even look like a frying you pan. You can actually fry things on it. Yeah. They do that in Ohio or where they is actually it? cook things on Texas. It? Yeah. I would uh I would enjoy some eggs, but I'm concerned right. about the bird flu. <laughs> uh the pandemic that's Where's coming. Where's the Paul Bunyan statue? <laughs> that's on the that's list not a as well. Shot. I mean, I, you oh, I, thought, I thought I thought you were making a joke yeah. about birds. I mean the CDC is ramping it up when it comes to the aviary flu or whatever they yep. call it. Better What's vote this? better vote remote. <laughs> This baby is going to hit probably right around October, Curtis. I mean, it's the shocking. bird flu pandemic. It, it, it'll be an October surprise. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. So you just better. Ken uh, is already sealing his house. Better get you send your vote in. Right. I mean, just send your if text you could. it. Probably won't be able to go to a polling place or no. anything around election time. Nope. If this thing hits the way they're saying it might hit, I, I wouldn't even leave your house. Yeah. Just text everything. They can't, just... eat, you can't eat any beef. Can't eat any eggs. Nope. Because it's uh, the bird flu is everywhere. Yeah. So just be careful, Wiggy. Yeah, they miss so many statues here yeah. that I'm looking at the roadside. I uh, saw the John Henry statue. <laughs> John was Henry? Pretty, yeah. John Henry. The one in West Virginia. Oh, not John Henry Red Sox. No, John no, no, Henry. no, no. You no, mean no. John Henry the, uh, the, 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 the railroad the railroad guy? Yes. Saw that statue. Uh, dude, cool. didn't he dig like a tunnel himself? And uh, they have, like, didn't he race machinery? Uh, he did something. Huh? He, he did something. Yeah, you have no idea. No, no, I saw uh, the you statue. You spent a lot of time living in Virginia, in West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, no, but I didn't really. I, the statue yeah. was cool. I just know he did like did the the uh, railroad tracks or something like yeah, that. John coal Henry, mine. he 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 like basically dug an entire railroad tunnel himself, mm -hmm. and they had an excavator do it. This is a, the the dawn of the uh, the four stroke engine age, the mm -hmm. industrial uh, age. The, uh, yes, mm -hmm. and the guy the guy beat the uh, machine. Oh, then he died. Oh. I mean, I th I'm sure that story is totally true. Oh. All right, what else? Was on the oh, we have the dumbest of the day. Oh, okay. Stop being dumb. And now, this woman is stone cold dumb. I'm a dumbass.
The dumbest of the day. Try again, dumbass. Okay, time now for the dumbest of the day. We listened to everything that happened yesterday, Curtis, and we have determined this may have been the dumbest. We head to Planet Fitness, <laughs> where things are That's happening. That's something I've never said. <laughs> but go ahead. A Planet Fitness member in North Carolina allegedly entered a ladies' locker room at the gym, stripped Walter White completely naked. Oh, really? Wow. The guy wants equality. So he went in, just walked into the dressing room nude. Correct. Huh. Claiming he identified it as a woman, uh -oh. according to police and 911 callers. This um. gentleman, Christopher Miller, 38, was arrested on a charge of indecent exposure and yeah. booked into the Gaston County Jail while he uh, waited further uh, whatever charges. Are so. they revoking his membership? I, I think they I, probably should. Yes, yeah. lifetime and, and, ban. And I probably, in this case, shouldn't uh, use the term membership. Uh, but, but, um, <laughs> come on, Shine, give me a little credit. It's a Friday. I mean, it's yeah, Friday. I, I, I'm hey, sorry. I gave you the room uh, shot, okay, didn't right, I? Fine, yeah. Yeah, right, I, well, I can't let's... imagine being in that locker room, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get your uh, elliptical in, and that guy walks in <laughs> buck-ass naked. Oh, yep. Is that code, getting your elliptical in? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, in the right. seaport. I mean, uh, obviously, the guy, you know, uh, thank God they caught him. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's ridiculous, yes. Terrible Awful. news just broke, too. The Golden Bachelor stars Jerry Turner and Teresa have Bro announced their divorce. Yeah, they broke up. Really? Saw that. It wasn't true love? I no. am. I what am a fraud. Yeah. That, thing oh, was a, that thing was a fraud from start to finish. He was shady from Jump Street. Wasn't the dude married anyway? Like, like, no, he, he had a girlfriend. Yeah, he, yeah. His wife died. Yeah. Um, and I mean, is, is there any of those things that you and your ilk love that are actually real? Yes. Huh? That yes. work out? Yeah. What, which one? Uh, Love Island actually has a very good success rate. Oh, do they? Yeah, if yeah. you if you meet on and Love Is Blind actually has a oh. very good success rate. Um, but this is, I mean, they just had their televised ceremony for their yeah. wedding. Not oh my god, ago. it might it might not have been real. We knew he was shysty. <laughs> Before their televised happened. wedding after their televised dating. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there are a lot wrap. of bachelor couples that are still together. I don't bachelor think so. Bachelor in Paradise, yeah. I don't think. I don't. How think many of these many. shows do you watch? From the original seasons, there she are watches, a lot more. She watches. She's uh. She watches all of the love mm -hmm. shows, and she is obsessed by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. What time do you want to have the housewife guy on? So are you going to text him and say? Yeah, I will. I don't care. I mean, yeah. I would love to have him on whenever. You're at, you yeah. have to ask all the questions because I have no idea. I That's fine. New Jersey comes back May 5th. Oh, do they come back yeah. May 5th? I want to ask him about the Patriots draft. Mm. Can we do that? He's a big sports fan. <laughs> yeah. What's his name again? Joe, Joe Borga. He's Teresa's brother. Yes. From the infamous when she flipped the table over. Good job, Wiggy. Yeah, I used to watch the Jersey oh, Housewives. Knows. Yeah. But I haven't watched them in a while. I But I used to watch them when, mm -hmm. I believe it was uh, Carla was on there. The uh, Manz Manzello family. Uh, no, the that's one, Carol. Carol, the yeah. one who's suing because she felt like she was sexually assaulted by the other yes, woman. on. yeah. So I used to watch it back then. And who was the other? Uh, Jackie was her sister-in-law. No, who was the one that? Danielle Staub. Yes, Danielle. She's nuts. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why Teresa flipped the table. Yeah, is she back? Did no. she come back? She for did a for a time. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if the guy wants to come on. Oh, uh, big, I would be big, so excited. Big, huge get by me. That's a huge get. If I get that guy on, Curtis. This is uh, bigger than body moving. He's the house husband of New Jersey. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I call him. Yeah, he is a star on that show. Really? Yes. I right. would put New Jersey in the Philly category. What good comes from New Jersey? Oh, oh. Uh, the real uh, Bruce Springsteen. Uh, yeah, he sucks. Uh, oh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> that's Greg's boy. <laughs> Isn't Bon Jovi? Yeah, Bon Jovi's from, from uh, Jersey, Jersey, right? Yeah. I believe it. Red Man's from Jersey. I think there's a lot of Jersey. And McCourty's from Jersey? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. All right. Yes, they are. There you go, Curtis. All right. All right, Courtney, thank you for the news. Hey, you're so welcome. Right. right now, speaking of Courtney, what is trending this hour? Gresh and Fortier, weekdays 10 to 2. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now brought to you by Team Malone. The big news yesterday, OJ Simpson died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. The Sox blew a lead in the eighth, and it took 10 innings, but they fell to the Orioles for the third straight, getting swept by Baltimore in their three-game series. 9-4 to four was the final yesterday. Garrett Whitlock got the start. He went five innings. He gave up one run on four hits while striking out four. Alex Cora spoke about the problems defensively after the loss from the Nissan Red Sox postgame show. We got to turn the page with Trevor. You know, he's not going to be here. You know, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. And we have to step up, you know, uh, whoever he's playing, they're capable. They showed it in, uh, in camp, right? We played some clean baseball. 
and now obviously you know the lights on the third deck come into play and uh, every game matters uh, every inning matters you know and uh, we, we just have to slow the game down and make plays you know so Alex Wiggy says that's your fault the errors guys who can't guys in the major leagues who can't play defense that's your fault, Alex. It's a Gordon. part of it is on the manager. Don't you, don't you work with these guys? I think it's all on the roster. Okay. I think it's all on the owner. So when they are successful, then like I think Curtis, I think Brown, some of it's on Hein Bloom, who right. uh, you know gave Trevor Story 140 right. million dollars, and he's been unavailable for two seasons in a row. So you know when they think? are successful, don't say that the manager's doing a good job. It's a good point. I I would just say this. What's the point of having Corey here with this nucleus if he's gone at the end of the year? Right. If they're not contending, if they're not really going for it, mm -hmm. what purpose does it serve to have Cora remain in this position for the for the remainder of the season? Because uh, you need a manager and he's on his last year of his deal. It's cheaper to keep him than maybe get somebody new right now. But, like, you understand what I'm saying? They're trying to build something mm -hmm. from what everybody, from Merloni on down, he's not going to be here next year. Well, maybe the other part is to have uh, um, to have him and uh, Craig Breslow to kind of just see what type of relationship they might have to see if they potentially want to bring him back next year or if he wants to come back and work with uh, Breslow. So maybe that's part of it. But, you know, it's cheaper to keep him and it allows you to see is this the guy that you want to have moving forward. You deserve a card that thrills you, and Nissan's got an exciting full line that'll put goosebumps on your goosebumps. Experience the thrill for yourself. Shop your local Nissan store, NissanUSA.com today. Now the series with the Angels kicks off tonight at Fenway at 710. You can hang out with Rich Keefe at 610 for the Mass Mutual pregame show, and then Joe Stiglione and Will Fleming have the call on the Shaws and Star Market WEEI Red Sox Radio Network right here on EEI and, as always, on the Odyssey app. The Celtics fell to the Knicks last night, 118-109. to and the first round of the Masters has resumed this morning. Tiger started on the 14th hole. He will then have to tee off again at 10:18 for the second round. Bryson DeChambeau, the solo leader at seven under with Scotty Scheffler right behind him. Who has DeChambeau in the work pool? Uh, that would be one Billy Lanny. Ooh. Oh, Billy. Is he a Jersey guy? I would like to withdraw uh, my, my statement DeChambeau? on New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, an old blue eyes from Jersey? And my queen, <laughs> Queen Latifah. And Frank Sinatra is from there. There's a lot of Jersey people. Hey, yeah. I'm sorry. Huh? I, didn't... I feel like you're like sometimes 10 to 12 minutes behind <laughs> the show. That's no, I asked right. DeChambeau for yeah, a Yeah, we were on that a while ago. Yeah. Why, why did you, why, what made Because I was wondering if he was from Jersey. Just randomly? like no, because right? Curtis brought, brought up uh, about people oh, I didn't from like it, from but Jersey. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Your guy's from Jersey. Who? Bruce. That was mentioned on the show just oh, moments ago. That. Thank you yeah. for listening. <laughs> I heard that. I was just wondering. Yeah. Did you guys hear Curtis hates New Jersey? <laughs> yeah, so I was wondering. By the way, Bryson is from California. Uh, okay, I wasn't yeah. sure. Who. There's never been a Bryson born in New Jersey. <laughs> Also, is there some kind of a free uh, sub deal going on somewhere <laughs> if you change your name? I don't want to say it, but you may have redone my lead. Okay. Right. Uh, and quickly, congratulations to BC. Uh, Frozen 4 was last night. BC and Denver are headed to the championship. I keep choking during this one part of the uh, It's emotional. The, I think it's probably the the uh, the consumption of alcohol. No, it's not. It I wasn't. Mean, this many, is it. What did you drink last night? Red wine. Red wine. It looks there fantastic, by Thank the way. Thank you. Were you there yeah. for a long time? I was there for a bit, but right. I really, I, I probably had two glasses. That's it. Yeah, the entire right. night. So we don't get hung over Courtney today. No, I feel I'll have pretty to save good. that for one of the road shows. Yeah. I think it's normally, is it Rhode Island normally? Well, Mike Mulberry. Yeah, Mike, Mike Mulberry gets Anyone that the he goes to. On the martinis. Martini yeah. Mike. And I would uh, say probably Tuesday of next week because after Marathon oh, Monday. Marathon Monday. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one for yeah. you. Uh, they can't wait for you to get over there. They're very excited about the show on Monday at the Capitol Grill. Really? Oh, there you yes. go. Good. Yes, right they're, 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 they're peeing their pants in excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a little master's party. Every year I get to go to the greatest master's party ever. The I want to thank the incredible Morgan Stanley people. They throw a big shindig over there for the master's. Wow. Nice. Wow. Went there yesterday. It was an unbelievable event. Wow. Yeah. Did you get, a, get any financial advice? Uh, <laughs> I, there was some financial advice offered. I, I, don't, I would probably take it. It's a good it. place I, to go. Yeah. yeah. I got my guy... Uh, my guy Todd Wetz invites me every year. Really yeah. appreciate that. It's a great event. To more inflation. That's an <laughs> uh, excellent event. I, quick question for you. Sure. Uh, developing hot take. Uh huh. When you go to an event mm -hmm. where they are where they are featuring 
past hors d'oeuvres. Okay. You might not think this is uh, the case, mm -hmm. but do you eat more than you actually would at a full meal? No. I would say yes. What? No way. Yeah, no? yeah, you do because right. The, if you They're are coming around with them all the time, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, every time the server comes up, yeah. Personally, I have to act like I haven't had that appetizer <laughs> yet, so that I can get like three or four of them. I think this might be a you problem. Yeah, you think it's just me? Yeah. No, you're eating every ten seconds at right? the horse the right? I think Whereas if eat... it's a regular dinner, the food's not as big, <laughs> and you gotta wait. The food forever. is way bigger. No, at a nice. He's talking about a nice dinner. It's not as big. You know, they come out with those small plates and not big. Yeah. Where when right. you're at these events, every it's ten just seconds, every five seconds, seconds no, there's something new. Something new. And you start smashing the homie before right. you go, oh, let me get pigs in a blanket. Yeah. Let me get the chicken skewers. I, I pro, <laughs> pro tip, I position myself right next to the kitchen door. I position myself uh, right. That way you catch it before it gets uh, it's given to everybody else. Right. Uh, and you're sure it's cold. Yeah. Ernie yeah. Bach has a good one when he has his horse yeah. beer flying around there. You position yourself right in that back corner by his little sushi bar thing and you're able to get everything as it comes through they had some good dumplings at the last one we went to <laughs> all right well do you or a loved one remember receiving free samples of cigarettes when you were a child and have you been diagnosed with lung bladder or throat cancer within the last three years you may be eligible to file a free lawsuit call the lawyers at team alone at 1-888 smoke 18 that's 1-888 smoke 18 that's what's trending here's curtis with your weather and courtney i owe you an apology trista and ryan are still together. Correct. The first Bachelor and Bachelorette yep. from 2000. So maybe I'm not entirely right. However, it's drizzling outside. 58 degrees. The afternoon high will be a windy 61. Like Greg Hill in a Groupon. Fourier in a Dunsky. Jones in Optimism. Some things are just better together.
don't like the effort level. Uh, I mean, I didn't say anything at halftime. Again, like one half isn't a reflection of what we've done over the course of the entire season. So uh, I know the character of our guys. I know who our guys are, and I'm, I'm not concerned about it by any means. But it doesn't mean you have to like it, you know. I think we're flying down in Last night, like Wiggy, he finds himself with zero concern about the lack of effort yeah. from his basketball team last night. And I would say uh, when they were blown out uh, the previous uh, evening as well, or two evenings before. So I, uh, you have no concern? No, I'm not, they, I'm not worried about it. This happens. Uh, they, I mean, didn't happen with the Bruins last season. Bruins played right up and, mm -hmm. and were in it. Uh, all the way through the regular season, mm -hmm. then had their collapse in right. the first round. So uh, they are I'm, aware of it. That's all. That's the Celtics are aware of it. Yes, I, it, this is a weird thing to me, though. Mm -hmm. You're saying they're aware mm -hmm. that I, earlier this morning we were listening to Kristaps Porzingis mm -hmm. say we are aware that we're not uh, intense enough. We're not putting enough effort in. We're right. not at playoff. Let so. They're aware of it. Why right. aren't they? Why aren't they doing it? Is because that, they know. It says to me that they don't think this matters. It, it's like this. Well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. It's well, like, but if it you does. Gotta, if you're getting Curtis, if you want to go into the, we can like we we talked a little bit about this before. Don't you want a team going into the playoffs that is winning basketball games? Nah. I mean, nah. if they have the number one seed locked up, the whole reason you play the regular season this in this dominant of a way is to get to be able to sort of relax while other teams are having to exert full energy. Okay. I, I told All you right. that I, I am also a therapist, right? So it's like if a kid in his class, the teacher goes, hey, you got an A for the semester. You got a, the final exam is doesn't really mean anything to you. Human nature is, you know what? If it doesn't mean anything to me, I already know I'm walking away with the A. Why am I really going overboard to study for it and do all this other stuff. The, the Celtics are basically like Final Jeopardy when you know you're going to win, and instead of answering, you just write, hi, mom. Yeah. Okay, yeah, as but... long as that they are co fully confident that they're just going to roll their way through the playoffs and win those games. Well, no. Is... But go what I... the Bruins did last year and play Martian in a meaningless game and think of all the crap the Bruins Bergeron. got. Bergeron. Is... Jesus, I'm wrong today. Mm -hmm. Bergeron mm -hmm. in the final game of the regular season. The Montgomery and the Bruins got crap for right. making that decision so if the Celtics are playing all their starters and Tatum is playing in the fourth quarter of a meaningless game and he injures his ankle doesn't Missoula get ripped oh of course hold, hold on I have something for Curtis it's Bergeron it's Patrice that's a great drop I don't know how that didn't win <laughs> yeah of course we would I know. be was killing that him. even in it did that Courtney dropped, even put that in that dropped as well in the regular season not so well in the playoffs <laughs> <laughs> was that, I don't know was that in the it was not in Ugh. when I sent the full bracket to you guys uh -oh. you could have given it to me to put in could have said, hey, I don't Courtney, really like... I think like... you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Shai. You guys could have said, hey, I don't really like this drop. You should put in Patrice. Yeah, I mean, I was cool with the drop she <laughs> put in. We're going to have to redo the whole, dra the whole drop thing next year because we have some new additional drops yes, that have oh, got to be in there. Oh, totality guy. You want, totality, the airplane. You want he, totality. He has to be in there. Yeah, you love totality airplane guy. <laughs> that is a that is a preseason favorite. Best day, best day of that man's life. Oh, man. Totality! <laughs> when is the next 10 o'clock 12 o'clock 2 o'clock <laughs> oh my god total <laughs> that was classic courtney when's Full the next shadow completely elongated oh my god look at that <laughs> yes curtis when's the next one uh it'll be uh, next march okay oh that's that has to be a one seed uh... seven o'clock Prominences, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock. <laughs> this is David from Florida. Hello, David. Good morning. What's up? Happy Friday. Oh, to you and, and all of you as well. Oh, yes. What a beautiful day. Yes, sir. Now, 
if you remember last year, there was the incident in the Red Sox where, where uh, Verdugo, and because he was late for for the game, or yes. like two times in a row, and Cora yeah. tried to and Cora benched him. Yeah, but that I mean, it was too late in the season to install any discipline, and that's something I want to see him do differently this year. And I mean, with the, I mean, there's nothing new going on. The team is playing pathetic defense. I, I want to see him do something different to set differently this year to set a more authoritative culture to the team and to hold them accountable. And he I mean, just do, you think the, to do, that. do you think the issue when it comes to defense is a, a discipline uh, issue I mean, or just a, like a lack well, of skill issue? I it's, this is why I go back well, to I mean, like, I don't blame John Henry that Alex Cora doesn't have a roster in which he can, he's got somebody who can jump in and play shortstop. Like, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it's I Alex Cora's fault. Well, it, it, it is to the extent, you know, with Belichick, if you would fumble, he would, you'd be benched. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and he, I mean, you just can't keep players in the game if they're going to, if they're going to sabotage things. And, and by not doing anything, He's permitting it. He's just saying, "Don't worry about it. It'll happen." It, I mean, I mean, he's just he, he talks about it all the time, but yet he still puts him out there day after day. I mean, I would have I would have yanked who? Uh, what's his name? The third baseman last night. Uh, what the heck's his name? The guy who played for Devers last night, uh, Reyes, right? Yeah. I would have I would have humiliated him in the middle of the game and just. And just you want Bobby and, Knight and, and to just, manage the Red Sox? I mean, I want you to manage him, Curtis. But, I would not be able to. Well, Greg, stay awake. here's what I don't get. Right, you're you are not holding Cora accountable on any of the fielding issues, but you will hold and criticize Missoula and for them not playing defense. And hold them accountable. Well, that was no, that was a strategy that Joe Mazzula had, that uh, Marcus Smart and others had to call him out for, mm -hmm. as they were struggling a little bit in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like I, that's a different thing. No, like, I'm just it's... Alex Cora doesn't have a strategy, which is we're going to lay off on the uh, on the on the fielding. Uh, and focus on uh, hitting, hitting hitting dingers. Well, uh, like uh, we don't know that. <laughs> Why do you think baseball managers are the lowest paid of all the coaches in all the sports? Because, because they, have, they the have the least amount to do with what's going on. Right. Like short of yanking a pitcher or what you go right. go to the bullpen or whatever. And, like, and almost all of those decisions are already made by the analytics departments that are executed by the manager. And so I. Listen, I'm sure Cora could do things better. I don't understand the match right now, considering where the team is and his desire to win now. But it is awful to just to squander that great start. And it really began on that Tuesday. The Eclipse turned the season because they go 7-3 and three on the road. They, and they could have won all 10 games. They come back. Tuesday morning, story's done for the year. Pavetta's on the IL. Yeah. Everything's done. And outside of the brilliant job the team did and honoring the life of Tim Wakefield with his daughter and all that, which was awesome, everything has been awful. Maybe they're suffering from long eclipse. That could be it. <laughs> By the way, can I throw in a very quick past hors d'oeuvre hot take? Well, you can. Uh, there was a suggestion on the Subaru of New England text line that we affect an emergency top five best past appetizers. Mm. Ooh. So... Yes, in a minute on your take. Real quick, though, if Mitch can help me, I want to congratulate the first winners of the Die Hard contest. Yes. Who will attend a game at Fenway next week with me and Courtney. And so um, if you're watching the show on Twitch, you will see the winners who will be seated at the Sam Adams deck with Courtney and myself. Look at that dude. Huh? That's like his man town, I think. He's Pretty got the cool. Ortiz, the framed Ortiz jersey there, right? ready to go. And so um, Roosevelt Brooks, who is from Winchester. All right. Jeremy Marion, who's from New Hampshire. Amy Bergen, who's from Rhode Island. All right. 
and Tom Cochran, who is from New Hampshire, mm -hmm. are the diehards who will join Courtney and I for the game next week. Oh, that's cool. Next up, diehard wise, Wiggy and I All right. want to take you to a Sox game. Yes, sir. And we're going to do that on May 14th. I believe so. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So. We want you to sit in, in arguably the best seats of the house mm -hmm. at the Sam Adams deck, right field. You'll get a table. You get you get glizzies. You get beer. It's going to be awesome. So um, all you have to do is take a photo that pro or share a photo that proves you're a diehard and upload it on the WEEI contest page at WEEI.com. No and, kids. And, uh, no kids. All right. I might have to pull out my World Series ring. I see my man was rocking one in the pitch. I might have to break mine out. Yeah, that's kind of weird that you have it. Well, it was a contributor, Greg. Yeah, I don't I know if you know that. <laughs> I don't really. During the, during the run of winning the World Series in 2018. How did you yeah. contribute? Because uh, I talked about Red Sox on Messin. So I, I was a contributor. Well. Huh. I was a uh, a baseball expert at the time. Yeah. I had one mine sized and my dad's name put on it though for okay. my dad. Oh, so it was a surprise so for him. Oh, yeah. that's so nice of you. Yeah. Right. I'm working on yeah. a that Celtics and Bruins one. How would I you? feel like I should definitely get a Celtics one if they win. <laughs> for what reason? Because I've been a diehard Celtics fan <laughs> my whole life. I feel like I talked the team up. Wick still hasn't sent me my city jersey. Right. So I'm cool with that. I spent a lot of money on Celtics uh, gear, and if they win, Wick, let your boy on the duck boats, and let you at least give me a pendant. We can get you on. Clearly, mm -hmm. Wick will put you on a duck boat. Right. There's no issue there. Not, I don't know if I don't know if he'll give you a ring. I was on a duck boat on the 2018 World Series parade. That's impressive. With with a mud head. Okay. And it would be nice for Wick to give us all rings. I'll take a pendant. Uh, I'll throw on my chain. <laughs> Um, I would just like to go to a game. I just like a handshake. A thing for being You've here. never been to a game? <laughs> no, I've been to a game. I've never been courtside. Oh. Is it, I mean, it is a different uh, feel and it's courtside. I know. That's why I would like to do. I don't need a ring. I don't need a duck boat. I would just like to go watch courtside. You ain't got no juice to get courtside? Uh, no. Really? <laughs> nope, I don't. <laughs> this is Steve in the truck. Hello, Steve. Hey, good morning, everybody. What's up? Boogie, this is your buddy. What up, man? Uh, from Encore that day. The yep. day at Encore, you did Listen, I love you, buddy. You know that. <clears throat> but you cannot make a guy's core is not out of fault there. If a guy sucks, you can't hit. Jackie Bradley Jr. was 10 years. Great fielder, could never hit. Ted Williams couldn't make him hit. And by the same token, if a guy doesn't have the skill in him to be a good fielder, core is not going to change it. I'm sorry. It's, it's not on him. It's on the guy picking the players and not wanting to spend the money to get the good players here. I understand about budgets and all that, and I know L.A. spent all that money in their 10 and 5. <clears throat> but you've got to have quality players if you're going to do anything. And yeah. they don't have them. Well, yeah, how, do, how does a guy then, if that's the case, then how does a guy like Dustin Pedroia, who wasn't viewed as this great player, but then turns into a good player? Is Doesn't the manager have some kind of accountability in that, in sense of whether it's, you know, the hitting coach or the fielding coach, or if there's a guy's a pitcher, the pitching coach that works with him to get him to throw, you know, a better slider or a better curveball. We give go we give them the credit when the player does well and the player goes, you know what, that hitting coach really helped me with my game. But now when a Do you think Devers fielding has significantly improved? It's gotten, it's gotten somewhat better. Yeah, it's gotten somewhat better. Somewhat better. Right. Maybe. Right. But isn't it the isn't it the job of the position coach and the manager to say here's what we need to do with Devers to work on where he might struggle to help him become a better fielder? Yeah, I, I think you're right, Wings. I mean, Pedroia was a highly drafted guy. He was a second round pick, so he wasn't a total nobody. I, the well, other, I don't mean that, but you know what I'm yeah, saying. But the other thing is that the Red Sox for the first ten games said. Andrew Bailey's emphasis on the breaking ball has been the key to this team's brilliant start. The best start since the 2005 Marlins. Well, guess what got Pavetta hurt? The breaking ball. Pavetta had never had a shoulder injury. Giolito had never had a shoulder injury. Both get on the IL. So if you want to talk about coaching, there's one you can point to. I don't think you can blame Cora for the fielding. That's a, that's a, a baseball-wide issue, though, Curtis. 
Well, but this team, but the Red Sox comes versus to the way the way they're having these guys throw the baseball, but specifically with breaking balls, these guys that have been otherwise healthy with the Red Sox, the Red Sox are were throwing far more curveballs and breaking balls than the league average. This pitch, the sweeper, I don't really know what the hell it is. It's a version of the slider that Nick Pavetta was throwing that people blame for his shoulder injury. I don't know. I mean, I just think that the the Red Sox right now find themselves rudderless. We don't really know who's in charge of the team. Sam Kennedy is now the president of all Fenway Sports Group. Is Breslow just running the day-to-day, or is Cora there? Is Cora going to be here? Why would you have Cora have an input on the future of the team if he's not going to be here for that future? Yeah. And also, we like, uh, uh, on the text line, Pedroia was... I know, uh, but I'm not saying was a, he wasn't... Was a top prospect and a Right, but I'm not saying that. The, rookie of but the, the year. But the coaches and, made him a better player. Yeah. and and But you have to have the talent there to start with. Like that, that, that. All these guys are talented. You're not in the major leagues or playing any professional sport if you don't have talent. Like all these guys are talented. No one's knocking Pedroia. But all I'm saying is that the managers and the coaches. Chad Ryland's in the NFL. He didn't really have much talent. And and they work. Well, he had to have some talent to get there. And they work with these guys to help them out. And yeah. players talk about it all the time. I bet you if you asked Pedroia and said, hey, who worked with you? Who helped you? Who made you a better player? He'll probably bring, bring up maybe a hitting coach or a, a positional, a fielding coach. Yeah. All right. Well, um, upload a photo proving that you're a diehard because Sam Adams and Wiggy and I would like to take you to the game on May 14th. And we, Courtney and I, will see you there next week. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is WEEI.
for flash. When the rain hits my window, I take it. <sighs> me some, me and Timberland, ooh, we sang a dangle. We so tight that you get our styles tangled. Sway your dosy dough like you loco. Can we get thick at night like Coco? So so, you wanna play with my yo yo? I smoke my. Monday, our annual Boston Marathon show will be at the finish line on Boylston Street at the Capitol Grill, presented by Sitco. Weather Monday, unlike today, looks incredible. So I would imagine that we could have record attendance when it comes to the 128th running of the Boston Marathon, Curtis, in the 60s on Monday? Yes. and Excellent. Uh, it is on one Boston day. It is on the exact day of the marathon bombings, April 15th. And uh, out of all the tragedy, horror, and just the unimaginable pain caused for so many people, the marathon now is something that is remarkable. Yeah. And I love it. I lo I hate, obviously, I would much rather none of that ever happened and everybody was alive and not dealing with prosthetics and all the pain and co uh, trauma that caused. But yeah. what that created was it made the best day in Boston better. And the aspiring stories that start coming out, you know, this week through the weekend into Monday, like I saw today that uh, Patrick Clancy, whose wife, Lindsay Clancy, had that uh, postpartum psychosis, killed their children, tried to kill herself. He's running it this year in memory of his kids for, I believe, Boston Children's Hospital. Wow. Um, so, I mean, the stories like yeah, that are. That's amazing. Yeah. Some of the experts are suggesting that because of the weather. Wiggy might be able to put down 26.2 prosciutto mott spikes mm. at the uh, Capitol Grill. Well, it is a marathon, so I got to yes. pace myself. So, can I get to my hot past hors d'oeuvres take? Uh, you can, as long as Shime gives me an update on Tiger Woods. Uh, so, Tiger Woods uh, bogeyed his first hole of the day, so that was the 14th hole, but he has parred since, so he's currently sitting at even through 16 holes. They're teeing off on the 17th right now. What do you think? What do you think the cut is going to be at, Professor? Uh, it looks like the cut's going to be around plus one, so one over. Okay, all right, good. All right, all so right. we're going to do a Curtis on his order, uh, horse the avoirs, and then a top five horse the avoirs. We can do the emergency top five best past past apps was okay. the suggestion from the all right past apps. Texter, what ahead. does that mean b before we get into past? Right, apps? What it means that there's somebody at an event passing you an appetizer okay. on a tray. All right, yes, go ahead. Any past hors d'oeuvre. That requires a dip or dipping sauce is not for me. Mm. Mm. See, I, did, I strongly huh. disagree on that one. The more required in terms of napkins, messes, the, mm -hmm. the more cumbersome, the mm. less interested I am in it. If you're having a conversation, you should be able to grab the hors d'oeuvre, one bite, put away the napkin, so and you move would, on. Uh, you would be out on the chicken skewers. With the peanut sauce. Correct. Or because it requires cocktail. dipping in front of others and well, mess. or, or and a mess, yeah. After. And then holding the actual skewer after. Right. What do you oh. do with that? That sucks, too. Yeah, that's an issue with the napkin and the skewer thing that you hold afterwards. What do you do with it? I think the person should wait there and retrieve it, but then they're going to put that on the tray with the other fresh hors d'oeuvres. Right. No. Well, no. they're supposed to have there a little There should be bowl. a follow Huh? They're, they're, they're supposed to have a little bowl that you put it in after. Same nah. with, like, the, the tail of a shrimp. Right. I think there should be a follow bowl person. Mm. Follow who trash is, who person. Is, who is collecting. Right. Or yes. do what most people do. Scope out the area and know where the trash cans are. Uh -huh. And then you set yourself there. I mean, now you're, like... You're giving up. I'm not. I'm not want to go to a place if you don't have chicken skewers, just because there are a couple people who don't know what to do with the the uh, the stick. I'm with Curtis though. I mm -mm. like them to be poppable. Like last night, so there was a filet like mignon. Skittles. There was what filet, like like little bite sized filet yep. on a little crostini Ooh, with a little hollandaise good. sauce on top, yeah. and it was delicious. That was delicious. Yeah. yeah, and that's all self contained. Yes. There was another little dish that was tuna on top of a crostini, and it had caviar on top of the tuna. That was very, very good. Popable so, is the perfect word. Courtney. So you yeah, want that. one in your mouth and done. Yes. But see, I love the uh, Ernie Bach. He had the dumplings, and all you had to do <laughs> is take the dumplings. Those things are seared into your memory. <laughs> right. Uh <laughs> dumpling, one dip. To get the, you know, some of the that you know the special soy sauce. Yeah, special sauce they mm -hmm. have. One dip, eat it, and you're good. Get yeah. your napkin. 
but to what, hold Courtney, f- what, what Curtis is saying is, and Courtney was seconding, the sauce can then drip onto your, uh, in your case, your drip. Yeah. You would have drip on your drip. But anything with sauce can drip because Courtney said they had the whatever that was she has that has a little drip on it. Mm-hmm. She's probably not, unless she could put the whole thing in her mouth, she's probably taking two bites. No, it was poppable. Oh, you could do one bite? Yeah, one bite. Okay, see, I like this. Sometimes I want to save it a flavor. All right, go ahead, Chime. You, go ahead with the emergency top five. We have your attention, please. Emergency Top 5 is brought to you by Find Mass Money. Visit findmassmoney.com and see if there's money waiting for you. All right, Texter want uh, Number 5. Texter wanted Emergency Top 5 Best Past Apps. Mm-hmm. I would say Crab Stuffed Mushrooms, uh, from my perspective, wow. would be at the very top I've of the never had, I don't eat crab, but the stuffed mushrooms does sound pretty okay. good. Okay, what do you normally eat? Just breadcrumbs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just or, regular, yeah, yeah but you that's... Have the, you gotta have the crab in there, I Beef Wellington. Oh. Beef, beef Wellington. Uh, yeah. Amen. Uh, bacon wrap scallops. But don't you dip those in something? No. Like it? Oh, okay. No, I guess not. Uh, you could dip That's kind of like, I mean, it's like like a, a little bit overdone. Like everybody has the bacon wrap scallops. Mm-hmm. You like a little watercress in there? Sure. For a crunch? Yeah, okay. Uh, I feel little like little slide green. is the top of the list. The Sliders? No. Yeah, the no. Sl- too cumbersome. Too, too much? Maybe too. What, what do you mean? Too- too much, why? It takes up... Like, I shouldn't have to grab it with all five fingers. Correct. You know what I really like? So Correct. You just want a two-pick and go? Oh, if you're yeah. going to have sliders, sit down and eat, coach. No, but I want one little slider, and they have multiple... They have different types of... They have a hamburger slider, pork I, slider, listen, they chicken had, slider. Last night, what's the name of, of Schlau's new restaurant that uh, we were C-Mark. at? Seamark. Seamark. Yep. Michael Schlau, I think, uh, and I'm not just saying this because he's a friend of the show... Has created the best burger ever that was ever made mm-hmm. in the city of Boston, the Radius Burger. Okay, uh, Radius is that restaurant is no more, uh, but oftentimes he will bring the Radius Burger back. That was like a sort of Radius Burger slider last night. Mm. Ooh. Great, but it's really too big and cumbersome to be a past app. Yeah. Well, don't make them so big. Slider, take two bites and you should be done with a slider. These were no. these were two bites, but it was, you know, the, the thickness of it was hard. I, I didn't even handle well, make one them, because it make was too them much. Slash, um, smash sliders. Yeah. You can even, because a slider is the perfect or is the avoirs because it's two bites. It's good. Just like I like the dumpling. Your dumpling, you could do two bites or you could do one bite. You could dip. Do you double dip? No, 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 I never the, double dip. Oh, somebody says they saw you at Ernie's. No, I never double, double dip. dipping. Oh. On the, double dipping on the wonton. No, I never double dip. I, I have another past hors d'oeuvre that is self-contained and delicious. Yeah. Bruschetta on a, on a crostini. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, Very good. good. It, just about I, anything on a crostini is generally pretty good. I also, for my Greek friends... The Spani Copita, I think, is a perfect past hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, what that, that has, is uh, not my favorite. Oh, that has, really? That has spinach in it, yeah. right? Yeah, not no my way. thing. Too oh healthy. my gosh, yeah. love. And then you end up with that the spinach is in your teeth, and nobody right. tells you. I like no. the miniature beef empanadas. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's good. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack, hello, Jack. <laughs> Greg, first of all, you guys are killing it. You always do, and that's Thank why you. we listen. Thank you. Where are you putting the lollipop lamp shop? Oh. Right? Where are they on the list? Ooh, uh, they up there, the top, top three, three, baby. Yeah, they yeah. are. You love those. Oh, How those... many of those are you predicted to eat on Monday? See, the problem with Capitol Grill, there's so many different things. Like, I love the prosciutto wraps, right? But I love the lollipop lamb chops. You're going to have, like, 12 lamb lollipops. But I what they do it. is here's how they get you, because then they bring out this cut-up steak thing. That's the... And then they got the sliders. Uh-huh. So it's like... <laughs> Nick Pavetta cannot have a slider. <laughs> so I, I really have to treat this as a yeah. marathon and figure out how yes. I'm going to take advantage yes. of being yes, able to enjoy it. Because the breakfast yes, is do. very good, too. Right. Yeah. What do they call the cream that you put over your fruit uh, at the Capitol Grill? Uh, you creme, love- creme fraiche? Mm, is it creme fraiche? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's creme, creme fraiche. You put on caviar, right? I have no idea. I would love to see Wiggy and Courtney play Pictionary. <laughs> no, but Greg, there is this sweet dipping sauce for the fruit that you always take a video of. Uh-huh. And I'm blanking on the name know. of it. I don't know. Can we out. have somebody do a live on our Instagram account, a live hors d'oeuvre tracker for Wiggy? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, we'll do that. We'll have Jackson do it. Yeah. All right, we got to take a break. We'll All be right, right back. The dynasty is over. The end of an era that I don't think it will ever be
Um, and Curtis says, rain gone by tomorrow. Weekend will be good, and Marathon Monday will be extraordinary. Temperatures in the 60s. So we will talk to you Monday from the Capitol Grill at the finish line on Boylston Street. A uh, couple excellent, uh, excellent text messages about OJ, uh, which we spent a good deal of the show mm-hmm. talking about, obviously, earlier. One is... Uh, 978 text, wondering whether there was some sort of a deathbed uh, confession from O.J. Simpson. Do you think his family would end up saying it, though? Probably. Yeah, probably not. Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. And then I thought I saw something that people that went and visited him him had a sign like an MDA or something like that. I thought I saw that. Really? Yeah. I know that's out there. (laughs) What was it like the... Would he give him a copy of his book, uh, If I Did It, and then they had to sign an NDA because he told them what happened? I think it was more so about his condition, the condition he was yeah. in, because there was reports that he was like on his deathbed, and then he took to social media in a video saying, deathbed? No, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, oh, so if they went to visit him in the last month or whatever, right? they had to agree not to reveal it because the world is so, in OJ's mind, the world is so interested in how well he's doing. Correct. Because he yeah. was on, like, uh, Cameron and Mace, um, the two rappers have this it is what it is podcast and he kind of got back into that and they you know so he would he was on that and that's where he kind of broke the fact that or talked about how he had a little he was dealing with the cancer and everything so maybe if that's the reason why uh the other text question that was interesting is do you think that they will test his brain when it comes to cte one thousand percent only if the family allows it but the family has a lot to gain because if he's CTE, then that excuses a lot of, or not excuses, that explains. It some would of the, give them uh, an explanation for, right. right. But he, theoretically, for what he did. I think it would, first off, it would have to be up to him to allow it because he was still about his wits right before he kind of passed away. He didn't, you know, he was somebody that he was still, like, you could tell he was coherent. He was on social media. There's the video of him two months before he passed away. So is there anything that he said, I would like, my brain would be tested for CT or I would not like it. And if that's the case, then there's nothing anybody could do. But if he didn't have that, then it would be up to the family. And who knows how that relationship is? Like, who knows how his older kids are from his first okay, marriage you think versus his uh, kids from his marriage with uh, Nicole Brown. Uh, Simpson. Back to this. And I, I know we talked about it a lot during the seven o'clock hour, but do you think his kids think he didn't do it? Like, like, would you, uh, like, I mean, I, I don't understand how anybody can look at, and, and I understand you have some questions, I mm-hmm. guess, in your mind. Yeah. I don't understand how you can not understand that what, that, that he did it. Like, I, I mean, I, it's the, the, the evidence is there at his house. The, uh, the, the, the guy had the cuts on his hand, which he cl- tried to claim mm-hmm. because he broke a glass at a hotel. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, like... I, like what, Not I mean, to mention getting in a getaway car with your gun to your head. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, uh, of course he did it. And and you know what? They say don't speak ill of the dead except if you murder your wife and an innocent man. And I don't know about heaven or hell, but I pray there's a hell. For, and you know what? It's a better world. Did he have a OJ. relationship with the kids that he had with uh, Nicole Brown? Um, I think he, I, I think he had less of a relationship. Like there was a fight, if I remember correctly, uh-huh. with Nicole Brown Simpson's sister, where they wanted custody of the kids, and I think they ended up getting that. And at mm. the bare minimum, let's say somebody came in like a SEAL team operator that just somehow jumped in and jumped out and stabbed and murdered Nicole Brown and uh, Goldman. 
he beat his wife. That's a fact. Yep. Mm -hmm. So a wife beating S bag is dead. Why can't everybody celebrate that? I mean, why do you support someone who beat his wife? Is there anything worse you can do? No. No. Especially when you're that big and she's that small? All right. No, you, you make a good point, but there are tons of people who beat their wife who people support. What does that have to do? No, do we knowingly support people that beat their wife? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Josh Brolin beat uh, up his, his. I don't know if she was his wife. Was who's it? Josh Brolin? He's a, an actor. He's a major actor. Okay. I, that I, a I, lot I, of people support him. Um, so there are there have probably have been situations. I mean, Chris Brown, there are tons of people who support Chris Brown, and he had a situation with Rihanna. So things like that happen. I think when you look at this situation. Well, there are there are guys playing in the NFL. Yeah. Who, I mean, there are guys playing in all sports, right? So guy playing in the NFL would beat his kid. Right. Right. So I mean, you know, we, we talk about Milan Lucic, right? So I guess the biggest question is how and I don't know the relationship of the fit the kids and OJ, his previous kids uh, from the first marriage and the other ones on how they feel about him. But I bet it's probably his his previous kids from the first marriage. I bet they don't believe he did it, His the, the son and the daughter. And there are, you know, people that believe that the son did it. OJ's oldest son, Jason, right? There is a ton of people that are out there that say he did it. He didn't like... Uh, what, did he put on his dad's Bruno Molly shoes and wear them over no, there? No, no, no. Because there was a bloody footprint with the shoes that OJ right. was... OJ was wearing the shoes on television. But they, they went back and found the, the same exact shoe that left the bloody footprint. At right, the, but the, they, found the knit, they found the knitted black hat at the yeah, son's yes. house and with hairs in it, they... they dude, knew the dude had like a shovel, like a military shovel mm -hmm. in the back of his Bronco or right. whatever. I, I mean, like... <laughs> it's nuts to me, but but don't forget, Skip Bayless says mm -hmm. guy was the best running back ever. I had the luxury of seeing him play a lot, and I had the luxury of getting to know him a lot. Obviously, we all are painfully aware of what he was involved in off the field. It's too horrifying for me to even run back through the literally gory details of mm -hmm. what happened. I do want to honor him as a football player and as charismatic an athlete as I ever knew, including Magic Johnson. There was nothing like O.J. Simpson. You can make a case he was the greatest running back ever. You can make a case he was the greatest college running back ever because if you see the highlights of that run against UCLA out here, whoa, it's spectacular. Uh, it's disturbing that he feels the need to say that. It's disturbing that so many people are like basically taking the social media yeah. and like RIP OJ, you know, whatever they're saying. Like he's getting, I, I, I'm shocked how much like, um, I don't want to say is praise the right word. Accolades. No, Accolades. Uh, maybe love. I'm surprised how much love. Good word, Courtney. I'm surprised how much love he's getting on social media from people i'm are seeing a lot of like I, I have complicated feelings like that's what i'm seeing a lot of on social oh, media I'm seeing like, like we, r.i.p but you know this is a guy who was accused of doing heinous things and but the fact that he's getting so much r.i.p oj whatever and i'm surprised he's getting all that love because i think they're like you said the majority of people feel like he was involved in some way or the other yeah and the love that he's getting it's just wow this is John from Gardner. What's up, John? Good morning, good folks. How are uh, you? Very good, thank you. I sound like you are all doing well. Yes. 1970, Harvard Stadium. I, me and my buddies uh, went into, we got the T ride in, and we got in free at halftime, blah, blah, blah. After the game, we watched the two Buffalo Bills uh, buses load up and leave, and there was no OJ. Was that the, so I was, uh, the, was that the last time the T was on time? <laughs> hey, no rim shot? Know, it may no have rim been. shot on that shot? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So we hung around, you know, we're 15 year old kids. We're just hanging around before we get back on and go home. So uh, the crowd filters out. There's maybe a dozen, two, a couple of dozen of kids, young kids hanging out. And we see somebody come peeking out from the runway. Curtis, you may have heard this on the old show. I think I told it then. Anyway, it was OJ. Turns out he was staying in town overnight for a book signing, and there was a Patriot linebacker named Mike Catbaloo, who had a beautiful uh, light blue Thunderbird who came and picked him up. 
because uh, he was staying in town overnight. But he sat on a little wall with all of us kids, and you, you never would have reconciled him with the, the guy that was going to do what he did in the future. He was, he was the, uh, the juice. He was affable, friendly, joking around. Great. Yeah. Fast forward to when the verdict came down. I told you guys I was a drug counselor at the time. The, the prison I worked at was like in a U shape, and the, the cell blocks were on one side, and the programs building and stuff was on the other. When that verdict came down, there was this roar that I have never heard before or since in that place because everybody looked at him as the underdog, the, the convicts did anyway. And it wasn't, of course, until years later that everybody realized he couldn't have cared about other black oh, folks or I, I mean, people in the, distress. The, the rush by Skip Bayless and others to make sure to mention what a great football player he was is weird to me. Yeah. Well, here's the issue. OJ's brilliant. And he is a sociopath and a narcissist. Those people, their job is to get you to believe you like them, to get close to them. O OJ was someone who his whole life would do things like this, so people would think he was one thing when he was really another. But guys, we did just watch Dynasty, and Aaron Hernandez did terrible, terrible things. And there was a whole episode about how talented he was. And how, you know, he, he let the bat, the, the devil on his shoulder kind of get the best of him. So uh, it, while it is weird that Skip Bayless, you know, talked more about the positive sides of OJ than the negative, <laughs> we've seen that play out before. Mm -hmm. If somebody's a great athlete, some people are going to make note of that when they well, die. It, it, the, the conversa if we're having a conversation about whether or not he was a great football player and a great athlete, you can't take that away from him. No, it's fine, but that conversation doesn't need to be had. I, that, that why? Like what, the guy, the, the the man murdered two people in cold blood. Mm -hmm. but, but you can like, do it, Greg. Here's where the issue is with Skip Bayless. You can have that conversation. Don't bring up his personality. Just strictly, if you want to talk about his football career on the day he dies, yeah. not what I would do. But stick to football. Don't throw in your own personal anecdotes about. He was always a nice guy to me. Right. But that's Charis a, very charismatic. But, but like, Greg, so was Ted Bundy. Right, right, Greg. But remember, just like you feel like OJ did it, maybe Skip feels like he didn't do it. Yeah, maybe that's that, And yeah. so that's his maybe opinion. Is, Bin Laden was great at hide and go seek. Right. But his opinion is based <laughs> yeah. on how uh, he his, feels about the what happened with that whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we got to get to Courtney and to what is trending this hour. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now brought to you by Subaru of New England. I have so many windows open on this computer right now, whether it's the Masters live stream or Karen Reed is back in court today for the final pre-trial hearing. Mm. Uh, so there's a live stream of that on NBC10. The Sox blew a lead in the eighth and it took 10 innings, but they fell to the Orioles for the third straight, getting swept by Baltimore in their three-game series. 9-4 to four was the final yesterday. Garrett Whitlock got the start. He went five innings. He gave up one run on four hits while striking out four. Now the series with the Angels kicks off tonight at Fenway at 7:10. You can hang out with Rich Keefe at 6:10 for the Mass Mutual pregame show, and then Joe Casiglione and Will Fleming have the call on the Shaws and Star Market WEEI Red Sox Radio Network right here on EEI and as always on the Odyssey app. The Celtics fell to the Knicks last night, 118 to 109, and the first round of the Masters has resumed this morning. Tiger is even through 17. He'll tee off at 10:18 for his second round. Bryson DeChambeau, the solo leader at seven under, Scotty Scheffler and Max Homa, one behind him. And the Frozen Four, BC and Denver, are headed to the championship. BC took down Michigan for zip, while BU fell to Denver in overtime, two to one. And the Subaru of New England Love Spring Event is here. Drive away in a brand new 2024 Subaru. Find your authorized Subaru retailer at SubaruOfNewEngland.com. Great question. I think it was on the text line, Curtis. When I pass away, do you think they'll mention my weed bust in Clinton? They should. Yeah. I would. I'd, I hope they focus on the positive. Yeah. Puppy gate incident. <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be. What about okay. the the uh, tumble, the near tumble and decapitation uh, at Pier Four in the Seaport? Yeah. Will that be, will that that'll be brought, be brought up? up. Your inability huh? to break on time. Wait, I'll tell you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> When you die, I'm going to be doing one thing. Yeah. Running into studio. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Curtis, the weather, did you already do that? 59 yeah. degrees and rain, afternoon high 62. This Monday, April 15th, kick off your Patriots Day with us. Presented by Sitco. As the Greg Hill Show broadcasts live starting at 6 a.m. from the...
Let's say one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs, offense is great. Patriots, somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders look, could be, you never know. God forbid somebody goes down, would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're gonna let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know, I'm always gonna be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. That was Wiggy's lead this morning. Yep. Maybe mm. on National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day, maybe a grilled cheese on sourdough um, for you? Or I like uh, Italian scally bread. Okay. Yeah, Dude, I'm like, sourdough is awful. Sourdough is yeah. the best. Awful. I like sourdough, but I don't want a grilled cheese sandwich on sourdough. Italian Dude. scally bread, my grandmother used to make it that way. May I inquire about the cheese? Because one would think based on the sandwich's invention, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the go-to would be American, which, in my opinion, is the worst cheese that ever uh, popped out of a, a cow. You can leave! Uh, <laughs> yeah. I the go-to in America now, according to the grilled cheese experts, is cheddar. Okay. Okay? I, would, uh, I like the provolone. Ah, my grandmother used to because I like that nice cheesy when you melt it. Yeah, Deve now, developing hot take. Uh -huh. You ever had a grilled cheese with Munster? I was just gonna say that's no. what I like. Mm -hmm. What's Munster? I don't even know what Munster is. Yes, fantastic yeah. cheese. I mean, generally, if you get American cheese, but some people don't like it, so what they do is they get white American. No, but say, it tastes the yeah. same. Okay, we don't have to make this a race. No, no, no. It's, it's some about the taste is different because of the look. The, just for whatever reason, but I, I, I'll, I'll have American cheese if I don't have anything. The best grilled cheese is the Alston from Roxy's. I wanted to make sure I got the correct uh, ingredients: grilled cheese with herbed goat cheese, fig jam, caramelized onion, yeah, but, arugula. See, but that's not no, a grilled cheese, it though. Is. Like we're, we're talking about, like as a kid. Grilled cheese, your, your grandmother, your mother didn't have all that stuff. Goat cheese, arugula, this, that, and the other. She had bread and cheese. Okay, I'm just saying my favorite grilled cheese right, but is that. That's like saying 
you know, that's getting into more of the gourmet style grilled cheese. Yeah. What do you guys think about a brie grilled cheese? Uh, nah. Mm. Not a big brie person either. Greg, I'm the same way. I'm not huge on brie. Oh, here you go, Courtney. I got a great business idea for you. Sean okay. gets a grilled cheese now. Hold the cheese. And I only want like... <laughs> I can't even get the bread either. I only want 15%. Okay. You could and have a grilled tofu. I could have grilled tofu, yeah. Shime, stop it. A, you have this, a grilled cheese only restaurant. Yeah, there's multiple of them. Yeah, <laughs> I just brought one up, Roxy's. <laughs> that all they do is grilled yes. cheese? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I have an idea yeah. for you. Really? Man. He's got some brilliance. Like, I did they not should know have, that. You should have a restaurant where you drive up and get your food. <laughs> Wait a second. So there's a restaurant out there that specializes. It's literally down in, the street. Specializes in just grilled cheese. Correct. Greg, I have a million wow. dollar idea I need to sell you. Wow. What if we opened a restaurant, now hear me out, <laughs> yeah. that just focused on dumplings? That's mm, it. Great idea. Do they have right. one of those? Yes. 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 All right. Yeah. I did you ever not... been to Chinatown? Like they have the what's that place called? Dumpling uh Dumpling Daughter. There's one in Selfie. No, there's there's a the old place, it looks like an old theater where it's they come around table side with the dumplings. That's mm. uh, a like old dim sum? Uh, I think that was in a dream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Somebody was There's a place in Lowell them. called Happy uh, wow. Tasty Dumplings, which is I delightful. am blown away. I did not know there was a place that just yeah. like, where's your where's your you're behind on drops today? Like we're talking about dumplings, mm -hmm. I mean, how uh, how do we? How do Sorry, we that one didn't cross my mind. Uh, I mean, mm. all right. So they have a dumpling only restaurant. Yeah. They also yes. have ramen only restaurants. I've heard of those before. Yeah. They're, so specialized. I can get pan fried dumplings. I can yeah. get yeah. Oh. Chinese. <laughs> Chinese kid. All right, but anyway, Wiggy's lead this morning is that he expects Tom Brady to be back. The GOAT will be Playing back. in the NFL mm -hmm. at some point this upcoming yep. season, based on him saying that yesterday. He said it, not me. His words. The GOAT will be back because that itch is going to get him. Is there any risk to his legacy? Or no. No, there's not. And, and we already know. So he comes back and he's the same He's the same Tom Brady yep. that he was two now two seasons ago. Yep, he comes back and I guarantee wherever he lands, they're in the Super Bowl. And the other thing we know... <laughs> No, because he's coming back. He's not just going anywhere. He's going to go to a good situation. The other thing we know is now that he said that nationally and everybody knows it, we already know the 49ers were trying to get him. So you don't think there's a team out there that maybe they have everything, but through the first five or six weeks of the season, they don't like their quarterback play? Okay, but he said it. If everything works out and he gets his equity in the Raiders, then mm -hmm. he can't do it. Then it's a he'll do what Jordan did. It's a Jordan starter. Jordan owned the, I believe, is uh, was it the Wizards originally? Then came out of retirement and then sold off his percentage and then went back and bought Charlotte. The, there will be teams. Mark my words. Curtis brought up a great team, like a team like Philadelphia. They're not happy with the way their quarterbacks playing, and boom, they make the move and saying. This is the guy that gets us over the hump. I mean, them or the 40. Do you believe, Greg and Courtney and everybody, it, that Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch think if Tom Brady was their quarterback, they win that Super Bowl? Yes. yes. So, I mean, they, they, the Niners are basically where the Celtics are now. The only thing left is to win it all. And I'm not saying I would do it or they should do it, but if Tom's healthy... And you're ten and three, and Brock Purdy's been eh. You sign Tom Brady, and you go on a playoff run. Right. Question in the Twitch chat, I guess, asking whether Tom Brady should be comparing himself to Michael Jordan. I mean, oh, all day long. I why think, not? Why not? Yeah, I mean, it, he's, he's better than Michael Jordan. Yeah, he's, he's already won one more. <laughs> yeah, he surpassed uh, Michael Jordan when it comes to championships. Yeah, and it's much harder to do it in football. In the era Brady played in versus when Jordan Jordan had to do it. Yes, I mean it Isaiah be. Thomas brought up a great point. He never beat Jordan. Never beat uh, full on healthy Lakers, Celtics, Detroit team. Think about some of the teams that he beat in the championship: Utah Jazz, Portland, Portland. And you start to think about some of those. Well, teams. I think Curtis was spot on. This Phoenix, morning. the Suns. Well, Curtis was spot on as usual. This morning, when he said that if Tom Brady does come back, it's because of Patrick Mahomes. One thousand percent. I'm on board with that one, but I I'm, I feel like he comes back and he gets number eight. This is Matt from Rhode Island. Hello, Matt. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks what, for taking my call. How is everyone? What's up? 
Uh, much. I just wanted to give you guys your flowers. We listen. Well, I say we. Me and the dog. We listen every single morning while we're getting ready. And uh, a lot of people, you know, give you guys slack, especially Courtney and uh, my guy Shime over there. But yeah. you guys are the best show going. So oh. keep it going. It's like the Celtics watching you guys. You know. Oh. Are you coming to the Rhode Island Road Show? No, I've missed you guys three times in a row. That's when me and the wife usually go on vacation. It's like late April, early uh-huh. May. So. I'm going to miss you again, but Whalers, great spot. Yeah. Ocean Mist, go there every weekend almost in the summer, but just yeah. want to give you guys your flowers. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Pretty Matt. Good. Very nice. Ocean Mist is a good spot. Yeah, so we will be, what's the Rhode Island Roadshow date? Oh, gosh. Is it May, May 3rd, I think? Um, I believe, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if we're 3rd. the Celtics, does that make Ken Missoula? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ken was Brad Stevens. Oh, that's true. No, that's, I think. Uh, Who's that? Mike. Oh, is that Mike? Wiggy didn't know his name. I thought Mike was... <laughs> I thought Mike was Wick. <laughs> no, that's Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's George Soros. <laughs> um, no, nah, I don't know who George Soros is. It's okay. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't. You haven't been in the Twitch chat lately. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I jump in the Twitch yeah. chat to say what up to the people. Um, right. And reminder that if you have a local legend for our road shows, yes. email us at locallegendsghs.com. We're locking at them, gmail.com. Locking them down. Yes. You, you have one for Rhode Island. I have one for Rhode Island. You have one for the Flying Bridge, Falmouth. I do. I have a Fal- I have an excellent one, I think, for Falmouth, as recommended by several listeners. Um, Wiggy's working on a few. Yeah, yeah I'm working Wiggy's on working on a few. Need one for Springfield. Yes, we need we need one for Vermont. That is the first on the list, so we okay. have to secure that. The Vermont Roadshow, the start of the Roadshow season, mm-hmm. is two weeks from today. Right? Yes. Yeah. So we'll be at the Stone Church. Yep. Which is in Brattleboro, Vermont. Really cool place. And the night before, mm-hmm. we will be at the Poor House in Keene, New Hampshire. Right. What's and Bernie right- doing right now in Vermont? He ain't doing nothing. Who? Bernie. Bernie Sanders? Yeah, tell him. Uh, come on, be our local. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we get, I mean, that would be fine. All are I mean, welcome. He might yeah. be at one of his several palatial estates, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, where are we going to get dinner before the poorhouse? Do we know yet? Uh, have we decided on that yet? I don't think so. Well, we're staying in mm. Brattleboro. We are. are. In Keene. Oh. Where, is, That'll be interesting. Is yeah. that so where we st- stayed last year? Which was a great spot. Which great was spot. Close to the place. It was perfect. So we're not. It was too good. It worked too well. How far is the place that we we were at last year f- uh, from the place this year? The- Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. I just started googling Brattleboro, Vermont hotels. Second on the list, hotels with jacuzzi and room. So what you must have already checked. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I'll take a jacuzzi. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. We know you would. You know uh, that doesn't like. Of all the, like, if you go I to think a hotel. My wife's coming with me. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. If you go to a hotel that has a jacuzzi in it, uh huh. You're not egged out getting into that oh. thing. Do you get in a jacuzzi? Like, where? Like, anywhere. Define What's the it for me. Like, I, I mean, uh, if I, Echelon. If, uh, yeah, I've been okay. in the Echelon. What's the, the difference between the Echelon jacuzzi and. Well, the it's jacuzzi? like it's an outdoor hot tub. Like, I, I mean, it's not. One's one an indoor that, hot tub. Okay, but what what are the odds that people are doing different things in those two hot tubs? Like, what I, do you people don't do things in hot to, uh, hot tubs that are outdoors? Not at Echelon. Yeah, okay, no, whatever. Yeah, not, I'm not, sure they yeah. are. No, Just pour a little I, chlorine, I, they, extra chlorine. It's right out in the open so on what? the fifth floor outside mm. in the city of Boston. Yeah. At nighttime, that's the perfect location for but they have some security. Spontane- There's people like running around. They have cameras. Yeah, the, people don't care. This have, a, it's I, the perfect I, opportunity for you know a guy and his gal or you know whatever. And saying, hey, it's a beautiful night out tonight. Let's sneak down to the jacuzzi. Mm-hmm. Sit on my lap. Nobody knows it. <laughs> is, is it bad? Paint the I... picture for me. <laughs> I'm Greg, trying to paint yeah, the I know picture I can for do. So it... they know how you can yeah. do it without getting caught. Greg, is it bad that the hotel we're staying at in Brattleboro charges by the hour? <laughs> <laughs> There's a cool place. Do they have magic fingers? Oh, God. <laughs> There's a cool place, Vikings Village. I wish. Uh, th- I hope that's where we're staying. No, I think uh, there was an ad about this where did you stay at this hotel last night because you're brilliant. I think it's a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> Do the bed shake? You put the quarters in and the that's, bed shakes? That's called magic fingers. Oh, is that what that's <laughs> called? <laughs> My bad. I didn't know that's what you called magic fingers. Is there a, is there a mirror on the ceiling? Here's a text that from spectacular. Here's a text from Vermont. I love when we've hit the point of the show where Greg just goes, keeps going. I'm just trying to like <laughs> put it back on. You track. asked. 
Uh, apparently, you are allowed legally to walk around nude in Brattleboro, Vermont. Oh, there you wow. go. Good news. There you go. Is I... that a, like a thing? Huh? Can you can you Google that? You're a nude SLB walker. Is the thing? Oh, yeah. Huh? You you said you walk around in the nude? Uh, in my house. I, yeah. I, well, I, you I, do it in your hotel room. I, yeah. Well, I, that's fine. I wouldn't. I don't think I would do it. In public. I'm just like I'm just like your boy Walter White walking around butt ass naked. I, I feel like there would not be a lot of support for that. Unlike most states in the country, Vermont does not have a law against public nudity. All right, mm. there you go. Okay. And if there was one state you'd most want people to be clothed, it'd probably be Vermont. <laughs> Oh, weird. Yes. There's a whole, uh, the Norman Transcript newspaper. Spring brings out naked people in mm. Brattleboro, huh? small Vermont town with no rule against it. Oh, oh there you go. Then okay. You, there you go, Courtney. So you... maybe we'll have some sort, we should have like a naked studio audience. Well, didn't, didn't Courtney okay. say? <laughs> you don't want to see some of the Twitchers nude, Curtis? Uh, no, but you actually. To, what about x -Pair? I don't think there's much to see. <laughs> Because where's that place on the Cape that allows nudity, or is it Nantucket? Do they have good Wi-Fi? The well, new you beach. Could be the, you could be oh. topless on the beach. In yeah, Nantucket, so but. remember you said you want, this is your opportunity. I don't think I ever said I wanted to. Yeah, you said the place in Nantucket, you go, I'd like to experience I that. <laughs> I think you make stuff up. No, no, that's what you said. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, we could get Aaron Lewis. I think Aaron, from Stained, I think he now lives in Vermont. Oh, that's what oh. is saying. Okay. If anybody has his that contact, could be good. please yeah. email locallegendsghs yes. at gmail.com. That, right. that could be good. I, I think we're getting ghosted by the uh, housewives, dude. Oh, no. I got zero Gorga? response. What's his name? Uh, Joe, Joe Gorga. Gorga. Joe Gorga. Yeah, nothing. Wow. Zilch on the text back. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that, Courtney. Could be you, early. Could be. They might have had a late night last night. He's dead right. to me. We got to take a break. Uh, we will be right back. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is W.E.
Well, the weather delayed round one of Tiger Woods is complete, Chime. Ah, uh, yes. Tiger Woods finished his round one, one over. Okay, at the Masters. And you said earlier you think cut is going to be one over. It some looks, are, it looks like the line. Two. Yeah, it looks like the line might have moved to two over. Okay. Um, right. that's It's going to be kind of fluctuating depending on how people do today. Hot okay. take, Tiger's not going to make the cut. Really? He is schwitzing a lot this morning. Yeah, DeChambeau won't win and Tiger won't make the cut. He is heavy sweat on the face, Tiger Woods. This yeah, yeah, I don't know why he was how, wearing a sweater. Yeah. That's yeah. how he was last year when he had to right. uh, extricate himself. Yes. So is the cut um, after Friday? Yes. And, and then so then It'll be after today. And then Saturday and Sunday, those are the ones that are actually competing for yes. it. Okay. Yes. Wow, he just hit a bomb though. Well, the you... guy can still hit it a mile. I mean, I, I, it's that's not the issue. The issue is his leg. Yeah. His body. Oh, I'm behind like, on the broadcast. Sorry. Oh, was... <laughs> I was gonna say I was like, he doesn't see off. Well, no, I know. I was just like, hour. I was thinking about it, and then I saw <laughs> that my cursor was. Right. I must have hit pause by accident. My apologies. Where's my guy? Great Patrick drive, though. Courtney's like, um, excuse me, OJ Simpson just took off in a Bronco with Al Callens. <laughs> Courtney just called her dad. We landed on the moon. <laughs> uh, what are your hot masters stat? Yes. Not since 2005 has the favorite prior to the tournament won the tournament. Oh. Huh. Mm-hmm. That was per uh, Jim Nance on the broadcast. Oh, well, really? Cool. So that means Scheffler won't win. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't have Scheffler in our pool, so that's a good thing. We this, always go back to four hundred dollars on this uh, pool, oh, right? No, Billy's gonna win. Yeah. This is this is Russ from Connecticut. Hello, Russ. Good morning, all. Oh, it's I'm that Russ. To... Shoot. What's it's up, Russ? That Russ. The bad, it's the bad guy, Russ. Yeah. No, no, no. Stop. Okay. I just wanted to tell Courtney and all you food lovers, if you're going to be in Brattleboro, Vermont, do not miss the Vermont Country Deli. It's a place to stop. Okay. It's cool. right out of town. All and right. I'll tell you, when you go to Mount Snow Skiing, you always stop there for everything. Okay. Right. I was just Country saying that deli. off air, that that is the one thing I want to do when we go. I really? Want, yeah. Why? Because is I, it Instagrammable? No, I saw a TikTok oh. actually about oh. it. <laughs> the mac and cheese looks delicious really? there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I'm country deli swing and, and Brattleboro just got Wi-Fi this uh-huh. week. So big, Vermont. I want to see who their local uh, legend is. That's why I want to see who they vote on. Uh, somebody suggested one to I think to Ken Laird. Okay, uh, Wi-Fi access. <laughs> yeah, they have. Do they have Wi-Fi access up there? Like, I think I've been to Vermont like three times. So every time we go up there, it's always a you know it's a whole new world for me. <laughs> All right, it's beautiful. Oh, um, we gotta get out of here, Curtis. Where are you watching the game tomorrow night? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll be probably watching it at home, but I mm. it's eight thirty, right? Yeah, go Eagles. Go Eagles. Past my bedtime, but go Eagles. Go it's Eagles. already over. BU sucks, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Nothing mm-hmm. to root for there. All all these schools that rip on BC's football program, they can't even beat them in the one sport they actually invest in. It's pretty sad. <laughs> It is 9.53 and 30, 34 seconds. Can't say much because so, I don't like oh, well, that. <laughs> he, he blamed it on you. Yeah, did you, he does. Hear, did you Were you listening? I was listening. He said you always say things. The right. show is over and then you say other things. Right. And then he also said that I only, I guess, I guess they say that I only say things Greg tells me to say. That is what Gresh said. Right. Yeah. Which I is, tell you what to do and you do it. Just I know rude. you had so much power over me. I know. I didn't either. I'm just the lowly little I, girl. If, if, if I had only known. We got to go. Thank you. Is it okay if I say thank you for listening? Uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Five, thank man. you for watching. Have a great weekend. You know what's interesting, Greg? Nope. We are. We are. <laughs> we're back. We're back on Monday. Wait, we're did coming you have to another you. past hors d'oeuvre take? No, was, we I are was com- going to talk about we are com- cheese. St- <laughs> shut his mic off. We are coming to you from the Capitol Grill Monday, oh, right at the finish yes. line on Boylston Street of the 128th running of the Boston Marathon. Have a great weekend.
They've um, they've talked it over over and over and over again. I think, uh, but but certainly for me and, and for everyone on the outside, we're trying to you know who's going to start, how are they going to play it, um, and, and what will they do when they lose? It's always about what you do when you lose in the playoffs, right? Well, no matter. I mean, obviously, I guess football is a little different because when you lose, you just go home. But um, in bas- in, in the sports where you have a series, it's all about adjustments. It's all about bouncing back, and it's all about what you do after a loss. And that's, I think, what's most interesting when the goalie situation comes up is when the Bruins lose, do they make a switch right away, or are they going off performance or results, or how are they going to rotate or change? Rotate's not the right word. Compl- how are they going to change their goaltender? So you just touched on it. Is there no chance it's a rotation and it's Swayman you have game one and – Oh, Mark, you have game two. Tell them this week. I don't know how that happens. I I, I don't know a scenario. I can't imagine that working. Um, I've been pretty steadfast on this. It's never happened before. Um, I just go into all the scenarios. There's just too many scenarios that don't allow it to happen. 
Uh, one guy wins one nothing. One guy loses six. Wins six five. The other guy loses one nothing. Who plays game three? Right. Like that's just. And then you're talking about going on the road and staying at home. Who plays? If you win game three on the road as a goaltender and you don't play game four, just because you've decided you're going to have a rotation, like right. how does a coach do that? How does a team do that? That all of these scenarios make it really difficult to rotate. So did Swayman kind of because they tried to trade Olmark, right? Yeah. So in their mind, mid season, Swayman was their playoff goalie but the second half of the season I think you could argue Ulmark's been the better goalie did Swayman maybe I don't want to say screw this up but not take the opportunity and run with it um the way he's yeah I know he hasn't been bad no yeah I know the obvious answer yeah I I it seems as though if it would you know Ulmark's played better right I think Ulmark's played better I don't think um I think there was a lot going on at the deadline I think um the way the C, it's just an 82 game season too, right? I think mm-hmm. just as much of anything else, like I think it just ended up some of the good stuff or the the breaks Swayman was getting, he's not getting now. You saw that on Tuesday night, a couple of wraparounds bank off of him, like just kind of weird, odd goals that were happening to Allmark earlier in the season that weren't to Swayman are now kind of flipped, and and I think that's just the nature of an 82 game season. So I. I I I wouldn't put it on Swayman. I think it's just kind of the way the game is. But that's also what happens when you have two goaltenders and you're rotating all the time. No one really gets on a long run where you're saying, oh, he's 100%. Like, Omar couldn't play poorly Saturday night. Swayman plays great on Monday. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, well, maybe Swayman's the hot hand this week. Right, And that's... So who would you pick? Oh, sorry. No, no, no. no, 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 I'm probably (laughs) going off... Listen, I don't think he's going to answer it. No, No, I'm making... Goalie Bob doesn't exist anymore. It's now... Goalie Andrew. No, I. You have to make. I don't think you should. You, you should. Well, no, you your should head. feel nervous about. No, I'm not nervous. Because they're both great at what they do. But you, if you had to pick one guy, well, I would do. I would go Allmark right now because of the way he's played in the okay. last three weeks. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to see Swayman in the first round. But how do, I, you, how do you? How do you? How do you? When you make that decision, do you bring them both into your office at once? No. Is it individual? Individual. And because it feels like everything they do is like a team, anyways, and they're they both hug while with you tell them. And it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't like, even be, yeah, yeah, no, it would, uh, it wouldn't even be an office move. It's uh, the head coach skates up next to you before practice on whispers in your ear next Wednesday. Hey, Don't you're, tell you know, Simon, you're my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then he tells, no, everybody's your favorite. Hey, oh my, it's just like Don't your, tell Swayman, it's just like your favorite. kids. It's just like your kids. Exactly the same. I don't have a favorite. Yeah, hey, but right. I do. I you're all my favorite. To, to you're all my favorite. Swayman, um, one more than others. Uh, Swayman got hit with this this Michigan goal. Yeah, this whole move. I don't know if you've seen this. Where they kind of pick up the puck and they it feels illegal. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, from listen, I'm not a, a hockey guy like you are. You know, oh, really? I'm an insider. I've told you this. But he kind of lifts it up, and then they kind of sneak it around the back, and there's a couple different ways they do I, 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 How do you defend it, and should it be illegal? Well, it, it won't be illegal because they, they the stick stays low, the whole thing. It's hard to do, too, right? Like, the, it's really hard to do. Um, how you defend it is you drill the guy behind the net when he's starting to come around the net, or as a goaltender you get something up high. He never. Ha- so this thing happened. I this thing happened like 1995. So the that's first the last time. time? That, no, that's, that's the first. That's, time that was the first time, and that's why they call it a mission. A guy at Michigan did it in the playoffs against Minnesota. It was like this crazy thing. No one had ever seen it, and then it went away for like 30 years because essentially uh, hockey. Uh, the, what, what what do I say? The the, the unofficial rules um, basically said if you're going to do that in the 90s and 2000s, you're going to get cross checked in the face, and someone's going to fight you. Like, don't stand anyone Just up. Just as a don't measure be, of like, don't be, don't, don't show the anyone game. up. Oh, okay. Don't show show respect to the game. Like don't show justice. anybody up. Street like, justice. Yeah. Like, you don't do that, I right? Love that. Where and is that gone? Thirty. Yeah, exactly. Where is Where, it gone? Uh, Don't we you need appreciate a, that? We need though? a huge dose of that in our in I, our world. I'm with you. We need a huge dose you. of because it because it would just listen. Like if you try to get sneaky and cute and embarrass somebody, it's like you're gonna pay for it. So yeah. you know, uh, and beware. you can still do it, but just you gotta face the repercussions. So this guy did it in the '90s, and he was willing to face the repercussions. Uh, a lot of people, you know, thought it was a joke and the whole thing. Again, fast forward 30 years, now the kids do it all over the place. Um, and and this guy in Carolina has done it two or three times now, Shvechnikov. So, unfortunately, it's kind of here to stay because the kids love it and the league loves it and they show it on all the highlights for weeks on end. But 
But the re- like, you're not going to see Brad Marchand do it. You're not right. going to see Sidney Crosby do it. You wouldn't see Patrice Bergeron do it. Like, they're still like the old school part of the league won't, uh, but some of the new school will. So, Razor, uh, great website, weei.com. I go there right now, and there's a headline that says, is Jim Montgomery coaching for his job in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs? Wow, that's hard hitting. That's it's not my byline. So, so oh, okay. they do. Well, does that's he write Scott the headline McLaughlin. also? Well, I think <laughs> they don't write the headlines. Um, I obviously Jim Montgomery's regular season record stands for itself. I yep. mean, t- two incredible se- historic last season. This season, what he's done with the expectations of you know they should win the division here in the next three or four or five days. But anytime in pro sports you underperform in the playoffs, I you know there's a chance. I suppose I. I would be. It would be very surprising, unlike where Cassidy was at his point, uh, where it's six, seven years. Right. You know, it kind of gets stale. You're not quite as surprised. Two years with two amazing regular seasons, and and an, so far one kind of unfortunate playoff loss. But again, I wouldn't. I'm not. I wouldn't say any head coach is automatic if they lose in the first round two seasons in a row after having great regular seasons. But if it was me, and I'm saying right now, I think he's done an unbelievable job. I wouldn't. That's not on my radar. I'm assuming that's not on their radar or his radar. They're 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 planning on going on a run here, right? Like, it's you know they've they've been a great team all season. They should go on a run. They should go into the second, third round. So uh, we're talking to Andrew Razor, Ray Croft, and uh, Lou Maloney's on his way. He'll join us at ten thirty as uh, Razor goes out and he starts uh, you know doing the Lord's work. Um, <laughs> Pat the Lord Maroon. Stanley Cups work? Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, uh, Pat Maroon back in the lineup. Is yeah, he going to make it? What, what what difference will he make? Um, well, let's see where his health is at difference wise. Um, ideally, uh, ideally he's a guy who won three Stanley cups. He's gone to four Stanley cups in a row. He's experienced. He understands what it takes in the playoffs. He's a huge body. He can play physical. He can stand up for his teammates if, if need be. So he checks a lot of boxes in, um, that specialty that the Bruins haven't had this year. And, and they had, Brazo come in and a big body, big length. He's out right now. Not sure when he's coming back. So Maroon kind of jumps in and fills that size issue, um, especially on the fourth line where the Bruins will need that in the playoffs. Uh, if they play Tampa, it's not quite as important. You play Toronto or Florida in the second round. That'll be something where you really rely on that that size of his, his ability to work the front of the night. He's got pretty good hands. He can make plays, but of course experience and how to you know, maneuver in series in game. So the biggest question you answered, you would start all Mark game one if it were your choice. Uh, I'll get that back out there. I like when they do that on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ray Croft calls. Yeah, exactly. All Mark is better. Oh, let's yeah. let's get rid of social let's media. Strip all of the context. <laughs> absolutely. Of that, no, of that answer. Movie poster out of it. it down yes, to a couple yeah, words. Absolutely. What's that'll... the second biggest question facing this team as it hits the playoffs? Hmm. Power play, I suppose. Right now, can they? Can the power play get going? It's been bad. You know, it just hasn't worked and so do they find that and this happened last year with a great team they scored a bunch of goals but the power play struggled at the end and it turned on in the playoffs can they can they flip the switch the last regular three regular season games can they flip the switch in playoffs and get that timely power play goal that you need two or three times a series yeah because my my, off of that if you are making a Andrew Razor Raycroft postseason milkshake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what ingredients would you add to this to, to this milkshake? Like, what would you add? Would you add like bananas or no? I, mean, I don't get the question either. Yeah, so don't yeah. feel bad. You know, when I wrote it this morning, it you wrote really that good. down. No way yeah, I want to say, no right, look, here it is. No you wrote way. that question yeah. down, and it's that yeah. bad. Here it is. I'll, I'll read it to you exactly. Um, Bruins Jeez. Stanley Cup postseason milkshake. What ingredients are you adding? The hell does protein. that mean? You're just a protein, protein shake. Straight protein. Creatine. Straight protein. Yeah, cre- you Put your creatine, creatine in, in there. there. Protein. Yeah. You know, basically, what's lacking? What's what, what ingredient needs to show up more okay. than others? You mentioned the power play yeah. being an issue, but what ingredients All right. need to be added for them to be successful in the postseason? Because the regular season has oh. been great. It's always been great. It's tasty. People love it. Leaves you a little milkshake mustache. So, uh, so I'll, I'll I'll shrink your question and dial it yeah. in just Something like my, people my hot understand. take that yeah. somehow I'm yeah. going to get out of all of this. Yeah. Because the only way you're leaving yeah. on time yeah. is if you answer this cre- <laughs> this question correctly. Andy and I have decided that we're going to lock the door until you, you, unless you do a good job. Wait, I thought he has to come back later too. <laughs> now we're gonna, you know that's true. You you don't have to come back if you answer this uh, question correctly. 
I know. I so simplifying. Last year in the playoffs, it got too cute at times for me. I thought too many times they're still trying to make plays to the middle when they're not there. Uh, whether it's the defense or the wingers, they're trying to use the middle of the ice, or they're trying to make plays that aren't really there or might be there. I think what we've seen in the last couple of weeks, and it has to, it has to continue come playoff time, is flipping it out and punting. Punt and chase. There has to be more of a punt and chase, simplify mentality. Um, last year, they got through it all the way through the regular season. There, It was the Harlem Globetrotters at times last season, all the way up the ice. And once playoff times came, they continued to try and do that. And they continued to try and force plays through the middle against a Florida team that, that wouldn't allow it. And they were happy to punt and chase. The two teams that went to the Stanley Cup Finals, Florida and Las Vegas, probably didn't make more than 20 breakout passes a game. Everything was flip it out, pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay, we're going to relieve the pressure by chipping it out. Our forwards are going to go get it. Or are you going to put it off the glass? I'm going to live to fight another day. And I felt like last season when pressure came, the Bruins tried to make the perfect play. And I think what we've seen, again, the last couple of weeks, they've been – they've relied on that simplicity they flipped it out and i think that's why their defense has gotten better and they need to continue that in the playoffs i don't want to see plays being made all the time in the first round of the playoffs it's just too chaotic we saw it last year there's too much chaos there's bodies flying everywhere everyone ramps up a million miles an hour in that first round and you you really have to just kind of fight to live another day uh most times in the playoffs. So that that's what I want to see. That's my big milkshake. Okay, there you go. Is simplifying. You can use that, by the way, if you want to. I'm just, <laughs> I would Let it go. Yeah, Don't listen to Andy. <laughs> I wouldn't. Don't listen to Andy, Andrew. Uh, I'm going to give you one question real quick, uh, and this is for Mark. Mark, make it quick because uh, uh, Andrew doesn't have any time for us today. <laughs> I promise, real quick, I, a comment and a question. First off, if play, Swayman plays like he played against Carolina the other night, that that rotation experiment's going to end real quick, and that 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 Michigan goal. Okay, if you know what, if the goalie's standing up, it doesn't go in the net. Okay, is that it, Mark? Okay, thank you. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna go with. I'm not, was that a question? I mean, you, you, if he's standing up, you can't. You could stay. Obviously, if you stand up, that that's great. But for the one time you get a Michigan every year, right. and you stand up the other 500 times you play that goes along the ice, and they score on the ice, you're probably gonna have an issue with that. So goalies aren't goalies are never standing up again, folks. It's it's never going back to stand up <laughs> goaltending. Everybody who loves the 70s and Jerry Cheevers, it's never happening. Um, what was the what was the uh, uh, it was a comment and a question. Oh, and yeah, I about Swayman the playing the other. The two. So, again, this is what we're talking about, right? It's, it's so, like, game-centric. So, you, you know, Swayman didn't go his way on Tuesday night. Now, all of a sudden, you got to blow everything up. Right. And that goes 100 times come playoff time. So, you're, you're dealing with – that's why you're going to probably see both guys. You're going to see guys, you know, make quick decisions, but it doesn't – you can't lock it in stone. That's my whole thing is this idea that you're just going to go with it like they have in the regular season is so much more difficult. So I actually, uh, you know, before you go, I listened to uh, quickly as much as I could your uh, your Strange Brew uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is it Strange Brew? It's pretty good, right? Yeah, that's hilarious. It's Morning Brew. Pretty good stuff. And uh, Oh, thanks. I know you great. listen every day. I, well, I try to. I do because you guys are you guys do an excellent job, all kidding aside. And one thing, again, like the face race that kind of cracked me up was a pig pile. What is it, and have you ever been in one? A pig pile. Well, pig is that, pile a, just we, a, is that just a hockey term? Is it a, have is, you ever used pig pile in have, football? But was oh, it, yeah. Really? A pig pile in or just as all a the kid. time, isn't it? When everyone I've jumps on each other. Oh, as a little kid, when you're like eight, pig you don't pile? need to be any sport. It can be at somebody's house, and all of a sudden there's a pig pile yeah, on Joe or whatever. Exactly. Never on top of used the, never used it. Didn't know really? what the hell he was talking about. I thought it was some real, you know, insider hockey lingo that you and Jaffe were sharing. No, I mean, no, I refer to it to like the pig yeah. pile when we were kids. Yeah, you would like be a in... sleepover or whatever. There's a pig pile. Somebody's getting pig piled on. Yeah, like two guys, you start wrestling and then yeah. everyone jumps on. It's a pig pile. Huh. Yeah. Where'd so... you grow up? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, Cali. Listen, too cool in Cali. Yeah, we were surfing, exactly. dude. No. Yeah. All right. Well, I know you got to go. So um, any last words before we, <laughs> we talk to you? We'll talk to you next week because uh, when we talk by the time. We talked to you a week from today. The playoffs will be starting. Seating will be set, right? Every, yeah, right, we're, by that point in time. We'll be, we'll be locked in next Friday. This okay. will be full on playoff mode next Friday. Okay. So we can dedicate two hours on Friday Perfect. to Perfect. Okay. All right. But well, no, my last point is my, I need to, like, it, the goalie thing will uh, figure itself out. Everyone relax on the goalie thing. 
You're going to see both guys. Both guys can play. Doesn't mean the first guy who plays game one is better than the other guy. Just let it. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the pl- enjoy the Ooh, goalie ride that we have like, coming up. Ooh. Can you enjoy it and then succeed? Like, can it continue to alternate, or will it settle itself inherently, and that'll allow them to go? You said Correct. they're planning on going on it a run. It will settle itself inherently. We will notice. We will. Or they'll see, be done. <laughs> or or we'll be yelling about something else. Right. Like, how did this team like do it again? Right. Okay. Right. All right. That's, well, so that's my point. What do you What do you think? What do you give him a grade? Should we let? It, does uh, he have to come back? Our grading did he, did he do... segment A for him, yep. A for me, and F for you with your stupid milkshake. <laughs> yeah, question. the milkshake brought it down. All right. Well, listen, Razor. But, it, but you get your protein shake. Right, I'm going to get my protein shake. <laughs> Five protein shakes Lou, a day. That's all Lou you can is think on of. deck right now. Yeah, Lou nice. is on deck. Lou's scared uh, to come enjoy in. Enjoy your afternoon. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, thanks for coming in, even though it was short. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Lou Merloni next on Gresham for you. The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending is brought to you by Time Out Market Boston. The Baltimore Orioles scored six runs in the top of the 10th to complete the three-game sweep over the Red Sox with a 9-4 win. Isaiah Campbell got the loss for the Sox, giving up five earned runs on four hits in the 10th inning. Tonight, the Red Sox begin a three-game series with the Los Angeles Angels at Fenway Park. First pitch is at 7-10 on the Shaw's and Star Market. WEEI Red Sox Network. Shaw is perfecting the yard of fresh. Tannehau gets a start for the Sox against the Angels' Reed Detmers. Don't forget to tune into the Mass Mutual Red Sox pregame show tonight at 6-10 with Rich Keefe. It's back-to-back losses for the Celtics after last night's 118-109 loss to the New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson led the way for the Knicks with 39 points. The Seas are right back at it tonight when they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off at the TD Garden is at 7-30. Yesterday in the men's Frozen Four action, Boston College defeated Michigan 4-0 and Boston University lost to Denver 2-1 in overtime. The national championship game between number 1 BC and number 3 Denver will be tomorrow night. Puck drop is at 6. The call of the championship game can be heard on WEEI AMA 50 with coverage beginning at 545. The Bruins return to the ice tomorrow when they play the Penguins in Pittsburgh. Face-off is at 8. Also tomorrow night, the New England Revolution will be in New York to play New York City FC. Kickoff at Yankee Stadium is at 730. And checking in on the leaderboard of the Masters, Bryson DeChambeau is in the lead with shooting under minus 7, excuse me. Time Out Market Boston is a food and cultural market in the Fenway with 14 unique food concepts. Some of Boston's top chefs, two bars with a wide selection of craft cocktails, wines, and New England's top local brews. Time Out Market Boston showcases the best of the city under one roof. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEEI and WEEI.com. You're listening.
WEEI. Deep drive to left, way back and gone. Into the second row of the monster seats, an opposite field home run for Gunnar Henderson. And a deep drive to right, way back, and that ball's going to go over the Orioles' bullpen. About five rows deep into the right field bleachers. What a series for Kowser. A three-run homer, and the Orioles have broken it wide open with six runs in the 10th, and it's a 9-3 to three lead. Well, as Lou Merloni rolls into the studio, uh, he's not, I don't think you can hear this song that is playing, but I know he was listening because he's definitely a P1. Yeah. So he kind of gets the reference of the whole milkshake. Do you, Lou? Lou, can you hear me? What's up with the milkshake? Yeah. Well, were you confused too when you heard the question? Hey, Razor, if the Bruins were a milkshake, what no, kind of flavors no, no, no. would be in it? No, no, you're adding it and you're changing my voice. Actually, I, I made it like make that. more sense. How did you make it It was make the dumbest more sense. question I've ever heard. Uh, I'm not saying it was one of my best. Wait, by if any the Bruins are a milkshake? <laughs> Okay, can we re-rack it? I don't, I don't want to misrepresent the stupidity of the question. No, no, hold on for that. <laughs> hold on, because I'm going to ask him the same question, but I'm going to change Bruins to we're Red gonna, Sox. We're going to reuse the stupid I'm gonna question. Use, I'm going to reuse it. <laughs> oh, okay, so we God. have four different people, total of four different people on the show. All right, eventually I'm going to land it. I don't I don't, even, I don't know how to compare the Red Sox to a milkshake. Well, they're not. It's not flavors. tasty. It's, no, uh, it's they not forgot enjoyable. the milk and the sugar. Uh, they and forgot all the major ingredients. Yeah, <laughs> I would say this. There's nothing it's tasty about water. it. It's it's like there's <laughs> little light. I would say it's li- there's not much ice cream. No. Okay, it's a lot of milk, which Ooh. makes it very thin. Oh, and so that, and and he's doing it. He's a professional. And you can't. He's you better can't, than me. It's it's like you can't afford this. You need more ice cream. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You need more ice cream to kind of liven it up. You need more ice cream because that's like the essence. Yeah. Of the milkshake. And if you don't have ice cream and it's nothing but milk, then you're thin. And when a little bit, if you just have some good ice cream, just a little bit of a good ice cream. Yeah. And it bit. starts melting. Or maybe it melts within the first eight days. <laughs> All you're left with is milk. Yeah. And it's like skim. And, and you know, so it's just thin. It's a thin shake. You, you My know, chair's you, you short. Know, you know who I think is back? Angry Lou. I'll say this. Oh, oh here he comes. Okay. <laughs> Sit back. No, relax. Mic's no. off. Go ahead. Uh, no, because this is where it starts. I, it took, Here's I, the thing. I, I knew he came in thing. with an edge. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you saw my tweet or not. <laughs> hey, if you can't drive in the rain, stay home. Like, just stay home. I mean, it's water. You're in a car. you got windshield wipers. You wipe it clean. You can see where you're going. There's no need for you to be going 65 down Route 3 and slam on your brakes with nobody in front of you because it's freaking water. It's just water. If you're scared, don't drive on the left lane. Don't drive in the right lane. Because as you know, sometimes water builds up. And it splashes up in your windshield. And you slam on your brakes. Drive in the middle lane. If you don't know what you're doing in rain, stay home. Oh, my God. Drive in the middle lane. The road slants a little bit. There's stuff on the sides. God, like, I know every day in the rain I drive. And, and it's like, am I the only one? Nope. Am I the only one? No, it's a it's it's a, it's a problem. problem. And you would think here in New England, with as much bad weather, as much practice as you would get with bad weather, you would be better at it. That's overall. all. It's not, it's not twelve Especially inches of snow. Yeah, it's not twelve inches nope. of snow. Yeah. I feel like I'm redirected. Yeah, this is it's really okay. about uh, okay. six runs in the tenth. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's a, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, what time did you get home last night? Because Raycroft wanted us to know that he got home late oh, yeah, and still yeah. came in. Let's I don't compare know. it. Yeah, did you get thirty? It yeah. was a long How night. How rough I, was your I, night? It was a long night. I sat down. And I couldn't sleep. I was sitting with my. I got a little buddy. My buddy Jamo. <laughs> I sat down with him. He was chilly. He was on a couple ice cubes. <laughs> how do you? Is that, is that there. how you decompress? What? Yeah. Is that how you, uh, honest to God, because like I was teasing you last week about corporate Lou, and I feel like the real Lou is back, because well, I feel like there's some issues that you just can't cover up and you just can't ignore with this Red Sox team, you're, and you're, it's it's happening like in real time. You're really good with the stages, right? Yeah, now, oh, we're always uh, talking about the stages. The yeah, five what, stages what of grief. Stages, what stage is acceptance? Okay, so I'll, I'll read them to you, okay? The first stage is denial. Okay. Okay. Been then there. anger. Oh, I heard denial Lou this spring. Yeah. He was selling oh, okay. me on some stuff. Anger, yeah. have you been through anger? Yeah, I think we okay. just saw it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bargaining, depression. Yeah. No, so, not yet. The the last 
stage of the five stages of grief, Andy Hart, is acceptance. Acceptance. Yeah, I'm in acceptance. And isn't there, isn't there like ask for forgiveness too? Isn't that that like may be a, the seventh stage? Like I is just that the end? Five. Don't you have to go around and and for, yeah. you know, ask? Maybe a different model or forgiveness from people. So who would be the one asking for forgiveness? Well, me, <laughs> because you know I mean, who. And I'll yeah, say this: who are you apologizing to? I'll say this: I, I did say that I think they could be a pretty good team. <laughs> you no longer believe that? Well, no, because th- there came with a caveat, and that was you have to avoid injury. They're just too thin. You can't lose a guy that holds the entire defense together. You know, you can't lose the two guys that you kind of were counting on to kind of give you innings. Uh, you can't lose your best player at third base, and you've pretty much lost him since opening day with injury. You'll probably go in the IL, and it's probably the right move. You, you, you're too thin to take a guy out or two, two guys from your lineup, one guy that holds your defense together, and two guys in a rotation that you were counting on. It's just you're just too thin, and you know it's just sort of starting. So you're in the acceptance phase where you're like, this is where you're at. You have to be patient. You know, I mean, you guys don't have to be, fans don't have to be, but staffs do because it's, I got a kid out here playing short or playing second or playing third base that I just, or center fielder that offensively I got to be patient with. And it's, it's the acceptance of where you're at. Like it's the process. Like, you know, am I going to shred David Hamilton? Because I don't, you know, he's been struggling at shortstop. He shouldn't be there. You know, story should be there, but this is where you're stuck at. But isn't that. And you just hopefully can get comfortable and slow the game down. But don't you realize in professional sports, like, if you're thin to start, you're porked, basically. Because yeah. you're going to, but every sport, who you're going to face injuries, like, you're you know? going to face, so you're building a house of cards. That one little, yes, and the yes. whole damn thing comes down. And I think most people knew that. It's just that when you when you went to this camp and you saw guys healthy. Yeah, but I had Jake you were Peavy like, telling okay. me this is the greatest clubhouse I've ever been in and the vibe in there. And it's who like that? Uh, Jake isn't it Jake Peavy? Oh, MLB uh, analyst when he went in there MLB for two days, is, MLB yeah. whatever. Yeah, like it was good vibes. But to me, that was where the problem started to come. Everybody had accepted that this was a thin baseball team with a lot of limitations. Correct? Can't afford to get hurt, especially in the first eight games. Especially when it's your whatever you think of Trevor Story. He's one of your top handful of players. He holds the whole defense together, and you have I your mean, best the whole player. Defense together. Your your best pitcher, maybe, or your surest veteran, whatever the hell you want to call Pavetta. Yeah. Like a lot of teams, that's and the only what, guy you spent money on in Giolito. Right. And a lot of teams, if you take away two of their best hitters, infielders, whatever you want to say, and two of their best pitchers, they're porked, right? Yes. Most Major League Baseball teams. So I, I think there is some understanding to it. My seat's low. But I don't like my seat. Your seat right now? Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of people seat. are mentioning how ahead, low your seat ahead, is. Andy, I'm sorry. Well, can we get Lou a booster seat? No, go ahead. Wait, his feet are dangling. I'm a little flustered. Flip right the now. lever. No, I like it. Time. So keep go going. No, no, no. Go no. Ahead. I want you to flow flustered. No, you're right. Flow flustered. Well, Why this, do I not hold it against a uh, major league shortstop? Why? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if Tom Brady tried to play wide receiver, would you say he sucks at wide receiver? Well, but he's on the field playing. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And and I hear all is these people telling me he's got to go play wide receiver. a young team with versatility, and we can move people around, and we have this, and we have you got that. a lot of versatility. But when you move guys around versatility, and you start moving guys from position to position. Guess what? You're not really good defensively at any of them <laughs> because you don't play there enough. You don't get comfortable enough. But how did he miss uh, second base? That's just a mental lapse. There's nothing you can do, and and, and it's the worst thing. And because earlier in the game he got away with it, you know, they challenged it, so it's in the back of his head, like. I just got re- reminded that I need to. Like, me, back when I played, I could do what he did. And we're bang, right. bang. We're turning two. But once instant replay came in, it was like right away, middle infielders, hey, I got to have the foot in the bag. You can't do old school stuff anymore. And for people that used to do it, it was a tough transition. But the young kids that have come up with the rules, you got to know you got to get the first one. You have to touch the bag. It was just – and, you know, before that, too, I was like, Hamilton's having a nice game. You know, he slowed the game down. He got a knock. Yeah, he got a stolen base. There's some good defensive plays. He made a play or two in yeah. the field. And I'm like, okay, slow it down. Get comfortable. And then that play happened. But the, the innings one through five, one through six, are different than seven through nine in the big leagues. I don't care if it's the playoffs, April, June, July, August. Innings seven through nine, you tighten up a little bit. And that lack of experience can come out. And that's what it is. It's a lack of experience. Kids out there working, it's just... He's not He's not settled. So let me ask you a question that is overly simplified. I admit it. Simplify the hell out of it But for, for like three years, yeah. I feel like the Boston Red Sox, which are a team, they're also an organization yeah. that has layers to it, right? You got a Portland. You got a Worcester. You got layers. You're mm. supposed to have some layers of 
They couldn't find a first baseman for a full year. Two. Or two. Second baseman didn't have. No. Nope. Now shortstop they don't have. No. Nope. How does that happen to the Boston Red Sox organization? It's a great question, Andy. It really is. You want? Would you like to leave too? Would you want to go hand out cookies with Razor? I, would, I, I thought yeah. we were going to get cookies. It's a great no, we're question. getting pizza today because it is uh, Coop's last day. So Can we we're get doing buffalo chicken pizza. Part? No, we're just we how about hot honey? Adding on hot honey. Ooh, I Listen, like you guys, you guys that. sound like my kids. Hot honey pizza. I've that heard hot that's honey, good. Daddy. Is that good? <laughs> oh, hot honey's, honey's great. Best. Oh, it's I've never best. tried it. Oh, it's awesome. Hot honey. Oh my god. Yeah, it's the best. Can we get one of those? I'll look into it. Hot honey pepperoni. I'll look into Andrew. Thanks, Christian. You want to you want to answer his question? Yeah, it's a great question. Are you stalling? This is this is where. You know, okay, so like you take a 2018 team, right? You're coming in the offseason, your rotation is loaded, your lineup is loaded, and everything else. It's really hard to sign un- like minor league free agents, you know, because if let's say I'm a minor league free agent, I'm a pitcher, and I'm sitting there going, where am I going to crack? You got Sale, you got Price, you got Erod, you got all these guys. So I, I can't get in there. Why would I sign with you? There's no opportunity there. Your infield's loaded, your outfield's loaded. This team here, this offseason, when you looked around the team, it was so thin in the rotation. And, like, the second to last day of camp, you brought in Chase Anderson. Like, the only veteran. Like, you should have had minor league free agents jumping at the opportunity to playing for you. Right. Because there could be a lot of opportunity. I don't know if you knew it or not, but they had a lot of question marks in the rotation. You, know, you should have had, like, like a defensive first shortstop should have been like, I'm with you. You know, story. I don't know. He's been injured the last couple of years. You know, his agent's like, hey, this is a good spot for you. You could have an opportunity. Guy gets banged up. Who knows? Or, or def- you know what I mean? Like, a right-handed bat corner infielder, you know, and it's like you should have signed there because, you know, they got two lefties and, hey, there's an injury away. You could be that guy. They got Right now they got Dahlbeck on the roster. There could be an opportunity for you. And it, it, there was none of that. You know, that's where, like, the lack of depth. And, listen, it's challenged early on. You know, Romy Gonzalez, like, he's probably made one of those guys they brought in. He goes out and actually looks really good day one. And then I see him next day in a splint in the locker room, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I know if there we, was if there was if it wasn't for bad luck, but but hold that hold that thought because okay. there's there's two pizza uh, two pieces. Now I got pizza. I like mind. pizzas. I'll two, take two pizzas, pieces of pizza. hot yeah. honey pizza, <laughs> buffalo chicken too, please. There's Extra blue things. cheese for dipping. There's, there's no blue thing, cheese. There's two things that I'm hearing right now during these uh, broadcasts that you're on with Dave O'Brien. I want to play that for you, but there's also I feel like we have our first sign that Tom Brady could possibly be coming back to the NFL. And there's a couple teams that mm. I think the fans out there may be interested in hearing. We'll do that. We'll come right back Great with uh, Lou Maloney and uh, Andy Hart. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This.
Uh, talk about overcorrecting. If you go to Twitch <laughs> right now, you'll see Lou, Mer- Lou Merloni has decided that he's sick of being, what do you call him, the lowest seated person here at the table, and now he's overcorrected. Now his you might going to work. Money, am I right? I can't bend down. Yeah, it hurts. This is probably not. I'm telling you, you're gonna you're whole... gonna fall, huh? I, you're not as athletic as you think you I, are. Oh Lou. wow! Did you see me get up here? I was like a cat. Well, how scared? Yeah, right. How scared were you that he was going to eat it? No, I'm fine. Yeah. I thought that the chair would roll out. He would hit his face like on the table, and then we would both go, not it for mouth to mouth. No, I'm right. good. <laughs> nope, not I'm doing I'm good. It. I don't know if I no, can do this much longer, though. This is I not think, very comfortable. Well, but while you figure that out, let me read this because ahead, you, read. you are a guest. Socks inside a Lou Maloney on oh, Russian down. Fourier. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Hold oh, on. Boy. Oh, wait. Oh, boy. There it is. Oh. I landed it. Uh, Lou Maloney is brought to you by Shaw's and Star Market, where you can uh, win free groceries in their Grand Slam Summer Sweet Steaks. And Lou joins us uh, on the Harbor One Hotline. No, not really. He joins us in person. Read verbatim. Yeah, I know. Uh, so here- Lou screwed me yesterday. How? You were late with your promo. I was driving home yeah. from doing TV last night, and I'm listening. I'm almost home. And yeah. then you said that they had ground beef for 277 at Shaw's, and I was too far. I wasn't going to turn around. It was raining. You're going to go back. Had you hit me like 10 minutes earlier, I get a good had deal. good tacos. Shaw's is open today. But you, you said it you ended need, on. Why uh, can't September, you guys add uh, like a, uh, oh, you know, yeah. use the, you know, the, the promo code, uh, hey, Lou sent me. To get even a bigger Couldn't discount. Couldn't I just walk in and be like, hey, I know Lou. <laughs> I know Lou personally. You know Lou? I know Lou. We all know hey, Lou. Hook Lou, me up with the Lou. Lou? Hey, Give me the Lou special. Uh, all right, well, listen. Here's the, I want you to listen to these two things. I think, oh, this okay, is, yeah, I think yeah. you're going to be hearing a lot of this. Oh, and if no. you're already kind of at acceptance now, yes. this early, it's not yes. even May yet. Yeah. I have a feeling, Andy, we're going to be hearing a lot of this from Dave O'Brien and Will and probably yourself. Tying run aboard on a play that should have been made. An inning that should have been over on a double play turn. Again, it's the lost opportunities. It should have been over, should have been made. Like, easy stuff, generic stuff, routine stuff. Same crap that you saw and watched last year. And it's happening again. I I mean, and and I don't even know if you can be angry, you know, Mm. because maybe that's one of the stages because... Not to use, uh, go back to the phrases that Gerard Mayo is not allowed to use. It is what it is. Yeah, no. It, it just, it is. It's just accept it. And that that's kind of like where you're at. Like, you know, yesterday you look at the infield, like Emmanuel Valdez, David Hamilton, Pablo Reyes. And, and it's just. Good spring training lineup. Yeah, you were hoping. Well, they, Devers, play, they play Northeastern. Yeah, you were hoping. Split <laughs> squad match. Hey, what is, Northeastern. Northeastern isn't even here. Yeah, but it was, even, it was even like, you know, the trip. You know, I mean, Seattle, I thought you played well, but you didn't have Devers for two games. You didn't have Jansen for a game, but it wasn't this. And I get it. Nobody watched out West, but it certainly wasn't this. It got ugly a couple times, but maybe you were playing the A's, and that's why you won three instead of maybe two the way you played. But it's just this is what you're sort of down to. You know, I mean, think about, like, if the three starting wide receivers for the Patriots get hurt and the three backups go in, you know, you're going to – yeah. Blame them for not being all pros, Isn't like the it players. Similar though, uh, you know, Isn't it's, it, no, that's a perfect example because they're not going to have a good wide receiving core, and then if you have all get to hurt. go to the backups of all those guys within the first week, game one, three right. of them all get hurt. You're now you go to week squad. two, going now what? Like go make a trade, really? Week two, right? Like week two, like go get a defensive shortstop. So I put a team together. We have a good team. I have a defensive shortstop as my utility guy. We're ten games into it, and you want me to trade him to you? We got him for a reason in case our guy goes down. It's not my fault you don't have one. See, I was – You know, like, yep. they're not going to make a trade. So I was uh, listening to Wiggy the other day uh, talking about um, the defensive issues and, you know, with Devers and just really all the infielders. As uh, And it came down to coaching. Like, hey, core should do something about this. Core should be, should be better at that. And I'm listening to this. I'm saying, okay, I could tell you, give you every last bit of advice – I, you can go out early and practice, you know, as many grounders as possible, turning two. I can do as much as possible. The reality is that you're just not as talented as somebody else who can do it better, more consistency at this level. Is it as simple as that, or is coaching an issue? You want me to be a better defensive team? Give me defensive players. I know, but well, listen, a coach, a good this manager. Is all you have. Hold on, a good manager. 
no. should be able to no. coach. You're in the pros. No, you're a major the, league ball player. This, this what do you the, mean? This is the big leagues, okay? Like, like this, this is major league baseball. Your manager should not be sitting there reminding guys to touch second base when they're turning <laughs> two. You know, they shouldn't, it shouldn't, you know, routine ground ball, if it's not made, it's not the manager's fault. You know, it's not your fault. Grady Lou used to always joke with me and say, Lou, it ain't your fault. It's a scout that drafted you, assigned you. Oh, that, <laughs> it's his that, fault. That's, that's, that's not even yeah. funny I mean, in a say little it, bit. He'd say it with a laugh, with you know, a, and again. With a love and I, a wink. You know, and I, it hurt I, a little. I, yeah, <laughs> it's like, it still hurt. The real was, the it, hurt was real. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, I, I use like football analogies because I think it's like, it's understandable. Yeah. Like, you want to be the Miami Dolphins. You want speed. You want to be a fast team. Well, guess what? If your player is Jacoby Myers and all these other wide receivers that are slow and you want to be fast, is it the coach's fault that your wide receivers can't run fast? No. Give me fast players. Draft fast players. Sign fast players. Like, you want me to be a good defensive team? Like, like don't have my backups be subpar defenders. You know, like, you look at the Orioles. You know the infield they have in their bench? He won the gold glove two years ago. It was the best defensive third baseman. Mm. He's their utility guy. He won a gold glove. So are they a good well, defensive team? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Their bench is a good defensive team. Like, if it's like you can put it on Cora and sit there and say, oh, you know, it's like you don't run the base as well. It's like, well, you get to the big leagues, you should be able to run the bases. You should be able to catch a ground ball. You should be able to catch a fly ball because, by the way, that's how you got there. You know, it's like, so it's, you can blame him for not being like, you know, coaching good defense, but. <laughs> So Give me better defensive players, and I'll show you I can coach defense. So <laughs> let me ask you another uh, question that's probably tough to answer or doesn't need an as answer or whatever. As possible. Like, you don't have stars. You didn't go out and get Shohei Otani or no. any of these guys, and you also didn't fill out the bottom of the roster. Like, you can say, oh, they have a certain fiscal model and long-term plan, and that's why they're not handing out massive contracts. Why are you not bringing in depth? Why do you not have star power or depth? Why do you not have high end or low end? It's a good question. <laughs> It is. I mean, when the season starts, it's really simple. You look down at AAA, and you say, what do I got? I need two starters down there. Who's the first outfielder getting called up? Uh, I need a defensive shortstop. I need a corner infielder who can play first and third. Maybe he needs a right-handed bat, left-handed bat. I need a, def- I need a catcher, a big league catcher. Right. And they got that, Tyler Heineman, down there. So it's like, so forget about your big league roster. It's like, hey, what's my AAA roster? Do I have a guy at every spot in case something goes down I can call up? When something when, when, not in case, exactly. When, when something happens, and so this is Breslow. You could say there's there's some holes. They have a defensive catcher. They have a big league catcher down there. Um, you know, right now, like Romy Gonzalez, if that wrist is bad, Bobby Dahlbeck's coming back up tonight. You know, if you know, you got an outfield situation now. Like I know Refsnet is coming back, but I don't think you have an outfielder in AAA on the roster. You know, I, I don't think you have another infielder. On the roster down there. You know, you've got some bullpen arms, but <clears throat> the big league team was thin and that triple A team you're sort of wondering like where does it where does it come from? Who's who's next? Well, these are all the issues I thought we'd hear about and talk about in August. <laughs> it's April twelfth. <laughs> you didn't get yeah. to mid April. Really it's not even the marathon Monday yet. You it's broke it's Lou before oh Marathon God. Monday. He's that's a broken man. A, that's true. That like, that happened quick and he's strong. And they started seven and three oh, on a West it's, Coast uh, trip yeah. and they still yeah. broke him. I'm acceptance. I just I show up. I love baseball. I hope tonight is a great game. If not, like, I appreciate watching a guy, team like the Orioles because they're they're a good baseball <laughs> I team. Like them. I hope tonight I appreciate the Red Sox more than the Angels. You know, so it's just I'll show up and, uh, you know, looking for a Hawk to continue it, and hopefully they can put the bullpen together and get a W, and it's just that's how you know, I approach it. I just I love watching baseball and talking about it. See, so I, it's, I, I think I have a way to make you feel better. This is important. This pizza. is really important. This no, is good pizzas, therapy for me. This today. is I think I have hot honey? something. No, I did get you the hot honey. Mm-hmm. Okay. We get buffalo chicken? Okay. No. What? Because okay, look still. at me. I'm in a bad place. Jeez. No, no, I'm going to make you feel Take better. Take care boy. What if I told you Talk to me. that there is a real possibility – Yes. That Tom Brady could be coming back to play NFL football. Oh, can I put $183 million on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. And we are going to talk Otani. We got to get into Otani. All that's Brady coming back. up next. That would cheer me up. If you missed Jones and Mego yesterday, you missed. You're going to prison, but he's getting.
This hour, Gresham Fourier is brought to you by Jackson Lumber and Millwork. You're listening to Gresh and Fourier on WEEI. Save us as a favorite on the Odyssey app. And take Boston Sports Original everywhere you go. Could he come back? Would he come back? We're talking about Tom Brady. And just before we get into this Tom Brady uh, podcast that he was on, Danny Green, three-time NBA champion, will join us at 1120. Um, I don't know what you guys have noticed about the Celtics, but their give a crap factor is at like zero. <laughs> mm, I saw like, that in that Bucks game. <laughs> just zero. They don't care at all. Settle in. You're like, I want to watch this game. It's yeah. going to be a good game. Nope. Nobody even went. There's no what was it like one foul. There in the was whole game? two like, free throws <laughs> attempted <laughs> yeah. in the entire game. It's the first time ever a team in the NBA has not Shut attempted out. a free throw. That's yeah. nuts in itself. So that's going to happen at 11:20. But first, let's get to this because I told you I was going to make you feel better. Go ahead. So Tom Brady was on a real unique concept podcast. I, I don't know if anybody's ever seen any shows that have done in like a, a barbershop. I'd say like, let me think of the most unique idea I can think of. I'm going to do an interview at a barbershop. But at People. least this one is an actual haircut. Yeah. Th- and this LeBron's point time, is the shop. Yeah. You're just sitting in a yeah. shop. It's fake. They're, they're Brady using had his hair cut. cutting hair. Yeah. So he, it's something called a deep cut podcast. And, uh, Here's what Tom Brady said about returning to play. Let's say one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders look, could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Hmm. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape. Always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back. I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Well, I'll start with you, Lou. I mean, do you feel better now with the idea? At least he's open to the idea. I mean, he cites a couple teams. He even talks, he references Michael Jordan, so he knows it's possible. Yeah, why why wouldn't you? Like, why wouldn't you? Even if you you, you draft one of these kids, you have Brady kind of there for a year. Why why wouldn't you? I'd take him back. How about this? How about just go with Brady? (laughs) <laughs> Trade down, get a wide receiver and a tackle oh, somehow in the no, first no, round. No, 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 and no. just build around Tom Brady at 46. <laughs> He's got a solid five years in him. At least, right? Well, hell, you'll probably get more out of him than you do some rookie quarterback who, whose average uh, lifespan as a starter after getting drafted is like two and a half, three years. Yes, yes I, I think his career's over. over. I do. Even his arrogant. Did you hear his arrogance? So he's like, I'll always be in shape. I'll I'm not so sure it is. You know me. I'm always. Brady Belichick's I'm always, gone. I always get in the gym. Well, that's back. the underlying uh, issue here. He he brought up Patriots. I wish Vic Blades or whatever his name was had kind of pivoted there. When you're because Vic, you're talking about Vic Blades, the host of uh, is that not his name? No, no, I'm just oh okay. You you just said Vic Blades. I'm just throwing it out there like everybody knows who Vic Blades is. Come on, oh Vic, he's edgy. Oh yeah, yeah, the barber guy, the guy, the guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He's presenting Brady with that. And hold on, the whole Vic Blades thing. It's like a porn name. Oh, you, like you don't think Blades is the barber's last real name? Like I mean, real last name? What are we name? doing here? Like, I mean, Fabio Fabrizi is the weatherman <laughs> in Rhode Island. You don't think Fabrizi is the guy's real oh, name? Man, um, but he brings up a a very um, an honest hypothetical idea. Oh, the 49ers, a team that's built, but maybe their QB gets hurt. Right. So that's an interesting question. But <laughs> Lou still hates his chair. You are still fighting chairs. Yo, I'm dropped we, an F-bomb there quick. How about that one? Just grab that one. That's the that's one the he put away. One. Oh, that's what he put Jeez, holy it's the low Where's one. the hot How about the one behind you? <laughs> oh, fine. Check that one next break. Yeah, he's going to wake <laughs> his way what? through. Come here. Take my chair. No. Come on. I want the this hell chair. hell is going on in here? No, no, no. I don't need Come your on. chair. Take my chair. No, because your chair's warm gonna, and smelly. Gonna break. Just keep your chair. It's warm and stinky. Stinky ass anyways. Um... But he brings up the 49 and Brady interjects with, or the Patriots, and it's yeah. like, yeah. that's on the tip of your tongue. That's yeah, on the top is. of a, th- a, a third overall pick team. Not a playoff team that might need a quarterback in, in January because of an injury. Patriots need a quarterback now. I wish Vic Blades had pivoted there and kind of gone down that road. But I'm with you, Lou. So in a different way. The, the idea of you trading build down, around him? that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Build Phil Perry him. brought up last night on TV, why don't we just draft... <laughs> I'm with you. Just draft Marvin Harrison at number three, sign Tom Brady, draft a tackle at 34, and we just built an offense that's, that can win. Uh, me and Phil are on the same page. Yeah, it's an idiot page. Why? Uh, no disrespect. Build around. I kind of like it. What are you going to do, suck? Oh, great, you have a top five pick next year. Yeah, you're going to... Yeah, but I don't have a quarterback. So what I do is I take Drake May, hashtag take Drake, I'm a maniac, maniac all night, 
and let him be mentored because Dan Orlovsky, I'm sure you've heard, says Drake May needs like two years of rest on the bench before he's ready. Well, then you don't take him at three. No, I do. He learns with Tom Brady, who just runs the offense. So now Alex Van Pelt, sorry, you're not running the offense. You get Drake May for a year. Go off on a, like a spring training side field and get Drake May ready for 2025. Because none of us wants to see Jacoby Brissett, correct? Well, do you, do Like I nobody just, wants to see Jacoby Brissett. Well, the only way you could sit a th- third pick overall if Brady's your quarterback. Exactly. That's because why he's perfect. By halftime of game, game one, if Brissett's starting, exactly. it's going to be like... Are you, what are we doing? So this is perfect. You you start Tom Brady as the ultimate shiny object to distract from the development of Drake May because otherwise, Jacoby Brissett, I need Drake May. We got Drake May chance at Gillette Stadium right out the gates if anybody else is the quarterback. Yeah. Tom Brady, and it's not going to go well, right? We know. I'm pretty sure he's going to win. What's what's the max Brady wins? Seven games? 14. <laughs> he's undefeated. What are you talking about? Brady never loses. I think people like, like kind of put him up on this, but like he's some some mythical <laughs> figure. I mean, they still yeah. don't have a left tackle, At least right? Ten. They still don't have a left he tackle. He doesn't need a left tackle. They still don't have a wide receiver. Tell me, he doesn't but, need okay. them either. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Because when he went anything. to when he went to Tampa, he brought in a tight end. He brought in a tight uh, wide receiver. He made sure he had weapons. I don't know how well he's going to do if the, he's throwing the, the, to Kayshawn Booty, if he who's gambling over. on every throw. There you go. So yeah, you know what? He just he's never happy. This guy. He real high he's maintenance. A, no, honestly, God, he's going to go back to who the little knew? Chair now. High maintenance. Oh, you oh sh- my you shrunk God, again. His forehead's talking now. Before it was his groin. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd still I still bring him in and build around him. If you ask me. <laughs> Wait, I'm telling you, I'm taller than you. I will take the short chair. You can have. Oh, is this a problem? No, no uh, it's, it's a good look for you. I mean, you. I just feel like Heidi Ho, lady you, neighbor. They, <laughs> <laughs> so I got him. There you go. That's better. I've just destroyed this show. Yes, you have. No, no, you've but that's actually okay. Improved uh, it based on where it was originally <laughs> going to go with the milkshake question. So, in all seriousness, if Tom sure. Brady called today, yeah. and said, "I'm sure you guys saw the podcast, Elliot, yes. Robert." Jonathan, Gerard, whoever the hell else is on the collaborative yeah. phone call. Yeah. Do they even consider it? Top half he's, he's a top half quarterback in the league right now. Does yeah. he consider it? No, do Abs- they consider it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And does it Absolutely. change the draft? Absolutely. Absolutely. It shouldn't. Hashtag well, take Drake. I, no, you you're this, you and you and this obsession with Drake May. I thought Merrill Hodge said he was gonna get people fired. Who gives a flying fandango what Merrill Hodge thinks? I, I'm with you. I'm just saying When it, did he it, become it, it, the w- god o quarterback? Oh, you know, I'll tell you why. You wanna know when? Because he, he was became, once right. He was I, like everybody else was right on Johnny Manzo. It just wasn't on right. first take. Yeah, it's one thing I love, like, you know, getting away from like the radio thing. Because like it's like you just sort of hit it in pockets. Remember, like, three months ago, it was like, dude, Drake May, no, uh, not accurate. Couldn't even win right. in North Carolina, all this other stuff. Now it's like you got to have him. J.J. McCarthy wasn't even in a discussion about four months ago. Now he's going. Now all of a sudden, J.J. McCarthy may actually somehow be the best quarterback in the draft because no. we haven't. I never once hype. watched Michigan and said, oh, yeah, they're going to win it because of their quarterback. <laughs> Nor not did, once. Jim yeah. Harbaugh Defense, didn't either. <laughs> running yeah. back, and it's like, well, they didn't need to. Oh, they knew they couldn't with him. Yeah. Like, and now all of a sudden it's like, no, he's the secret. He's the sneaky 60. He's the accuracy, <laughs> yeah, the best velocity. It's like, all right, Drake I May couldn't win I crap out in Carolina. Like, like it, it's, I. Uh oh, glasses dra- are coming just, off. Just draft the right guy. I'll just sit back. Like, if it, not, it you seems, get fired. It seems so easy. Well, they should get. I, I see that, and I don't know if you've seen this. GMs get more passes from by picking, making the wrong choice nowadays. It's almost like. Hey, the owner admits that it's really hard to do, and it's and it's not an exact science. And you know, I'm going to give you a couple misses. So if you miss on uh, Justin miss Fields, three. if you if you miss on Zach Wilson, if you miss on you know uh, all these quarterbacks that were dra- uh, Trey Lance, don't worry about it. I'll give you another turn. Like, so, if they almost admit by not firing these GMs that it's almost you know sometimes impossible to hit on a draft pick, especially if he's a quarterback. So give me the May argument. Because I have, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the argument lie. for him. Yeah, I haven't seen enough. He's of the him. most physically gifted quarterback in this class. He's the closest thing to a combination of John Elway and Josh Allen that you can find. He's big. He has a strong John arm. Elway. He's athletic. So why he was can he run. number one from the beginning? Because Caleb Williams is really good too. I, I keep hearing like there's a fear that he's Levis. So there's three. Will Levis, or Jake Locker, or Blake Bortles? So there's a fear with all that, these guys. There's though. a fear with all of them. Like, like the Caleb upside, Williams could be Kyler Murray, but Caleb Williams could be Patrick Mahomes. I think that's the Marvin selling Harris point. Is going to be good. Yeah, he'll be good. Marvin and if Harris he doesn't have a quarterback, be... he'll be on a bad team. Good. 
Mm. He'll be Calvin Johnson. He'll be asking for a trade in three years Hall out of, of New England. And then he'll just have to retire because is that what we're resigned to? Is that the guy that's going to be a Hall of Fame? Absolutely. I want. I want them Do you to want draft. to win, or you want me to throw passes? I to want a, him to a start drafting all pros. Okay. I want him to start drafting guys that are good, not go get a tackle that's a jag in the first round. Like I want him to start drafting pro bowlers, and what? if it's a tackle. Just make him be a pro bowler. If it's a wide receiver, make it be Calvin Johnson. Holy smokes. So the Saquon Barkley argument. We'll figure it out, yeah. The Saquon Barkley went two to the Giants, and he's a very good player. When healthy, he's an all-pro Calvin Not a player. running back. I don't want a running back. Oh, okay. oh they're so hard well, to find. They're parsing. so easy to find. I don't, I don't want a running back. You need a quarterback. The quarterback, believe me, I hate to say this. I'm a freaking fullback guy. I love yeah. James Devlin. I love linebackers. They're irrelevant. They are absolutely ir- The guy that matters in football is singular. I could go to your town. You tell me which team on the Pop Warner field has the better quarterback. Give me that team, and I'll place 100 on them to win because the quarterback in high school, Pop Warner College, and the NFL is the most important position. You need a quarterback. Right now you have Jacoby Brissett as your freaking placeholder. We're talking about a 47-year-old guy in a barber's chair coming out of retirement. That's how desperate you are. That's why you take Drake what May at three. The, what about the, the, the argument that you know, if you're a good team with roster, you need that quarterback? If you're basically an expansion team offensively, so then like you the probably just need to like build a roster first. You're going to suck again, nope. and then you dive back into it next year. Houston sucked until they got C.J. Stroud. That's Cincinnati not true. sucked until – that's absolutely true. They that's were picking, not true at all. They were picking oh. number two overall, Lou. You, that's they were worse wrong. than you. They, they, were, drafted, they, were they drafted wide receivers. They drafted offensive linemen for about three or four years. They right. actually built a young roster. Was Nico they Collins a good, good offensive line? He wasn't good until C.J. Stroud arrived. Well, of T.J. course. He's a wide receiver. Uh, Tank Dell – they drafted with him. the wide receiver. They took the defensive rookie of the year one pick after him. They dr- he changed they everything there. They signed and there. drafted an entire offensive line before they got CJ Stroud. They, were they got Tank Dell. They got overall. your boy Nico Collins. They actually he was got a, a jag. good quarter, what, tight end in Schultz. They built the team and all of those them people and then got their quarterback. And all of those people were picking number two overall. But they were you, number two. They were worse than you. Are they talented? So then they got the quarterback and what did they do? They went to the playoffs. and They won a playoff once game. they the drafted. Talent. The Bengals then were they told. Fit in the quarterback. I listen to, to your guy Chris Shine. Yeah, on this station, tell me, don't take Joe Burrow. You have a terrible roster. You are the Bengals. You need a tackle. You need a this. You need a that. See, you lost. You know who they shine. took? They took Joe Burrow. Yeah, you know, know where they went? Shine. Shine. The Skinny Super shine. Bowl. The yeah. quarterback is the most important position in sports. It changes everything, both on the field and what did you hear this off season? Saquon Barkley, you know where he wanted to go? Not Philly. You know where he wanted to go? New England. Houston. Not New England. (laughs) Houston. The quarterback draws people in. It allows you to trade for Stephon Diggs. Get a number one wide receiver. It changes the locker room. It changes the transaction. I just think they built it around Stroud before he got there. I think they did. They tried. Yeah, they they tried. good players. And then they found the quarterback to put it all together. No, no, no. They got the quarterback that pulled it all together. Because sure. all those good players you had were picking number two <clears> overall. <throat> I'm just afraid of being the Jets. Draft a quarterback and have no talent around him, and the guy's got no chance to succeed, and you got to dive back into it in three years because he's got nothing. Don't wait me off. Nothing. Son. We have a guest coming. Where's my hot honey? It's on its way. <laughs> Poor Coop. Poor Coop going back and forth between you two. I tell you, this hosting thing is so easy. You just sit <laughs> back so and listen. <laughs> just so easy. I just sit back, put my feet up, and just wait. Oh, look at that. We got a trend. Uh, oh, it's Danny Green, uh, three-time uh, NBA champion, um, will join us uh, right after trending, and the pizza is on its way. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending is brought to you by the Shaws and Stop Market Grand Slam Summer Sweepstakes. The Orioles scored six runs in the top of the 10th to complete the three-game sweep over the Red Sox with a 9-4 win. Isaiah Campbell got the loss for the Sox, giving up five earned runs on four hits in the 10th inning. Tonight, the Red Sox begin a three-game series with the Angels at Fenway Park. First pitch is at 7-10 on the Shaws and Style Market, WEEI Red Sox Network. Shaw is perfecting the out of fresh. Tanner Houck gets the start for the Sox against the Angels, Reed Detmers. Don't forget to tune into the Mass Mutual Red Sox pregame show at 6-10 with Rich Keefe. It's back-to-back losses for the Celtics after last night's 118-109 loss to the Knicks. Jalen Brunson led the way for New York with 39 points. The Seas are right back at it tonight when they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off at the TD Garden is at 7-30. Yesterday in the men's frozen Four and men's frozen four action. Boston College defeated Michigan four to nothing, and Boston University lost to Denver two to one in overtime. The national championship game between number one BC and number three Denver will be tomorrow night. Puck drop is at six. The call of the championship game can be heard on WEEI AM 850 with coverage beginning at 545. The Bruins return to the ice tomorrow night when they play the Penguins in Pittsburgh. Face off is at eight o'clock. Also tomorrow night, the Revolution will be in New York to play at New York City FC. Kickoff at Yankee Stadium is at 730. And checking in on the leaderboard of the 
masses. Bryson DeChambeau is still atop of the board at minus seven. The Shaw's and Star Market Grand Slam Summer Sweepstakes is back. This is your chance to win free groceries for a year, plus other incredible Boston sports and concert prize experiences. To enter, check your receipt for entry codes when you spend $50 or more. Official rules at GrandSlamSummerSweeps.com. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEEI and WEEI.com.
All right, Gresham Fourier now on to the Harbor One hotline. Danny Green uh, on the line right now is Odyssey NBA insider Danny Green. Insider calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai uh, 2024 Santa Fe equipped for adventure. Danny, how you, how you doing today? You're on with uh, Lou Merloni, former Major League Baseball player, very <laughs> successful pro career, and some other guy named mm. Andy Hart who never played at any pro level <laughs> ever. Screw you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you guys having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So we're getting closer to the playoffs, and obviously, I know you've been watching the the Celtics, and it just seems like their give a crap level is at zero. Uh, what do you make of the way mm-hmm. they've been playing? Um, I, I'm more so. I, I guess I'm looking at it as toward the end of the season. They pretty much they clinched the spot. They're number one. I don't think anybody's catching them. So I, I thought they would rest people, but they, they aren't. So at this point, they might as well if you're going to, you know, have that level of care. But I feel like they're just trying to keep rhythm. They're trying to play and hoop. I don't know how serious they're taking it, but it seems like the rest days, hopefully that's the mindset because right now the last couple of games, they haven't looked like themselves. Danny, you were on some of those great teams in San Antonio um, and maybe you saw a few end of the seasons like this. How do you balance the rest, make sure you're sharp? Do you just flip the switch, make sure everyone's healthy or – or have you seen some, maybe in your experience, maybe sitting guys didn't exactly help go into the playoffs? No, 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 no. There's no flipping a switch. You can't turn it on and off like when you want and you mm-hmm. feel like it. But, yes, that, that's on the coach. We rested guys, and it always helped. Um, you always want to give them some, some games um, to relax, and obviously you also want to keep them in rhythm. So coach has to figure out how to do that, how to balance it, how to keep guys fresh but also in shape. So uh, I think, like, the best approach would be, you know, take, like, maybe the last two games pretty good or, like, at least a half of, like, first or second half of the last two games so guys get their minutes and rhythm. But the games prior to that, probably, you know, rest of two two or three games. Um, yeah, especially if you said you had that number one seed locked in, the biggest uh, issue now is just health, you know. Yeah, you know, because so, cause Danny, because they lose last night, 118-109. The starters get pulled in, like, the third quarter. The crowd starts booing because they're just irritated with the bad basketball. You mentioned how you, can't, you, just, you just can't be a, you know, flip-the-switch team. But I feel like they're dismissing, like, what's happening. It's almost like, hey, no big deal. Even there was audio of Jason Tatum saying, hey, I can't, you know, the next time we get on a, on a plane, it's going to be for real. I feel like that's a problem. I think it could be, yeah. Um, we'll see when it happens. It doesn't look good right now, but they are a really good team that could, <clears throat> excuse me, that could, I guess, turn it on. I mean, but they're young, so you don't want to be, you know, in that type of realm or mindset with a young group. You kind of want them always locked in. But so they, they've got the number one seed, and, you know, they should be taking it, everything for real, but – it's not a good sign going into the playoffs right now, but as I, they have the, the home court locked up, and they have a couple games to get it together, and also to rest if they need to. They're in a good position, but as I, they need to probably tighten up in that in the last couple games, honestly. Danny, the Celtics inked uh, Drew Holiday to a long-term extension uh, this week. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that gives him some comfort, motivation, whatever a positive may be heading into the postseason. Flip side of it is, uh, the talking point around here is, oh, does that mean they don't have money to keep Derek White around? Do contract extensions like that this time of year, can they play a role with the the mindset of a, of a guy and of a team heading into the postseason? For sure. I think Drew deserves every dollar. Very good player, even better person. Um, and, you know, floor leader and locker room leader. So that's why they, get, they kept him. I, I think they'll figure out a way to keep Derek as well. Um, I don't think Derek's thinking about that, but I know it helps probably Drew be comfortable. Like, all right, I have a future here. I'll be here for a while. Uh, they did earlier in the year with Porzingis. I'm sure they'll try to figure out Derek this summer, but um, I, said, I don't think other people's contracts affect the guys that are playing or, or other guys around them mindset. It could, but Derek is a, a vet now. He's been in the league for a while. He's played in San Antonio. He's professional. He knows how he's not the type to turn it on and off, and he's going to, be playing his game regardless of the situation, regardless of contracts. And I expect all those guys to show up, especially him, uh, and, and play their best basketball when the time is necessary. Danny, this this team, for the most part, the core, you know, they've lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. They lost in the NBA Finals. Yet they have the best record in the NBA. Do you, do you look at a team like that that is yet to get over the hump as the clear favorite in the NBA Finals? or And if not, like who would, who would be the team 
you'd be most concerned with? Is it out west? I, I, I think they're the clear favorite in the east. I wouldn't say the NBA Finals. Um, if they were mature and showing those signs, then yes, they would be. But so there's something about them that shows vulnerability, and people are not 100% sold. So with that being said, they better so tighten up these last couple of games because the East is very wide open, but the playoffs, there's no easy nights, and any team could shock you. You don't want to see Miami again in that A seed or Philly, and you're not playing your best basketball. That's not what you you know want to see happen. So we're talking to Danny Green, uh, 15 years in the league. He is our Odyssey insider, and Insider Calls are brought to you by the all-new Hyundai uh, 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure with capable features like available H-Track all-wheel drive and standard third-row seating. I'm wondering if uh, if uh, we all get a free uh, Hyundai for this uh, <laughs> this deal, and if you're rolling around in your Hyundai, you can uh, Santa Fe. Um, Danny, um, when you look at the MVP race, you know, I know it's basically over, at least I'm assuming it's over. I saw this thing on Kevin Hart, you know, doing this podcast, like, uh, you know, alternate broadcast of one of the games, and he's talking about Nikola Jokic can't win the MVP, MVP again. You just can't give it to him again. It's like there's this cap or this limit on it, especially when you have guys like SGA, Brunson, Tatum, uh, 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 Doncic, or even, uh, even Anthony Edwards, right? Um, mm-hmm. it, it, do you agree with that? Is it is it turning? If you win it too much, does it turn into just let somebody else have it? I don't think he's at that point where he's won it too much. He's won it twice. There's people that have won it more than three or four times. So, um, I think more people, people, fans would like to see other people. You know, it's a regular season award, and I think people have really great regular seasons. Obviously, Denver has had an unbelievable regular season, but he usually turns it up even more in the playoffs. Uh, but just, people would like to see other people win it, and I think Shea was my MVP until he sat out the last you know couple weeks or so. He's back now, but um, Luke has really turned it up a notch. I like the way he's been playing, and, and Dallas has been balling. Uh, so those two for me were uh, other options that were best um, outside of Jokic. But you know Jokic has been been playing well and hasn't missed many games and putting up the same numbers he's put up in the past. So if he deserves it, he rightfully so should get it. Um, but, yes, people do, I think, get tired of seeing the same person win the same awards over and over. Why, you know, you you didn't see Dwight Howard win, you know, defensive player of the year like three or four times, you know, or four times uh, because they're just tired of seeing, you know, he, he could have gotten it more, more than once. Um, same with LeBron. LeBron's going to got MVP more than four times, but they're tired of seeing it happen. So, uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, I think there's, there's a chance that somebody may shock us. And I said Luca could be the one. I said if he finishes off the regular season in Dallas somehow, I don't know, sneaks into the top three or something like that, which I, I doubt happens. But they sneak in there. Luca could be in serious consideration. Yo, know, Dan, you talk about the Celtics team. There's some vulnerabilities, and obviously, you know, the 62 win team. So you, you kind of pick at times. But I think one constant that I think fans get frustrated with, you know, in the playoffs, it's going to come down to the last shot. And and we've seen it repeatedly with this team over the years. It's basically four guys in the corner, give the ball to Tatum with 15 seconds left, let him dribble it down to three, and take a fadeaway. Like it, it's mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Do you see that in that Celtics? Is that one of the issues you're talking about? And what can they do differently? Yeah, they do a lot of settling, and it's not just that. It's overall they fall in love with the three ball. I think you know they first team in NBA history to not attempt a free throw in a game, which is kind of crazy. They got to get more inside, more to the free throw line. You, you see certain stars, like even James Harden, Trey Young, uh, you know Cole, Brian, Those guys knew how to get to the free throw line if the game wasn't going well or score in other ways besides shooting threes and creating in other ways. Um, they're very capable of scoring at the rim and very capable of getting to the mid range and free throw line, uh, but they do fall in love with the three lot and settle, and they do do a lot of iso ball, one on one, my turn, your turn. When it comes to the fourth quarter, and you don't see as much execution or continuity, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people aren't as sold on them because that it's meanwhile these are great players but that's not the best offense and not the most efficient when you're trying to win games especially in the playoffs talking with odyssey uh, nba insider danny green here danny sort of building off that question stars win and lose whether that's fair or not in the playoffs in all sports really do you consider jason tatum clutch a closer or does he still need to prove that no, I do. I consider him that. He definitely is a clutch and a closer. Um, he, and not every star or every 
superstar is very consistent in that area. It doesn't mean that they're not clutch. It's just not an easy area to be the best in. You know what I'm saying? Like the most efficient in. It's a very low clock. It's not a lot of time. Yeah, superstars win, help win play. But I think really the people that help you win series and playoff games are your role players. And you need an X factor to show up and, and give you some. Hi, Danny. Ooh, we lost him. We lost Danny Green. I'm sure he was. Ran out of energy. You want to uh, check and see? Uh, okay, so we lost Danny Green real quick, and I was just getting ready to ask him my very important question. Oh, I'm sure you were. Oh, the milkshake? The milkshake question. The milkshake question. It's, 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 you know, here's a guy that played, you know, what, 15 years in the league, won three titles, three different teams. Uh, uh, a 62 uh, team win should not be, like, vulnerable. They shouldn't but they be, are. Ex- they shouldn't yeah. be exploitable. And I would say there's a difference between like the way the the way the you know, Celtics are running through the East compared to how difficult the West is with you know Denver and Minnesota and OKC and the Suns and you know I'll throw the Lakers in there because who the hell knows they got a puncher's chance of anything even though they'll probably get bounced. Um, but, they, they, but they have a great team. It, it just baffles me that we've seen the same endings of games yeah. the last two or three years. Like it hasn't worked. It's never worked. I don't know if you're just going to keep doing it in the hopes that it does work, that the fadeaway three with two seconds to go, double teamed, rather than just running an offense and, and trying to get it, Tatum moving around and you have other options that can finish. Is that the beauty of, like, Porzingis and Drew Holiday, to have other options rather than just say, down one, tie game, here's the ball, dribble, dribble, down to seven, make a move and shoot? Like, it's never worked. It hasn't worked. I have zero confidence it's going to start working. And that's going to be the difference at some point. You're not going to blow everybody out in the playoffs. Yes. So it's Tatum. Like that, to me, you just said a lot of words, it's Tatum. Because like, they that's have what, decided to him. Yeah. Tatum is their guy. Tatum is their leader. Tatum is their closer. And Danny believes he's clutch. And oh, you know, you, you know, a lot of guys aren't consistent there. Yeah, and those guys aren't great. If you're great in that area and you're clutch, that's why you're Steph Curry. That's why you're Dame Lillard. That's why you build that reputation and resume. And Tatum's is... Yeah, he does it sometimes. All so the great uh, finishes don't just dribble like that. They come off screen. No, they, they find a way though. Right? They find a way. He yeah, doesn't sorry. find a way. Sorry. Sorry. Re- no, no, no. The host yeah, is angry. I, no, no. Oh, wait, so I was just about to say goodbye to Danny Green, but sure enough, uh, Danny Green is back. Because um, I, I was just about to read the Danny. You there? You gonna bring him back? Oh, no, no, there you go. Out. I don't. I don't even remember. Uh, like what question we were asking you, but I'm going to end it with Tomas this. Tatum being a oh, clutch. There you go. clutch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. clutch. But I, I was saying, I think the role players are the ones that really win playoff games. Yeah. You're going to need Derek White and Drew, those guys step up, Sam Howes or Pritchard. But yes, the Stars are supposed to do what they're supposed to do, and I think he is clutch. He just hasn't been as consistent. I said he's, he's a younger star, and he hasn't been as consistent as most people would like him to be. So, you know, I think this year he'll show the maturity each year taking that step. To where you know he's more trustworthy, but ultimately, I think your role players need to win you a lot of those playoff games. So, uh, Danny, um, you played 15 years in the league. You uh, played for six different teams. You won three uh, NBA championships. You're now the host of Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. It's a podcast. It drops every Thursday. You can find it on the Odyssey app. You can find it on YouTube and everywhere podcasts are available. But Danny Green, can you answer this question? What do you mean, oh, my God? You don't need to, oh, my God. Man. It's a terrible question. Oh, we should let you know. Stop it. Just let me answer the Let me ask the question. Danny Green, okay. if you were making a Boston Celtics postseason milkshake, what ingredients would you be adding? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can answer that question. You can't. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's stupid. I'm sorry. Um, it's a, but a post. Wait. A post it's a, there you go. Milkshake. Yeah. yeah it's all, you already kind of got the try. normal ingredients. What are you adding to it to make it even better? Oh, um, and this is talking about the, the the team and bench of what they think you think they need. Is that what you're saying? We, we're not really sure. No, no one has any nobody, idea what no, he's talking about. Nobody can answer the questions. It's it's cryptic. It's, it's broad. It's very vague. Yeah. It's very vague, Danny. It is very vague. <laughs> well, not when, when I'm thinking basketball analogy, I'm thinking they need a little more depth. That's all. I, like maybe one okay. or, one piece that could help. That could be a veteranship and a leader in a locker room. So. When you're talking about that type of ingredient, there I think that's the one thing that they could be lacking. So I like it. There you go. That's, 
That's my answer. That's a tasty milkshake. You did the best you could with a bad question. Well done. I have no idea. (laughs) In terms of food, I have no Uh, idea what to put in there. Well, Danny, we'll be uh, we'll be talking to you throughout the uh, the playoffs. So we appreciate you taking some time today to come on and join us, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. And that was Odyssey NBA insider Danny Green. Insider calls are brought to you by the all new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe, equipped for adventure. Now, would you say Hyundai or Hyundai? Jesus, I'm sorry. How long have you been out of radio? Milkshake. I'd say milkshake. milkshake. We say milkshake. Yeah. Hey, I want to play this for you real quickly because I think the biggest issue moving forward is just the the, the way the the Celtics are kind of dismissing everything that's happening. It's like it's like it's no big deal. And here's uh, Christoph uh, Porzingis last night uh, reacting to the booze the team uh, had uh, in the third quarter. It is what it is. It is what it is. No, it's it's not who we are. Obviously. This is not, you know, we, we got booed at the end for a reason, you know. This is not the, the fans, this is not the team that our fans love, you know. This this wasn't that display, but best believe we're going to show up when, when we need to. And and uh, we have a week of work now ahead of us and, and a couple games um, to bounce back and uh, and get 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 going on all, all cylinders because we know what the goal is and, and make no mistake about that. So, yeah, so they got two games left, the Hornets and the Wizards. I just feel like it's a problem. I feel like they're dismissing what's happening, and it's just they, it kind of feels like they just go, listen, we don't care. It's not important. They lack motivation, and you can tell by the fact that they get out-rebounded, uh, too many extra sh- chances for the opposing team. And I feel like this is a problem. Me too, because they're not established. I would feel differently if this was like a team with a couple titles, veteran-led but when you're trying to – Lou, you talked about, oh, they've lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. They've lost in the – you're losers. You, well, you end every season with a loss. You've never ended a season with a win, and you're not ending the regular season in winning fashion. Yeah, and I kind of feel like – I kind of compare it to, say, like the 18 Red Sox, who were great. But they were filled with a roster that had struggled the previous years in the postseason. The performances weren't there, right? Mookie wasn't swinging it. And, yep. And David Price, you were just looking at him like – and. And it was 18 was going to be one or the other. It was going to be like, I don't think this team's ever going to be able to win. They can't get over the hump. Or if they win it, they're literally going to be one of the better teams, Red Sox teams of all time. You know, and I feel like this is kind of where they are. Maybe not one of the greatest teams of all time, but still, 62, 64 wins. Who knows what they end up? That's a damn good season. Yep. So it's like one or the other. Like If they melt down again in the finals, it's going to get loud. Mm. Talking it about this group and what's wrong with it, something's wrong, and then you know, then there's other people gonna be like, oh, something's wrong. There's 62 the NBA Finals. Grow up. It's like, well, it's, maybe it's just his talent. They, here. they have they have heart. a real. They you got you got to get over that hump. What about heart? If the not, there's line. gonna be people questioning everything. Text line says Celtics have no heart. We don't. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm gonna not dive going into that. Here's what the if thing. they lose? Here, here's what you can't Immaturity. say anymore. Here's what you can't. Here's what you can't say. Because I have a special place in my heart. Ah. You can't say they're young. You can't like no. technically they're grown men. They played in multiple championships. They have a lot of like playoff experience. Like if this was a you know Jalen Brown for the first time being twenty six years old, I'd be like, well, he's a young guy, you know, young player, first time in this situation. You give him the benefit of the doubt. You can't give this team the benefit of the doubt uh, and say, oh, 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 well, they're young. They just paid Jalen. They just paid a, a Drew Holiday. They paid all these players. But immaturity doesn't exactly mean youth. Like you don't have a fifty-year-old buddy that's immature still. Well, he, he is I mean, a fifty-year-old you, buddy. You're my buddy that's <laughs> immature still. Like you're say, my version so of that. So when we hang out, you accept the adult role. I <laughs> <laughs> so accept but, but, the but that's childish the role. Point. That's like, fine. Just because you're making sixty million and you play in the league for six years oh, and you, man. you've got a lot of minutes and you've got a lot of experience, doesn't mean that you're not you don't play immature. Like, vulnerable, late in games. You don't know what it takes. And honestly, they're, like, on that edge. Because if they do win, we're going to talk about great of a team this is. If they lose, we're saying something is wrong. They need to be broken up. That's the oh my kind God, like of extremes we did like three you're years dealing ago. with, yeah, Break up the Jays. I mean, they're not going to break it up, yeah. but it's like, that's the extreme. Do you think that's why they paid Drew Holiday? Because they want him to be. He's got a ring. Yeah. They want him to be the leader, the mature guy, the veteran, whatever, and... If you don't know he's not if, whether he's going to be here next year, if you're Tatum and Brown and those guys, you're like, you might not even be here, so I'm not going to listen. Now you say he's here, he's the veteran sage needed, dude yeah. on this team, and Porzingis too. Now maybe there's not a ton yeah, of winning behind him. I get it, not a eh. ton of winning, but 
you were like sitting there saying, okay, you know, Mark is smart. It's like you needed some a veteran from an impact guy on the team, which is what Holiday is. Absolutely. From another organization to sit there and game three, when you're up two to one and you play like dog piss in game four, <laughs> to sit there and go, guys, hello. Like, uh... you got to figure it out. Like, you can't come out with up two to one and just think you can give a game away because you're on the road and we're going to win at home. There's no guarantees. You need that strong voice. Um, all right, so you know who's, who's got a strong voice? Who that? Tom E. Curran. Love Tom. He's at 12 o'clock. I still got to get your opinion of what's going on with Otani and this gambling scandal Nothing, that is, is just insane. <laughs> Nothing but, to see here. It is amazing. That's what Major League Baseball, is. I feel like, is trying to convince us of. But first, let's do the lunchtime parlay. We'll get to Tom, and then we'll do Otani. Yes. Okay? From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is WEEI. The sports
right, it's so a lunchtime parlay. So just a quick recap. Uh, Gresh, I guess we don't even get credit for him yet. It wouldn't matter anyways because Billy lost uh, athletics at Rangers, Capitals uh, for Nick at Sabres. Uh, Fourier, his uh, philosophy, that would be me. Uh, I took the Orioles, Lou. Oh. I took the Orioles over the Red Sox. Um, so let's start off today. Um, Hart's going to be picking for Billy. Lou, not Billy. Uh, for, I was for, like, Billy's for Andy, right there. For Andy. I am Lou, Andy. Uh, Lou and I are going to be sharing a pick. Oh, we are. What? Yeah. Uh, but let's start with Billy first. Billy, good morning. How are you? What's going on? What's happening? How are y'all? <laughs> so I'm going with, uh, there's a Royals-Mets games today, and I'm taking the uh, the Royals on the money line against the Mets. It's, uh, I'm trying to think. I got it. Now I'm looking it up because I didn't think you were going to come to me so quick. Just on the <laughs> But uh, Luis Severino <laughs> against Michael Walker. So I'm taking former Red Sox ace okay. Michael Walker Waka, Waka. to okay. beat the Mets. Okay. On All the right. money line. All right. I like it. Uh, Nick, like how about one. you? Are you ready, Nick? I'm ready. Okay. And it's real easy. Uh, I love easy. The White Sox are really bad. It's kind yep. of like Ooh. a full yay thing. The White Sox like are terrible. It. Already talked about firing their manager. And the Reds are actually kind of fun. So give me the Reds on the money line today in Chicago against the White Sox. I like fun. All right. Andy for Andy. You're up. So we talked about it. Uh, Celtics kind of laid an egg effort wise, execution, whatever. Boo. Uh, so the obvious answer is to bet on them to cover seven and a half tonight. <laughs> that is, uh, that's the philosophy I think, that I use. They're due. Yeah, they, well, they do. They, they, they hear good, the noise. They good talking to. They're young and athletic, and they're yep. going to have a point to prove. I think they're going to go out and blow the, some doors. Yeah. The do no, it's theory, not due. That's not how any of this works. The do theory, <laughs> though, is better when you talk about a good team. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, yeah you say the White Sox are due. No, no, they no, no, no. Uh, it's, no they, a bad team that's scuff. I mean, a right. good team that's scuffling is due. Yeah. No, no, we went with the Reds, Lou. We didn't go with the White Sox. Right. Well, it's the same. Like if you went and said the, the oh, White no, Sox yeah, are we're due. Not doing yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Unless yeah. he was Dylan Cease on the mound, but he's not there yeah. anymore. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, you want to share this one? Lou? No, I have nothing to do with it. Lou, I have nothing. I'm not right. Ipe. He's so, not allowed. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking. Oh, wait, are you calling the game tonight? I am. Again, okay, well, double dipping. Me and Obi. Are you going to go home? Hell no. You're going to go straight to the hey, ballpark. I think I want to drive in the rain again. Although it should be stopped. Uh, did you hear how it how it went? Yeah, the, I think the drive in the rain. I mean, you're going to be there a long time. Like, what are you going to do with your time? I'm what are you going to do? Take my time. Maybe I'll do. A, I don't know. Maybe I'll go crazy. Hang maybe out I'll in the go clubhouse. To Home Depot. I don't know if I have enough time. Lowe's. <laughs> you know, Chipotle. You have, I don't you, know. you have a honeydew list that you have to yeah. get to. <laughs> you know. Tell you what, I would do. Take some ground balls. You might be an option. <laughs> oh no, no. Yeah. My arms already blown. Yeah. Out. All right. So, uh, um, after researching a lot of research on this one, yep. you're going you got, uh, you come up going with? Red Sox again. But I'm going to take uh, starting pitcher for the Anaheim Angels, Reed Detmer. Oh. Over six and a half strikeouts because I I've heard that the uh, the Red Sox like to strike out and uh, this guy is really good at striking out the Red Sox. Where'd you hear did that? Did I hear that right? Well, did, did, did I get that right? See, you just took information. I told you, you made it bad. Like, I, I had just to well, do well with I mean, it, what's the difference Detmer's, for me looking at a, a website? I mean, we were just I'm just talking about like, how I got you a guy dropped three straight. And you're facing a guy tonight that struck out twelve against you a week ago in Anaheim, and you know Devers isn't going to play. We, you know, the infield is. And then they do like to strike out. Twelve, you need barely half that to win. This yeah. is a, this is when we Boom. saw this. This was like you said, like this is a really good line. Like this well, you is, asked this me, is I like almost be not, about eight, eight and a half. Just because yeah. he struck out, punched out, and he's punching out everybody, dudes. So it's, it's not like, just the Red it's Sox. Clicked for him. Like this guy is like really good. So you're rolling after getting swept, and you got to you, know, you face an angel team that's not great, but you got to face this guy. So can't lose. Which, Which is, is like why? when uh, is this the key? they'll is bomb this... him out in the third oh, inning great. because it's the reverse lock. <laughs> uh, it's the reverse. All right, so That's why uh, you don't bet baseball? But or he anyways. feels really? a twinge and the trainer you comes don't. to the mound. Why? Because Pedro will go seven scoreless and your bullpen gives it up. Like it's well, like, to you know, win, but if you're just talking like strikeouts, isn't right. that the? Is, what's the most consistent, predictable bet yeah, in yeah, baseball? Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, I guess it's. But you know, you could get to him. He's out of there in four and two right. thirds, and you know, I, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have it that night. Guys don't just do it every night. You know, That's why it's, it's called gambling. Chris. You know, you know the sixty-two. You're better off just sitting there. But the, you know, just saying like season totals. But you know, because it all evens uh, out. But, okay. But predicting game well. by so the it's one that hard. I like recently that it's kind of like getting my attention is uh, uh, Jaron Duran uh, total bases. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish there was something like the angry, uh, the angry lizard. We call it an angry really? lizard. Really, the way night. he runs. Yeah, it's angry. Looks like a little lizard. Dude, what do you? I think I asked. You, what do you think he would, he could run the forty in if he was at uh, the combine? I don't, I'll have to ask him if he's ever been tired. Honest guy, will you ask him? Because I wonder if he, I'm sure he's done a twenty. See, he David Hamilton run differently, right? I don't know. Are they like four or five guys. Is that really fast? Uh, no. no, no, four, four five really is, fast, but not an NFL wide really, receiver. It's, it's not, is fast, four, but it's not world speed. class athlete fast. Well, four two, four three. You're talking you got, next yeah. level, but four four five. What? How big is he? Below four. How five? How big is he? Probably like two ten. 
Yeah, so he's got to get in the four fours. Four five. I, can, I ran a four five. Brad. Oh, he's faster than you. Four, you ran five. a four five. My ass. Four five one. I, I did, but it. I don't think he's like four. <laughs> electronic <laughs> or stopwatch. I don't think these guys are like four Not threes. Like Christian Fourier are they? doesn't run tremendously. <laughs> yeah, you didn't run you a, didn't four, run a five. four five. You're that right. was, you was a junior You're in ass. college. That's a thirty yard. Dash. No. Yeah, that wasn't right. Look at this guy. You look at him on Twitch, the way his legs bow out. He's kind of got Lou Maloney legs. Yeah, he's just an angry lizard. But he, um, I don't know, you think he runs like a 4-3? No, I don't. No way. I would no say 4-5 is four, probably four, no way. High 4-4s. Four, 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 no today. But in baseball, isn't it feet per second or something Yeah, he's, like he's elite. All right. Okay, both of you guys shut up. What do we got, Nick? Angry. It was uh, $10 for $141.04. Okay. Let's go. There you go. You know, you know who's next? Okay. Who that? Get ready. Speaking We're, of angry. You got, a, you got another milkshake question on the line. Oh, I God. can't wait to Tom talk to E. TC. Curran, your I'm Patriot Tom, Tom insider, e. will join us next. And then we get to Otani. Ooh. Like Greg Hill in a group on.
everybody's best friend here on this show is uh, Tom E. Kern. Tom, you're on with Lou Maloney, the smaller Andy, hey. and me. It's two of my favorite ex-Boston athletes. Hi, Tom. Yeah. Miss you. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> I, miss, I miss you, Tom. Hope you're well. Oh, uh, we're going to get together. <laughs> uh, you think, though? You really think? Lou doesn't have time for anybody anymore. He works like 160 <laughs> days, 62 days out of the year now, Tom. I'll go to his kid's Little League game or Babe Ruth game. Or <laughs> nice. Yeah. game. nice. Like, there we go. Down. We'll get down that Lakeville range. So, uh, Curran, so um, uh, lots of happening down at Gillette. The one thing that stood out to me after, like, talking, listening to, you know, Jabril Peppers was this whole idea that, um, certain slogans aren't noticeable anymore. And one in particular was the whole do your job that was uh, not necessarily on the walls, and maybe he it, it is, but he hasn't seen it. How do you feel about these slogans being removed? I don't really register an opinion. I understand why you would want to maintain so many of the edicts that Bill Belichick adhered to, whether it's ignore the noise, do your job, speak for yourself. All of those things are important. Uh, whether or not they're on the wall, I think that they would still apply. But I understand why, too, you would say, okay, well, new broom sweeps clean. We're going to do things differently. So I don't have a massive reaction one way or the other. Well, let me, let me phrase it, it a different way offensive? because I don't think you're ever allowed to say I don't have an opinion. Because I get yelled at when I say that. People yell at me when I say that. Uh, There's a draft going on yeah, in two weeks. And yeah. You're talking about the slogans on the yeah, wall. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm talking about the slogans on the wall. Because to me, the whole that do your job is like play like a champion. It's like roll tide, regardless of who the coach is. That should stay, regardless of how many silos you want to knock down. I think it's silly. Do you have an opinion okay. on that? When they start losing games because guys forget to do their jobs, then I guess you could you have a point. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just don't think it rises to the level of, you know, what's on the wall. I'm surprised. I know you, 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 no, I know, but you, what's I, on the wall? The thing is, like, Tommy, I feel like you downplay everything that he does down there. Like, I feel like there's oh. like this this level of protection that you have that and whenever anybody criticizes mayor or what he's doing like you don't have an opinion or you defend him oh oh bam i, I don't <laughs> maybe I, I mean i think the guy's an inexperienced i mean what am i supposed to do lacerate the guy for not having a sign on the wall i think that's like picayune type of minor stuff that you're inflamed about like i said with a draft 2 weeks away something's not on the wall and you're going to pick it get the torches and pitchforks. I just don't think it's a big deal. If they stop doing their jobs and start paying attention to the noise, which to a degree I think that they have been doing in this offseason, well, then I guess we have an issue. All right, Tommy, I want to get back because I obviously haven't been following it like I once was. So I'm curious. After watching what they did in free agency, the draft approaches, is it obvious like what their draft approach would be, given what they signed or didn't sign in free agency, say, other than quarterback? I think their failures in free agency kind of indicated to me that they might want to be more amenable to trading back. Because if you can't fill your wide receiver need, if you can't fill your offensive yeah. tackle need through free agency, to me that would say, okay, well, what are we going to do? We have all these wide receivers here who are going to be first round picks do we want to get one of these guys so when they failed in free agency to bring in anybody noteworthy i thought that that might reconfigure the way they approach the draft does it did it we'll find out in two weeks but i think that you have an opportunity at multiple positions including cornerback which people haven't really discussed very much to make the team a lot better with high high end talent so i'm curious to see if any kind of trade down bag emerges that allows them or makes them interested in sw switching from quarterback. But, you know, when Robert Kraft is talking about, I want, you know, a top tier quarterback from the draft, it's hard to pivot that way. Tom, I believe you've said it was going to take more than three first round picks. Is that accurate in your belief for a trade down? Yes. Um, what is more um, important to the decision of trading down? Is it, what happens with the two picks ahead of them, or is it simply how big the bag? 
I think it's the bag. I think it's bag size completely. Like how generous is somebody going to be? How desperate is somebody going to be to move up? And, you know, the inclination is, and that was more of a hypothetical, what would it take? Mm -hmm. And it has to outstrip what San Francisco gave up was basically the contention. So to me, that means four. The only team that can really do four would be the Minnesota because you can't, if you only have one first round pick this year, you can't go further into the future than two years. You can't trade 2027 draft picks. So to me, it's an interesting proposition. It's kind of Minnesota or a bust if you're looking for four first round picks. All right. I'm going to see if you have an opinion on this one. Oh boy. Um, Sorry, Tom. How many quarterbacks? How, listen, it's been that type of week for me. How many quarterbacks in the draft? <laughs> in the draft, can you say that you watched every single game and every single throw Ooh. of the top watched, four quarterbacks? Can you say you watched every single play that they has had? Anyone they, done that? Oh yeah, there's a lot of people bragging every about throw, it. A lot of people. Every bragging. throw, every run from May, every throw, every run from McCarthy. Okay, why those two? From 2023. Why the why those two? Wow, a lot of time. Because those guys are the most likely to be hanging there at three. And in who do you like? Who do you I like? like McCarthy's footwork. I like think McCarthy's more athletic. Um, I think McCarthy's arm is just as strong. I like so much about what McCarthy has because I think his floor is higher. So that to me argues in favor of McCarthy. I think to me is, can they go wrong if they take McCarthy? Can they go wrong if they take May? None of those picks or Daniels, none of those picks you can sit there and say, well, they really screwed that up. That's not the guy, even though I know Andy Hart, yes, that you have absolutely no patience for the McCarthy conversation. True. And he's good. He's really friggin' good. So to me, people will second guess the McCarthy pick, but I think there's a greater chance if you take Drake May and say, we're going to fix all this stuff. It's not a problem. Footwork, decision-making, inability to slide, all that stuff's going to be fixed. And then in two years, because you've been playing with a team that's not very good, none of those problems are fixed, and he's got new ones. So I think McCarthy would be a safer pick. But as Mel Kuyper told us yesterday when I asked him about it, he said Drake May is the home run potential. So I'm just looking at uh, just, you know, when it comes to Drake May, you think about, uh, you know, the amount of attempts, 425 attempts to um, J.J. McCarthy at 332 attempts just for their 2023 season. Less less opportunities to evaluate him based on the amount of times that that he's actually thrown. And if you break that down even further, meaningful throws. Now, is he being more judged on his his pro day, his uh, combine, and the ultimate, hey, this guy has all the tools, than he is his actual play at Michigan? If you watch the games against Alabama and Ohio State, you'll see why people would put him up there. So you don't really have those games from Drake May against competition like that. That's, I think, a drawback. Drake May went 6-0 and at the beginning of the season. His team finished seven and four, and there's myriad excuses made. Oh, it's offensive coordinator is eligibility issues for his wide receiver. There was no, nobody knew where to go. You don't have those same qualifiers attached to JJ McCarthy because in the games that he played, which were high leverage, high stakes games, he performed. So while there's not the same volume of throws for a younger player, the level of success that he had. And, yes, he had better players around him than Drake May, but so did Jaden Daniels arguably have better players there. So did Michael Penix at Washington. So all of these guys come with qualifiers to who they, how they performed in these games. But if you watch Alabama and Ohio State, how many of these guys have you watched every throw of? Christian. Oh, me? Oh, none of them. None. None, uh-huh. none of every throw. None of every throw. Here's what I do. I'll tell you what I do. Ooh. Uh, so Merrill Hodge, okay. Dan Olofsky, uh, like Merrill Hodge comes out and he rips Drake May. And he says, uh, you know, NC State game. Ah, oh, it's terrible. Uh, Clemson, terrible. So, I okay, I go to their worst game and I evaluate them on their worst game. That NC State game was horrible from beginning to end. Horrible. They, uh, the Clemson game, because I think situation, circumstances, is a is a thing when you're talking about the quarterbacks that you're judging. 
By the time they reached Clemson, Clemson was pissed. They were playing on the road. By the time they got NC State, that defense, which is stacked with a bunch of great players, a bunch of guys, fifth-year, six-year guys that are going to be drafted, they were trying to prove a point, and they took it out on so Drake these are the qualifiers. These are the qualifiers that get attached to these players depending upon somebody's leaning. For instance, when you look at what McCarthy did against Ohio State and Alabama, those are teams that are just absolutely stocked with – not just NFL players, but first and second and third round NFL players. So you're watching somebody go against in Ohio State and run away from NFL level players with regularity. So, Tom, you you mentioned before talking about floor, higher floor. And I guess this goes with like risk reward at three. Are you looking for the highest floor? Or the highest ceiling. Ooh. Ooh look at you. Jeez. The circle right? like, gets a square. Because at three, I don't know if I want a floor guy. You know what I mean? I want somebody yeah, that's going well, to take off, thing, skyrocket. If you, I, I get you. I totally do. And, and if you want to do that, and that's why Mac Jones, I think most people said, all right, I get it. Because you never thought the Patriots were going to be a team the floor that guy. would bottom out. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, all right, so we'll get a game manager. Bill Belichick's the head coach. The team's going to be fine. You get Josh McDaniels, an offensive coordinator. How, how bad could it get? He's going to be a guy who gets us to 8-8, eight and eight, and if they have guys around him, it could be a 12-13 win team in a couple of years because Mac will be just like um, Brady, smart, accurate, do the right thing at the right time. Well, he wasn't surrounded by good enough players, so he did bottom out, and that would be my cons- – bottomed out in a way that I don't think a break may would, for instance. But if you don't surround these players with good enough talent, how bad will they get? And that, to me, is – is a concern. If you want to go for the home run, take a massive swing, then Drake may would be your guy, but you're also going to put him in a situation where he has to be a superhero. Yeah. If you take JJ McCarthy, he's not going to make those knee buckling mistakes in my estimation that Drake may might be prone to. And when you start making knee buckling mistakes as Mac did, you eventually become completely unusable. So that's why, the appeal of trading down, I think, nationally has become much more prevalent in the past week or so for the Patriots that that would be a sensible thing to do. I thought that initially because the team around him isn't that good. But the more I watch the quarterbacks, May included, the more I say, this kid's really friggin' good. This kid could really solve a lot of problems. So, But I still think trading down absolutely has its merits because of the quality of the players in the draft. Tom, what do you think uh, your guy Tom Brady was doing on this uh, haircut podcast? Not only talking about, yeah, maybe, maybe being open to coming back, but offering up a team that would make sense would be the Patriots. Can you ask that question again? I'm sorry. Uh, what do you think Tom Brady was doing bringing up the idea of returning to the NFL and offering up an option uh, by the name of the Patriots? <sighs> spitballing, but never spitballing without purpose. Ooh. I mean, does he want to be back involved in the NFL would be bored. I, I, I don't know, but I just don't think that you offer that up because you know what the reaction's going to be. Yep. You know how that's going to play when you mention two teams like that. You understand you're already sending up a trial balloon to the NFL as to would you allow me to play for a team if I am a part owner of them. Now, how could he go anywhere but the Raiders? You can't be part owner of the Raiders and play for the Patriots. It just makes is nonsense. Now, Michael Jordan was a part owner of the Wizards, if I'm not mistaken, when he played for the Wizards. Correct me if I'm yes, wrong. Yes, I believe that is accurate, yes. Yeah, so you can't fathom going any place but that. So does he put his ownership stake on hold, or the NFL has kind of already done that, and decide you want to go back and play? But he's a 47-year-old quarterback who only wants to do it on his terms at this point, and – He'd make a massive difference. He's probably, you know, still physically able to go out and play better than half the league. So I, it just the question is: Is it boredom or is it serious? Would you take him here? Sure. I mean, he's going to be better than Drake May in twenty twenty four. Exactly. He's going to be better than JJ McCarthy and Jacoby. Brissett. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean. But he's still going to be throwing to the same kind of stuff he was throwing to in 2019, minus Ryan Izzo. Hmm. Um, 
Wow, this is this ended really strong. It started off real rough. Yeah, well, you yeah, started off real rough. You were a bully. Oh, you were whoa. a bully. Wait, listen, bully Fourier. Hey, hey, bully heart. No one. I saw you bullying. Should be talking I about think a bully. You like to run too much, and you won't say anything mean about him. <laughs> is, is that how that it sounds? That's been oh, no. sitting in your pocket for a couple no, weeks. No, 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 no. Well, listen, it was it building is, up. It yep. is. What are we talking about? Like there is, there is a lot of noise about how connected you are to Mayo, and you know, and that's no, that's no secret. But that's no, but I mean, to 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 impugn one's objectivity based upon the notion that I did a TV show with the guy is is I just don't think it exists. I You're think attacking the man's coach. credibility. Yeah, hold on. I'm any looking. I'm looking up. I'm looking up impugn. Is going <laughs> hold on, to, Chris Gasper. I'm looking up impugn. They come in. <laughs> Any coach, when they come in, is going to absolutely have their shortcomings highlighted, which his shortcomings right now are inexperience, you know, clarity of message, et cetera. But I also think you give them the amount of latitude. I was talking to Felger last night on BST. I'm like, when do you want Alex Van Pelt and Ben McAdoo fired then? Exactly. Because, you know, he's in a position where he just continues to say on television how horrible these guys are. I'm like, how do you know that? So there's a benefit of the doubt product. So, again, if they stop doing their jobs, if centers start lining up at wide receiver, then we'll have a conversation about how they should have kept the sign up. All right. The sign is down. Tommy Curran, have a great weekend. See you, Tom. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you next week, next Tuesday. Tommy Curran, back in your regular spot. Thanks, Tom. That's Tommy Curran. Bye, and, uh, all right, so we got to do some trending. Okay. And we have got to finally, finally, finally – since Merloni Investments first started years ago, <laughs> you would have been all over this before it even happened. That's the Otani Gamley situation. We do some trending with Billy, and we'll do that when we come back. Your home of the Sox. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending is brought to you by Jackson Lumber and Millwork. The Baltimore Orioles scored six runs in the top of the 10th to complete the three-game sweep over the Red Sox with their 9-4 win. Isaiah Campbell got the loss for the Sox, giving up five earned runs on four hits in the 10th inning. Tonight, the Sox begin a three-game series with the Los Angeles Angels at Fenway Park. First pitch is at 7-10 on the Shaw's and Stop Market, WEEI Red Sox Network. Shaw's perfecting the yacht afresh. Tannehill gets the ball for the Sox against the Angels' Reed Detmers. Don't forget to tune in to the Mass Mutual Red Sox pregame show tonight at 6-10 with Rich Keefe. It's back-to-back -back losses for the Celtics after last night's 118-109 loss to the Knicks. Jalen Brunson led the way for New York with 39 points. Celtics are right back at it tonight when they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off at the TD Garden is at 7.30. Yesterday in the men's Frozen Four... Boston College defeated Michigan 4-0. Boston University lost to Denver 2-1 in overtime. The national championship game between number 1 BC and number 3 Denver will be tomorrow night. Puck drop is at 6 o'clock. The call of the game championship game can be heard on WEEI AMA 50 with coverage beginning at 545. The Bruins return to the ice tomorrow night when they play the Penguins in Pittsburgh. Face off at 8 o'clock. Also tomorrow night, the New England Revolution will be in New York to play New York City FC. Kickoff at Yankee Stadium is at 7.30 and checking in on the leaderboard of the Masters. Max Home and Bryson, Bryson DeChambeau tied for the lead at minus seven. Contractors, builders, and homeowners visit Jackson Lumber and Millwork for all your residential remodeling or commercial building materials and supplies. Jackson Lumber and Millwork providing solutions and delivering results since 1946. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEEI and WEEI.com. Alex Cora on Jones and Mega. I just believe it.
R-E-E-I. All right, Lou, it's time to get back to I want you to put your gambling uh, degenerate gambler hat on real quick and to you too. Um, because a 36-page affidavit has been filed against Shohei Otani's former interpreter. Yep. Is it Ipe? Ipe, yes. Ipe uh, Mizuhara, yep. who was accused of stealing more than $16 million from Otani. So I'm just, I'm just going to read you a couple things from this complaint because it's the United States of America versus Mizuhara, okay? And you just let me know what stands out to you when I'm done. Um, all right, so the 35966 records, okay, all from the affidavit, the complaint that was filed, records reflect uh, approximately 19,000 wagers between December 2021 and wow. January 2024. 19,000 wagers and nearly 25 bets per day on average. Jesus. The wagers reflected in this 35966 records ranged in value, ready for this, from roughly $10 huh? to 6 $160,000 per bet. $10 with like an, the first week. <laughs> yeah. with, let me just test it out, right? I'm down $3 million. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to bet 10 bucks on a parlay. <laughs> uh, with an average bet amount, Lou, of roughly $12,800. Now, during this period, the records reflect total winning bets of, uh, I don't even know if this is right, $142 million, almost yes. $143 yeah. million, dollars, yeah. and a and total losing bets of over a hundred and eighty, basically one hundred eighty-three million dollars, mm. mm. leaving a total net balance of negative forty million dollars. It did not reflect any games bet on baseball. I should say, big deal, no big deal. I mean, the amount of spending on this is insane. Well, I'll say this: number one, it is a huge deal if he did not bet on baseball. It is like that's just a different different level given the position he's in and, and who he works for. Uh, I was blown away when I just saw some of those numbers. You know, twenty five a day, twenty five bets a day, one hundred and eighty three million, basically in twenty four months, two years. Yeah, a uh, hundred and eighty three million dollars he bet. Now he hit some. Because he got 141 Obviously. of it back, right? But still, I, I listen. It's I. I hope I want to watch Shohei Otani play baseball the rest of his career. I want to believe that he has nothing to do with this. But I, I, you go back when the story first broke, and sometimes you can't take back what you know what was said. How these two are brothers. They spend all the time together, off days. Spend a, all day long just hanging out together. And that type of relationship, 25 bets a day, $183 million, and it's like, yeah, I had no idea what was going on. It's all behind my back. Like, I I, I just I have a hard time thinking that. Who with wouldn't? So many people, Everybody with does. so many people involved in his life, I can't imagine. So you, you brought it up. Okay, so he, he didn't actually make a lot of money playing baseball. Right, like it, his his salary playing for the Angels was not what he it is made, now. He had made go so going into twenty three, you know, before like even like his last year of arbitration where he went nuts. I think he had made forty million dollars on the field. Okay, forty million on the field. So we're talking about what was he putting twenty two, twenty three of it actually his dollars. Yeah, twenty million maybe agents everything else. Now off the field makes a lot of money, but he doesn't have a billion dollars. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if you had a hundred million, one hundred and fifty million, kind of stashed with a financial advisor, someone watching it, and it's just one hundred and eighty million dollars. Boom, 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 boom. Like just in and out, in and out. Like you know, like over the course of two years total. <sighs> it's a bad financial advisor, and it's just it's not believable. Like that's the biggest part. Just the sniff test. Like that doesn't. I, I once transferred some money or wired some money from, like, an online savings account to something else, and it took me, like, there were multiple, there were a lot of steps involved. Yeah. There was, like, and he's just willy-nilly, there's millions. Plus, where's the other? So, he, net losses was 40-something million. Yeah. And he stole 16 million. 24, still floating. Right. Isn't that what you get, like, your knees broken over or you found, you're found you found dead somewhere? The other question is, I don't know. Maybe you guys have heard. I don't want to assume anything beyond that. How's he placing all these bets? Bookie. Is it text? But is it text? Is it phone call? So he's placing 25 bets they, a day. There are, there are records. So there are, they release actual records of his conversations with the bookkeeper. 25 a day. That is and, getting after it. And so there's chances Shohei's around. 
Like, Shohei knows everything that's going on. Either he's placing him or he's well aware. And either way, what the hell? Is he allowing his best buddy interpreter to go $40 million in the hole? Like, there's just so many questions other- that aren't answered yeah. in, a, in a simple, logical way here. And if it is, if, um, if uh, Otani, it is his bank account, did his interpreter, like, turn off his notifications? Right. Does he not get notified? Like, if I spend a certain amount of money or if my credit card is used, even though I'm using it, I'll get, like, a fraud alert. I thought oh, yeah. I'll I get, like, the bank will call me. Like, yeah. did you try to I make this did. purchase? Apparently, I think maybe he might have altered that type of thing. But I just still go back to 25 a day, how close these guys are, how the story originally was one thing and then immediately was changed within the next day. You know, it went from, uh, yeah, he, he he signed this and bailed me out. I got the gambling problem, too. Massive theft. Right. Like, no, he didn't sign this and bail me out. I didn't say that. Wait, did I? I did? No, he didn't. Plus, he had he, nothing to do with it. Like, it's just the whole early on process. Oh, the interview and then I the interview? I just don't think anybody. I mean, every, nobody believes it. Nobody. I mean, nobody. But well, even people okay, that well, should be careful. I always go back to, like, we're we're on the radio. This is what we do, right? We question. We're cynical. We speculate. But, like, Andrew Brandt has been very active and vocal on Twitter, who is a lawyer, an agent, a team president. Yeah. And he's like, BS. That seems like BS. Like, he's not a guy that would be prone to just throwing crap out there like we might on the radio. So all these very smart, educated, experienced people are calling BS. The other question I had, like, you brought up baseball. Baseball would be the, that'd be a line, of yeah. demarcation, right? Yeah. So he's, this is a guy has got a problem. He's betting 25 times a day. What's he betting on in late June, July, early August? I don't know. Is soccer going on? I, I don't know. Like what? he was betting on soccer, betting on everything, like all these different sports. Oh, so he's betting and, on everything. And, and I'm but sure baseball. there's a lot of prop Correct. bets as well. All right, so okay, I don't so believe it. Here's here's how can here's, I believe it? Here's where it gets real tricky. Okay, so this is from the last page of the complaint, and this is where I think he's in trouble, and and we'll figure out what uh, Major League Baseball has to do with it when you hear this. So. From the last page, the last paragraph of this complaint. On or about March 20th, 2024, Mizuhara messaged Bookkeeper One stating, have you seen the reports, question mark? Because there was an article coming out um, in one of the papers, I think it was the LA Times, questioning uh, Otani, questioning the bookmakers, like an in in expose, mm-hmm. right? And so they're trying to figure out, hey, have you heard this? Have you seen this? Uh, bookmaker One responded, yes, but that's all BS. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. I totally get it. Mizuhara then responded to Bookmaker uh, One, stating, technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. The line that I think is going to really cause some concern is the whole one, I understand it's a cover job. I totally get it. I mean, if that's – so is the bookmaker just, like, screwing with this guy? Toying with them? Is he planning ev- evidence? Is he trying to just, you know, ruin Otani? Is and that to me, either the guy is just totally being a jerk, knowing that eventually the feds are going to be on to him. They're going to start catching him. They're going to grab his phone. He wants it on record, or at least the, the but I would just say like, that it, he's involved in it. Yeah, it's the only. So, I think as everybody knows, like, no bookmaker is going to give you a limit of like fifty million dollars. Right. right, like it's not. It's like, hey, I'll, I'll give me uh, ten million, give me a million. They're like, what? Like ten million? Excuse me. Well, this is what I do for a living. This is who I work for. So uh, he's backing me. Let's just say he just says it without Otani knowing. You know what I mean? Like, is that enough for someone to say, got it? Or does he need like proof? He's like, oh yeah, I want to hear it from him. I would think. I want to hear from him that he's got you because you the bets you're making right now, you got a bad four or five months. We're talking 15, 20 million bucks. So I'm not taking your word that he's got you. I need him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's that's the part that's kind of like, oh, Jesus. So then you get into, like, if he was involved, then what? You know, if there's no record of baseball, still it's still illegal using a bookie. Right. In California, forget about the whole, like, they don't have DraftKings and everything else, whatever. It's mass you do, but... Even in mass, if you get involved with like a massive bookie ring, that's still illegal. Even though you can still gamble in mass, you can't use a bookie, right? And then you get into IRS and taxes and money going back and forth and those things. So, so okay, so just like uh, you know, Chris Carter said, everybody needs a fall guy. Yeah, 
because there, there, there is. I didn't pull the quotes, but there are there are a, a couple quotes in here about these two bookmaker one and and uh, Mizuhara texting back and forth, where Mizuhara was trying to make a bet. He was this is down after the store. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, go so ahead. this is before. Okay, okay, like okay, this, okay. they went and grabbed his phone. They just took all the text messages, yeah. right? Um, paraphrasing, hey, listen, you know who I am. You know I'm good for it, right? Alluding to Otani. Like, who doesn't know? If you're in California, if you're in Orange, Orange County, who doesn't know Otani? Yeah, but just because you work for a guy that makes <laughs> right. $100 million a year doesn't mean you're good for it. I right. think the implication was I mean, that. I mean, I know what was I was like, saying. Like, listen, were... this guy is, this guy is, is, is uh, footing the money. Yeah. Like, he's my backer. The bets are really for him. Then you go back to the very last page of the complaint, which is USA versus Mizuhara. It, it basically waits the very last sentence to basically say this is why he's guilty. Mizuhara was just the fall guy for Otani. Like if that even just the question of that sh- should require Major League Baseball to do something about it. It's crazy. Yeah, I think you do some I, I don't I don't know what that is, but um What is what so is Otani I really guilty deep of? Down, I didn't? hope that Otani didn't know anything about it, but personally I have I I I can't Get myself to even what if he did? What if he did? And he just likes to gamble, but he's not, he's stupid, but he's not, you know, dumb. He doesn't literally bet on baseball. He just likes to bet. And him and his buddy are taking turns. And I, you get, I got some prop bets. Hey, tell, I'll take this too. So he's not betting on baseball. So everybody's betting on everything. Yeah. So if you're guilty, it's still illegal. Fine. Okay. So that's the, if that's the only thing he's guilty of. I don't see him getting hit with any sort of suspicion. Well, my question is, we all know why baseball would want it to be the interpreter. Why, yes. does, why is the FBI... There has been no implication that the investigators are going after Otani, correct? So far. But why would... If they thought the big fish was Otani... I mean, maybe I'm wrong here. I've watched a lot of movie and TV shows. Don't they usually go after the big fish? Yeah, yeah they give name? the other guy a deal. Right. A plea deal. To turn they, on oh, the yeah, big yeah, fish. Yeah, give me this guy. But you, you read it, Christian. There's no implication that investigate. they're not going down that road. I know why baseball would avoid that road. Why would the FBI avoid yeah, that road? Yeah, and I don't know what protocol is. Okay, this is the charges against this guy. Let's look into it. The more we look into it, it's looking more and more like we should probably start yeah. looking into somebody Pointing else. Somewhere so it's else. like you got to go down this road here first. And for you, I'm with you because it's like, you know the whole Michael Jordan thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? I may mean, wasn't a bookie, but how much money he's betting. Of course, we all know he probably was using a bookie, right? And yeah. That whole, like, just rumor or, like, story, I don't know, did he go to baseball because they just quietly wanted to go away from the NBA? Two years suspension. Know. But, I mean, professional athletes, it's like, back then, it was like you were gambling. I was talking about Phil Mickelson gambling on the, on the yeah, golf course. One. And it's like, okay, guy makes a lot of money, like Shohei Otani. You know, he just signed for seven hundred million. If he wants to bet one hundred and fifty million dollars on sports, go right ahead. I know it's not that simple, as long as you're not betting on baseball, right? So, to your point, Christian, it's like, okay, what is like, the penalty? And that's why I say the most important thing here is baseball, because Pete Rose somewhere right now is looking for an interpreter, right? Like, <laughs> he right says now, it. He actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, right now, Pete Rose is sitting there going, yep. "What are you guys going to do?" Yeah. Right? You know, oh, he didn't bet on baseball. You know, like he's probably just screaming and yelling from some. You know, appearance in Vegas, signing yep. whatever he's signing. But it's baseball. It's like we're talking different level here. Not baseball, but 180 million bucks. Okay, so we're 700. See the one thing they I I an interpreter. <laughs> I'd be scot free. <laughs> so the, here's the thing. So uh, his interpreter Mizuhara has agreed to self surrender to federal authorities today. Um, he's to appear in court for the first time today, this afternoon, Los Angeles time, and he's expected to be released on bond. And will not enter a plea. He's not going to enter a plea. So he's probably just going to take whatever they give him and whatever that actually is. And then, and then if he's stealing from Otani, Otani could actually say, "No big deal. I don't care. I'm not pressing charges. And I'm he has okay it. with it. He has well, I feel like he has to well, to yeah. prove his. See, innocence. That's the thing with this. If it's sort of like, yeah, we've been betting illegally with a bookie. What are you going to give us? Instead, it's turned into. This dude stole forty million dollars. Right, you're going away for a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah, a long time. So it's like, which is it? Do you just admit that you both used a bookie, and you deal with that, or you throw one guy to the wolves and goes to jail for a very long time for stealing forty, fifty, or making a hundred eighty million dollars worth of bets? Yeah, 
This is uh, above my pay grade because I feel like you're going to hear like, uh, you know, why are this laundering something tapping like all these various laws that are financial crimes where boom, 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 boom. They start adding years and years and years yeah. and you go well, away. It's not, he's not running a Ponzi scheme, which would be a little bit different, like a Madoff situation. No, but if he changed the credentials or whatever oh, on yeah. Otani's he's banking. forging his signature. Forging signatures, you know, transferring money without approval. I feel like there's a lot. And also the other, I still have the question that Lou said. This $24 million seems to be dangling in the breeze here that yeah. the bookie should be owed or is owed. Like, and then the tax level. The taxes got Al Capone. Remember the old thing? Like, That's true. You can kill people. You can do all these things, but you yeah. screw with the you IRS screw the and they government. get you. Uh, okay, so um, we got rid of that story. So at 1 o'clock, I want you guys to prep for this before we get the big deal, no big deal. Because at 1 o'clock, it is a Fourier production of a new game that I like to call <laughs> The Game of Choices. Ooh, I like the games. Game of Choices. Fourier games always go perfectly. And that's why they're so enjoyable. But first, got to get to big deal, no big deal. Ooh. Because Aaron Rodgers, legit, I think he's lost his mind. And Lou, you'd, be, you'd appreciate this. Oh, okay. I was so good at football that I scared Giancarlo Stanton into playing baseball. Huh. That's big deal, no big deal. Next. From the Rubenstein Law Studio.
Big deal. Nothing's a big deal. It's no big deal. No big deal. I don't know how to put this, but kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal in New England right now. No big deal. You know what? Actually, I feel like this is no big deal. Not a big deal. Is that how everyone feels? Not a big deal. Huh? Big deal. Who cares? Can't deal with it. Yeah, I can't deal with it. This is a huge deal. Oh, uh, big deal. No big deal. You know what's a big deal? Getting this hot honey all in my eye like is just a, such a rookie move. What's going in your mouth? Oh, excuse me. I'm a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not in your eyes. Save uh, that one. again. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you do with this what you may. <laughs> uh, hot honey in my eye it's supposed to go in your mouth. Don't You're you right. have glasses? I have my glasses. I, I don't know how we got in you there. You have safety glasses on. How'd you get? Hot I have honey no in your idea eye? how we got in there. Um, all right, so let's get started, <laughs> right? Because I, I want to make sure I have plenty of time for make good choices. All right. Um, so have you guys been paying attention at all to what Aaron Rodgers is up to? Like, forget about his injuries, but it's more of his political aspirations. Have you guys noticed that? Last I heard, he was going to run for vice president. Right. He's Kennedy's yes. VP. Yes. Maybe. Well, I don't think but he he's is. not anymore. No. no. She officially named somebody. But I feel like he is stumping for him. But And it's this is just, okay, this clip is about 52 seconds long. Okay. okay. I just want you just to bear with me. It will pay off in the end right. when you hear how this answer goes. So Bobby loses his uncle, JFK, his father, RFK. Mm -hmm. His cousin dies in a plane crash mm -hmm. when he was running against Hillary Clinton. Like, I'm not saying that was a conspiracy, but it's kind of a weird coincidence. Bobby's in danger, you know? Like, he's he's putting himself on the line. Yeah. Why? Because he f believes in this country. He believes in this country. He believes in the good in people, and he believes he can make a difference. That's somebody I can get behind who's willing to lay it on the line. Because that is, like I said earlier, the archetype of everything we love about Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. <laughs> everything we love about Frodo and Sam and Aragorn and Gandalf and Merry and Pip. Right? Everything that we love about Gamora uh. and Groot <laughs> and Rocket <laughs> and Drax. Marvels. I feel like I need Keith uh, to interpret this. No, I know. Okay, so he, he was a guest on the I Can Fly podcast, and I'll start <laughs> with you, Lou. Like, listen, he's stumping for Bobby Kennedy, but using uh, Marvel references and, uh, you know, the Hobbit references as an example to explain why he loves America. Big deal, no big deal. It's yeah, Honestly, to me, it's like no <laughs> big deal because it's it's the norm. Like, That's just the a, norm or norm for 100%. him? His norm. His oh, norm. okay. I'm just saying, like, his norm. Like, when I was first brought to Aaron Rodgers' norm, I was like, dude. Like, you know, we're still thinking of him as the football player. Is he overrated? You know, should have won more. Like, like the football player. And then you started to get know him more, and then you realize this is the norm. You know, so it's to me, it's no big deal. If you heard this five years ago, you'd have been like, is he okay? Well, if he led with this. What is wrong with he, him? If he led but now with this, absolutely. Normal. Okay, what do you think? Big deal, no big deal. Uh, kinda no kinda big goes deal. Off, no big deal. The, the same yeah. reason. I was watching South Park the other night, and they threw an F word out there that if any of us said it, we'd never work again. And I'm like, if I heard that on any TV show not named South Park, you your heart would stop. You'd be like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. But South Park is just being South Park. Being it, this is Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. If I heard other people say this, like Tom Brady sits down and says this, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, you're like, oh, record I'll, scratch. I'll, like I said, I would say if Aaron Rodgers said this eight years ago, <laughs> right like, after five years in the league, you would be like, eh, dude, is he okay? Has right. he is he crossed? Uh, Gramps is it, off the rails. It, it, just yeah, let no. him go. Yeah. And Han Solo, Frodo and Sam and Aragon and Gandalf and Mary and Pip, Gamora and Groot and Rocket. <laughs> Did I you like that at all? No, no, I, no, no. This is him. We sped it up just a little bit. Well, I just grabbed the names. Uh, but here's the thing. I feel like this is a like a SAT question. You know, like Luke Skywalker is the Han Solo as Princess Leia is the Darth Vader. Like what? As Groot. Like, is what is like, it? Just. I guess you're right. Like no big deal for me because I, I feel like nobody's even caring anymore. Does anybody take him seriously? No, that's it. Because no, it's no big deal because nobody takes him serious anymore. So it's like ineffective. Yeah. It, it doesn't. It's no gotcha moment. Because you just don't, oh, I just went on an ayahuasca retreat again, and I, yeah. all I could think about was Han Solo. Right. 
Yeah, it doesn't offend me. It doesn't resonate. It's no. just like, ah, yeah, I heard it. Well, let's just move on to the next one, Aaron, whatever. At this point, it's Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Okay, so let me read you this headline real quick. Uh, and this is from uh, a website called The Trojan Wire. Quote, uh, headline, what could have been for Giancarlo, uh, Mike Stanton, and USC football? Do you know his middle name was Mike? Yeah, he used to go by Mike. Did he? Uh, Okay, I only know him as Giancarlo. All right, I'm going to read you a quick quick, uh, couple paragraphs from this article. Okay. Okay. Um, It says, during his senior year at wide receiver, Giancarlo Michael Stanton caught 29 passes for 745 yards and 11 touchdowns with an average of more than 25 yards per catch. On the defensive side of the ball, Stanton played strong safety. At 6'4", 210 pounds, he totaled 50 tackles and five interceptions. He was also he was also a punter, making him a three phase player. Pretty Ooh. desirable. Bill Belichick, ranks. you can play all four downs, baby. Okay, yeah, right. So here's the part I want you to pay attention to. Stanton went up against notable opponents in high school: Christian Fourier, Mark Tyler, Richard Sherman, and Jimmy Clausen. He was able to hold his own. Big deal, no big deal. Uh, Gene Carlo Stanton held his own against Christian Fourier when Christian Fourier was retired from football. This Joseph is this Fourier, whose dad Christian was a tight end with the Patriots. Yeah, that's why it's no big deal. You should be used to this. <laughs> he thought you. He thought your nephew was your kid. Yeah. So now you got stories about you and Gene Carlo Stanton playing against one yeah. another, which is what 15, 20 years apart. It cannot be farther from my life. You read that earlier, and I was like. Wait, how old did, did you really? He said, you're like, no, we never played against each other. And where did Richard Sherman go to high school? He went, so Stanton went to a high school called Notre Dame, Catholic school, co-ed. I went to an all-boy Catholic school called Crespi, maybe, I don't know, three miles away from each other. Yeah. Right? They were really good. We were just hanging on. Um, and I saw this. Somebody sent this to me. I was like, wow, I was pretty, I got beat up by Stanton or... Did I was I so good against him that he decided football wasn't a life? For or him? yeah, he's twenty mm. years, whatever, fifteen years. Yeah, younger I was than in me. high I was, school. I was finishing up my NFL career. Did you average uh, twenty five uh, yards a catch? See, shut up. <laughs> See, you know what? <laughs> I just you run walked right into that. <laughs> you just thought. Uh, shut up. Okay. <laughs> I actually think it's shut a big you. deal. <laughs> no, no, I actually think it's a big deal. You should take this as a compliment. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're such a big name. Like. You just somehow immersed yourself in the story. The writer was like Christian Fourier. Boom! It just came off the tongue. Can I ask you a question? Really, you know, coming out of Colorado, I thought it was a, not elite, but you know, but good. <laughs> your nephew, quotes. four yeah. five Where did he one. Go to high school? Four five one. Yeah. Where'd no. your nephew go to high school? Same high school. That's who he's talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. I knew you were good for something. But he, it, he, he, this is this is why that quote from Joe Buck is perfect because that on the Joe Buck uh, game, okay, he, Joseph was my son. And now they probably just looked up great players at Crespi High School or some great. Right, and it came silly. up you. Joseph Fourier, whose dad Christian was a tight end with the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. See? You're so just on the tip of the story tongue. rather than Christian just said yeah. Joseph. So Joseph scared yeah. uh, Stanton. Did Joseph so average six, so six seven, two twenty in high school as opposed to six four one eighty five? Yeah. That's no? what you were? Yeah. Yeah, you were one eighty five at six four. You were a little yeah, pinner. I was a big letter a L twig. running. I was a big letter L running down the field. Oh my god! Yeah, I had these big giant knee braces. I was. No wonder you avoided contact. Baby giraffe? Yeah. Huh? Were you a baby giraffe? Like trying I mean, to run? I mean, I didn't. I didn't run back. You then were either. like Gasicki. You yeah. said you ran a four five. When I got into high school, listen, you trip on the twenty. I jumped on the weights. <laughs> I jumped on the weights and I powered through it and I became a man. <laughs> a man. Did you hurdle the 20 to make sure you didn't stumble on it? I was pretty fast at one point in time. One point four, in time five, in my life. One. Four, five, one on record. What I'll record? even show I'll even show you, you a proof? game. I will sh- yeah, I do. I'll show it to you. You uh, like that I NFL a, network a, thing? No, I have a clip from a game we played against Michigan where they listed my speed. That's uh, and I proof. screenshot it. It was a little unique. Keith, no, Keith Jackson way. was like, look at that tight end. He's so fast. Thank you. Did he really? Yes. Okay, that's cooler than the number. Right? If you have Keith Jackson talking about I you. I know. Christian yeah, Fourier rumbling, put, stumbling the around the side. Now, I've that's awesome. I've seen people awesome. put the right? graphics. That's what I mean. Yeah, okay. but we've seen graphics been that wrong, are wrong all the time. I'll yeah, stop it. it. They get it from our strength coach would never exaggerate speed. 4-7-1. Yeah. Or maybe you were 4 7 you. Maybe you were 5-4-1. No, I was. Uh, they by the time, by the the time I ran the forty, I was a. I ran a four nine six or something. I was slow. What happened? Hell. My back, my knee, oh, my shoulder. Jesus. Ah, my back. You started bitching about your back way <laughs> ah, back when. <laughs> Look, I broke my arm forty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
ooh, I broke. I was like, ooh, I can't run it. I did try to run 39 yards instead of 40. They caught me. You are the ultimate. I did. I was like, they're like, hey, you, you got to back up a yard. It's like, damn it. Wow. Cheap bastard. Already didn't have folk t- uh, any confidence in your probably speed. Probably grew your hair out, too. Uh, figure if you went head first, you'd get an extra <laughs> couple inches. Like now. Like, a, like a swimmer. Up. Like a swimmer. All right, are you guys ready? That's yeah, yeah. big deal, no big deal. Are you uh. ready for the game of choices? Now, this is meant for you to feel uncomfortable. This is meant for you to just give one answer. <laughs> what does that the mean? The questions will not be easy. <laughs> Some people may hold these answers against you. I'm just warning you right wait. now. The game of choices is next. Like Greg Hill in a Groupon, Fourier in a Dunsky, Jones in Optimism. Some.
tonight. You guys have been prepped. You're ready. You got your thinking caps on. Now, remember, this is called the game of choices. Highly anticipated. Never <laughs> duplicated. Never duplicated. And this is the good part. This is the game, right, uh, where there is no winner. Love it. Everybody gets a medal. Oh, nice. right. I feel like no we're all order. in no particular order. Like everyone gets one, so don't worry Perfect. about it. All right, are you ready for the game of choices? Let's Hell do it. Hell yeah. Let's go. Every day we get to make choices. <laughs> Let's make good ones. Make good choices. <laughs> all right, here you go. All right, so so there may be uh, two choices. There may be three choices. Let's okay. start with something really easy, Lou. I'll start with you. Okay. Put it right on a tee for you all since right. you're our baseball seam head guy. All right. What's uh, more likely the reason for all these pitchers getting hurt, Lou? Is it the pitch clock, no spider tack, or are they just simply overthrowing? Make good choices. Overthrowing. Um, pitch clock and a blame pie would be the last one, and the reason why maybe only because of what they're doing. They need extra time. But uh, the spider tack is a big one because you can no the longer – The lack of spider tack. Yeah, lack of it. You, or any kind of gripping – Whatever, because you can no longer hold a baseball like an egg, which is what they always tell you. Now you got to grip it. Now you got to squeeze it. Now you got to. We throw a slider. You can't just have any fingertips. It's got to be deep. It's everything's deeper in your hand, and that's stress in the elbow. But chasing the elite power stuff, you know, maximizing strength. You know, all this technology and science we're using, torque of the body. You know, scapula, all this stuff to throw a baseball harder. We saw it with steroids. Your ligaments weren't able to contain, you know, the muscles you were building, and they blew out. We saw it with days of Christian, like, towards the end of my career, yours, whatever, like, remember core, core, yeah. core, core, core. We're core all winter. Guess what? Record number of obliques. Now we're seeing it because we're building up the shoulder. We're throwing so damn hard. And meanwhile, this little UCL, this little thing in your arm is yep. looking up going, dude, I can't handle what you're doing. The body cannot handle it anymore. And that is the problem. They're, like, more efficient. There's more power, more breaking balls, sweepers, you name it. And the ligament is, like, no moss. So you don't get to answer that question. What? Would you like to? Comment. Just real quick. Okay. He's comment. absolutely right, and I thought he showed it on Twitter yesterday. Lou retweeted oh. this contraption oh, thing. Oh, that's right. That some kid at some baseball academy was using to get his – it, it looked painful. Torque, what, scab, yeah, everything. Torque and everything. And and I just, in my mind, was looking at that versus a Greg Maddox and what he was able to do, or even a Nolan Ryan, who reportedly threw, you watch that documentary, they say he threw like 103 back in the day, yeah. but it was an easy 103, yeah. right? That's why he pitched till he was 100, and that's why every year he threw for a billion innings. These guys today, and you see it at all levels, I've seen it with my son growing up through it, Everybody cares about velocity and how hard you throw and yeah. max effort and all these things. And then you get Dr. James Anders saying, that's stupid because your ligament doesn't mature until the age of 26. Well, they're getting the crap kicked out of them at 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And then they all go see Dr. James Anders to fix it. Yeah. So when it comes to the NFL draft, you're next. And uh, yeah. let's stop talking about – everyone always talks about the success. This guy's going to be great. Let's think about it a different way. And if you go to Twitch right now, follow There's w that contraption. Yeah, there's that contraption. It's a torture that contraption. Yeah. Was talking. I saw that also. You retweeted that, right? It was, yeah. it was like it was 500 bucks, too. Well, you know, it just – throws it, looks up, sees 90, is all excited. Meanwhile, right. he just hit the bull. Right. Do you, Ball one. Right. Just a bit Do you outside. remember? Do you remember? Okay, so the Cybex machine that you would use, yeah. like oh, a, yeah. in the combine. <laughs> so <laughs> I, we usually routinely you use it for quads and hamstrings. Yeah, and use it as a test of power. A little computer. I felt like Dolph Lundgren. I did see a baseball player, you know, uh, convert that thing into a throwing motion, like where he was throwing it up here. So he was using the Cybex machine like he was finishing his throw, and it was just going down and up, down and up. Like oh resisting him going yeah. down and, you know, resisting him going back. Like Stallone in the was, arm movie and the yeah, truck. Yeah, it's like got a that little contraption. Yeah. Over <laughs> yeah. the top. Oh, over yeah. the top. Over the top. I turned right. my head. It's like a switch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. It's great. Underrated. It's Underrated, so by good. The way. And Sneaky, uh, that guy, the big guy, the big white guy who was the champion, he owned a fishing boat and he was friends with my dad. And we got to go, we to go fishing with him. Time. Yeah. Why does he always have a story? We, we went. He had a fishing boat and my and he was like uh, somehow connected to the sheriff's department. You're and like my dad Forrest Gump. There. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is weird. You thought it was like I remember that guy in the fishing Christian, boat. You're losing control of your game. You've no, no, this it. is the game. Get a better host. <laughs> this is the game. You're making bad choices this is right it. now. I know I am. It's all your guys' fault. All right, next choice. This one's for Andy. We talk about all the prospects. Uh, ooh, that are going to be successful. <laughs> Which prospects, you have three choices, do you think um, will be a bust 
Drake May, oh, Jaden Daniels, or J.J. McCarthy? Make good choices. J.J. McCarthy. Going to be the bigger bust? Big Absolutely. Bus? Because he is going to be asked. He's going to get overdrafted. It's not his fault. He's going to get overdrafted. I am fault. now accepting that he's going in the first <laughs> half, first round. Tom Curran's got him going in the top five. Whatever it is. It's not your fault. You're expected to be a franchise quarterback. You're expected to just like a backpack these kids wear. Put it on your back and carry that team. He didn't carry his college team. His college team had the best offensive line in the country, <laughs> the best running game in the country, the best yeah. coach in the country, yeah. and they asked him to throw yeah. it like, I don't know, 17 times. That's called a quarter when you get you know on what? that crappy team in the NFL you're going to be on. You're going to be a bust, my friend. You know what the problem is, too, with him is that there's not going to be a benefit of the doubt. Everybody knows it's going to be a reach. Yeah. Like, you get Caleb Williams, it doesn't work out. You're, everybody's on board with Caleb. Daniels, yep. everyone's on board. Maybe even Drake May. No matter where J.J. goes, that fan base is going to go, what? Absolutely. I feel and, and, bad and for him. And day one at practice, he misses a throw. Told you. Yep. I day feel bad one. for him. All right, so, Lou, you're up next. Okay. Who Do we get had... points or anything in this game? Well, like... again, uh, it's a game of no winners. You get a medal. So we're all losers? Uh, no, no, we're all winners like together. I like, said you know, a, ga- a game of no winners means we're all losers. No, 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 we just all get a medal. We oh, okay. don't lose, we just learn. Yes, we learn from okay. our mistake. We did hit yes. six foul balls today, Coach. There you go. All right, so this, this one's for you again, because yeah. I thought this was interesting when I saw this uh, tweet go out yesterday. Who has had a worse offseason? Oh. Scott Boris, super agent. Yeah. Or the New England Patriots. Make good choices. <laughs> Boris. <laughs> His face made me laugh. Uh, Rob Boris. I think so, too. Here's the thing with the Patriots. Uh, Talk about humble know, pie. Well, like, yeah, but like, I don't know. Like, unlike Red Sox where there's no salary cap, like, there's an understanding of where the Patriots are. Right, it's a transition. It's a new coach. It's a new this. It's a, this a benefit of the doubt. Let's see how it goes. This benefit of the doubt. Boris, you're talking about his job, right? And like Jordan Montgomery just left him. You know, holding out with Snell like didn't work out. JD didn't work out. Chapman even didn't work out. Like the Boris four did not work. And whether times are changing, I, I don't know. But that hurts. Like, if you're thinking of how many guys, in the, you know, all of a sudden some young player, a guy like Jackson Hall that just pops up, and I actually I think he's got Scott. I don't even know. But you run to Scott Boris when you know you're a great young player. Like, I'm sorry, but there's a dad out there going, uh, you know, that didn't go well for him this year. Like, you know, there's doubt. Yep. And that hurts when it's your business. Um, If you were, Andy Hart, if you were going to uh, describe Shohei Otani Uh-oh. to one of your friends who knew nothing about – uh, the Dodgers and the gambling scheme and his interpreter. Um, then you and then you had to kind of explain who he was and what represents him most regarding this story afterwards. Would you call him stupid or willfully ignorant? Make good choices. I feel like willfully ignorant is the safer answer here. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what to make. He's not stupid. So willfully ignorant or just going along to get along. I know a lot of people were like feeling sympathy for him. Imagine oh, he's a victim. being in a country where you oh, don't speak the he's language a, he's a victim. and your your only connection to the outside world is bilking you out of money. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm that naive to believe mm. that. So I'll say willfully ignorant. Yeah, I want to go with stupid, but I'm not playing. I'm just a host. Okay, so here comes the uncomfortable Pat part. Pat Sajak. Uh, so Lou, so this is for both of you, right? Lou's going to go first. Okay. Okay, uh, we've done this uh, before, Lou, years ago. Let's play, um, and I don't even know how I can say this, um, marry, kill, and have sex with just one time. Okay. It's <laughs> Is your mic on? Turn your, your mic on. on. Oh, it is. Yeah. And now it is. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, here's yeah, the yeah, game. I'm not a, go ahead. Okay, so. <laughs> Give you, me names. Okay, okay, wait uh, for it. Okay. Here are your three choices, Lou Merloni. Okay. Jermaine Wiggins. <laughs> 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 I don't remember what two I had. Hold on. Three guys. Wait, you got three. Okay. Okay. Greg Hill. Ugh. Wait for it. Or Chris Curtis. I plead the fifth. Yeah, I mean, really. You got to you gotta go. Who are you killing? Who are you marrying? And who are you going to have a one-night little rendezvous with? Oh, my God. <sighs> right, I plead see. the fifth. I'm going to kill Curtis. <laughs> okay. Uh, Seems obvious. <laughs> I don't know. This one's gonna, now it gets tougher. I I'm actually gonna, think this is mean? easy. This is, I think it's easy, too. I'm going to bang Greg. 
And I guess I'm going to, what, marry Wiggy. Yeah, okay. I thought that was the easy answer right off the bat. And I don't know what that says about me or those people or my relationship. What was your, what was your answer? Is the same? Right off the bat. The same exact. Kill mm-hmm. Curtis, bang Greg, marry Wiggy. Wouldn't you want to marry... Make it choices. Wouldn't you want to marry Greg because he's got all the cash? Mm-hmm. I think Wiggy's doing okay for himself. You ex NFL players. Uh, well, I think Greg's doing a lot. Plus, Wiggy saying, seems like a lot of Wiggy. fun. Let's be honest. I'm just saying, I don't want to marry a bang Wiggy. either one of them. I'm just no, saying, well, but we gotta play the game. I mean, that is. Thank you for playing. Wiggy seems like the most fun. If I got to spend a lot of time with the, one of them that I wouldn't get annoyed with, that I'm most likely to enjoy my time, that would be Wiggy. See, I think I, I think I'd have to go with Greg. I'm just we can not, eat. I'm just we can watch have, football. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a, you know uh, my own bedroom. I'm gonna have a, you know views of the credit card. I'm not gonna be doing anything. Text line had a quick question. WTF are we doing here today? <laughs> uh, yeah, they have a good hot dog. If you're a hot dog person, uh, my wife likes it. the hot dogs. Plus, I'm the there. smarter guy. The six inch and the foot long. <laughs> I'm the smarter guy in the relationship. I can explain Wait, to so him. We so all... w- Wiggy, it's a pickle. Wait, it comes from a cucumber. Hold on. So we all would kill Curtis? <laughs> we're all killing Curtis. Is that lost in this whole thing? <laughs> yeah, no. And that seemed like the easiest one. Even you, you were like, well, you, I'll kill Curtis. Yeah, yeah. You, left, you left Coco out. Well, I didn't want to add a... I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I don't want to get smart. It's yeah. easy with the guys. It's safer with Excuse the guys. Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? It I is, just though. We all want to kill Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Last one. Last one. We'll go a little long, and then we'll get back into trending real quick. <laughs> Two headlines from the same paper, Lou. Yeah. And uh, you go first yeah. on this one. Um, you tell me which one is more true for mm. you mm. and why. Headline for McAdam on the Red Sox. The Red Sox used to be defined by failure. Now yep. they're haunted by success. Yep. Or from your favorite columnist, uh, Chris Gasper. Yep. I know you like him a lot. Is one of your it? favorites. Yeah. Yep. Um, no big words in this one, though. If the Celtics have a fatal flaw, it might be Joe Mazzula's stubbornness. Make choices. Which All right, one's well, f- uh, closest to the truth? He doesn't write the headlines. Because if he didn't okay. be a word that I but wouldn't his, understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, with Sean because they were defined by failure. And whether they're defined by success, I think they were defined, but I'll still go with that one, more of reactionary spending or, you know, like finishing in last and then would react to it and actually spend. And they won two World Series after finishing last the year before. And now this is like back to back years and it hasn't happened. So it's sort of like, what the hell? Right? Like, I thought this was going to be the year after finishing last, whatever, it's three out of four that you would spend. So I, I would say it's the Sox, given, you know, they won World Series. They've spent in the past. It, there's, you know, they've been a big market team. And that kind of leads to the confusion and the, I think, the anger from a lot of people. Like, what, what is going on here? I thought that was one of the best headlines I have read because I, I was totally in lockstep with the whole. Because it felt like there was a, like, even with the Patriots, I think the Patriots, you know, in a similar situation, right? Because all they're going to be talking about is the past, the past, the past. Sure. Not as much failure, but it, you will constantly be looking back. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. Thank you, Giannis. And now I feel better about losing with that quote from Giannis. You want to grab yeah, this real quick before we get into trending? I I think it's the Red Sox one, but I I put a little different twist on it because to me it's not just tied to the winning and losing. It's the investment. And even before they won, they invested. We got spoiled. Even pre-2003, 2004, you get into the winning phases. They were going to get Pedro. They were going to get Ramirez. They were in on these guys. They were bringing in, even going back to Roger Clemens, when he signed like a five-year, $25 million contract, you had the highest paid pitcher in baseball. You were investing. Yeah. And I say it all the time. You're the Boston Red Sox. That didn't always entail winning. Didn't always entail losing, but it entailed you were in the game. You were playing on a certain stratosphere with the Yankees and other people, right? And now it's like, I don't know what the Boston Red Sox are as a business, as a as an organization. I don't know where they they sit, like what category or class of major league baseball they're in. And that's what bothers me. Yeah. All right, guys, you guys, here's the good news for the the first ever game of choices. Will there be a you're, second? You're, you're both winners. Will there be a second? You're, you're both winners. And I know that we this song, you guys all made good choices. Because in reality, Lou, make there are choices. no bad choices. There are no bad oh, choices. Oh, there are. Oh, there are. Ask Ipe. <laughs> good point. All right, last segment, right, before we bring in Coop, because this is Coop's last day. We're going to get into trending, but I want to touch on this real quickly before we go, because the J.J. McCarthy hype 
train has reached ludicrous speed. Luda! We'll talk about that, but first let's go to Billy and find out what's trending. The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending is brought to you by Time Out Market Boston. The Orioles completed the three-game sweep over the Red Sox with last night's 9-4 win. Tonight, the Sox begin a three-game series with the Angels at Fenway Park. First pitch is at 7-10 on the Shaw's and Style Market, WEEI Red Sox Network. Shaw is perfecting the yard of fresh. Tannehout gets a start for the Sox against the Angels' Reed Detmers. Don't forget to tune into the Mass Mutual Red Sox pregame show tonight at 6-10 with Rich Keefe. Today, the Red Sox recalled Bobby Dahl back, back up to the Major League roster. The Celtics are losers of back-to-back games after last night's 118-109 loss to the Knicks. The Seas are right back at it tonight when they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off at the TD Garden is at 7.30. Yesterday in the men's Frozen Four, Boston College defeated Michigan 4-0, and Boston University lost to Denver 2-1 in overtime. The national championship game between number 1 BC and number 3 Denver will be tomorrow night. Puck drop is at 6. The call of the championship game can be heard on WEEI AM850 with coverage beginning at 5. 45. The Bruins return to the ice tomorrow night when they play the Penguins in Pittsburgh. Face off at 8. Also tomorrow night, the Revolution will be in New York to play New York City FC. Kickoff at Yankee Stadium is at 7.30. And checking in on the Masters, Max Homa still atop the leaderboard at minus 7. Timeout Market Boston is a food and cultural market in the Fenway with 14 unique food concepts, some of Boston's top chefs, two bars with a wide selection of craft cocktails, wines, and New England's top local brews. Timeout Market Boston showcases the best of the city under one roof. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEEI, WEEI.com. I'm Chelsea Messenger, helping you see.
streaming on WEEI.com. All right, it's still raining out there like crazy. All I know is I'm getting a bunch of text messages that uh, sports have been canceled. Always kind of like that. Oh, I haven't. I should check. I always kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. Like something about Friday practice, you know, like it's like the end of the week. Like nobody, no, nobody, no parent wants to bring their kid to some soccer field or some, you know, basketball gym in the middle of nowhere. Personally. It's a day to get better. Me. We'll you're get better when you're in seventh grade. How about that? <laughs> well, you know what? We'll make that. Uh, you know, we'll make that strive when they're in seventh grade oh, next week. Uh, I wanted to bring this up because, uh, as far as like, this is just the time of the year, like when it, when prospects are getting overhyped. It's like nothing else to do, and I feel like each quarterback, and we don't talk about any other position other than quarterback, even though there's so many other players that will end up being in the Hall of Fame at some point in time or All Pros and make the difference for their their team that they're drafted by. But JJ McCarthy. Like the the hype is next level, and we would call it ludicrous speed Luda. because it's kind of overrated. We talked about Tommy Kern. Why do you think there's so much attention and overhype for him? Uh, the overall need for quarterbacks. I mean, the he has talent. Uh, that's the 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 part I struggle. So the the story I had referenced earlier, the thirty uh, third team website, yeah, which is a consortium collaborative of former coaches and players and media members all working together, analyze the NFL. They sent out one of their little emails hyping up whatever they got on the website, and today's headline was Top 5 Mistake, colon. McCarthy hype train needs to slow down. And I agree with it. And I feel bet he's a good quarterback at the college level. He's talented. He's got a pretty good arm. He's pretty athletic. He certainly should tie himself to a 27 and 1 record the last 2 years and a national title doesn't mean you're a franchise quarterback doesn't mean you are a top 3 pick a top 5 pick and i mean we lived this life right mac jones started out like eh, he's a mid round talent uh, oh he's got a little tom brady to him charlie oh, weiss oh look says. at that guy then all of a sudden he's going 3 to san francisco and you're like Mac Jones going three to San Francisco? Then he falls to 15, which isn't really falling because we first thought he was like a day two pick. Now he's uh, fallen to 15. But it's just this, there's not enough QBs to go around. And if you're one of those teams that's on the cusp, like the Vikings, Vikings need a QB. They want a QB. They're putting themselves in every, that drives the value up. It's like a house or something. You got a couple bidders and it just keeps going up and we push this house beyond where the market really should push it. See, I'm curious. Like, I think as an organization, you have to identify like, what you think is special about a quarterback. Yeah. Because it's a different level. Like, you can look at Mac Jones and all the Alabama quarterbacks and say, well, yeah, because they have first-round line, they have a first-round talent in the alpha outside, and, of course, they're going to be wide open. So then you look at arm strength. I don't know. You look at athleticism. You look <laughs> at accuracy. You know, and but it's like, okay, the guy's always open because your team is that much better. Yeah. You, know, you look at Penix out there, and it's like, okay, well, you got that wide receiver. That's maybe, you know, you just, you just – well, that much better than everybody else. Jane Daniels and the kid neighbors. Is that his name, I think, down at LSU? Yeah, yeah the neighbors. receiver, yeah. So when you look at a college quarterback, what would be that thing? For J.J. McCarthy? No, what would be that thing you No, what for? thing would you want? Whatever because, he's great because, at. Is it no, no, winning? no. I think, be, it's inta- I think there because, needs to be some right. intangibles no, 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 attached no, no, no. to it. I hate intangibles. But it can't, no, be, it's, it can't it, just it, be why winning. Why would you hate you, intangibles? You can be on a great team. It can't just be winning. Right. It can't just be how hard you throw. It can't just be look at my stats because I could have been in Alabama you know, years ago and the best wide receivers that are all pros in the NFL now. So what would it be? For you, like what when you look at a quarterback in college, say that's why it'll. Train. Okay, so for me, it's ability. It's raw ability. So arm strength, I, accuracy, athleticism, thrown out of the pocket. What what is it? Like it's, pocket it's presence. Some it's some amalgamation of all of those, right? And I don't think he has anything elite in any of those. I don't think he measures arm strength. Out. His arm strength, velocity wise, is like right below Josh Allen. Velocity wise, okay. So there's one. So, but I don't know if I see that all the time on the field. I see that when he's testing. I don't know if I see that, and I don't know why that is. I don't know why yeah. I don't jump off the, the the tape or whatever and say, oh, my God, this guy's got the strongest arm I've ever seen. But when what worries me with him is this, this whole intangibles, high floor thing. To me, that's what you say when the tangibles aren't there to brag about. I don't want that at three. I don't want a high floor at three. I don't either. I want a high ceiling. I agree with you a thousand percent. I think you you tend to promote a guy or brag about a guy Base, you start with whatever his best stature. Well, you is. want you want to validate your affection and love for this person, so you make up reasons why he should go where you think he should go. But if if it, let's use an NBA player, 
if the guy can jump out the gym and has a high basketball IQ, what do people usually say first? Jump out the gym, right? Because it's just like that awe-inspiring, holy crap, did you see what Anthony Edwards can do? He hit his head on the rim when he was blocking that shot. And then later you fill in with, why is he a first-round talent or an MVP candidate? He knows the game. He works hard. He's got effort. He's got the intangibles to marry up to the tangibles. If, if, Give me the damn tangibles. You know why? Because I believe, personally, we're in an era of tangibles, of, of the actual skill sets. I think Josh Allen is phenomenally gifted. I think Joe Burrow is phenomenally gifted. I think Patrick Mahomes is phenomenally gifted. Those are the measuring stick quarterbacks where you do business, correct, in the AFC. There's this weird divide. I was talking about this with Cadillac on the Six Rings pod. The NFC is this this conference seemingly where the better rosters exist, where Brock Purdy can win because San Francisco is good. Jalen Hurts can be an MVP candidate because he's got everything in Philly. Jared Goff can win because they built a roster in Detroit. When I look at the AFC, I see pure QB talent, right? Yeah. Buffalo, Cincinnati, L.A., Kansas City. It's talent, 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 talent. Yeah. You know, maybe Miami is a little bit more. Well, they got a lot of talent as the quarterback could. But that's what you're keeping up with, the Joneses in your in your world. I think you need that talented QB. That's why it really bothered me. Did you hear Robert at the owners' meetings? He had that long-winded quote, and he said, but really what matters, X's and O's is where it's at. No. I couldn't disagree more. It's talent. What do you mean X's and O's? His coaching staff's yeah. X's and O's? X's and O's. We're past that. Or the or quarterback's X's. ability to no, no, no. figure in out general, the X's and O's. In ge- no, no, no. In general, a team's so a X's scheme, and O's. A, a scheme, a coach, a, a timing. Which I could not disagree. If, if you believed that then go beg Bill to come back because I still believe Bill might be the best X's and O's coach yeah. there is to throw out there on you know a Sunday that, uh, afternoon and make adjustments. Uh, what is that movie, The Draft? If it's with Kevin Costner. Oh, yeah. Comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. No, I want that actually, draft. How do we do that? Draft <laughs> draft <laughs> it is. It actually, it is as far as those. It's not like the program, right? Uh, you I know, like Where that. Latimer is like losing his mind because he's on steroids. Um, he starts digging into this quarterback that everyone is hyping up, talks to yeah. the college coach and – you know, then he says, oh, you know, nobody went to this guy's party, and then they lie about it. And, you know, then he kind of watches a play where he gives up on a play, and he doesn't fight through whatever. He just kind of gives up. And, I, I mean, as corny as it sounds, that is exactly what I'm trying to look at, me personally. That's why I was asking, Kern, like, you've watched every single throw, watched everything, every single pass. Like, all these, all these draft community guys locally – who just lose their mind bragging about, I've watched every throw. Did you watch uh, North Carolina versus Campbell? Like, Campbell, right, where he threw five touchdowns and no interceptions? Stop. I can't do it. So I want to find the, the the game where he struggles. I start with his worst game. Yeah. I go to uh, NC State. I go to Clemson. I go to Miami. I want to figure out, and, uh, and, I, and I dig in pregame. What was he dealing with? What was the circumstances when he played against Dabo Sweeney and Clemson? Mm-hmm. What happened with Miami? I had called an NC State game early in the year, so I knew how good their defense was. And even their coach was like, I were playing like crap right now. We're finally playing the way I thought they would play. And they were blitzing a lot, aggressive D linemen, fast linebackers, first round DBs. Yep. So I was like, okay, here we go. Let's see. Well, he had one good drive against NC State. In like the third possession, threw against uh, their uh, first round cornerback and nailed it. They get to the two penalty, get to the run of play, loss of down, and then fumble. Same thing with uh, same thing with um, uh, Clemson. It was a similar game, just issue after issue. Receivers falling down. Like who the hell is being judged? See, I, that Merrill Hodge is going to yeah. judge them on NC State. Yeah, I, I like that theory though, because as we all know, when it's it's easy when it's going good. You mean like J.J. McCarthy the last two years? Well, yeah. When well, every game was played on Jim Harbaugh's terms? Yeah, and, and the game was played on your terms. Right. And again, I watched Michigan, and I never felt like he they're going to win the game because of him. Right. Now, I don't know if that's a knock on him or just Harbaugh coaching, saying we run the ball, our defense is that good, and, and maybe he was successful because our focus was run, which yeah. opened up the passing game. So Yeah. but you know, And that's the thing. So, so you look at bad games, and you say, okay, what does he look like here? How bad is his bad? Like, how is he reacting on the field? What The makeup. You're looking for all those sort of things. Are we holding, and I think I may be doing this myself. I'll, I'll admit this. So Mac Jones was a one-year starter, essentially, at Alabama during COVID, where he had great talent. Most of the games were played on his terms. I thought Steve Sarkeesian was awesome. Get him easy throws. I always joke, somehow he got, like, 
Jalen Waddle on the Indy Hart of middle linebackers. Like these matchups where you're like, <laughs> how the hell did you scheme that well, up? Well, you had five, six strong on your offensive right. weapon category. And supposedly Mac Jones was NFL ready, high floor, right? He had the lowest floor I've ever seen. He bottomed out like I've never seen a quarterback bottom out. That was a low floor. And I feel like I am holding that against J.J. McCarthy because I think J.J. McCarthy, even though he had two years, it was – Pretty comfortable for him at Michigan with that. Zach Zinter, local guy, was one of the best offensive linemen in the country. They had they were voted the best offensive line yeah, the, the, in the, the, the country. Joe Moro, uh, Joe right. Moro Award or whatever they yeah. give it to the best offensive line. He had Blake Corum rushing for 2,700 yards yeah. over the last two years. He had a coach who is a pro style. Like, he's keeping the crap together other than the scandals and everything oh. that was going on. Oh, but, yeah. you know, the even, things, yeah. even that, I might argue. Their version of Spygate. No but bad even, choices. <laughs> even that, I think he may have held together better than had yeah. it been a different coach in a different situation. And I, I kind of like that Caleb Williams has been to two schools, fell on his face against Notre Dame. You want to talk about the NC State game for May. Caleb Williams, I think, had four picks and a fumble lost against Notre Dame. Guys going number one overall. I think he had five on the season or something like that. And like, like three or four came in that one game. Right. I like when guys have adversity. I like that Drake May has been a two-year starter with two different coordinators. Like, some of the crap that I might throw at him in his first four seasons in the yeah. NFL. If Alex Van Pelt stinks, you're going to have two coordinators, right? We have no idea what Alex Van Pelt is. He called plays in 2013 for the Buffalo Bills. Not even. 2009. Whatever it was. 15 years ago, he was a coordinator for the Bills. That's it. He's figuring out what he's doing on the fly. So, I like struggles. I don't want... To me, I, the unknown in this is J.J. McCarthy. When it hits the fan and you're down 25 mm -hmm. in the second quarter, what's he going to do? How many times was he down 25 in the second quarter? You want to look uh, that uh, up? Say ne no, I'm going to go with never. Okay, I'm going to go never, I'm gonna go too. With never. And aren't they going to ask him to sling it all over the field and try to come back? Or are we just going to pack it in and what say, about how, well, J.J., you can't, uh, you can't, J.J. can't win you a game, and since we're down 25 nothing, let's just pack it in. Well, in 13 days, 6 hours, 22 minutes, and uh, 0 seconds starting now, ah. We will be at the draft. We will be in Detroit. Gresh and I will be. We'll cover everything. We'll give you tons of interviews. Tons Are you going to be insight. in Detroit? The smelliest city oh. in the United States. Yes. What? Is there a smellier city than Detroit? What Last time you were in Detroit, I think the state yeah. of Florida stinks. No, no, no. If if you went to downtown, I don't know, like uh, it's, you know Miami Beach or whatever. If you went to downtown Orlando, what is the draft? In 13 days, 13 Lou. Days, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> April 24th or 5th? It's the 25th, Thursday night. Okay. 8 Where are you going to be? I'm in Cleveland. I was wondering you're if I was going to be in Detroit. You're going to be doing Ooh. a game? Yeah, day game. You got a day game, so then you're going to sit are we back? we flying home have a couple? the draft on the plane? Are you a maniac? What do you mean? You're a maniac. Drake May. Um, if you oh, liked geez. May, you're a maniac. I'm a know. maniac. Honestly, I, I, this guy. I'm I thought, everybody, I, everybody's got a pet cat. The old, that's, that's yours. I'm, I'm, I'm trading down, getting picks. I need better players. I need I, better. And you know what? And convincing Where Brady to come Lou back. Where did my Lou go? The Lou that used to Brady. do this full time more wouldn't have been saying that. I'm more of them. I don't want to be the Jets. I don't want to Great. get the wrong guy in five years being the same. So you spot. don't want to be the Bengals? Nope. I'm, I'm not good enough yet. I'll just take this. The thing Bengals slow. weren't good enough yet till they got Joe Burrow. Why do people keep saying that? I just nope. I'm good. I'll wait. What do you think the get success rate is? For quarterbacks going in the first round, like if, if you're twenty five, twenty, do you think? Yeah, because I guess success would mean it's more than you think. What? We did this on the podcast where we just rattled off the top quarterbacks taken. And how every do you year decide whether somebody was a success or not? Like porn, you know, when you see it, if he's good. Well, well, you gotta identify it somehow. <laughs> no, I don't need to identify. <laughs> and it. what year porn are we talking? Trevor about? Trevor Lawrence, good. <laughs> yeah, good. Could go bad. <laughs> good. But but give him a, is he if, a if franchise guy? But if, like Kirk Cousins, he the Super he's Bowl? good, right? Yeah. Good. That's the other That's issue pass. You, you people around here have, and I'm here going to include go. Angry Lewis. Here we go with what the you people. People going? around here think you need to win a Super Bowl to be a stud QB. No, I'll look. take Josh Allen and Joe Burrow every day. They may never win. I'll take Dan Marino. Just because you had the greatest of all time to do it and won six Super Bowls, if that's your standard, then turn your TVs off and stop watching football. Can I find you're not quarterbacks that. like Kirk Cousins, for example, you brought up? How many like, Super Bowls he won? Fourth round? Yeah. Fourth round. Oh, so you want to bank on that? No, but I don't need to bank on. You know where the best quarterbacks the go? First round either. Not listen to Elliot players. Wolf, your new GM. The best quarterbacks go at the top of the first round of the draft. Yeah, you can get others, but if you want one, the best chance to get one is near the top of the draft. Yeah, History's proven like, it. All I would like. I would, I, I, good. I would like to sit to see the data on that one. It's true. Uh, again, we, we can do it. We can, we can, it's on the internet. If I could somehow work Google it out it. and come Bing out of here with Brady. one of these. One of these tackles and, and one of the you, full wide receivers, tackle? I'm in. You want Joe Thomas. How yeah. those Browns years go? Awesome.
It's not tackle. his fault. Not Jake his fault. Long, remember when he went number one overall to Miami? Also, Turn things around. Also not Calvin Tackles Johnson's lose. fault. They didn't draft a quarterback or didn't oh, find oh, wait, a quarterback. Oh, you need a quarterback? Yeah, yeah, eventually. Above all else, you eventually. need the quarter. No, 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 no. See, that's the other thing that crawls up my butt. Okay. I will figure out the quarterback. Yes. How are you going to figure it out? You don't figure out quarterback. You figure out tackle and wide receiver. You can trade for those. You can sign those. You want a franchise quarterback. Well, you, you take him in the first either round. either one of them. But you can figure that out next year. You can figure that out at number 34 overall and get a tackle that stuns everybody and becomes Kirk Matt Cousins. Light. Okay, I uh, gotta go. Gotta go. Time out real quick. Because and then some guy that said I would take Trey Lance. No, he's the opposite of what I take. He was a running back in college. He wasn't even a quarterback, really. I'm he gonna never start threw. treating you like we're at the Oscars. It is, it is play the music. Because it is a big day today. Like you're totally taken away from Coop's time. Like Coop, Coop. The last time we're ever gonna see Wait, Coop. Where's and Coop I'm, going? I'm gonna challenge you. Here's the challenge. Do you think we can make Coop cry in five minutes? No, he's too young. He's not emotional. No, he he's live. very emotional. Are we allowed to touch no, him? No, you can't touch him, you dirty <laughs> perv. What? You know, if you That's touch clean, him, too. If, if you touch him, he will cry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you done is next. From the Rubenstein Law Studios.
on WEEI. Now, it's time for... Are you done? Are, are you done? Are you done? Are you done? You done, right? You done, right? Are you done? Are you done? On Crash and Fourier. And it's been a blast. I think the show has been a lot of fun. Um, love coming to work every day. Like, that is... That's a great thing. And and we've become friends. Which, again, I, I would not have imagined that being the case. So... <laughs> That was a Rich Keefe back in the old uh, Holly, Keefe, and Dale show. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Keefe, who had worked with uh, Holly five minutes, uh, five months, maybe. Um, I love when he's like, God, I never, I, you know, when I first met you, I thought I'd never be friends with you. But and here I am crying about the fact that you're gone. Two months later. That was uncomfortable. <laughs> we were best friends. I wish friends. I could take back my two weeks just so I didn't have to hear Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that voice you're hearing is uh, Cooper Leonard. And, Coop, I have one question for you. What's up? Are you done yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are done. I'm done. Uh, okay, and um, I'm not like retired. Like I, yeah, I'm, I'm 26. Do we know yeah. what's next for Coop? Uh, greener pastures. Okay. Greener. That's the better greener? answer. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. That's the answer my parents would rather hear than okay. unemployment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're we're exploring the field a little bit. So my thing with Coop is that Coop will end up being some sort of politician, some some guy that you would need. You would you would call me Lou. I'm in a jam. Uh, Got Coop's uh, number? Call you Coop. have Coop's number. <laughs> you have Coop. Coop's the politician who kind of gets you out of a jam, right? It's like, a, you yeah. know. I'll or you see get that the, number light up and I'll just be like, oh. Oh, you get like the Medal of Freedom Maloney or something again. like that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. What, what is it? Let's just real quickly. Who's had the biggest impact on you while biggest you've been impact? here? Yeah. You're going to hate this, but Brad No, of I don't course, hate that. So you spend the most time I'm with not, him. I'm not here without Brad Are you Would not doing be- the pod anymore? Uh, that's up in the air. Okay. Play Tessie's still, they're still doing their thing. We're still putting out episodes. They or we? You just uh, said they we. and we. We. Okay. We. I'm still producing stuff okay, for just them. Sure. I'm, I'm on the uh, the recap for that awful Orioles series that was uh, last night concluding. Uh, go check so it out. He's, so Tessie. he's the father figure to you? Like, that's Brad Did Joe's? you think it was you? Yeah. No, do, I don't know. Do you want me, uh, Connie? No, it's more. Do you want me? <laughs> you're talking about things you can grab. You want me to call you daddy? Yes. Call me daddy. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. The key was for me to try and make you cry. Uh, I mean, how I, emotional are you right now? Are you? Uh, you're sad a little bit, right? I mean, like, I mean, just I, be honest. I yeah, see your eyes lighting up. This past year was very fun. Yeah. It was very fun. It was very productive. We did a great job. With you digital. did an excellent job. For those that don't really know who I am, I did all the <laughs> live streaming. I feel like we didn't set. <laughs> who the that hell up. are we talking <laughs> to? <laughs> yeah, like, good point. Hey, you got a future. Guy leaving. Like, yeah. I, probably people, some people in Twitch out there know think, you. Uh, Everybody knows who you are. One last pre and post uh, board or Red Sox guy now. That's yeah. Cooper Boardman. Okay. Uh, but no, I do more of the digital stuff. I do more of the production. I produce baseball as or I help start baseball as important with Brad Foe. Uh, but Brad, a lot of people would say it's your. It was your idea. No, it was his. I can't take credit for his, that. Sure, you can. We'll give it to you. Uh, so wait, if he if he brought you here and you're leaving, don't you sort of hate him too? Kind of thing. Like, well, like he him? brought me into this world. Yeah. You can also take him out. <laughs> I don't know if he took you <laughs> so out, he but like, he's dad, responsible. He's <laughs> so I mean, so uh, it, as far as um, emotions go, yeah. and how you're feeling right now, there is a sense of loss. Not I'm gonna sure. cry, Roy. There is, there is, like, who are you going to miss the most? Who am I going to miss the yeah, most? Yeah, who are you going to miss the most? Ken. Wow, he's 0 for 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying <laughs> to do you, you, you miss Christian? <laughs> Will Here's you miss thing. Christian? I think Gresh has had such a great impact on me that Jesus. it's just been an incredible time. Uh, what's the clock at? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I got five minutes to fill a bus day. No, I appreciate you very much. Let's, you you ate up a lot of my parents' honey. That was awesome. I did. I did. Uh, Let's do this. The bees okay? are coming. You will be. I, I'm going to come by. For the bees. Let's do this since we did this earlier. He's a beekeeper. Okay. Uh, uh, my dad's. So Come you're going to have uh, you're going to have uh, uh, Andy Gresh, Christian Fourier, Ooh. and um, Ken Laird. You are going to have to oh, play is this the MFK. Again? MFK. Oh, nice. MFK. Let's see where your heart really is. I'm finding Curtis and I'm shooting him. <laughs> you're going to Curtis. Everybody <laughs> wants Curtis to be an option. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Oh, All right, you'd, I'm, sure, I'm assuming you'd marry Ken. He's harmless. Yeah. You, you could run that house. I don't know. He might you be You could run the house. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a little bit of a freak in Ken. Ooh. Whoa. You get a one-night stand in there. Really? Yeah. Wait, so, so he's your blank. Yeah. He's not your marry. Yeah. Okay, so, so who is you your marry? So I guess I got to marry you guys? Is that you like, guys? It's no, not a tandem thing. What are we? Wait, no, is it church? both you? Is it both you and Andy? You've never yeah. played this game before, have you? So you have to either marry or kill Christian. Yeah. Ah. 
And then um, there's Gretch. I'll make you feel safe you at night. You gotta kill one of them. Well, we've heard stories from your wife, so I don't know. Oh, that's true. He does no, I'll that's okay. you. you can, you can, no, you can kill me off. That's fine. No, I'm going to marry you. You can kill me off. Well, do you want to marry Gresh? Uh, he keeps a tidy house. Yeah. He cooks, he'll cook for you? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. So you're leaving, and we're all bummed that you're leaving, because I will say this. Like, if I no, you, listen, I know a lot of people don't know how much work you do behind the scenes. One million how much YouTube work views, right? Goes yeah, into what you yeah, do. I saw cool. the tweet. A Thank million you. YouTube views last month. I gave myself. That's a bit all of you. A, yeah. No, no. Uh, over the last year. That's like. Oh, last year. No, Whatever. but still, it's like it's better than anybody else has done. That's big. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank and you. that's all yeah. you putting the work in, putting the time in. Yeah. Odyssey's all these been clips. trying to make a big push for uh, digital and YouTube because that is the future and. That's kind of where a lot of streaming is going, and I think the company is making a very good decision trying to, you know, build on that and collect a little revenue on that, and I am happy to say that I helped build it up a bit. Okay. Um, I'm leaving it in good hands, I believe. I don't know if we can announce who will be next, because I don't think that's decided. I think uh, it but is. There's but there's a basketball guy that always... you like, and Ooh. he's also a football guy that might be taking over. I'm not sure. Let's not give it away. Yeah. Is it but he's in good twerp? hands. <laughs> You're leaving it in a better place um, than when her. you came in. Yes. Right, that's yeah. Good. That's what I'm proud about. Yeah. That's something that I was kind of like looking forward to. Like when okay. I put those two weeks in, I was like, ah, we're leaving it in a better spot. It's good. Mm. Yeah. It's just that's a what sad it's about. day. Well, Coop, I wish you the best. Thank yep. you, Lou. It was on your uh, podcast. Yeah, I always enjoyed you. listening to you guys. One of our best game. episodes. What's that? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Wait, you didn't even bring up Breaking Boston, the best time of your life. Honestly, that might have been the thing to kill me. All I know is. All I know is that he used to complain about uh, your Holy guys moly. working with you guys what? all the time. No, it was, it was not time. working with us. It was just be honest now. It was commiserating it was, together. It was, yeah. it was a lot of like bitching and complaining. I walk in one day and he's like he was editing something you did. He's like this damn heart kid. <laughs> oh, shut up. I'm going to go you, because I got to get off the air. If you want to get the emotional. At. Producing that. That's what okay. All right, Coop, Sorry, good ben. luck. No, not good. Coop, good luck. Good Thank Coop. you for everything Thank you've you. done. Hey, Coop, we'll stay luck. in touch, buddy. We'll stay in touch. We're not gonna. We'll yes. still talk to each other. Um, uh, Nick and Billy, excellent job today. Andy, Lou, I Good love peeps. you. Thank you. We'll see you guys see Monday you. for Nick ten and Billy minutes Rock. at ten o'clock. I didn't All right, later. That. Nick and Billy Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend.
FM and HD1, Lawrence, Boston. We're always live on the free Odyssey app. Well, the only reason Jalen Brunson won't get it tonight, Brian, is he may not have to play much at all in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a good point. He may, but he may be out there until he gets 40, and he might be trying to get it right here in the third. And the Knicks have the ball as we approach the one-minute mark. And Joe Mazzulla is going to pull the plug. We just got out tough the last two games. Um, we haven't played to our standard. A turn of physicality. The game has shifted a little bit, and it's going to shift even more in the playoffs. And we ain't meet the whistle for whatever reason. Um, it could be just because of, of anticipation for the playoffs or, or whatever, but that's what I'll say. We're going to nip that in the bud, though. Jalen Brown, after the Celtics got destroyed by the Knicks last night. If you just looked at the final box score, you see 118-109, you're like, oh, they lost a game. They already wrapped up the number one seed in the NBA. They're how far clear of the other teams in the East, 13 of Milwaukee, 14 of New York, who beat them last night. But they trailed by 31. They got booed by the home crowd at one point. Some people like Jalen, I feel like, get it. I feel like they understand that the team needs to right the ship and figure something out quickly while other players, and we'll get to them, uh, seem less concerned. So where are you? on this scale you can jump in on jones and mega with arcan it's a friday we're live in the ford clubhouse fenway studio and we're taking you up to the red sox mercifully they're finally done finally done with the baltimore orioles now, they took them to extra innings last night which i guess is progress they get the angels again tonight at fenway weather permitting uh so mego i don't know how you feel about the celtics last night but our big question of the day up now at jones and mego after back-to-back losses to eastern conference contenders what's your concern level with the Celtics, high, medium, low, zero. I think I know you, so I have a feeling I know where you're coming from, but where's your concern level? Okay, so I didn't love last night. It was pretty gross. The effort level, not from the bench, but from the starters, was extremely low. And I would say, though, my concern level is low, is low. I can't say it's zero, banner 18, because this team hasn't done it yet, so I'm always going to have just at least a sliver of doubt, no matter how good the team looks at different points. Um, I just, I I look at the recent, I I was doing this little exercise, and I know I'm not the first person to do this, but the recent champs, if you go back to their last 10 games, and the Celtics are 5-3 and in their last eight, they have two more games to go. They see the Hornets tonight, they see the Wizards before they go into the playoffs. Uh, Last year, the Nuggets were 5-5 and in their last 10 games. The Warriors were 5-5 and in their last 10 when they won in 22. And in 21, the Bucks were 6-4 and in the last 10. So I think there's a lot of different reasons that you see this trend of why teams perform this way towards the end. But I don't, I just don't think that they're really taking any part of these games seriously unless you're deep on the bench and trying to show yourself out for some minutes. They're not showing anything that they would do with Jalen Brunson in a playoff series. I I think they're not even running offensive sets for the most part at this time. So I understand why you could be like worried about the mindset going into the playoffs and can they flip the switch and all of that and be ready to go. But my concern level is really pretty low. Okay, what would you think of Jalen after the game? Because he sounds a little concerned, no? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I also think some of that is like, I I think he's saying he's trying to say the right things. And Jalen's trying to like, oh, yeah, our standard is we're going to be competitive. We're going to be tough. And we're not meeting that standard right now. And really, I think if you like gave these guys, you know, some truth serum, it would be we don't care about these games right now. We have nothing to play for other than our health. And we just need to get to the playoffs. Okay. That does seem to be how they're playing. Arkan, how'd you vote? High concern level, medium, low, or zero? I voted high. I'm concerned about this team, and I think that it's hard not to be. Uh, it, just looking at their history, looking at what this group has been. If this was real load management, if that's what you were seeing last night, if Tatum and Brown didn't play, if Porzingis didn't play, if Holiday and White didn't play, I'd say fine. All right, they're getting beat, whatever. No big deal. Even if those guys played... 
I don't know, half the minutes that they played. Tatum's averaging 35 minutes a game this year. He played 32 minutes last night. That was not load management. He was out there. If you're really concerned about injuries and things like that, don't play him so much. He was playing almost his normal uh, minute load. Same with Porzingis. Same with uh, Derek White. Jalen Brown was like three minutes less than usual. But still, I look at this and I don't like what I'm seeing. I didn't like it against the Bucks. I don't like it here against the Knicks. I didn't like it in those games against the Hawks. And in fairness, they had a great week in between that where they beat everybody that they played. But let's be honest here. That was the Thunder without Gilgis Alexander, uh, there was uh, the Pelicans without Ingram, and a bunch of bad teams. So I'm sorry, when they play a team that has something to go for, I'm not convinced this team's going to flip the switch in a couple weeks. They're not the flip switchers, or switch flippers. They're not switch flippers, and that's what I'm, I'm worried Brad about. Fo- Brad Fo knows what you meant. I have, uh, I have a very high concern right now. So, okay, but Arkin, just really quick. like uh, the flip we're, went switched. We're Thank talking you. about a situation where the rest of the Eastern Conference is like pretty unsettled. So everybody else there has something to play for. So yeah, of course these teams are the Bucks, the Knicks. They're playing with some desperation. Your your team just doesn't care. Yeah, you have nothing to play okay, for fine. other than staying healthy. Okay, fine. So they should be down thirty one. No. Okay. So I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm saying like I didn't love the like, product last if night. If there's nothing to play for, Tatum doesn't need to play thirty two minutes. I now. agree. I don't point. think he yeah. needs to. You I get, really don't. He did, and he sucked. I mean, okay, they fine. all kind of sucked last. You night. You get out executed in the fourth quarter by a team that it matters more to because they're chasing the two seed. Uh, like, fine. They were down by thirty one, <laughs> and so I just I wouldn't completely brush that aside. Uh, so Arkan is highly concerned. Mego, you have low concern. I'll give you my answer here in a moment. But real quick, let's do an exercise. Because I want to give Arkan, I think, a little bit of credit. Who's the scariest player in the Eastern Conference off the Celtics, Mego? Who's the scariest player in the East? Oh, no. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler? Yes. I'll always be scared of Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler can be like 85 years old. And if he walks out on the court, I'll be like, oh, no. Arkan? Number 11 from Villanova. Jalen Brunson, scariest guy in the Eastern Conference right now, and I don't think it's really that close, honestly. I think he's right. Yeah. I think he's right, Mego. I don't want the he's Heat. Been killing people. I don't want the Heat. The Heat still scare me because of that whole thing, and I've seen Butler elevate, and maybe I'll feel stupid if the Celtics get Miami in the first or second round or Eastern Conference final, <laughs> and it's Jimmy Butler. Maybe I'll feel stupid about it. It's Jalen Brunson. Now, who's that chicken noise for? For me, for the That's Heat? That's for all of you. I hate okay, all of well, your I'll, I'll embrace that, but the question, the question isn't like, you know, are, are the Knicks going to beat the Celtics? The question is, Ryan, if you want to weigh in, who's the scariest player in the East off the Celtics? Like, who should they be afraid of? Giannis. You, you can't say no one. Okay, Giannis. Giannis. Injured Giannis? Oh, Dame yeah. is another one. I'm not afraid. Dame scares I'm not, I, no, I gave the right. It's so Giannis. not afraid of the Bucks. It's not even fun. I'm afraid of Dame individually. Brunson this month is averaging 36 points a game. Like, he's ridiculous right now. So, we have one Giannis, one Butler, two Brunson. I, I'm giving I'm giving Arkan credit. Arkan is take committed. That's what this is. He started this take last year, and he's okay. married to it. Okay, maybe. Well, it's true now. Yeah, maybe he was ahead of the curve on it. Like, that's why I want to give him credit. I think Arkan, we mocked him merciful, uh, mercilessly for saying Jalen Brunson was the scariest player in the East. Arkan, you wrote this today. They couldn't they couldn't cover him last night. No. They couldn't guard him. And they put everybody on him. Jalen Brown was on him. Jason Tatum was on him. Derek White was on him. Porzingis was on him. He scored on everybody. He was giving it to anybody who was in front of him. And that's something that I don't I'm sorry. Like if you're talking about a playoff series, that's the best player on that team. He's gonna be going that hard in the playoffs too. At some point, don't you think one of them looks at each other and says, Hey, this guy's killing us. Someone get out there and defend him. No one could. That's I'm sorry. That's more than just oh we're not we're taking it easy here because we already clinched the uh, the one seed. That's a guy embarrassing you on your home floor and no one had any answers for him. Okay. Do you think there's just any, like Dejounte Murray? Do you think there's any chance that they're holding their cards close to the vest though? That what they would do on Jalen Brunson, they're not going to show on a random night that doesn't have. So instead, what they just let him score thirty nine yeah, points. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so them. like, what are you going to do? I mean, what are you what are you going to do differently? I mean, Jalen was on him. Arkan's right. They threw different guys at him. Like, what are you going to do differently? I'm it's just not, saying, do you allow college. for the possibility instead of looking at it and saying, "Wow, all of a sudden Jalen Brunson is the most dangerous player in the entire Eastern Conference"? Yeah, it's not all of a sudden. This whole month he's been awesome. He's Ryan, been very very good lately. Ryan, just because I'm not uh, logged in and yep. I, I got to double authenticate and everything else, can you give me some MVP odds? Like Jalen Brunson is uh, probably just outside the top five in MVP odds. Like, it's not a crazy I thing. I doubt that, but I'm going to double check for it. You don't think he's just outside the top five? No. I think he is. Okay, I'm pretty is, sure that he is. he top ten? I'm checking it like, right We're right. talking about a guy who, in terms of MVP, I thought was All right, certainly the in the top MVP ten. MVP ladder just got updated two hours ago, and here's what it is. Jokic number one, SGA two, Doncic three, uh, Giannis four, Tatum five, and Ed just popped up. And then it's DeMontis Sabonis, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson. I number can't eight. wait for Jones to do... The Nordic side. Uh, I was hoping you forgot about that. Uh, we'll get to your phone. Not. We'll That's get to your why phone I'm calls. Grinning ear to ear. We'll get to your phone calls. 617-779-7937. Jalen Brunson is he the scariest player in the East? He tore up the Celtics last night, and I just. 
fine. They're not going all out effort thing. Fine. But scheme wise, scheme wise, what are they going to do differently on Jalen Brunson? They had their whole team out there. They're going to have to step up their effort. So to answer the question that I've avoided to this point in our big question of the day, what's my concern level with the Celtics? High, medium, low, or zero? Do I love what I've seen the last two games? Of course not. I don't want them losing to the Bucs. I don't want them shooting zero free throws. I don't want them attempting 50 plus threes and then crying about it after the game. I certainly don't want them down 31 at home against the Knicks with their whole team on the floor. Do I like any of it? No. Would my preference be they won? Of course. I have zero concern with this team. <laughs> zero. Hashtag Banner 18. No one in this league can touch them. No one outside of maybe Denver. No one can touch them. And so I am not concerned about them losing a seven-game series to Jalen Brunson and the Knicks or to uh, certainly Giannis and Lillard and the Bucks. Never mind Miami, who is the scariest team in the East. Brunson's the scariest player in the East. The Celtics aren't losing to those teams. So I have zero concern about this team. They start doing that in the first round against Atlanta or, heaven forbid, Miami or someone like that. Come talk to me. I'll say I overlooked it. I whistled past the graveyard. In the meantime, I feel the same way about this team. I don't like that they're checked out. I don't like that they're bored, but that's what it is. And we'll see if they can turn it back on because Arkan's right. They have not been able to flip that switch in the past. I agree. They're checked out. They're bored. I don't think that they're running some of the schemes that they would, the sets that they would in the um, postseason. But I also am wondering, like, th this is where I get a little irritated with that. Is that, okay, do you remember it was just, what, two weeks ago in the two back-to-back -back Atlanta losses? Yep. When Joe Mazzullo was telling us that the reason that Porzingis was just getting torched on the perimeter. They were working on stuff. Was because they were trying out stuff in games. Well, like, what happened to that? Like, I do wonder, they haven't, they haven't solidified their late-game execution, for example. Like, I feel like if they're in clutch time, I still have no idea what is going to happen with this team. Like, I have no idea where the ball is going. I have no idea if Tatum can finally make that shot. I don't know. And so I would like to see them, on the one hand, like, use some of these games as opportunities to try to work that stuff out so they're not working it out in, like, the second round of the playoffs because that will be riskier and more irritating to me. Uh, Ryan just sent the odds on Jalen Brunson, which is why I'm where is it? I Where Where are the odds? I agree with you, Mego. Okay, but it, there's only they only have odds for three players. Oh, but I'm just so they they're not aware how scary Jalen Brunson is. Jokic is minus ten. Your guy, Gian, your guy Giannis isn't on the list either. No, but I'm not there. saying he's an MVP. I'm not I'm saying not that saying, at all. You guys, are all of a sudden, Jalen Brunson just Ryan. just crashed Ryan. through a wall and ended up Ryan, in an no MVP one, race. No one said he was MVP. I just said he was top ten, which Arkan backed up with the MVP ladder and knocking on the door just outside the top five. Jalen Brunson has never been an MVP consideration. At least Giannis was at one point this year. Okay. Uh, are you saying because he's outside the top five, he was never a real MVP candidate? Because he was no. close to the top five. He was closer than Jalen Brunson, which is why I think he is far more uh, scary than, than Jalen Brunson is. He's also hurt. And I, I just, no, I'm not afraid of the Bucs. Uh, they have Doc. I don't care. I'm not afraid of the Bucs. I'm not afraid of uh, Giannis. I would be afraid of Lillard if he wasn't being coached by Doc Rivers. <laughs> Jalen Brunson, scariest player in the East. But guess what? No one's scary. I have zero concern with the Celtics. Uh, how'd you guys vote? 617-779-7937. You can weigh in there on the phones or at Jones and Mego. Your concern level with the Celtics. Let me read you a couple of items here before we get to some phone calls. Uh, Dan Shaughnessy in today's Boston Globe. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have the fame, money, and accolades that NBA stars covet. They're two of the greatest players in the history of the league's most storied franchise, but until they win a championship, they're not whole Celtics. Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't go up on the ceiling with Cowens. <laughs> the ceiling? I thought we called it the, the rafters. Uh, they don't go up on the ceiling with Cowens, Russell, the Coos, Satch, Sam, Casey, Larry, and Max. Max. Until they put a banner up there like all of the above. Without a championship, they might as well be a couple of Antoine Walkers. I love that line. Dan Shaughnessy, Boston Globe. Maybe like a few random names like, I don't know, Max aside. How do we feel about that take by Shaughnessy? Because I don't know how you could disagree with it. I totally love it. I think it's like um, the grandfather of the take that I had last week, which is the fear that I do think a lot of Celtics fans, Arkan included, have when they look at Jason Tatum and they say, is he going to be Larry Bird or is he more like Paul Pierce? 
Is it going to take years and years and years from now? Not the years we've been through. Years in the future and a different supporting cast around him by, for him to finally win a championship. Or is now Bird closer, had like three. Is he closer to Bird where he'll, where he'll win when he's still quite young? Uh, how many did Bird have by now? One, two. Bird had, Bird had certainly two rings by this point in Tatum's career. Look, I, I'd sign off on Pierce right now. If you asked me a couple of years ago, if, is Tatum going to win multiple championships, I would have said yes. You know, now I You don't I feel that way now? You just said that you, you Banner 18, that you yeah. have no fear for this yeah, team. Yeah, but I just, I'll take, I think a lot of fans would take the one is the point. I think a lot of fans would take the one. He had two at by Jason age Tatum. 27. Okay, exactly. And I, I guess I was going by years in the league, right? Yeah, so he, I think so he, it's three by years in the league. So he had, uh, he had two by now. So he's already not Bird. Like, I mean, he's not going to be Larry Bird. So I, I'd hope for Pierce. But I don't disagree with Shaughnessy. Like, until these guys win... They're not great all-time Celtics. They're closer to Antoine Walker than they are even guys like Pierce, never mind Larry Bird or Bill Russell. Yeah, and that's why my concern's partially so high, is that this isn't a team that's done it before. This isn't a team that can just walk into the playoffs, flip the switch, and do what they do, like LeBron's Heat or the Cavs or those other two, the Lakers, you know, these other teams that have been there and sort of understand what it's like, the Warriors, uh, not this year's Warriors, but in the past. And I think that that's a big issue. It's a big difference. You look at that, and I think that these two guys have shown – that they're great players, as Shaughnessy pointed out. But they do come up short, and they come up short. It's not like the team around them lets them down. They come up short. Tatum came up short against Golden State. Brown has had huge problems with yep. turnovers and free throws and all these things. And those guys were playing in all those games I just mentioned, too, by the way. Both Atlanta games, the Knicks game, and the Bucks game. You had both of those guys playing, and that's why I'm concerned. Okay, you can weigh in. 617-779-7937. One more item here. New York Post, Arkan, you drop this in. <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest story I've read in a while. I love the New York Post so much. Okay. Uh, if it felt eerily familiar for you to go back to New York, uh, it should have. Uh, or back in New York, rather. It should have. Because this is like New York sports porn for these people. It sure way. felt an awful lot like the evening of December 29th, 2007, a night where the undefeated Patriots visited Giants Stadium with little tangible merit on the line for either team. Arkan, where were you that night? Um, that night I was at a friend's house in Colorado and I punched the hole in the kitchen wall. And no, 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 not the Super Bowl, the regular season game. Oh, the regular season game. I don't December, remember where I was. December 29th, 2007, yeah, Randy, Super Bowl. I don't Randy remember Moss, 50 the, touchdowns. Uh, what are you talking about? I don't remember where I was for that. Game. Grand Canal. I, I was, was at a friend. I was at Grand Canal. That place was a zoo. It was awesome. It was, it was, uh, it's right up there, slightly above my wedding and the birth of Lucas. It was, it was way up there in terms of great moments. Great night. Tremendous night. Uh, so they, they beat the Giants, but the Giants learn something about themselves right. is the point in the New York Post. Patriots played their guys. Celtics played their guys last night. In this case, the Knicks won going away. In that one, they kept it close against an all-time great team. Mego, you're scoffing. I'm not scoffing. I'm laughing. Like, I, first of all, I love this. Feels I love like a this. scoff. I think it's, who wrote it? Mike Vaccaro? He's a, he's like a longtime columnist at the New York Post. But I think it's so ridiculous because it's not even comparable. Like, of course, so, if so you, you are scoffing, if you played that game seven times, how many times do the Patriots win it? That what, exact Super Bowl 42 Super Bowl game. Yeah. Six. Yeah. So like, OK, but hang about on. a seven game series. Who is any fear of the Knicks against the Celtics? OK, but I'm just saying I, I don't think the Patriots. It's not like it's not like the Giants beat them one out of 100 times. The Giants beat them pretty close to 50 no, percent of the time. I, I just asked you, yeah. like, what what do you think the series would be? And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, I have no fear with this. Like, I really don't. I'm not afraid of New York, especially with Julius Randall out. Like, I, I just don't think that they're a real threat. But I would love to see the series because the Boston New York thing is just always fascinating and a great time. Eastern Conference Final would be great. Arkan, you put any stock in that? Um, not so much in the Knicks, but in the Celtics Patriots comparison, yes, absolutely. I think that there's a big comparison you can make there. It's a super team. They've dominated the entire regular season, and the big difference is that uh, Tom Brady won three Super Bowls before then, and the only thing this group's done is choke in the Conference Finals and won NBA Finals too. So that's probably the biggest difference. But I do think there's a lot of 07 similarities here. That you can't really ignore. Yeah, I mean the difference is that was an all-time Patriots team that you're right already knew how to win, uh, or an all-time you know team we thought at the time in real time. This is just another good yeah. NBA team. I don't really think they're similar at all. To okay. Be honest. So you scoff? I do scoff. Well, I laugh. It's beyond scoffing. It's laughing out loud. Loling. Uh, you know who else would probably laugh at it? Uh, a couple of guys on the Celtics who, unlike Jalen Brown, don't seem bothered at all by what's going on with the Celtics. Is Jason Tatum ever bothered by anything? Let me hear Tatum after the game He's last. He's bothered night. by the refs. It's one game. Um, we lost two in a row. Uh, it doesn't define who we are. 
right, we've had a great season thus far and a great job of managing uh, the season. I right, play 82 games. We've, we've had a bad three, three days. Um, but overall, best record in the league. We 15 games ahead of second place. Uh, we're not perfect, but you know we can learn from from these. And uh, it is a, a tough position to be in, but uh, we asked for it, so you know we do have to be better. Okay, he went and saved himself a little bit at the end, but largely not concerned. And Mego, fair point. The refs bother him for sure. That's something that bothers him. Uh, as SVG pointed out last night. Uh, but in general... Tatum sounds like Dan Duquette there, by the way. More games in first place than no, the other team. You know who he sounds like? He sounds like Monty. This is what Monty's been yeah, doing with the like Bruins. Monty too, yeah. Monty's been doing this for weeks with the Bruins. Like, oh, we got a lot of points. We're fine. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, poor, I think I I think I think hate listening to Porzingis after the games. I can't wait till they lose a big playoff game and I got to listen to this guy be like, oh, it's no big deal. Here's Porzingis. Maybe we'll get our ass kicked again one more time and Great. start the series. Who knows? And then we're then it's a wake-up call for us. Cool. But most likely, if I had to bet, I would say we'll show up at the level that we need to show up. It's on us, and, and yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a habit for us. I think I hate listening to him. Uh, honestly, yeah, join the club, Jones. Now, now you know how we feel. Um, but I, I just, I hate listening to him after these losses. Nothing bothers Porzingis. Nothing bothers Tatum outside of the refs. Well, first of all, I do think that like Porzingis is just the happiest he's ever been because this is the easiest it's ever been for him. He's so not in DC like, anymore. I don't. I actually don't think he's like being a total fraud with that stuff. But I, I agree, like, the, oh, we're going to get punched in the face again. I love it. It's good for us. Uh, like, it does get tired. You might as well be Sam Kennedy saying you love people talking trash to you and Dunkin' Donuts. Like, it's just, it's just, could you stop with that over and over and over again, Porzingis? Yeah, and also, I mean, what you're bored? Bored of what? What is Porzingis? Well, yeah, maybe that'll happen. Like, what if you ever won that you can say, oh, yeah, it's great. Let's go out there and get punched in the mouth in the Seriously. first round of the playoffs again. Like, what are you talking about? Right. You've had a good regular season. The Celtics have had other good regular seasons. They choke in the playoffs. This is this is very concerning. The fact that they can just sort of be bored and float through the end of the season and act like it's no big deal, and then in a week it's like, all right, guys, let's get back to where we were two weeks ago, back when we actually cared about all this. Meanwhile, the Knicks and all these other teams are playing full steam ahead the whole time. Because That's they have very to play for it. Yes, but they're still going to be playing that way. Like, you don't just, yeah. you don't just flip the switch, I don't think. Teams are going to have things to play for in the postseason. Right. And I know the Celtics yeah, will, too. Yeah, everyone has something to play for Okay, in the well, I'm just though. saying, other those other teams... The other teams aren't taking a two-week break. They've ratcheted it up. And Arkin, I agree. It, 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 Tatum, and especially Porzingis and guys like that, you're not LeBron. You're not Steph Curry. So this is an optics thing for me. I just don't like the way they're handling it because I have zero concern. But I'm not on the team, and I'm not out there facing the media after the game, and I'm not the one who has to deal with the blowback if they screw it up. Oh, well, I got a bad prediction. You guys are going to need to live with it. And I wish they took it a little more seriously. But for me, zero concern. Mego, low concern. Arcan terrified. You can vote. At Jones and Mego after back-to-back -back, uh, losses to the Bucks and the Knicks, what's your concern level with the Celtics? Uh, we'll get to today. Triple play. At 4.45, we have Meg Splaining at 5.30 and Bet Roulette. Picks for the weekend at 5.45. Stay tuned. Arcan with all the latest in trending. And seems like the national media is closer to Arcan than they are with me and Meg. We'll explain next. Your home of the Sox. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending brought to you by Jackson Lumber and Millwork. The Red Sox will try and bounce back after getting swept by the Orioles as they welcome the Angels to Fenway tonight. Tanner Houck gets the start for the Sox. Opposite Reed Detmers for the Halos. Detmers struck out 12 Sox batters in a 2-1 Angels win last week in Anaheim. Houck was good against the Angels as well, striking out seven through six scoreless innings and route to a 12-2 win. First pitch is at 7-10 tonight. You can catch all the action right here on the Shaws and Star Market, WEEI Red Sox Network. Shaws perfecting the art of fresh. Rich Keefe gets you ready for baseball at 6-10 with the Mass Mutual pregame show. The Celtics will continue their limp to the finish line tonight as they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip off at 7-30. The entire starting five of Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, White, and Holiday questionable, as is Al Horford. And the Bruins are off tonight. They'll visit the Penguins tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. Contractors, builders, and homeowners visit Jackson Lumber and Millwork for all your residential remodeling or commercial building materials and supplies. Jackson Lumber and Millwork, providing solutions and delivering results since 1946. I'm Christian Arkan. That's what's trending. The dynasty is over. The end of an era that I don't think it will ever be repeated. And the future of the Patriots is riding on the third pick and the future of the quarterback position. WEI.
on WEEI. Which team are you hearing could win a championship that you just don't see it? Overrated, Boston. Wow. Boston, easily the best record in the NBA. Yeah, but you got to show me. I've, I've been in this league, around the league a long time. I've seen a lot of guys that have had great regular scene, but they don't win championships. That was Shaq prior to last night's game. We'll play some of Charles Barkley coming up, uh, but that's a sign that the national media not totally sold on the Celtics Mego. I am. You are. Arkan's more concerned. Sounds like Shaq is certainly where Arkan is. Again, we'll hear where Charles Barkley is coming up, but I don't know your reaction to that when Shaq says, you got to show me. It's really not that dissimilar to what Shaughnessy said. Over no, uh, eventually this group has got to win it for like for us to take them completely seriously. But I think up until this point, like what they've done in the regular season, who they've shown themselves to be with their uh, top six rotation, I don't know how you look at any other team aside from I, – I don't know how you look at any other team in the Eastern Conference and say that's a real threat. To yeah, them. so while I agree with that, I just I – don't, I don't separate their history quite the same way you do, and I'm closer to Arcand on this. Despite having zero real, real concerns with any other team I've seen, if they lose, it's a choke, and they just – they choke again, and that's been in – Tatum and Brown's DNA and just because they have poor Zingas and they have Drew Holiday I don't I don't think all of that's gone and until they prove it my fear somewhere deep down is that could still emerge but they're so much more talented they're so much better and I know I've said that in the past this year I feel like there's a clear gap in the past it was close like you look at it and go oh the Celtics are more talented than the Warriors or the Celtics are definitely more talented than the Heat last year and maybe they would have been more talented than Denver if they got there this year I I do feel like there's an actual gap but we'll see if falling asleep late in the regular season, which they've done, we'll see if that catches up to them. Uh, real quick, I want to update this before we get to the phones. Our big question of the day here on Jones and Mego with Arkan live in the Ford Clubhouse Fenway studio. Uh, your concern level with the Celtics, high, medium, low, or zero? Uh, Mego winning again, Arkan. 33% low, they're fine. Uh, 28% is zero. So if I do some quick math there, about 60% basically have no concerns about this Celtics team. The other 40% are either medium or, in your case, Arkan, the 12% that are highly concerned slash terrified with this Celtics team. It's about 60-40, no concerns. Uh, so you can jump in here on the phone, 617-779-7937. Let's start it off with William out in Cleveland. Go ahead, William. Hey, I just want to let you know, thanks for uh, taking my call. I love your show. I tell you what, it's hard to be a Boston fan in Cleveland. No, I don't get a lot of love, but <laughs> hey, you guys help connect me, so I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to say this as a, as a Celtics fan. You know, I believe that they're going all the way. I think that the makeup of the team, I think there's no excuse for them not to go all the way. But the question I want to ask all of you is the fact that if they don't go, how – what do you think is going to happen to the coach? Do okay, think... so William, William, thank you for the phone call. And, uh, you know, you can uh, make fun of everybody in Cleveland there if the Celtics follow through and win the whole thing. What happens to Missoula if they don't win, Mego? Um, if they get back to the finals, he's fine. If they don't get back to the finals, he's gone. I think, he's, I think if they don't win, he's going to be really closely looked at again, and I think he should be. I would take it larger than the coach, though, because I think we all have our heads wrapped around that. Mm -hmm. If they don't win, I'm looking beyond just the coach. I'm looking You're at, moving Jalen. I'm looking at the roster. I am. I mean, if they come up short, I mean, unless it's game seven and they lose an overtime to Denver or something like that. And even still, I, I think their problems are deeper than the coach. I don't know how many times we've illustrated this. Arkan says it all the time. They choke with Stevens. They choke with Udoka. They'd be choking again with Missoula in this case. 
And so it goes deeper than the coach. So I wouldn't just look at the coach, but he would be on my list for sure. He'd be on my list too, but I think that realistically, you're not going to see anything happen. Even if they get uh, beat in the first round, I don't think Missoula's getting fired. I think that he'll be on the hot seat next season, but I think that this regular season already. Why? Because look at all the investments they've made. They made this big investment in uh, Jalen Brown. They got Drew Holiday and everybody, and everyone seems to like the coach. So I don't think they're going to just blow it up and bring in a new coach unless there's significant squawking from like the likes of Tatum and Brown. And I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I'm not so sure Jalen loves them. I was going to say, I'm not sure that they are like bending over but, backwards. But Jalen, well, but Jalen's not Tatum might actually like him. I can never, t- nothing, again, nothing really bothers Tatum outside of the rest. As you said, Mego. So if Tatum wants to keep him, it's, it's Tatum's team. It's not Jalen's team. So Jalen's going to have to go along with it. Uh, but I think he'd be out, especially if they lose early. Uh, let's go to Bill in Plymouth. Go ahead, Bill. Bill. Bill on Bill on line two, not there, no longer uh, there. Clutch, they say the clutch percentage, Tatum's clutch percentage in the final two minutes. I wish he'd defer more because LeBron and Kobe, at certain times to win a championship, they've deferred like LeBron's best to Ray Allen to beat the Spurs the second time around. I don't know if we will do that in the final two minutes, and that's where I'm concerned. Okay, uh, Bill, wherever you are uh, on line two, maybe it was in Plymouth. It just, like, started going. Uh, oh. No, he wants Tatum to defer more at the end of games. Arkan, you want this, right? You want more Jalen? You want more Porzingis? You don't want Tatum at the end of these games? Absolutely, and I thought that was the whole point of getting all these other guys and not having to throw to Marcus Smart wide open at the end of these games. Is that okay, Jason Tatum? It's not all on you when you go in and make a read. Now you got four guys who can all score and who can take that shot and who don't seem to be afraid of taking that shot. Not only is he not doing that, he's not making them either. So it's like, it seems like they fixed a real problem from last year, and now instead of uh, using that and using those resources, Tatum just keeps taking the shots and bricking them every night. Well, yeah. every night that there's a last-second shot to take. Tatum's hero is Kobe. So Tatum wants the ball in that spot, and if he wants the ball and he doesn't want to defer, what are you going to do? Missoula's going to tell him no? Like, I don't think well, he had no problem deferring to Marcus Smart in the years past. Yeah, so. but I think there was like a weird seniority thing here, which is why I wanted Smart gone for years. I, I don't think it feels that way anymore. I, I just don't believe Tatum's going to defer. So here's what I believe. Tatum's going to start hitting some of the shots he's clearly capable of hitting he's at the end of the too. games. Yeah, and he's definitely due, but he needs to get over the mental block. So look, if he's double teamed and somebody's wide open in the corner, he should absolutely kick it to them. That I agree with. If he's one-on-one, Tatum, take the shot, and you need to start hitting him. That's what great players do. I agree. I guess what bothers me more is just how incredibly disorganized it still feels. Like, it just feels disorganized and unpredictable for the most part. And so maybe they have something that they're really hiding up their sleeve for when they get into the playoffs, but I haven't seen much of it so far this regular season. Yeah, I mean, look, you're more down on the coaching than I am, but, like, this idea that they have stuff up their sleeve, I just, I'm not buying. I don't think they have any big schematic. They win on talent. They don't win on scheme. Uh, let me hear from Charles Barkley. This is uh, what Arkan was talking about before when he was channeling his... By the way, that was very sly of you to be like, you're lower on the coaching than I am, and then just crap all over the coaching. Okay, but, I mean, you are lower on the coaching than me. We haven't really talked about that in a while. I think I've, I've like... Mago, you hate Missoula. I don't hate Missoula. Yeah, I think I did a mea excited. culpa, like, six weeks ago. I was like, Missoula's doing a really good job this year. Yeah, I just think he's staying out of the way. But it's not like they're they're running, uh, you know, exotic schemes or anything like that. I don't There's think that's, that's how they're winning. Uh, Arkham was channeling his inner Brad foe earlier and uh, talking about flipping the switch. Uh, here's what Switch, Charles, switching the flip. Yes, this is what Charles Barkley had to say about the Celtics dropping some of these games late in the year. Shaq asked me earlier if Tatum and Brown gonna, should play. If they're going to play like that, they shouldn't play. The year we made it to the finals, we had the best record in the NBA and we shut it down the last two weeks of the season. It took us two rounds of the playoffs to get it back. We lost the first two games at home to the Lakers. I've always said to myself, they had nothing to do with us losing to the Bulls in the finals, but I'm saying I've, I regret it to this day that like, yo man, you play to the end of the season. If you're going to play. Now, if you don't go in, the, if you, if like, like Shaq said, he wouldn't play him, don't play him. But if you're going to go out there and half-ass it, like they did in Milwaukee that night where they didn't shoot a free throw, like, like, they won the entire game, but didn't shoot a free throw. And then they come out tonight, and they're just kind of going through the motions. <clears throat> I know I know they're going to finish with the best record, but, man, you just can't turn it off and turn it Okay, you can't turn it off and turn it back on, is what Barkley said there. He said it was a while to get it going. And that was the Suns in 93. So we'll see if that applies to the Celtics as well. A little story time there from Barkley. Uh, but both he and Shaq don't seem completely convinced on the Celtics. Uh, meanwhile... Uh, we're going to get to the Red Sox here. We're at Fenway Park. Butch in Connecticut wants to discuss the Sox. Go ahead, Butch. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. 
Hey, longtime Red Sox fan. I'm just curious. We know the organization has been a mess for a while now. Um, you just lost Pavetta. The starting pitching has been awesome. Now Pavetta's done to the year. Story, he's all done. That was a huge mistake bringing that guy in. At this point in the game, what's it? why wouldn't they bring this kid Marcelo Meyer up? I don't know if this is a third or fourth year that he's been drafted and he was okay, drafted so number much. one. Butch, I agree with you wholeheartedly on this. Did I miss news on Pavetta? Pavetta's no, not official. I was just he's not done it. for the I year, right? He, I mean, he, he could be. I mean, he's got an elbow issue, and he's on the IL, so he could be. But yeah, he's I, retroactively on the 15th day, though. Thank you. So I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any news there. Uh, I'm with him on Marcelo Meyer. The guy who kicked the crap out of the Red Sox all series, Krauser? Is that his name? Kowser. Kowser, excuse me. I barely know her. <laughs> Ten RBIs in the series, two home runs last night. He was picked after Marcelo Meyer in the same draft. So don't tell me Meyer can't come up this year, Bradfo, or whomever else. Like, don't tell me he can't come up, Red Sox. That guy just kicked the crap out of you. And so he can come up. I can't watch another game of David Hamilton at shortstop. It's the first time the defense really cost him, and it really cost him last night. Defense at shortstop, I should say. We'll get to that with all your Celtics phone calls. 617-779-7937. Red Sox are swept by the Orioles. That's after a seven-win West Coast trip to start the year. Who are the real Red Sox? We'll get to it next. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is WEEI. John Sewer and Drain Cleaning is the name to know when your drains don't flow. John Sewer is also hiring technicians at their Norwood location.
your smart speaker. Just say, play 93.7 WEEI. Now, more of Jones and Mako on WEEI. We always talk about that, right? Like, uh, you, you can't give big league teams more than 27 outs, and we've been doing that lately. Raphael was right there, made an underhand flip to Hamilton. And he missed the bag. Oh, he boy. missed the bag by plenty. Oh, he jumped right over it. When that happens, you know, uh, you turn the lineup over. When you look up, they got six of bats, you know. And and when those big guys have six opportunities in a game, they're going to cash in. And they did. Sandair just hit the first pitch from Weiser down by the pesky pole and into the first to second row with the right field seats. It's a two-run homer. And just like that, the Orioles lead 3-2. Oh, the failure to turn the double play. Reards his ugly head in a hurry. Oh, does that hurt? I think I'm back. Are we there, Ryan? I hear you. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. This. Uh, this. Uh, mic what have you done? <laughs> this mic came undone real quick. Ryan. Just, Ryan just said in my ear, "These mics are broken." I, I think I'm just back. watching you re-screw something. I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, this mic just dropped off. I caught it. Uh, but yeah, it's back. Did we lose Jones? No, we're here. Uh, WEEI Ford Clubhouse Fenway Studio. Oh, are you uh, channeling your inner Arcan there? Yeah. I see. So the mics are good? Hello? Ar- Hello? Ar- Arcan, you're going to run things here? Hello? Um, <laughs> I said the other day that the defense at shortstop hadn't really cost him yet, which was true. I mean, David Hamilton made a, a, an error a few games ago. I think in the first game against Baltimore, the game was over. They were already, you know, getting their asses whooped. And so... They've had big defensive miscues. Devers had the one in Anaheim. Uh, Duran had the one that same game early in the game against Baltimore that really uh, set the Red Sox behind to start the homestand. Last night killed him. Last night, the defense at shortstop killed him. You heard it there uh, coming back. And it's Jones and Mega with Arkan here on WEEI. But Hamilton, uh, what was initially ruled the double play on the field, Rutschman grounds out. Orioles challenge. Hamilton whiffs at second base, never touches the bag. And so... Jackson Holiday advances to second base in the eighth inning, and he comes around to score on the very next pitch. Greg Weiser comes into the game, leaves it over the plate to Santander. All of a sudden, Red Sox go from down 2-1 and out of a jam in the eighth inning, getting ready to hand it off to Kenley Jansen to they trail. Oh, and fortunately, fortunately for them, they force extras. Connor Wong hits a home run the following inning. They get destroyed in extra innings, but... That defensive miscue completely and totally let them down. And we got a caller earlier this show, last segment. You know, how long are they going to string this together until we get Marcelo Meyer up here in the big leagues? I think he needs to be up here if he's hitting and healthy in a couple of months. But you got to figure it out. And I don't know that we can keep watching David Hamilton at shortstop. Maybe you could watch Pablo Reyes there, but they need him at second or third with Devers out of the lineup, and Reyes had an error to start the inning last night. Yeah, right. Really, That's why it was the two runs. Really got <laughs> the ball huge rolling problem, a huge problem. for Baltimore. And so I don't really know how to solve it in the meantime, but they got to figure out how to solve it in the meantime. And I say I don't know. I think I have some movement on what the Red Sox can do. But how would you feel about that last night? How do we feel about the Red Sox in general? Are they closer to what we saw on the homestand, uh, meaning the home opening series against Baltimore where they got swept? or closer to what we saw out West. You guys can jump in. 617-779-7937. Yes, Mega. This is kind of mean um, because I know that he was thrown in there and it was not what they were expecting. But can you guess what Isaiah Campbell's ERA is right now? Oh, I looked at it last last night, but I don't recall because I'm like, this guy, the last two games, he got his brains beat in and they left him out there last night. I don't blame them. But you can't trust that guy ever again. I don't know what it is yeah, on top of my so head. It's been, he's pitched just over six innings, um, 12.79. Yeah, not good. <laughs> now, appearance-wise, <laughs> though, hadn't he been good prior to the last two? Like, he's he given up had one. Yeah, one but the story the is the five. last two. Okay, right. no, 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 I agree. But it's like they thought they had something, right. and then— They he thought gave, he was going to be like one of their reliable relievers. He gave up three runs on Wednesday, and he gave up six more last night, five earned. And so, no, he had been fine prior to that in the first four outings, and now he got his brains beat in, and you can never rely on him again. That's not great. About it. <laughs> that is sort of what it looks like. And I think that when you have a, uh, a problem that sort of starts at the top, when I say at the top with, like, the defense, which was something that they— 
were really conscious about last year and I think tried in their mind to to remedy this. But if you think about it, they didn't really do anything specific. Like Trevor Story was already on the team. You're hoping that Trevor Story is going to be healthy. And now you don't have a backup shortstop anywhere in your system that you can call up and just play defense. Like that's all you really need right now. It's not like Story was giving you much at the plate. You just need somebody to go out there and keep that infield somewhat together. And they don't have anybody in the entire organization to do it. I heard they not? Lou say this today. I mean, Hamilton, no. Hamilton definitely is. Reyes, maybe, but I mean, they're they're terrified to bring him up right now. And uh, not Reyes, Mayer is. And uh, Reyes stinks too. He had an error last night. So I mean, no, there's really nobody. I don't I don't think that there's a, a solution right now that they have. And that's unforgivable when you consider the fact that they weren't even making big moves. All right. Like you're not going for big name, uh, high priced talent. Fine. Can you get some backups in there at least? Let me give you one, Rafaela. I didn't want to move him the other day. I'm like, ah, I don't want to screw with what's going on in center field. He played it second uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, I think I'm done with that. I, I, for like a week, not even a week, I'm like, ah, leave him in center field. He's been great out there. He's elite potentially in center field. Leave him there. Don't put too much on this kid's plate too early. Wrong. That, yeah. that, like he he, <laughs> need, he needs to go to shortstop. No, you're desperate now. Yes, correct. You're, de- after you're getting desperate swept, and you're it's, desperate. April, it's April 12th yep. and you're desperate. Move the kid to short. But other than that, I mean, okay, so Arcan. You started that out by saying that the team invested in trying to improve the defense. I didn't really invest it as wrong, like, but it's something they identified. They didn't invest. How though? Anything, I, I mean, they the said that they were going to be better, but they haven't. They didn't do anything to get better. They didn't, but they said, "Well, Story's well, going to play." Well, they Story committed. Played, yeah, you know? they committed to playing Rafaela every day and moving yeah. Duran out of center field. They signed Tyler O'Neill, who's won two Gold Gloves. So I disagree with that. I think okay. they, they for committed the infi- to get for the infield. It was really just Story will be back, which was not enough because you knew he was going to get hurt again. Yeah, you're right back where. It, well, you didn't right. know. You didn't know he was going to get hurt again. I mean, now it yeah, looks yeah. like obviously he was going to get hurt again. But at the time, they didn't know that. Yeah, so I think the answer is Rafaela. And I don't love that Cora and Breslow, or Cora and another GM, chief baseball officer, are already at war over the roster. Like, I don't love that. Like, Cora thinks he's smarter than every chief baseball officer on the team, and maybe he is. But, like, already he's warring with another guy over personnel moves because Breslow clearly doesn't want to move him. And it turns out that Cora wants him at short. But I am with Cora on this one. I wasn't as of, like, two days ago. Now, after watching last night and this series... Get Raffaella to short. 617-779-7937. We can get into whether what we saw these last three days are closer to the real Red Sox or what we saw out west. Uh, in the meantime, you can also vote how concerned are you with your Boston Celtics. They've dropped two in a row, one of the Bucks, one of the Knicks last night, and they were trying last night. Uh, David, in the car, wants to weigh in on the Cs. Go ahead, David. Hey, good afternoon, guys. So I'm very concerned with the Celtics, and I'll tell you why. You know, in, in a couple of weeks ago, I told this on the Keith Show, and I said, Mark, today, March 29th, when I spoke to him, the Celtics are going to lose in the first round. And I'll tell you why they're going to lose. The first round? This team is Ugh. losing games. This team is losing games they should not be losing. You have Tatum, who's not a leader. You have a weak team. You don't have toughness on this team. So when it gets to the playoffs, it's a different ball game, and they will lose. And I hate to say this because I am a Celtics fan, but I'm being realistic. Okay, David, uh, we've, David, we've marked tape. Uh, March 29th, you said they will lose in the first round. Expect to hear that one either way. Uh, so if they get Miami... I'm giving them two rounds. At least. Yeah. <laughs> if they get Miami, I wouldn't feel great about that matchup, but the Celtics should not lose to anyone in the NBA not named Denver. And even Denver, I don't want to give them too much leeway on, but like they're not losing in the first round. What do you mean? Uh, like, they David, shouldn't lose to an Eastern Conference team. David, thank you, Mego. Uh, David, I'll give you all the credit in the world if you're right. They, they're not losing in the first round. Does anyone believe that outside of yeah. David in the car? No. They get I mean, Miami. You know if they I get Miami, you... I could be talked into it. I mean, it. Arkan, you're the most concerned about the team. Yeah. If they you're get the Miami, that, I, I think it's certainly face possible. face turns purple when you talk about them. <laughs> well, hey. if uh, I'm, You're the one who uh, stays up all night crying for Marcus Smart. So, Not I mean, anymore. We all, we, all have our, we all have our things. That up. was months ago. That's sure. both of you. I've uh, <laughs> you guys uh, summarized each other uh, quite nicely. Also, I wasn't crying. I had a tummy ache. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. That's a classic Celtics fan move, by the way. It's like when Marcus Smart leaves, they're like, what are they going to do? And then he's gone, and the team's even better. And they're like, oh, yeah, he wasn't that good, actually. Scal's in that boat, too. He's right there with you, Mego. Uh, 617-779-7937. You guys can jump in on the Celtics. What's your concern level on the Red Sox? Is this what they are? Is this now what they are after getting swept by Baltimore? How do you feel about them? And we mentioned Alex Cora seemingly already going to war with another GM. Uh, What's his job security? And when I say job security, like, is he making it through the year? Uh, We'll get to that with all your phone calls next. The Greg Hill Show. Hey, crazy. We lost power yesterday. You did? How long?
Why not lock up a guy like Cora? Why keep him on a uh, on a, almost like a lame duck coach? It's a great and fair question because he has he's had he's had great success here. Everybody knows how we feel about him personally. How those of us who have been here with him feel about him as a manager. When we made the change, uh, the very difficult change with Hyam Bloom, and we brought in Craig Breslow, it's critical that our chief baseball officer, our head of baseball operations, have the authority to make that decision. I don't want to put it all on Brez, um, but we are putting it on Brez. It's his decision. He will make that decision, and ultimately Alex will make that decision. They need to see not only an offseason, spring training, and the season, and whether that's all of the season, some of the season, we'll see what they decide in terms of that conversation. But the emotions of the season, we already know. Like, we, me, we, <laughs> you're we, good. We should be we 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 should be ten and zero right now. I think Sam Kennedy done dog cussed somebody there. I think is what he did over at the cask earlier this week. That was uh, Sam Kennedy on um, with Gresham Fourier. Here on WEI, it's hour number two, Jones and Mego with Arkin in the Ford Clubhouse Fenway studio. The the Cora job security and his lame duck status is a big topic hovering over the team. I didn't really feel the need to push it all that much in the first week. They're seven and three. They're playing well. But you have to wonder why we're here, whether or not it's the team that won't commit to Cora, Cora that won't commit to the team. He's already wildly adjusted expectations after losing just one game at home, the first home game, the home opener. He was adjusting expectations after the fact. It feels like since some injuries have started to pile up, he seems less sold on the team than he did certainly in spring training and then he did out West. And so I wonder if possibly for the first time, I was just looking this up in the last break. I don't, what year did John Henry buy the Red Sox? Was it 01 or 02? I think it was 01. Okay, if it was 01, then they did make a managerial change with Jimmy Williams in 01. And they went to Joe Kerrigan. That was a disaster. And so maybe they learned from that and felt like we don't need to fire any managers in season. Was it, he was interim, right? He didn't get a whole season. Kerrigan. No, no, no. Kerrigan. No, he, no, he replaced Jimmy Williams, right. and then they hired Grady Little for 02 and 03. Um, so they've moved on from plenty of managers. There was the weird year where uh, Ron Renicky took over for Cora when he was suspended. Bobby Valentine only got a year, so they've had quick hooks. But maybe outside of 2001, and I just I'd have to refamiliarize myself with when they bought the team. Uh, 2002 was when the, so Fenway Sports Group, or it was called New England Sports Ventures back then. Uh, they bid and were successful in 2001, and the purchase happened in 02. Okay, so that might not have been even. So that it, may have been. They may have never fired a manager. And so when we talk about job security, obviously his status at the end of the year is in jeopardy. Like I just wonder if it really goes south. We've seen them fire GMs in season consistently. Charrington, Dombrowski. High and bloom last year. I just wonder if things continue to go the way they look like they started to go these last three games, how concerned he should be about making it through the year. Is that a concern? Well, the question is if he even wants to be here. Like, can he be concerned if he doesn't want to be here next year? I don't know. Is I it, don't think he wants to be here next year. Is it easier you the way that yeah, right. they're going? Is it easier to get a job if you're at least make it through the year, or does it does it look different yeah. if you get fired? Well, if you make it through the year, I mean, look, we could ask the same question about what just went on with Bill Belichick to some extent. 100%. Would it have done Bill a favor to be out, I don't know, in like week 14 or something? versus having the entire year of bad games. That's when I was advocating to fire him. So, yeah, probably. So I think that it would probably look better for Cora if he finished out the season. But I fully don't think he wants to be here next year. Why would he want to be here? <laughs> like, there, there's no indication that anything is changing next year except that they're going to bring up more young kids. You think he wants and to be here? And I don't think he likes coaching these super young kids. He said it as a negative the other day. He said when they dropped that first opening Fenway opener, he's like, yeah, well, we're going to have games like this because the team's young. He, uh... You say next year. Do you think he wants to be here right now? Like, we're not, I'm not even sure he wants to be here um, right now. I think he's committed to it right now. Like, yeah, I do think he's a professional. I think he's committed to it right I now. Know. I didn't say but committed. Like, I said, does, does he, he want, want it? Yeah. to be here? Well, I don't know. 
Yeah, I might. He seems happier than last year, but it's just a terrible, terrible place to be a manager right now. Yeah, I mean, look, that's a rough series. Uh, Now I keep pointing this out, and this is uh, as a uh, as a pink hat Red Sox fan on the bandwagon, like glass half full guy. The defending champion Rangers just dropped two or three to the A's and almost got no hit. And so bad series do happen. This is not to let the Red Sox off the hook, but it's a matter of keeping things in perspective. Uh, what do we think the Red Sox are closer to, the West Coast trip or these last three games, Arkand? These last three games, and that's because of what happened uh, after the first one. I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, you're talking about a team that's been transformed in some ways and not in a way that should have really had this much of an impact, but it has had that much of an impact, and you're seeing it already. You're seeing it on a nightly basis. They're going to beat bad teams. It's not like they're never going to win again. You know, they're still going to be able to go out and beat the uh, you know Chicago White Sox of the world and you know the Oakland A's and those type of teams, but when it comes to the teams with real metal, especially in their division, which Mega was harping on a lot last week uh, when you were trying to pinner on that whole uh, what is this team when they play the team in their division it's going to be like this it's going to be uh, rough because there's good teams in your division and I think that this is going to be a team at best that feasts on the dregs of the league yeah I just don't see a lot of solutions for the issues that they have right now and uh by the way like I don't sorry I don't know if you mentioned this but they're calling up Cooper Criswell and he's expected to start tomorrow, according to Ian Brown. Well, from they need, MLB. they already needed a starter. I had not, I didn't realize he was being like, called up, but no, they, they already <laughs> I mean, needed a starter. Yeah. That's where you're at. We're it's going to be on April 13th. Like this is, it's not a good situation for so many different areas. And this is what we said, or at least this is what I said when they were coming off of the West coast road trip is that, yeah, you have some nice pieces here and you have some nice talent on the team, but there's already a lot of holes. There's already a lot of weak spots and the margins are small, and now you're seeing the margins fall away. So I didn't hear an answer. They're closer to these last three the, games of the West Coast trip. Okay. They're closer to the West Coast trip. They're still on pace for 87 wins. They're not this bad. They're not as bad as they showed. 87 by, wins? By the way. A couple days ago, you were like 116. Yeah, I, know, I understand. Well, I'm just, I just keep giving Things you the math. Things are falling Megan. fast. All I'm doing is giving you math, and if they bottom out and it's still on pace for 87 wins, my point is it's not that bad. They easily, and this is not to say that they, they, uh, these are fake losses or anything, they easily could have beaten the Orioles in two of these games. And so it's not like they didn't belong on the same baseball field as Baltimore. They got swept. The Rangers just dropped two or three to the A's. So I think they're closer to the West Coast trip. But I am starting to lose faith out of what I've seen. Uh, you guys can jump in. 617-779-7937. We're going to get to the Patriots coming up in a little bit. Uh, what are they doing at pick number three? Uh, who could they be taking? And what quarterbacks are attending the draft? What does that tell us about what the Patriots are doing at three? Plus, I think we've unearthed a little bit more from Mac Jones. Ryan's done some digging, so we'll get to that. In the meantime, let's knock out some phones. Tim is in Connecticut. Go ahead, Tim. Yes, uh, I'm a longtime Red Sox fan going to the, the 50s, 60s, 50s. I will be forever grateful for this ownership group bringing four World Series championships, but for some reason, unknown, after 2018, they decided that they're not going to spend money on the team anymore. And I, I really don't understand how that came about. Yeah, and so Tim, think- Tim, I, I think it was, it was I, some of us were saying it in 2018, and some of us were getting chastised for saying it in 2018, but it was true. They stopped spending then. They chose to fire Dave Dombrowski, uh, which I think was 2019, so after 2018 they decided to stop doing it because they felt like Dombrowski was costing them too much. They were watching teams like Tampa Bay winning games with lower payrolls, and they didn't feel like they needed to invest as much. And maybe, just maybe, they look big picture at a dying sport, and they said, we're not going to spend X to invest in this sport going forward. It's not uh, a growing asset for us. And so we're not going to invest in it the same way. We're going to invest Y instead, and we're going to try to compete how Tampa does. But it was a massive disaster, and I hate that approach. But now we're in the reality of how the Red Sox are operating. John Henry's not going to spend. I have not been fooled by that. I haven't thought differently in five years. So he's not going to spend. How do you maximize the window in the meantime? You've got to win a different way. And I don't know that they can, but we're going to find out. I don't think that they can. I'm sorry. Like, I know I'm doom and gloom over here, but I really do think that they're much closer to the team that we've seen in the last three games and to Arkan's point, because stuff has changed since the West Coast road trip. And you're a worse team, and I don't have confidence in this ownership group to go out and do something, even if this team proves itself to be more like that West Coast road trip. Do you have confidence that halfway through, that when we get to midsummer, they're going to swing some trade for no. somebody at shortstop? Definitely. Or somebody went to, to firm up the rotation or not, anything like that? Not a big ticket asset, no. I mean, maybe a rental like they did with Schwarber in 2021, but no, not a big ticket asset. Definitely not. They're not going to spend. No. 
I, I agree. I don't have faith in them. I don't think they're going to do anything, but there may be a change tonight. You know why? Oh, why? no, why? City Connect uniforms. Oh! They're bringing them back tonight. Oh, yeah! Watch out, American League. <laughs> Mega, what's that face? You don't like those? Here comes the blue and yellow oh, tornado. Well, no, I just realized because it is Marathon Weekend. That, Correct. That's nice. Correct. That's nice. I like that. I li- look, I, th- whether it was Marathon Weekend or not, they need the, they need something. They need a slump buster is also, what they need. Also, uh, Bobby Batts got called up from Worcester, so you got that too. Yeah, that could be a very yeah. bad thing. Who? Bobby Dahlbeck. Bobby oh, Dahlbeck. Yeah. Well, they, they had a catcher playing second base last night, so, I mean, you could do worse. <laughs> well, we were talking before the show because I mentioned that as, like, so is that going to be for Devers? No, 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 no. No, I, I'm sorry. You called him Bobby Dahlbeck, though. I didn't realize we were calling him Bobby Bats. Uh, Nobody, nobody calls, him, calls him, that. him that. I just came up with that. I think it's for <laughs> Winkleman Gonzalez. What's the guy's name? Who's the, what's the, uh, Romy. the shortstop? Romy, Romy and Michelle. Right. I think it's for him, if I had to guess, but I, I don't know. If it's for Devers, we're going to see. Uh, do you want Devers' answer? I haven't read these yet, but Devers, uh, the media caught up with him after the game with his translator, who ostensibly is not betting on baseball. And uh, he said, uh, I'm day-to-day, he said through his translator, it's not a very poor injury. Glad we have the translator for that. (laughs) So just going to keep working, but I think it's nothing serious. It's going to be day-to-day. Like I said, in Seattle, I've been feeling it since spring. Why again, Mega? Why is he feeling it? Why is he feeling what? The injury. Oh, because of you. I'm not I'm not going to repeat the joke. That's so lame, Jones. If you want to know the joke, go back and listen to yesterday's show. It's about the ball machine. I feel I, why is she afraid to say it, Arkin? I don't know why she's afraid to go there. I don't know. It's the funniest thing she's ever different. This different is all listening because audience. of John Henry's moldy balls. Thank you. So that's what it was. Uh, Raphael Devers, why you got hurt. You doubled down on it yesterday. I don't know why you wouldn't <laughs> go back and do it today. I've been feeling it since spring. But every time I was swinging, I was feeling it a little bit more and more. So for me, I think two or three days off is going to be enough. That's what he said. So that doesn't sound like a, a, an IL stint, but we're going to find out. Uh, meanwhile, let's go to Tony in Bridgewater. What's up, Tony? Hey, too bad too bad we can't fire the owners for the Red Sox. But let me tell you something. Right in the dugout there, they have a better. This Gonzalez kid, Chicago White Sox gave up on him. This guy's a slick fielder. He's a great shortstop. I don't know what they're doing over there, but okay, he's hurt. Look, go look up. Well, he's not hurt. What are you talking Romy about? Gonzalez he's is hurt. Six, Romy Gonzalez. He just played the other day. Yeah, and then he got hurt. He got he's hurt in that game. He's the. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. They called up Bobby Dahlbeck because they because of him. I think. Tony, I, he I don't, I don't a think splint it's last night. Yeah, he had a splint on. Well. You were talking about Meyer earlier. This kid's ready to come up right now. Okay, so fine. So Marcelo Meyer, do do we think? And, and thank you for the phone call, Tony. Do we think he's going to come up this year? Do you nope. agree? With, you think there's no chance? I uh, why? I I give it like a five percent. Mego, you watch the Orioles call up a young player every other day, and they're all young. They're all younger than him. I know, but it's not just about the biological age; it's about their experience. Okay, and he has lost a lot of experience okay. because of his what injury. If, what if he hits in Double A for the next two months? They can't call him up. Then he's, I think they can he, call him up. Caught up I on just, the experience. I just don't think they're going to. You're asking me what I think they're going to do. Yeah, no, I don't think they're going to. Arkin, I think they should, but I'm trust Bradfo. I mean, I don't think Bradfo just pulled that out of his. Uh, took us. I think that there's some info that he has and that he knows something about how they're planning to use him. So maybe they'll change their mind. I hope yeah, they do. Exactly. I think that Meyer should get a, a call up if he keeps hitting. Or even if he doesn't at this point, you're desperate. Maybe you need they're help. Just, maybe they're just trying bring to, him up. Yeah, but, maybe they're just trying to keep expectations down, which I don't blame them for. That's not my job to keep expectations down. That's their job. But maybe they're just saying, nah, we're not going to call him up because he was hurt last year and he lost all this time. But if he's hitting the crap out of the ball and I got to watch David Hamilton every night at shortstop, Hammy, who I hope, you know, uh, well, uh, I guess I shouldn't wish injury on anybody, but, you know, hammy out there, when it comes to the Red Sox, if Meyer's hitting for two or three months in, in double A, they'll call him right up. They called up Mookie Betts. Guys on the Orioles are getting called up left and right. Kowser was in the same draft class. He was drafted after Marcelo Meyer. What are we waiting for? A bunch of guys in that draft class are called up. We went through it yesterday. 617-779-7937. We'll continue with your feedback here coming up. Uh, we'll get to the Patriots along with all your Red Sox phone calls. Uh, the attendees at the draft. Not all of the top quarterbacks are attending. Does that tell us anything about what the Patriots could be doing at pick three? And Ryan has sniffed out a few more Mac B-sides that we're going to get to here right after Trending with Christian Arkin. Christian Fourier, weekdays 10 to 2. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Red Sox will try and bounce back after getting swept by the Orioles. They'll welcome the Angels to Fenway tonight. Tanner Houck gets the start for the Sox opposite Reed Detmers for the Halos. First pitch is at 7-10. You can catch all the action right here on the Shaws and Star Market, WEEI Red Sox Network. 
Shaw's Perfecting the Art of Fresh. Rich Keefe gets you ready for baseball at 610 with the Mass Mutual pregame show. Bobby Dahlbeck called up from Worcester today, likely in anticipation of an infielder going on to the IL. Not sure which infielder that is yet. Also, the Red Sox will be busting out their blue and yellow city jerseys. The Celtics continue their limp to the finish line tonight as they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off is at 730. Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Al Horford are all questionable. And the Bruins are off tonight. They'll visit the Penguins tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. I'm Christian Arcan, and that's what's trending. The Greg Hill Show. Mike, is Monty coaching for his job in the first round? Did anybody see this coming? <laughs> I didn't see it coming.
clearly number one. And then I think between Daniels, May, and even McCarthy, you get into more of a, you know, what's your flavor at quarterback? What do you want? What do you expect out of the position? What is your scheme set up for? And I think that's when some of this discussion about May or could it be McCarthy or could it be Daniels? I do think it's legitimate because I do think it's a little bit, uh, you know, in the eye of the beholder. Greg Bedard on these quarterbacks at the top of the draft. Just a way to get into a news item that I saw last night that intrigued me greatly. And we can get to it here on Jones and Mega with Arcan live in the Ford Clubhouse Fenway studio. Red Sox and Angels tonight at Fenway Park. Weather permitting, the sun popped out there for a moment. I don't know what's in the forecast it here. Did? I, it did, I swear. When? I might have I don't know, might have been when you left in one of the breaks, but the, the sun popped out for a moment. Yeah, exactly. Uh yeah, the the your the dark cloud negativity over this Red Sox. That's you, what everyone says. You about walked this away. Show. You that's walked what away. I that's what I bring. Everyone's and like, the sun I popped can't out. listen to Mego. She's so negative. They're like, it's only Jones in there. The sun's gonna come out and shine on uh, Fenway Park. Uh, because Mego again, you're buying the Red Sox. They're closer to their West Coast trip or these last three games. You saw them against the O's. That's more of who they are. Arcan? My O's. That's what they are now. I mean, that's that's what they've become. That's what they were transformed into with these injuries, and one of them's for the year. So, yeah, that's it's closer what to what become. they are. Okay, again, the, I'm not concerned about the Trevor Story injury. Like, that, that is not the kind of thing that should derail your season. So, they need to figure out what they're doing at shortstop, but that should not derail their season. I'll stand by that. Uh, meanwhile, here's the item I saw last night, and you guys tell me uh, how you feel about it, and you can jump in on the phones as well, 617-779-7937. Schefter tweets this out. Three quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, are among the 13 players who have accepted invitations to be in attendance at the NFL draft in Detroit. Uh, Mike Florio had more info on this. He says neither quarterback Bo Nix nor quarterback Michael Penix was invited. The league didn't have uh, either, we're told, on the projected list of the top 15 to 20 picks. So the league doesn't feel like Nix or Penix are going in the top 15 or 20, which is why they weren't invited. However... The league views Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and J.J. McCarthy, who didn't respond to his invitation and had it basically rescinded as clear and definite early picks. The league does not have the same opinion as to Knicks and Penix. So is this nothing? Is this a whole bunch of nothing? The league is high on J.J. McCarthy. They invited him, but he's not attending. We've seen quarterbacks and highly drafted players go from home in the past, right? Uh, C.D. Lamb, I think, fell further than we expected, but that's when his girlfriend stole his phone, Arcane, right. which I know was a big moment for you. That was hilarious. And so, like, we've seen highly anticipated players Snatch that thing back. choose to stay home even though they were invited to the draft and still go relatively highly. Uh, how do we feel about all this, and how do we feel about McCarthy not even bothering to respond? You have a wedding coming up, Mego. If somebody doesn't uh, RSVP one way or the other, how do you feel about it? I'll tell you what. I'm waiting on some vendor responses, and that's not very <laughs> professional to not respond, especially when someone send, sent you a legal letter a week ago. If you're listening, you know who I'm talking to. I think I know who you're talking to. And um, one day we're going to have to bring that up on Meg's Flanagan yeah, thing. Those people at the erotic cake place. Are real <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think uh, J.J. McCarthy getting invited and Penix and Knicks not getting invited is, is that big of a deal because I definitely think that those two are most likely going to be either extremely late in the first round or in the second round. The J.J. stuff, though, like him not responding is just bizarre. It's another. He doesn't, he doesn't have a handler. He doesn't have someone who's, like, handling this well, for Well, maybe him. he does, and they screwed it up. I mean, I have no idea. It's just another weird hippy-dippy it's, thing that he does that I don't it like. It seems disorganized to yeah. me. It doesn't seem hippy-dippy. It seems disorganized. Yeah, that those are usually one of the He is same. the youngest one, so maybe he's just immature. Those are, you think it's disorganization? What do you mean? You think he, like, got lost in the mail oh, or something? Oh, I'm sorry, like? man. I was standing out in my yard barefoot. <laughs> I must not have seen it, man. Well, why else do you just not respond? I don't know, because he's a weirdo. This is, what I, yeah. this is how I feel about him. He's so because no response is a response, by the way. Yes, agreed. It's a very strong response. It says, I don't even care. I'm not part right of your back. construct, right. man. I'm not part of your rule. I don't follow your rules. Yeah, I don't follow rules, man. I don't RSVP, man. <laughs> I don't wear shoes, uh, you know, uh, into stores, uh, into different places of business, man. He's like an Australian. <laughs> Australians don't wear shoes. Tristan Cassis just walked by and was like, Yeah, I like this yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> Draft this guy, man. So anyway, it's just another weirdo thing with McCarthy. But what I initially thought was that he wasn't even invited. I'm like, oh, 
Maybe he's not going so highly. Maybe he's not really tops on the Patriots board. Turns out he got the invite. He just blew it off entirely. Uh, so we can add that with all your phone calls. We'll also get to Mac Jones. We found Ryan unearthed some of his raps last week, a week ago. Mm -hmm. They were disturbing. He unearthed some. Uh, apparently he's discovered more. Oh, no. Uh, so we'll get to those coming up, but let's uh, get to a few phone calls quickly here. Uh, who's been waiting the longest? How about Steve in the car? Go ahead, Steve. Hey, how you doing? We're doing well. Hey, Steve. What's happening? What's happening, Steve? How you doing, guys? Go okay, hey, we're doing Steve. good. Go. What's happening? Steve! Yeah, well, I have some ideas on the Celtics. What First are they? of all, Missoula's got to Missoula's got to go. He's now? too nice to them. They need a real they need a real uh, strong leader, and he's not strong. Okay. He's he's, one, he's yeah. a mouthpiece. Okay, I second of what? all, yeah. Second of all, they need to get their own rebounds. Stop letting and. and uh, offensive rebounds. Come on. Okay, so Steve, Steve, I appreciate the phone call. I, this started in the Atlanta series. They have been getting whooped on the boards. It happened last night with New York. This started, I said, the Atlanta series. The two games in Atlanta, they got crushed. And that's mildly concerning uh, because they are what should be a good rebounding team. They have size. The, the Celtics are a big team. Even if they're not massive in the front court, when you have Tatum and Brown and uh, Porzingis or Horford or whoever else is out there, you should be getting rebounds. And so that... That's purely effort. I mean, that's effort Nick's and fundamentals. 17 offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's effort and fundamentals is all that is. Yeah. And so I think they've been a little checked out. Hopefully that corrects in the postseason, but we'll see. Mike's in Florida on Alex Cora. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, guys. Great show. Great Thanks. show. Just want to make a couple of observations that I don't think I've heard. When I watch Alex Cora talk to the media, he seems supremely confident in his position, in his job. I think he is one of the better managers out there i think that he knows that he's dealt with a bucket of crap and he's doing the best that he can and i think the rest of the leagues will recognize that so he really could give two hoots in hell about what's going on there because is he knows fresh? when his contract is up whether these guys pay him or not he's going to get paid okay mike so mike i appreciate the phone call that second point is i agree with that how he said it initially i disagree with cora's secure in his position here i don't think that i just think he knows he doesn't really care about his position here because of the last thing mike just said and that Bingo. that has been brought up before mike but i appreciate the take that he just knows all right, whatever i have the dodgers job waiting or if dave roberts wins a world series and and finally uh, gets on the board there i have another job lined up somewhere i know teams are going to be lining up for me that that's what i think the security is but i will push back on one thing he said Cora's getting the most out of the team Meh. Like, I, I'm just, I'm not, I wasn't sold on that last year. Let's see. Like, he was on the West Coast trip. Let's see. They just lost three straight. Yeah, and just. How is that getting the most out of it? It's them? all the same issues as last year. And so that's why if it's going to continue to look similar to last year, and I'm not, I'm not sold they're going to be as bad as last year. But if what we saw on the homestand is what they are, and you two are right, then yeah, I'm not going to absolve the manager of any guilt there. He deserves some blame. Will you continue to give two hoots in hell? <laughs> Uh, I might, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll I might dog cuss him. I, I, I might dog cuss him is what I might do. And, uh, well, that last caller was from Florida. I yeah, think that's they, fair. I think they do some dog cussing there. I do think that uh, maybe maybe Mac Jones is a dog up, cussing up out. handle. You know? Yeah, well, yeah, right, right. And Ma Mac's from Jacksonville. That's up there. True. And so, you know, I think he did some dog cussing of his own when it came to Patricia and Judge uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Ryan, we found out that Mac is a, uh, a secret rapper. Yes, you found a few of his tracks. Yes, I did. Mego said they were disturbing yes, last they week. They were. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what you're the talking. The Crazy about. Town cover. Oh yeah. Was come my lady. Disturbing. Come come my lady. You're my butterfly. Sugar baby. Come my lady. You're my pretty baby. I'll make your legs shake. You make me go crazy. Come okay, my lady. So, come. Um, as I understand this, Ryan, those were like the singles, right? Like those were like. That's what the label really would have pushed out for Mac the Rapper. What's right? the opposite of kids saying like that slaps? That's what that is. <laughs> Well, that's the opposite of kids. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the opposite. I don't either. I don't even know. I, I the don't antithesis even, of slaps. I don't slap. quite know how they, yeah. What's, the antithesis. Yeah. Brian antithesis? Zeke, what's the opposite of it slaps? I don't know. It's mid. Is that mid, what the kids mid, say? I, mid. Yeah, I like yeah, it's mid. mid. It's worse than mid. It was mid worse. Is, yeah, mid is too generous. It is worse than mid. Uh, so anyway, that's what the label would really push out, right? Those are those are singles. But you found some B-sides, right? The correct? cassette had a B-side. I, all I had to do was just turn it over. Silly me. I didn't even think there would be three more tracks on Mac Jones' uh, rap tape audition. Okay. Um, th this first one is, is kind of nice, though, because during NCAA tournament, there was a, a 
long running ad campaign uh, that featured a very prominent hip hop song. And now that the tournament's over, I guess we're never going to hear that song again. Uh, right, Mac? Eek, eek, poop, poop. Why you all in my ear? Talking a whole bunch of ish that I ain't trying to hear. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. Yeah. Hello. Eek, eek, poop, poop. I ain't playing around. Make one false move. I'll take you down. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, kidding. Uh, I do miss that from the tournament already. Like, just Mac bringing that back, I uh, I appreciate it. I already missed that song. That was like every single commercial break all March. It really was. Now, now I, I, I didn't realize I how much I missed it. never got tired of it either. Yeah, now I, now, but I, now I realize how much I missed it. Now eek, eek, poop, poop. Why are you all in my ear? Talking a whole bunch of ish that I ain't trying to hear. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. Yeah. Hello. Eek, eek, oof, oof. I ain't playing around. Make one false move, I'll take you down. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. <laughs> little known fact. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, little known fact. That song was about uh, Matt Patricia. Is what that was about. It was, it was what he was screaming at him on the sidelines. You know what these, down. these kind of sound like? What is that? that? Like you remember Kids Bop? Yes, yeah, a little like, bit. It's like Kids Bop on opioids. It's a little bit like <laughs> yeah, like Xanax. It's a yeah. little bit like Kids Bop. All right, so that's B-side number one. Although I feel like that was maybe a lead single. What else you got yeah. there, Ryan? Well, I guess, I don't know, if, if somebody got Max here and, and said, listen, Mac, you know, you got some real talent here, you know, great sense of rhythm and all that, but you might want to try and branch out and, and try some things that might not necessarily, you know, uh, get some other people besides the hip-hop heads, and I think oh, that's, that's what this one is. Reluctantly crouched the starting line, engines pumping and thumping in time, wow. the green light flashes, <laughs> the flags go up, Churning and burning, they yearn for the cup, they deftly maneuver, and muscle for rank. Fuel burning fast on an empty tank. Reckless and wild, they pour through the turns. Their prowess is potent and secretly stern as they speed through the finish. The flags go down, the fans get up, and they get out of town. The arena is empty, except for one man, still driving and striving as fast as he can. Hello. The sun has gone down, the moon has come up. And long ago, somebody left with the cup, but he's driving and striving and hugging the turns and thinking of someone for whom he still burns. He's, he's going, going the distance. He's, he's going, going for, for speed. speed. She's all alone, all alone in her time of need because he's racing and pacing and plotting the course. He's fighting and biting and riding on his horse. He's going the distance. <laughs> Very impressive. That was, now, was he that, sounded just like him. Now, was hang on. that Keith in the background? I was just going to say, who was... Uh, I heard Jack Edwards make a cameo there. Who else is oh, in there? You said it was Keith? There's a bunch of... Uh, uh, who? Keith and Stiz were in that. That was Stiz. He's, He's going, going the distance. And me. I hear Stiz. He's, He's going, going for speed. speed. Uh, a I do hear that now. <laughs> all alone. All alone. <laughs> in the time of me. Because he's racing and pacing and plotting the course. He's biting and biting and riding on his horse. He's going the distance. <laughs> so I didn't pick up on the um um. <laughs> it's I a, didn't pick it's up on that. That's his like yeah boy. They're harmonizing. <laughs> They're harmonizing um um in the background. I didn't even pick up on that the first time. I don't know who the lead singer. I don't know what his name is. The lead singer yep. Jake. But the very beginning uh, of that, when he first starts, Clea, talking, so I, yeah. that sounded very similar to the way that song starts. Can we get it again? Like that was that was just the, right on. Just the reluctantly beginning, crouched yeah. the starting line, engines pumping and thumping in time. <laughs> Pretty good. That, sounds, that does. That it's, does. It's a it's a very natural. It's tremendous. Fit. Yeah. Do you wow. Think, do you think Mac is aware? Well done, Mac. Do you think Mac is aware of Cake? Um. No. He's probably heard that song in like an arena or something. Mm. That song's a pretty big, you know what I mean? Like, that's a song you hear when you're out in public. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm I do out. remember my friend wasn't allowed to listen to rap, and his mom thought that song was a rap song. <laughs> the arena is empty, except for one man still driving and striving as fast as he can. Hello. I mean, that's... So, uh, like, I said no hip-hop! That is a rap song. Mac just Mac just proved it. That's rapper Mac there. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, we got we got one. Oh, by the way, I'm being informed. Uh, Brian says uh, in the uh, uh, the Slack channel that trash is the opposite of uh, trash. slaps. It's trash. That's trash. Which I feel like I say that. That's uh, that's that's what the youth are saying. I definitely don't say it slaps, so but I say it's young. trash. That's true. I am very youthful. That's true. A youthful forty. Uh, uh, the lead singer of Cake, by the way, his name yeah. is John Mac Cray. 
Wow. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Spell it. M-A-C or M-C? M-C-C-R, yeah. Okay, well, still. So He's going, going the distance. <laughs> He's, He's going, going for, for speed. speed. She's all alone. All alone. All alone in the time of need. I mean, ironically, he did not go the distance through his rookie contract, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have? We have one more uh, yes. side here from Mac Jones? Yes, I don't know how he had this one hidden for as long as he did. Because obviously, you know, he did the Sugar Hill Gang last week. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he's a big fan of the classics. So, I mean, I don't really think this one needs much of an introduction. Mac, again, maybe a weird question, but do you think you now <laughs> or at any point this year sort of had the yips? You, you know what that is? I mean, do you think that that's something that's happened to you? Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, I'm rocking my peers, putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon, listen to the bass go boom, explosion, <laughs> overpowering, over the competition, I'm towering, wrecking, shop, when I drop these lyrics, they'll make you call the cops, <laughs> don't you dare stare, you better move, don't ever come here. Me to the rest that will all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. Um, I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. I'm towering. <laughs> So was that, that was directed, that must have been directed right at our kid, is who he's not. I, I, like, I think the kids would call that a diss track. Yeah. Oh. oh Arkan, are you going to respond? Our kid's got 24 hours to respond. <laughs> <laughs> Arkan, are you, gonna, are you going to respond or are you going to wait for him to apologize? I don't know. No, I'm going to be like J. Cole and just yeah. uh, and just come out and say, guys, you know what? You know what? I, I really, I said some things I didn't mean. <laughs> I'm backing out of. The, I'm going to go to my own festival and back out of the beef that I started. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to pull a J Cole. I didn't know uh, that uh, he might have had the yips. I'm sorry for asking that question. Mama <laughs> said, "Knock you out." The yips aren't even a real thing. I've come to learn, as I could not describe it when put on the spot. <laughs> the way that you backpedaled out of the second part of that question. I wouldn't. Well, I don't know. It's, a, it's like a golf thing. I didn't, didn't want to say it's when you suck. Like I was, I was having a hard time saying it's when you suck. It, he didn't backpedal. He just he was he was shocked because Mac was li Mac knew what the yips. He knows what Mac, Mac was lying. And Every so athlete it, does. You see, he just wasn't quite ready for that. He, that's, all, that's all. Mac that's was okay. just shadow boxing with a picture of Arkan's face. <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. Um, I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. I'm gonna knock you out. Um, mama said knock you out. I'm towering. Sure, Mac. <laughs> I'm just I'm just picturing Mac now in like a Kangol hat and like you know an Adidas suit. That's not how I'm picturing him. Mm -hmm. You think he doesn't own that? Uh, he 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 might. I bet Sophie bought him that. He uh, he really might. Uh, so there you go. More on e on Earth, I should say. Uh, rap songs. Beast Early songs. LL had like the bucket hat. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. it was. Bucket hats are in. Yeah, that's not. It wasn't like a Kangol. Was no, he had the like Kangol too. But in like, I think in the, I feel like in the, I'm gonna knock you out video. He had a bucket hat on. Got it. it. Be wrong. Yeah, I okay. feel like you're right. I'm gonna side with hip hop Arcand on this. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's more uh, unearthed tracks from Mac Jones. Deep, deep, poop, poop. Why you all in my ear? <laughs> Talking a whole bunch of ish that I ain't trying to hear. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. Yeah. Hello. Deep, deep, poop, poop. I ain't playing around. Make one false move, I'll take you down. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, Mac barking is just... The uh, barking's great. It's another level. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll get to, uh, well, the man that Mac, quote-unquote, replaced I'm in towering. New England. Even though, yeah, even though you're cowering in Jacksonville. Uh, even though he replaced uh, Cam Newton, he supposedly replaced Tom Brady. He had some comments we want to circle back to. Uh, we'll get to that next. From the Rubenstein Law Studios.
One day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots, somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders somebody, look, could be, you never know. God forbid somebody goes down, would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. There's no way Mac Jones has ever heard a cake. Uh, that was Tom Brady. We played that for you yesterday more of a on the program. <laughs> Arkan, isn't cake like slang for something? Sure is. Slang for my Instagram. I was going to okay. say his whole algorithm is yeah. what that's cake, slang for. Cake, cake, cake. Were that, is that why they were named cake? Booty. Uh, there's, no, there's no way that was the slang. In the 90s? I yeah, don't think there's so. There's no way. I don't think. Maybe, but I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know why they came up with that uh, that name. Uh, but anyway, that was Tom Brady. We played that for you yesterday. Uh, I asked you guys this yesterday. Let's uh, recap in case anybody missed it. You can jump in on a potential Brady return, even though he was very, 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 very wishy-washy about it, on the Deep Cuts podcast with, I don't know, some barber with face tattoos. I forgot his name. But when it comes to Brady coming back, would you pass on a quarterback at three, Arkan? I'll ask you first, since Mego is having a sneezing fit over there. Uh, Brady at... Uh, I'm sorry, if Brady were to come back, what would you do at three? I would take Marvin Harrison. Okay. And would you rather have Brady than a quarterback at three? Sure. Mego? Absolutely, I'm taking Brady. Okay. So Brady and Marvin Harrison, yes. Brady and Malik Neighbors? Yeah, I'll okay. take that for a year. I don't it's even care. It's a clean sweep. It's the first time I've said pass on the quarterback. The first time I've said pass on the quarterback is if Brady would walk back. He's the one who brought up the Patriots, by the way. So it's the first time I would say pass on a quarterback. And I don't want, oh, bring back Brady and draft Drake Bay at three and let him sit. Hell no. I didn't want them to do that years ago with Jimmy Garoppolo. If Brady's coming back, surround him. Give him Marvin Harrison. Give him Malik Neighbors. Give him Roma Dunze. Give him Brock Bowers. Maybe even give him an offense. I could be convinced on an offensive tackle more than drafting a quarterback to let him sit behind Brady. So, hell yeah, pass on the quarterback if Brady were to come back. I wanted to do that with Russell Wilson and uh, Baker <laughs> Mayfield. So, i definitely do it for Tom Brady. Okay, well, hang on. But there's a follow-up <laughs> question. But, Mego, you had something first? Well, I was going to say, what happens if they uh, induct him into the Patriots Hall of Fame this summer and do the whole thing, and then he comes back and he's the quarterback? Do they take him out of the Hall of Fame temporarily? Uh, I think I, I give a rat. Yeah, I don't think that would be. Patriots I don't think Hall that would block anything. I think the thing that could block it, as we discussed yesterday, is if he becomes a minority owner with the Raiders, then he cannot play in the NFL. That's a rule they changed last year. The owners agreed to it, ratified it. So if he becomes a minority owner, you know he's not coming back, no matter what the rumors are, because he's not allowed to. But in the meantime, that's pending. That's in a holding pattern. He is not part of Raiders ownership yet, so he can return. I don't think the Hall of Fame would prevent him. If Brady were to walk in on this team, as currently constituted, how many games do they win? This team today yes. before the draft? Yeah. Ooh, 10 games? Okay. Arkan? Seven. 10 was my exact number. Why seven? Because I think he's maybe worth about three more wins. I don't think that he would have taken that team last year and made him a playoff team. What a hater. I think he would have made him better than what they were. They were a four-win team. I hate Brady. made him a seven-win team. Seven-win team? Tom yeah. Brady? Has he ever won seven games in his life? No, but he would have on that team last year. He if he was lucky. He doesn't believe. Ten. He don't believe. That's true. I'm with you, Matt. That was my exact number, 10. I'm surprised you went there, but 10 was yeah, my number. 10. Yeah, 10. It's the Brady magic. And okay. also, like, who knows who may show up if Brady's there. All of a sudden, guys are interested. Hey. Okay, we're the, not talking. We're talking about that coming, team last. The goat's coming out of retirement. Like, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll go play with that sure, guy. If Gronk comes back and all these other people want to come play, sure. But if we're talking about that team last year, no, we're ta- to this team, team here, team just them and nobody right else, and I would say right? seven wins. We're talking about the team right now? Right. Seven wins. Max. 10. 10. 10. That's the number. Arkan hates Brady. <laughs> yeah. Why would you bring, if you think he's going to win seven games, why bring him back? What's the yeah. point of that? Because I think you can draft more players and put them around them. Okay, the fine. The team isn't what it is right now. Okay, you still fine. have the whole draft to go. So draft players and put them around them. What do you think they can win? I think they could get up to nine or ten wins. Okay, nine or if it, With a good draft. I, Brady's wow, winning. that's so generous of you. Brady's winning ten. And whatever, it's going to be interesting either way. I don't care. Oh, I don't fair. care if they win a lot of you games. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. At least at least Brady here, they would be interesting. I mean, that that's completely fair. Uh, so you can jump in on this, 617-779-7937. I want to play another clip we did not play yesterday from the same interview uh, where Brady's getting, did they even cut his hair? Like, I feel like when I watched it, his hair didn't change at all. Uh, but who knows? Um, he was asked about- Like grew back immediately like the Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> He's the next quarterback, uh, or who will be the next quarterback to win? Uh, because 
there's a bunch of young quarterbacks who haven't won yet because Patrick Mahomes wins every effing year, just like Brady did seemingly for two decades. So who's the next quarterback to break through? And does that give us any clues as to what Brady thinks they should do at number three? Here's his answer. Next quarterback to win a Super Bowl that hasn't won yet. I like Josh Allen a lot. I think he's, uh, I'd say I pick Josh. Josh? Yeah. I like Josh a lot as a guy, as a leader. Um, but, you know, he's got to get past the Chiefs, and yeah. that's hard because Patrick's incredible in the way he leads that team. Okay, so number one, I can't wait to hear Brady on broadcast. That's that's electric. <laughs> number two, that guy's got good energy. Uh, who, uh, the, the barber there, guy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Is that what you're going yeah, to do? Uh, number I'd three. I pick Josh. Josh. Number yeah. three, I think that, that that's exactly why you take Drake May. And I've heard other people say this. Uh, maybe it was Breer the other day. I'm not sure we ever played the clip. But Drake May most closely resembles the top quarterbacks in the league. JJ when Ma you're comparing the butt blood lines? Yes, correct. <laughs> J uh, J.J. McCarthy does not closely resemble the top quarterbacks in the league. He resembles quarterbacks you can win with. Yeah, Jared Goff and guys like this. Brock Purdy. He's got he great resembled, butt blood lines. <laughs> he resembles guys like that. But actual top flight quarterbacks... The quarterbacks that guys like Tom Brady respect and look at and go, that guy's going to break through. It's only a matter of time. Drake May. Are you kind of surprised that Brady didn't say Joe Burrow? Uh, like why? he went why, right why to the I guy do? that was in his division for a while that he was. You think it's a shot at Bill? Bill thought was, I was going to say, good, yeah. you think it's a shot at Bill? Bill, hates, Bill hates Josh Allen. I like that angle. I like that a lot. I like that. I think maybe that's what it is. Okay. Josh. Yeah. I feel like Brady might have done that and not even been fully aware of it. Who's the next quarterback to break through? I well, actually, I know I, your answer. Yeah, actually, it's Burrow. Yeah. Silly question it's by Burrow. me. Arkan, who's the next quarterback to break through? I think it's Lamar Jackson. I think that he's got Ooh. the two MVPs now. He was right there this year. Uh, you know, the Chiefs beat him, obviously. But I think that out of all of them, he's probably the most likely to, to break through next. I'm going to go with uh, whoever the Patriots draft death. Through. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, I, I'll go. Give me Stroud. I, if, if I'm going to take a young quarterback with an actual talented team, give me Stroud. 617-779-7937. Let's go to Coach up in New Hampshire. What's up, Coach? Hey, Adam, I usually love your takes, but a couple of days ago, you definitely said something that annoyed me a little bit. You said it was a red flag when Jaden Daniels yes. maybe didn't have yes. a great interview. With, let me finish with Washington. And then um, and then uh, he maybe would want to play for the Patriots. Now, how do right. you know, looking at another way, if he didn't have a wonderful bowl of clam chowder, twin lobsters and loved Gerard Mayo? Maybe he really wants to be a Patriot. Uh, maybe, and coach, that might be the case. It might be the truth, and I appreciate the phone call. What I said is, if Jaden Daniels is trying to steer his way here to this crap fest of a team, I think less of him. I think a little less of Why would you want to play here over Washington? So that's a, it is a red flag. I stand by the take, coach. It presents a serious question about your judgment. It presents a serious question about your judgment. What's the equivalent in Maryland? It's crab cakes and what? Football. Is that what it is? No, crab cake. What else do you That's crab, the quote. I understand from the movie, but I'm saying, what else do you eat? Crab cakes and chowder? Do you eat chowder and... Is it that stupid red chowder? No, that's, that's Manhattan. Yeah. Okay. That's Manhattan. So what do crab you eat? Crab cakes, what else? Yeah, what else do you weirdos yeah. eat down there? Natty Bo. What's that? Natural Bohemian. What is that? What is that? <laughs> it's a beer. Natty Bo. You've never heard of Natty Bo? Not Obviously not. Like the I've heard of Natty Light. Okay, Natty That sounds Bo. like some hippie crap is what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds no, like... It's somewhere like, J.J. McCarthy's like, yeah, man. Love the Natty Bo. Yeah, it's like one dollar beers. Um, what would another one be? Pit um, beef sandwiches. What? Pit beef sandwiches. What's a pit beef? I don't know. That all you Baltimoreans dirty. that I know rave about pit beef sandwiches. I've, I've never, never heard of that. Never heard of that either. <laughs> I'm not that. from Baltimore. I would not duck duck go that on a work computer, by the way. Don't don't look that up. Uh six one seven 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 nine seven nine oh, three seven. Burger cookies. That's another <laughs> own thing. <laughs> Wait, right. but mine's burger made cookies. Up. <laughs> What's a burger cookie? <laughs> What's wrong with burger cookies? What is I've it? Never heard don't even that. Know what that I've is. never what heard those that? two words together. A burger cookie? It's like a sugar cookie that has really, really thick chocolate icing on top of it. It's called a burger cookie. Sugar cookie with thick icing. Like on top thick of it. chocolate icing on top. It almost looks like a cupcake. Like the kinds you get in the grocery store. Like a moon pie. But it's but it's like way thicker. Like the like the thick thickness of the, of the... Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. Why, why are you laughing at burger? Uh, every day. I hate, I've it? never, ever heard that before. Every, every day you just make me hate Maryland a little bit. <laughs> why? Uh, oh, six, Old Bay is a good one, but Old Bay kind of goes hand in hand with the crab. Yeah. So can't old like, oh, crab yeah, cakes and Old Bay. Yeah. They, they, old Bay goes on everything. Who is, who is crab cakes without Old Bay? You're a psycho. Mm. Yeah, I like crab cakes. I don't, I, I, I don't like all the work that goes into opening up the crab, but I don't like that with lobster either. Uh, we'll continue with your phone call, 617-779-7937. We'll get back to the Celtics. What's your concern level after back-to-back -back losses to the Bucks and the Knicks? That's next. 
from the Rubenstein Law Studios. One
Jalen Brunson won't get it tonight, Brian, is he may not have to play much at all at the, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a good point. He may, but he may be out there until he gets 40, and he might be trying to get it right here in the third. And the Knicks have the ball as we approach the one-minute mark. And Joe Mazzulla is going to pull the plug. We just got out tough the last two games. Um, we haven't played to our standard. A turn of physicality. The game has shifted a little bit, and it's going to shift even more in the playoffs. And we ain't meet the whistle for whatever reason. Um, it could be just because of, of anticipation for the playoffs or, or whatever. But that's what I'll say. We're going to nip that in the bud, though. Or are they? That's Jalen Brown after the Celtics lose 118-109 to the Knicks last night at TD Garden. You may look at it and go, eh, whatever. They lost a relatively close game to New York. If you just woke up and look at the box score, eh, how much did the guys really play in the game? Celtics had nothing to play for. Whatever, no big whoop. But if you watch the game, they were down 31 with their starters. Missoula pulled the starters, I think down 29 is when he actually pulled them. And they went on a run without their guys. Jalen Brunson torched them. They've now lost two consecutive games against desperate teams where the Celtics have gone through the motions. And we're asking you online at Jones and Mego, you can vote in our big question of the day. You can also dial us up 617-779-7937. After those two losses, what's your concern level with the Celtics? High, medium, low, or zero? Mego, how'd you vote? Low, I can't say zero because they haven't won yet. So, of course, like, I'm going to have some doubt. But what's going on right now is the Eastern Conference is just a big old mess. Like, it's just messy as heck. And the Celtics are sitting above all of it. They have everything clinched. It doesn't matter for them. And I would just look at the history of the NBA Finals champions over the last three seasons. The Nuggets were 5-5 five and five in their last 10 of the regular season. The Warriors in 2022 were 5 and 5 in their last 10 games of the regular season and the Bucks were 6 and 4 in their last 10 of the regular season. You're 5 and 3 right now in the last 8. You have two more to go. I think you're going to probably be 7 and 3, maybe you'll be 6 and 4 somewhere in this area. I'm just not that worried based on these games because I don't think that they mean much for them. And I don't think that the Celtics are really going in with, with much game planning, execution, any of this stuff. Now, you can say maybe that's bad for the mindset. Maybe if they're trying to set some standard, all this stuff that we hear Joe Missoula preach, that that's bad for that, that they're not flexing those muscles, those kind of mental, emotional muscles. But I still can't sit here and say like, wow, I'm really worried about where this team is trending because I don't think that they're full steam right now. Okay, so Mego, not quite where Jalen Brown is. Jalen sounds a little concerned. Mego's concern level is low. Arkham, where are you? Mine's very high. I'm very concerned about this team. I've always in the back of my mind, and this may be part of it too, is the fact that I just, it's hard to trust them. It's been hard for me to trust the Celtics team and to believe that they're going to carry this into the playoffs just based on the way that they've, crashed and burned in the last couple of years and it's times when they've been the favorites it's not like they were some scrappy underdog you know like the Nuggets or some of these other teams that uh, hadn't won yet and weren't expected to go out there and win the Celtics are in this unique position of never having won crap but still being the team that everybody expects and have this big target on their back because of how well they played this regular season and it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Suns two years ago. The Suns two years ago were a 64-win team. They were eight games up on their closest team in the West, which I think was Memphis, and uh, no one was really close to them, regular season. And they got beat in the second round by Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson, ironically, and uh, that was the end of that. So, I mean, you can have a great regular season, but if you're showing signs of this against the only teams that are still competitive or still competing down the stretch here in the Bucks and the Knicks, I don't think the Hornets or the Wizards are going to show you anything, but these are teams that you may face, and they made mincemeat out of you this this week I uh, I'm very concerned yeah I don't uh look I don't think the Celtics are going to be playing their starters against Charlotte right I, I'm pretty much the whole team is questionable tonight so that one I wouldn't hold my breath on but just to, to flesh out your point our kid and I know the Bucks had an injury consideration last year but the Bucks had 58 wins last year they were the quote-unquote best team in the NBA they not were not by a ton though I mean it wasn't no, like yeah. they were out in round one yeah. Phoenix a couple of years ago to your point 64 wins out in round two uh, who was it in 2020, uh, or I'm sorry, 2021, 20, uh, 2021, rather, it was the Jazz? The Jazz the had Jazz. the most wins that year. Is that the COVID year? They don't, win, they don't win anything, ever. Even when they had Stockton and Malone, they don't win anything. The Bucks won 56 in 2000. 
and the Lakers in won 2020, the t- you mean? I'm sorry, in 2020. Uh, the Lakers won the most games that year. Uh, the year the Bucks won. I'm sorry, this is the year Toronto won the Bucks. Like, who, what, who's the last team to win who led the NBA and wins? Who's the last team that happened to? When was the last time that happened? The Rockets won 65. Warriors, maybe? In 2018. Yeah, maybe one of those Golden State teams. Yeah, that, that probably is it. Golden State won 67 in 2017. That's the last time, I think, unless I missed one in there just going through it quickly, just fleshing out Arkan's point. And so, I don't know. I'm sure in Phoenix a couple of years ago, or in Milwaukee, and the Bucks ended up breaking through and winning a title, but there was a year where they had the most wins. I said Utah had the most wins, and not everybody's running circles around the league and lapping the league like the Celtics are. Fair point. But when's the last time the team with the most wins in the NBA actually cashed in a championship? And so, look, my concern level is low. I'm sorry, zero. I'm not concerned about this team. I'm not concerned about these last two losses. I wish they won. I wish they didn't lose to the Knicks and lose to the Bucks and get out-rebounded and look disinterested. But I'm not concerned about any of these teams in the East. I'm really not concerned about anybody in the NBA. And if they choke, then I ignored it. I'm whistling past the graveyard. I missed it again with this team. But I have zero concern. That's me, Adam Jones, radio host. I don't like hearing that so much out of the Celtics themselves. Here's Jason Tatum after the game, where, as Mego pointed out, he's very concerned about the refs. But I really wonder if anything else in his life concerns him ever. Here's Tatum. It's one game. Um, we lost two in a row. Uh, doesn't define who we are. Right? We've had a great season thus far. A great job of managing uh, the season. I right? play 82 games. We've we've had a bad three three days, um, but overall, best record in the league. We 15 games ahead of second place. Uh, we're not perfect, but you know we can learn from from these. And uh, it is a a tough position to be in, but uh, we asked for it. So, you know, we do got to be better. Okay, nothing to see here, says Jason Tatum. That's nothing compared to Christoph's Porzingis, who I just, I can't, I can't wait until they're down like 0-3 in a series. And he's just like, ah, nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. Good we got thing punched we, in the face. It's thing, awesome. Yeah. Good thing we got punched in the face. We really needed this. Uh, so I hate listening to Porzingis after losses, but here he is. Maybe we'll get our ass kicked again one more time and right. start the series. Who knows? And then we're done. It's a wake-up call for us. But most likely, if I had to bet, I would say we'll show up at the level that we need to show up. It's on us, and, and yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a habit for us. Okay, so that's Porzingis after the game. I I have zero concern. I don't like the Celtics saying they have zero concern about it. Like that, that the optics of that I don't like. When the team's like, eh, no big deal, it's one game. Or, eh, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to happen to us in the playoffs. I, I'd like them to be a little more on guard than that. Yeah, I mean, look, it sounds like they're just completely over it. And the question would be, have they earned the right to act over it? No. Have they? They're not the Warriors no. after winning multiple championships being like... Or LeBron. Whatever. You know what we actually want? We want a quick commute to the first round opponent. Like, they can't really talk that way. Yes, they've been fantastic for the most part in the regular season. But there's a certain level of hubris, I think, that they're showing by being like well, we're just going to like, you know, basically sleepwalk through these final games. All that to say, I can't pretend like my concern level is at an all-time high right now because I really don't think there's anyone in the Eastern Conference who can seriously threaten them and keep them from getting back to the finals. Okay, go vote. 34% agree with Mego. Low concern. 29% say medium. They got to get it together. 27% agree with me, zero concern, hashtag Banner18, only 10% agree with Arcan. high, terrified. Me and my anxious brethren. Of what's gone on, so you can vote at Jones and Mega, you can dial us up, 617-779-7937, that's on our Celtics conversation, also a bunch of you waiting patiently on what we were discussing with the Patriots, Tom Brady, what they're doing at three, etc. Robert is in Springfield waiting patiently, go ahead, Robert. Yeah, I have a quick comment, do you think those, uh, that little... You know, video that Tom Brady came out in the barbershop talking about coming back to the pass. You think that might influence them to uh, go back to uh, picking the receiver for the third pick? Uh, I don't, and thank you for the phone call, Robert. But if Brady were really serious about coming back, hell yeah. I mean, they'd be uh, in an ideal spot. For, is he 46 now? Yes. 46? Will he be 46 all season, or is he turning 47? Um, Isn't he going to be 47? I think he'll be 47. Yeah, he's 47 in August. So he'll be 47. 47. Yeah, he'll be 47 to start the year. You would have to, to put some like, serious weight on to get hit again. 
Yeah. He'd have to beef up. He yeah. still he still looks like a fat Jaden Daniels out there. Like I think I think he'd be <laughs> I think he'd mostly be fine. So 47 year old Brady with Marvin Harrison, 10 wins. I'm I'm completely on board with that. Yeah. 10, 11, I'm, 12 wins. I'm sold. Give it to me. Roger okay, that. so I'm with uh I'm with Robert and Springfield on that. Uh how about Gary in the car? Also waiting patiently. Go ahead, Gary. How's it going, guys? So Good, Gary. I'm surprised that people aren't trading talking about the Pats trading up. I think the only way that Robert Kraft, and I think Robert Kraft is the biggest problem with the Patriots overall, they, they, to save face with this team, they got to trade up. I think that you have to take Marvin Harrison. My comparison to that is I hey, asked Gary, you guys. Gary, hang on. Why do they, hang on. Gary, why do they have to trade up to get Harrison? No, 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 you hang on. Why do they have, answer my question. Why do they have to trade up to get Harrison? I don't get I'm that. I agree with both of you. They need a quarterback too. Ready? Oh, I don't I like Drake May. The Giants are locked in in Drake May. I can guarantee that because I'm a Giants fan, okay? They're right. locked in in Drake May. I can't stand them, so they're going to trap them. I can guarantee you that now. The Pats need to take Marvin Harrison. Let me ask you this, Jones. You, in 2003, 2004, you have a choice to take in either Larry Fitzgerald or Carson Palmer. Who are you taking? Yeah, I would take Fitzgerald out of those two, knowing how it played out. But at the time, I would have defended the logic of taking the quarterback. And, Robert, thank you for the phone call. Or, I'm sorry, I Gary, thank you for the phone call. the third pick this year, we should take Marvison Harrison Jr. <laughs> uh, is his logic – Zeke's brought this up a lot. Is he saying they should take the quarterback and trade up and get Harrison? Because that would just cost you an astronomical amount. If he's saying trade up, I don't get why Chicago or Washington are trading back. If he's saying trade up for Harrison, I definitely don't get it because Harrison will be there at three. Mm. So it's a long way of saying I don't really understand his phone call. I am lost. <laughs> I need Arcan, GPS. For Arcan, those are your people. Those are the people that want the wide receiver. That, 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 that person spoke for you. Yes, although I didn't quite follow him either. I didn't quite follow. Like, I, he's like, no, no, no. L listen, I agree with everybody. Look, <laughs> you get this guy and you get this guy. Here's what I want. Okay, okay. Here's what I want. Assuming Brady's not actually coming back, here's what I want. I want them to take Drake May at three, and then I want them to trade up from 34 and go get a receiver in the 20s. It, uh, that kind of trade up is reasonable. That won't cost you a lot. That's what I want them to do. Trading up with, like, next year's first and a 2026 first back into the top five? To get Marvin Harrison or six, as he said, I don't. I don't think that's feasible. That's going to cost you way too much, and I'm not even sure the Giants would take that deal. I think it's goofy, but I, I, I kind of agree with your plan, except I would have them trade up for a tackle. Sorry. Ugh. <laughs> the only time I got on board with drafting a tackle is if Brady's back, and that's only because I'm I'm willing to just bend that whatever Brady wants. I'm willing to bend the knee. Uh, 617-779-7937. You can jump in here on Jones and Mego with Arcan. What's your concern level with the Celtics? Uh, we can get further into the national media turning on the seas to a degree. Uh, we can also get further into what teams in the East scare you are. The Knicks, one of them. All that, plus Patriots and Red Sox phone calls if they're hanging out after trending with Arkin. The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Red Sox looking to bounce back tonight after getting swept by the Orioles. They welcome the Angels to Fenway Park. Tanner Houck gets the start for Boston. Opposite Reed Detmers for the Angels. First pitch is at 7-10 tonight. Catch all the action right here on the Shaw's and Star Market. W-E-E-I, Red Sox Network. Shaw's perfecting the art of fresh. Rich Keefe gets you ready for baseball at 6-10 with the Mass Mutual pregame show. Bobby Dahlbeck called up from Worcester today, likely in anticipation of an infielder going on the injured list. Don't know who that is yet. Celtics continue their limp to the finish line tonight as they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip-off is at 7.30. Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Al Horford are all questionable to play. And also Mayor Michelle Wu today signed a proclamation officially declaring April 14th as Mike Gorman Day in the city of Boston. Bruins are off tonight. They will visit the Penguins tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. And BC Hockey faces the University of Denver in the NCAA Men's Championship game tomorrow. Hey, New England golfers looking for some great courses to play this season? Check out our live auction at teeupnewengland.com for some great golf. The auction is open April 15th until 9 p.m. April 22nd. Remember, teeupnewengland.com. Better golf through turf research. I'm Christian Arcan, and that's what's trending. Tonight, Sox and Angels.
Kimbo's yes. eating watermelons. W E E I. Did you like the effort level in the first half? Um, I did not like the effort level in the first half, but like you said, I think it's just a tough spot to be in. You know, I think uh, um, I thought our guys have handled that as best as they could, and you ran into our last two games against two teams that are highly, highly desperate. And um, as much as we want to be able to simulate that, that's just not the position that we're in. But uh, I actually don't mind uh, the result of the last two games because I think that's important. Like, um, you know, going in with a bunch of wins and feeling good about yourself isn't uh, any better than, um, you know, having a little bit of a bloody lip uh, because of a game. So um, they've done the best they could over the course of this stretch, however it's been a week and a half. But no, I didn't like it in the first half. I don't know how Missoula's answer can be so all over the map. He's like, no, Gary, I did not like the effort. But I'm actually happy with how things went. It's like he, he, he started from what I thought, certainly a place I agree with, and what I thought was the right message to his team. Like, no, I don't like the effort, Gary. But then he's like, ah, it's actually good. And he, like, lets him off the hook, which, Joe, you're the one who has to deliver the message to the players. Part of your job is whether or not guys are ready or not, pushing the right buttons. And when they're not, that's a reflection on you. So you're you're letting them play that way. That's on you. And I just don't like how he said that after the game. I thought he was about to go after them a little bit, and I think Missoula, to a degree, is afraid of the players because he knows who really runs the team. And if he pisses off Tatum and Tatum's in his corner and they lose, Tatum's going to be like, yeah, you know what? Don't bring this guy back. I'm out. He's also saying, so they can't simulate the level of desperation that these other teams in the Eastern Conference are playing with because they're fighting for a home court advantage or for their other things in their seating. But at the same time, it's like, okay, so what you're kind of telling us is you don't have control over the players, as you said, our, uh, Jones. You also don't have anybody in the locker room who's setting that tone. Because we hear it's certainly not Tatum. Nope. It's certainly not Porzingis. And I'm sorry, I know we always go back to Kevin Garnett, but you think about, like, could you imagine a Garnett team playing like these couple of teams have played? Good question. How'd they play late in 2008? You were talking about the last 10 years. I'll look that up. But, Arkham, what'd you think of those Missoula comments? I thought they were similar to what you said, the uh, the words of a guy who doesn't want to say the wrong thing. And I think that, you know, you look at what they're up against right now and how he's been really defensive at random points in the season over certain questions about the way they shoot threes or the defense or various, you know, topics that kind of are his triggers that you've noticed over the, uh, over the course of this season. I think he's been a lot more defensive this season than he was last year. And I think that's not a coincidence. I think that there's some pressure that he's feeling about this. He knows that these losses don't look great. And he knows what people, the national pundits are saying about this team and how, you know, people just don't believe in them uh, in that way. Celtics fans do, and Jones obviously does. But I just think that there's sort of a wait-and-see aspect of it that he's not comfortable with, and he shouldn't be because he doesn't have that kind of uh, uh, cushion, I guess, is the best word for it. He doesn't have that kind of um, security, I would say, in his job. And I don't think he's going to get fired if they blow it again this year, but I think next year it's on the table for sure. The Celtics in 07-08 won, uh, I counted quickly, I think it was 11 out of their last 12. And they lost one game uh, on April 9th to the Wizards, Mego's Wizards, and then they won four straight. Now, the counterpoint to that... they almost lost to the Hawks. Well, that's what I was going to say. The counterpoint to that is they were red hot, and then they couldn't put away Atlanta. They couldn't win a road game until, what, the Eastern Conference Final? They couldn't win a road game. Yeah, look, it's a, to me, the only thing that, that worries me in any way, and like I said before, my concern level is low with how this team is performing against these other Eastern Conference teams recently. The, the only thing that really bothers me is whether they're using the opportunity to fix some of the things that still aren't solved for them. Like, this team isn't perfect, okay? Like, they still are seeking some solutions, particularly the end of game, the clutch minute uh, problems that they have with Tatum, how disorganized they look when they're just inbounding the ball and trying to, you know, if they're down three points or something and they're just trying to figure out the math of the thing. Like, it just looks disorganized. It looks like something that I'm really not confident in. They could have used uh, a couple opportunities against Atlanta to sort that out. They didn't do it. And the, you certainly weren't in that opportunity last night. But I just look at it and I go, okay, so if you haven't figured that out yet, and I don't think that they have, you're going to be figuring that out in like the second round. I don't really love the idea of that. Yeah, I don't love the idea of that either. Uh, so real quick, before we get into the scariest player in the Eastern Conference, Ryan just dropped in something very interesting. And I'm not totally sure I agree with the logic here, but 
Sean Grandy uh, tweeted out, with the East play-in all but locked, Miami remains the most likely first-round opponent for the Celtics. The Heat would get the tiebreaker with Philly and home court in the 7-8 game if they can just gain a game on them this weekend. And so let me go to the NBA standings because Grandy has now confused me. Miami is presently in the 8 spot. Um, If they catch Philly, this is what I don't get about his point, if they catch Philly and they have home court, aren't they likely to go to 7? Right. If they win, yeah. if you'd have the tiebreaker, that make them the seventh. So, like, look, let me just uh, ignore what Grandy tweeted there. Uh, right now, season ends today. You're getting Miami. How do you feel oh about that real God. quick? Yeah, how do you feel about that, Mego? So I, I'm going to, like, kind of contradict myself a little bit on these two points that we're making, but I actually feel good about it. I think that's that's a good way for the Celtics to start. To snaps, basically snap some away. Yeah, have some vengeance from last year. Sure. And I think that they'll come out and try to make a statement against that team after the way that the playoffs ended for them against them last year. Yeah, I look Porzingis will be thrilled to get punched in the face constantly. <laughs> just constant punches to the face for Porzingis. Look, they would beat Miami. I I will pick them to beat Miami. I'm just telling you, that's a nightmare matchup. I, I understand what you're saying. I've heard others say it. It would be like Brooklyn a couple of years ago in the first round. It snapped them awake. They went all the way to the NBA finals. They lost in game six blah 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 i get the logic i don't want miami in the first round i would way rather philly who never gives them problems i know they had to go to game seven last year they never lose to that team they never will lose to that team i take atlanta who just beat them a couple of times i take any of those teams i don't want miami in the opening round is it better to have miami in the opening round or miami after they've caught momentum like two rounds later i I guess my real answer is i don't want miami anywhere but in that scenario mego they're scarier in like the eastern conference final in the first round i agree with you on that uh, who's the scariest player? Let's give Arkan some credit, or at least I will. Mm-hmm. Mego's dug in on this. Mm-hmm. Who's the scariest player left in the Eastern Conference, Arkan? Right now, it's Jalen Brunson. And Asa- he is aside been, from the Celtics. Aside from any Celtics, yeah. sure. It's Jalen Brunson. He's been unbelievable for over a month now. He had that 60-point game against the Spurs, and this past month, he's averaging almost 40 points a game. He is uh, locked in about as well as you can uh, say about anybody in the league this entire season, uh, any stretch that anyone's had. So I'd say it's definitely Brunson. Mega? Look, I think Brunson's good, absolutely. But I, I would still go with Jimmy Butler. I know that sounds ridiculous, but playoff Jimmy Butler is somebody who's always given you headaches. Since he's been in Miami. Hasn't Brunson been really good in the playoffs? Uh, and I know he's not like Butler level, but like Brunson in, last in Dallas and last year, I think was good in the postseason. And, and I know the Knicks lost. Who'd they lose to in round two? Oh, Miami. Yeah. But, and so maybe that's score one for Butler. I just feel like Jalen Brown's gone to another level. Uh, Jalen Brunson, rather, has gone to another level. But I- I'll probably be eating my words if Jimmy Butler is dominating the Celtics again in a postseason series. My answer, I'm with Arkan. Arkan was right. He was ahead of the curve. He said this last year. At, for the Celtics, who's the scariest player left in the East? Jalen Brunson. They couldn't guard Brunson last night. And it's not like it was all Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser. They had their full team at home. They couldn't stop him. And everybody was trying to guard him, too. You had, you had switches and rotations and everything. And I looked down at the uh, at that box score on NBA.com that tells you all the matchups that Greeny loves, and it was ugly. For every single person who tried to guard Jalen Brunson, he was like three for four with like two threes against everyone. Was Greeny's- I mean, you also beat them four out of five games this year. Sure, sure. We're talking about right now. Okay. I mean, how many times did they beat Miami this year? A whole bunch. I'm, I, I'm just not as scared of Jalen Brunson as Arkan has been for over a year. Okay, now. well, I think Ar- I think Arkan was onto something. You don't want to give him any credit for that? Not yet. <laughs> let's see what he does in the playoffs. Okay, I'm telling you, he's been good in the playoffs before. Okay, let's see what he does in the playoffs this year. The Celtics swept. Miami. I am not the Celtics giving credit Miami. yet. I'm not giving credit yet. Okay, but I'm just saying, by your logic, you're like, well, the Celtics beat the Knicks four times. They swept Miami. They didn't lose a game to Miami. Okay. Okay. Well, play, well, we know that playoff life. Jimmy Butler is a different guy. Okay, that's fine. But and I'm I also sure. just said, like, I, this is where I, I started from. I said, I know this is going to sound a little bit like I'm contradicting myself. Yes, I'm afraid of Jimmy Butler, but I also think that Miami is a good matchup for the Celtics for the first round. Yes, it's okay to contradict yourself if you announce that you're about yeah, to. Yeah, so that, well, that <laughs> doesn't quite make sense to me. But I, look, I'm not actually afraid of anybody. But out of the teams that are, if I have to say who scares me the most, the Celtics should beat every single one of them. But who scares me the most? I don't want Miami. But Brunson's a scary player, and he showed it last night. Uh, so what do you guys think? 617. And Arkan, the point is nobody in the Eastern Conference really scares me. Fair. I mean, listen, no one has to scare you. And she I, says the that, Knicks but, then, as a team, but then she sounds a little afraid of me. The Knicks as a team, they're not like the scariest team. I'd rather face the Knicks, I think, than the Heat or the Knicks than the Bucks. But Jalen Brunson right now is someone that has my full attention. Absolutely. 617-779-7937. What's your concern level with the Celtics? High, medium, low, or zero? Uh, we'll get the national perspective on this coming up from Shaq. And Charles Barkley. But in the meantime, let's get to some phone calls. Uh, this is, I'm being told, a different David in the car from who we talked to earlier today. David's waiting patiently on the pads. Go ahead, David. 
Hello, David in the car. Hello. He's acting like a real David in the car. I'll tell let's, you what. It, it must be the same He's David. In the such a David in let's, the car. Right let's now. put let's put David in the car back on hold. Uh, let's go to Allison in Cambridge. It's something we talked about earlier. Allison's it's worth, back. It's worth circling back to. Allison, hi, where you hi are. guys. Hi, Allison, hi there, go ahead. Hi there. Hi, Allison. Allison, welcome that, back. That, thank you. <laughs> but this is Donya Raphael. Um, this is Adana Raphael idea, Jones, you said, of having him play shortstop. Lou Maloney said that last week, that Adana Raphael apparently could be a gold glove, gold glove shortstop as well as center fielder. And all the pitchers that got their ground ball pitchers. And so it really hurts us in every way not to shortstop. And so that Lou, Lou Maloney said is Adana Raphael shortstop and having Jerron Duran be center fielder, would you go down a little bit there, but not so much? And mm-hmm. that cause mm-hmm. you're just hurting the pitchers so much if we don't have great infield defense. Yeah, okay. Well, Allison, I appreciate the phone call, and I respect what Lou said. And... What's your favorite Jerron Duran sign? <laughs> mine's Hungry Like the Wolf. <laughs> really? Because mine's res- Hungry Like the Wolf. <laughs> I, do, uh, I do respect what Lou uh, says in his baseball acumen, but uh, let me just push back on the infield defense and the starting pitching. This is since Trevor's story went down. Mm-hmm. Here's what the starting pitchers have allowed. Okay? Uh, on Saturday night in Oakland, Garrett Whitlock allowed zero earned runs. Uh, the next game in Oakland... Let's see. That was who? Tanner Houck. Tanner Houck. Zero earned runs. Let me go through these Baltimore games. Your starting pitcher in the first Baltimore game on uh, whatever it was. When? Uh, Tuesday? Brian Bale, one earned but three runs. So that that was a little bit iffy. That was sure. defense. Uh, and it was the defense. Uh, Cutter Crawford, zero earned runs. Yeah, he was good. Last night, Garrett Whitlock, one earned run. Yeah. They blew the game open in the tenth inning. So, like, all right, all the all the fussing about the, the the starting pitchers and the ground balls, and I've heard this, like that hasn't really been the case. Their infield defense let them down last night for sure. Reyes with an error at third. Hamilton whiffed on the bag at second. Massive play. Well, you know who else let them down is Chris Martin and Isaiah Campbell, who's Bingo. got like a twelve wow. seven five ERA. I, Isaiah, Cam- I mean, like Isaiah Campbell just flat out stinks. Chris Martin really let them down because he's actually good. Isaiah Campbell just stinks. That's like Hamilton. Okay, you it's can like, still let people down. No, by you being can. Stinky. But it's like, but that's on the Red Sox. That's not on Isaiah Campbell. You stink, David Hamilton. You stink. It's on the Red Sox for rolling you out there and putting you in a position that you you're not cut out for. So like, uh, Martin's one thing, or you know, even a guy like Reyes, who I do think is a big leaguer, improved it last year. That's another. But some of the guys they're playing out of position, like how long can you scrape that together? So on Sedan Rafaela, people like Lou who were saying that last week, moving to shortstop, they are right. I, I was fighting that last week. I'm like, don't take him out of center field. I would move him to shortstop, but I don't think the issues with starting pitchers and ground balls, I don't think that's manifested yet. But give it time, it probably will. Doesn't mean it's not in the future. <laughs> As Tomasi said, what did Tomasi say the other day? He said, was, like, the uh, nightmares are nightmares of the future yes, or something. Uh, I, believe was, I believe it was the opener was a disaster, and it's a sign of uh, disastrous things to come. I don't get something, it. Something like that. <laughs> Uh, let me hear from uh, Shaq and Chuck. Let's hear from Shaq first. Uh, he is not buying in on the Celtics. Go ahead, Shaq. Which team are you hearing could win a championship that you just don't see it? Overrated, Boston. Wow. Boston, easily the best record in the NBA. Yeah, but you got to show me. I've, I've been in this league, around the league a long time. I've seen a lot of guys that have had great regular scene, but they don't win championships. Okay, so that was Shaq uh, prior to the game last night and this was the big pod with Shaq is that his wow. podcast Arkan you're the you're the Shaq expert I'm not familiar the big is that the one he had where he was doing like relationship stuff and his uh, chair broke in the middle of it it's the big <laughs> maybe I don't know, the know big, what I'm talking about no 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 you're talking about Christian Fourier oh, the Christian Fourier broken chair podcast of course this is the big podcast with Shaq and I believe is that Adam Lefko? I believe that's Adam Lefko. Okay. Uh, I think he's just going by Lefko now oh he's just going by Lefko, uh which he he made a nice cameo Brazilian there soccer player yeah <laughs> wow 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 uh, uh, so that was a hot take by Shaq, not buying the Celtics. Uh, they got to prove it, which is not that dissimilar than something Shaughnessy wrote in the Globe today. Basically, they're not great all-time Celtics until they win. Call which, them a bunch of Antoine Walker. He did. He said they're closer to Antoine than they are to some of the guys who won, which I fully agree with, and I agree with Shaq. Uh, here's Charles Barkley on the idea of the Celtics coasting through the end of the regular season and then flipping the switch. Shaq asked me earlier if Tatum and Brown gonna, should play. If they're going to play like that, they shouldn't play. The year we made it to the finals, we had the best record in the NBA and we shut it down the last two weeks of the season. It took us two rounds of the playoff to get it back. We lost the first two games at home to the Lakers. I've always said to myself, it had nothing to do with us losing to the Bulls in the finals, but I'm saying 
I, I regret it to this day that like, yo, man, you play to the end of the season. If you're going to play. Now, if you don't go in, the, if you, if like, if like Shaq said, he wouldn't play him, don't play him. But if you're going to go out there and half-ass it, like they did in Milwaukee the other night where they didn't shoot a free throw. Like, like they won the entire game, but didn't shoot I a know. free throw. And then they come out tonight, and they're just kind of going through the motions. <clears throat> I know I know they're going to finish with the best record, but, man, you just can't turn it off and turn Can't turn it off and turn it on, uh, he said there. And so, I don't know. I, I, I just find it interesting that Barkley and Shaq, and maybe the hot takes, looking for clicks, controversy. Like, maybe it's that, and shame on anybody who does that. Like, who, who's, it's approach, just, it's just disgusting. who's approach in media could possibly be that, besides Mego with the Red Sox? Who, who would possibly do something like that? I don't know. Hey, it's Jones. But I, but I just, when it comes to this team, it doesn't feel like they're buying in, and it's because of what they watched last year in the Eastern Conference Final or the year prior against the Golden State Warriors or the year before that. So, like, I just... I, I find that interesting and noteworthy after these regular season losses, those two, and even before it, uh, going into the Knicks game last night in the case of Shaq, they're not fully bought in, which I find interesting because here in Boston, we're mostly fully bought in. How much of it do you think has to do with Missoula as the coach? When you're hearing from these guys, or you're hearing I mean, from the national media. I don't think that's what either of them detailed, to be honest. They both cited players. So I, I, I don't think that's what they're citing, but maybe, maybe that's part of why they feel that way. Yeah, but it's like, again, it, it goes back to the original point of conversation that you started, which is when you hear Missoula talking, how much direction does he have over the players? And I know sometimes I jump directly to Missoula, but you do. it is like a whole relationship that he has to have with the locker room motivating the locker room. Sure. He talks about setting the standard with the locker room. Look, I think your coach can absolutely get in the way. I think Missoula's done a better job of not getting in the way this year yet. I mean, let's see. Doc is an awful coach. Doc ran circles around him in that Philly series last year. So let's see if he's made any improvements. Uh, Kevin is in Brooklyne. I'm waiting patiently. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, James. Josie, hey, Mago. How are you guys doing today? Hey, what's up, Kevin? Uh... I think, uh, Josie, we're getting back to it's Joe time again. You know, I mean, I, the issues with the end of the game stuff with uh, Tatum and the uh, isolation. Okay, He's not a guy was, that breaks people what, down. Kevin, what was Missoula's fault about last night? They lost by 31. What did Missoula do wrong last night? That felt like it was the players. Well, he's in charge of getting the team ready, isn't he? I mean, half the time he takes them out at halftime. I've been for the last two games. I agree with that. I said that earlier. If that's your criticism of him, I think that's fair. But largely, I mean, I, I, there was no end game situation where they got let down last night. They were blown out. He had to sit everybody. And the team woke up when he sat everybody. Well, my, my, my point is, if they're not going to play like, I mean, like Barkley says, if they're not going to play to win, don't play him. But, I mean, he sees what's going on on the floor. I mean, they're down by 20 at halftime to the Knicks at home. It's like... They're certainly not ready to play, and Joe thinks you're going to coast into this, and everyone's going to be ready when the bell rings. It doesn't work that way. And, huh? again, Joe is the biggest demon on this team. Forget the players. Don't blame Tatum. Don't blame Tatum for this end of the game. Okay, but Kevin, and Kevin and I appreciate Don't the phone call. I would, I would ask this to you and everybody else who feels this way. How come they lost with Brad Stevens as the coach then? How come they lost with Ime Udoka as the coach? How come they lost last year with Missoula? Like, it feels like there's a trend larger than just the coach. So, Missoula's not a great coach. Let's agree on that. But, but the idea that you can't blame Tatum, you seriously. blame uh, Joe Missoula for not motivating Jason right. Tatum enough before the game is absurd. So Joe Missoula letting the players off the hook completely. Joe Missoula's why Tatum sucked in the NBA Finals against the Warriors. Or why the whole team went into the tank in the bubble when Brad Stevens was the coach. Like, that's foolish. And so, it's more than, than just Missoula. But if you want to say he didn't have him ready to go the other night, fine. And if you want to say you should sit these guys down, I think you're getting that tonight against. I, I highly doubt the starters are playing again this year. Well, only only a couple of them are questionable now. It started off like the entire starting oh. five was questionable. Now it's just um, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Al Horford, meaning White, Tatum, and... Um, oh, Tatum's going to play? So I Tatum's take that back. Play, so all those guys gonna are going to play. And uh, who am I missing? I guess Tatum took off the Bucks game, so maybe he doesn't want the... <laughs> and Derek Bucks. White. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And Porzingis. Anybody else? No. Porzingis, White, and Tatum are playing. Okay. 617-779-7937. I thought they were all questionable earlier, which I took as none of them are playing, but apparently some are. Uh, so we'll keep our eyes on that. Arkham, what's coming up in Triple Play? Coming up in Triple Play today, we'll fill in some blanks, and Tom Brady's in the news. He's one of the uh, blanks we'll be filling. Okay. That's really weird how I just that is, <laughs> but you know uh, what I mean. That's yucky, but we'll, we'll make that less gross next. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is WEEI.
Hey, it's Fourier. The
play. Yes! Triple play! The top three burning questions of the day. And there's three! With Jones and Mago. Triples is best. Triples is best. Triples is best. Triples makes it safe. And it is Friday, Jones and Mego, that makes it a fill-in-the-blank Friday. So let's start filling in some blanks. Number one. Mego, we will start with you. If Tom Brady, as he hinted on the haircut podcast, unretires, joining the blank would be his best option. Got to turn my mic on. on. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. The 49ers. Niners make sense. Uh, his hometown team, who he wanted to play for after the Patriots last time that he had the opportunity to play for another team. Um, and they, they just have like the best roster. Good coach. I think it would be just an absolutely like super favorite. Also, he wouldn't have to go through Mahomes over in the NFC. So it makes sense. Let me give you another NFC team. And this is one my guy Cowherd was floating the other day. And apparently it's a team that called Tom Brady last season. Minnesota Vikings. They need a quarterback. Kirk Cousins is gone. They're desperate to trade up for like J.J. McCarthy and bums like that. You have, when healthy, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison to start the year. And then at some point, Hawkinson is going to return. Tom Brady's got family in Minnesota. I forget. I think on his mother's side. Give me the Vikings. Good fit for Tom Brady. Not as interesting and not as fun as the 49ers, but they have a much bigger need at quarterback. Absolutely. All right, let's go to our second fill in the blank. Number two. All right, Jones, you can't say Tiger Woods. Your favorite golfer to watch is or was blank. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to go with a was in the past. My favorite golfer to watch right now. I mean, look, there's a few guys I root for. I like Morikawa. I like Finau. I like Xander Shoffley. I would probably lean Shoffley out of those three. They're all American. They're all relatively young. And none of them have uh, broken through and won uh, at the Masters uh, in their case, I believe, right? I guess I'd have to double-check that. Uh, But I don't think anyone has broke through and won at the Masters yet. Uh, They have broken through and won uh, major championships outside of Finau. And so, to me, those are three players that I like watching. If I had to prioritize them, I I would put Shoffley at the top of the list. Nobody. I don't watch golf. I'm not going to pretend like I like golf. Like, I don't care. I don't bet on golf. I don't watch golf. I don't follow golf. I don't play golf. Does Mr. Who watch golf? No. Why? There's a, he doesn't care about it either. Why? There's so many other sports to watch. Like, I, I, I like just, I'm not interested in golf. Like, what's what's to watch right now? It's on during the day. What's to watch? Well, first of all, during the day, I'm working. So, okay, no, so I'm not I. watching golf. So am I. I'm watching it. So over right there, there, I'd have to turn on my, I don't know, here's a golf. I don't care. I told you earlier, like, I don't understand this bucket list obsession with the Masters and going to the Masters. It looks like church outside. Like, I go to the Masters, I just fall asleep at Amen Corner. Yeah, but you go to church by choice. I go to church and I'm bored. Okay, but like, but you, but I don't. Yeah, go, but you I, know what doesn't drive you to the Masters? Uh, guilt. Yeah, I, I would way rather go to Augusta than church. But so, Ar- Arkan, do you? I'm beginning you, to think that Mego can't name one golfer. Yeah, is that you think that's what it is? Can you not name one golfer? Max Homa. Oh, he's a golfer. He's glanced at the leaderboard. He had a good. He's having a good day. No, but I know him from podcasts. To be honest. Oh, what podcast? Um, he goes on Rosillo's podcast. He does. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Couple guys, couple guys talking about golf. Couple of bros talking golf. I uh. But like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be like a fake. Like, oh, oh, who I really like last week. Like, no, I don't watch golf. I like. I'm uh, sorry. I like rooting for Dustin Johnson when Paulina's there. Maybe yeah. One day I will. I like DJ. Uh, yeah. My no, favorite's probably Freddie Couples though. I used to love. Freddie oh, Couples. Freddie Couples. Love the swing. He was American. He was winning all those tournaments. The American guy winning. I used to love Freddie Couples. Uh, I used to like to play with. Was it a? Uh, was it? Who was the fat guy? Craig Stadler. I used to like to play him in video games. <laughs> was it Craig Stadler? Portly, maybe is a better word than fat. I mean, there was a fat golfer. <laughs> How? I find that hard to believe. Oh, but really? I, the answer though is John Daly. It's got to be John Daly, right? Like he was fun to watch. Look, I'm gonna be honest. You watch him. He's like ripping. I, appre- <laughs> I appreciate Daly as an adult. I don't really think I liked John Daly as a kid. I wasn't like, ooh yeah, John Daly. I was not. I was not. He like doesn't a Daly respect fan. the game. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but I, yeah, I was cool, that like, little Joe. I, appre- like, I appreciate John Jones. Daly now. I, yeah, I guess that, that might have been Baby what it was. Jones was like, he doesn't have any moxie. <laughs> no, wow. I mean, that does sound like he doesn't though. replace his divots. Ironically, he's got plenty of moxie. But so Mego hates the Masters. Hates golf in general. Hates golf in general. I don't. I just don't. Sneaky I don't. Can't name a golfer. I would say it's no, more. I'm totally ambivalent. Okay. It's not like hate. Did she name? I don't hate think she actually named caring. one. Yeah, she did. Uh, First name, last name? Max Homa. Max Homa. Oh, she did. I thought she said that Max something. I'm sorry. Uh, so <laughs> there it. you go. Uh, Max Homa, uh, which a good pull. Uh, yeah, no, I enjoy watching the Masters. And again, the idea that there's sports on, no, there isn't. That's why the Masters is good. There's nothing else on right now. That's why I'm watching. All right, let's get to our third fill in the blank. 
number three. Mega, we will start with you. If you were a professional baseball player, either your walk-up song to come out to bat or your song to come out and close the game out if you were a closer would be blank. Okay, these are two very different things. So well, my, you can uh, pick which one. My, oh, I got it right here. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly. Sugar. Oh, sorry. That, that, not Walking that. out there with the bat. Um, either Confessions Part 2. Okay. Oh, God. Or the Wear Sunscreen song. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to really strike fear into the hearts of the opponents. Yeah. Of those, yeah. I think I should introduce Tristan Cassis to that song. Don't you I, think he'd like it? Can I ask a question? Why are they different? Your walk-up song versus coming out of the bullpen. Why are they different? Oh, my coming out of the bullpen song would be uh, Painted di- Black. Well, what's different? What's different? Yeah. Um, I think like you can get a little sillier with the walk-up song, but when you're coming out of the bullpen, it's got to be really intimidating. Okay. I guess I, I think have... it should be intimidating coming up to bat. Yeah, that's but I, I guess think... it's up to you. It's up to whoever. It's, no, no, it's I just, an open question. But I just I think I would answer it the same way. That's the only reason why I asked why would you uh, do it any differently. Yeah, I think you have to. It's got to be like a, it's got to be intimidating coming out of the bullpen. At bat, it's like whatever. Uh, I would want to uh, psych people out. Uh, Mego, I think have you haven't you talked about this uh, for like walk up songs or like a uh, 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 playlist for like high school basketball teams and things like this? You want to psych people out. Uh, so I, I'd go with something very off brand. Maybe something like uh, give me like sunscreen. Yeah, the, uh, Texas Hold'em, uh, 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 Beyonce. Like give me that. I'll, I'll come. I'll come out really throw people off and come Love out. Love on top. By yeah, Beyonce. <laughs> like something that's gonna really like throw baby, people off. Baby, baby. And like, Jones is walking what, out. Jones what is, is this? Like, Jones is swinging the cake around. <laughs> They're like, okay, so give me where that, do we pitch this guy? Give me that answer. That's uh, that's how I would vote. Arkan, how would you vote? I think for my uh, walk-up song, I would be into uh, maybe something by like the far side, like Your Mama by the far side. I like that song. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with baseball, but I just enjoy it. That's, and, a, uh, deep, that's a deep hip-hop Arkan cut. Yeah, and uh, walk I've, out. I've got no opinions on that. Walk out from the um, <laughs> from the bullpen, maybe uh, One Big Room by Lil Wayne. That'd be a, that'd be one. Ooh, yeah. That's Ooh, that that's one. a good one. What's that one? It's uh, it's him rapping over that Krayshawn song, uh, that Gucci that? Gucci song. Remember that Gucci Gucci song that, that was really popular really good. in like 2013? Oh, it was that girl who was rapping, and then Lil Wayne did a cover of it. And I think it's better, but that's what I would pick to come out of the bullpen. I like that. I don't know the other one. Yep. Gotta say. Okay, so there you go. What's your walk-up song? What's your bullpen song? You can vote six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. I uh, I wish I wish that uh, Edwin Diaz hadn't stolen Tommy trumpets. Timmy <laughs> Timmy trumpets. Timmy, Timmy trumpets. trumpets. That's that's the song. That's the song. To I feel come like out. I haven't that heard that much rolls. lately. I feel, he already he set the bar. He set the bar so high. I don't know how you can do any better than that. Well, Mariano, Enter Sandman. Oh, I think Timmy trumpets. Uh, that elevator. better than Enter Sandman. Yes, I feel like Enter Sandman really sort of. Timmy trumpets set the whole was a party. Thing. It was. That was a party. What was uh, uh, Trevor Hoffman? He'd come out to um, ACDC, right? Yeah, Hell's Bells. Yeah, that, that, was, was? that was pretty good. He's, who, he who stunk, the, Trevor Hoffman stunk, though. Who is the dork on the team last year? Was it Turner who had Boston by Augustina or whatever it is? Do you remember that? I don't know. I think I'll go Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't recognize that by name or Who was the guy or... whose walk-up song was his wife's Christian rock music? You know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, who was Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Ben Zobris. Yes. Ben Zobris. <laughs> Whose wife then allegedly uh, cheated on him with the pastor? Yeah, weird. <laughs> That's Whoa. rough. That's where he played her song every time he came up to bed, and she's still you're unfaithful. So, you're so whipped. You play your wife's song, walking <laughs> up to the to the plate, and the next thing you know, she cheats on you. That's brutal. That's, that's what you deserve. Brutal. That's what you Ugh. deserve. Uh, anyway, that's triple play each and every day at this time. 617-779-7937. You could jump in line there. Why wouldn't you want to? Uh, we'll get back to the Red Sox. Uh, they have a three game set with the Angels. They just got swept by Baltimore. What's closer to the real Boston Red Sox? Starting 7-3 and three out west or these last three games against Baltimore? We'll get to it next. This Monday, April 15th, kick off your Patriots Day with us. Presented by Sitco as the Greg Hill.
can't give big league teams more than 27 outs, and we've been doing that lately. Raphael was right there, made an underhand flip to Hamilton, and he missed the bag. Oh, he boy. missed the bag by plenty. Oh, he jumped right over it. When that happens, you know, uh, you turn the lineup over. When you look up, they got six of bats, you know, and and when those big guys have six opportunities in a the game, they're going to cash in, and they did. Sander just hit the first pitch from Weiser down by the pesky pole and into the first to second row with the right field seats. It's a two-run homer, and just like that, the Orioles lead 3-2. Oh, the failure to turn the double play rears its ugly head in a hurry. Oh, does that hurt? Ugly series, ugly game last night for the Red Sox, who get swept by the Baltimore Orioles. All the fun from that West Coast trip, over with. Red Sox still a game over 500, but doesn't feel that way. They get the first of three. With the Angels tonight, I keep saying weather permitting. It doesn't look that bad out there. The sun's poking out a little bit. Yeah, it hasn't rained for a while. The tarp's still out on the field, I just saw, but um, they're definitely going to play. When did you see that the tarp was out on the field, Arkan? When I just walked out there. What were you doing, what were you doing out, there? out there? I was checking around to see if there were any uh, loose uh, uh, batting practice balls, and there were not. No. There was also a How bunch of other How did you announce out. it when you walked out? I said I wanted to go see if any of John Henry's moldy balls were out there. <laughs> I wanted to see. said you were looking for loose balls. It so, sounds like you were unsuccessful. Yeah, it, it does. So the, uh, the tarp remains on the field, but I, I would, I, look, I'm not looking at the Doppler. But if you're asking Weatherman Jones to take a peek out the window, it looks like they'll, they'll get this thing in. I have no idea. Uh, the bloom has come off the rose a little bit when it comes to the Red Sox. Uh, so what's closer to the real Red Sox team? What we saw these last three days or what we saw for the first 10 games out on the West Coast? We can answer that in a moment. But if you're unfamiliar, defense let him down last night. I said last week uh, or maybe the beginning of this week. I take that back. The beginning of this week, I said the defense at shortstop hasn't begun to let them down yet. In a key spot, hasn't lost them a game yet. Like, their defense had let them down. Devers made a huge error on Saturday uh, against the Angels. Duran made a massive error on Tuesday in the home opener. But, like, the actual shortstop defense hadn't let them down until last night. David Hamilton, in part, cost them a game. So the Red Sox are leading 2-1. Whitlock had given you five innings, one run. Justin Slatton had come out and shut it down. Slayton, Slatton had come in and shut it down. Uh, so Joely Rodriguez comes out to start the eighth inning. Holiday reaches on an error. Jackson Holiday by Pablo Reyes. So that's Reyes playing at third because Devers is out of the lineup. He's out of the lineup again tonight, which we'll get to. Uh, Henderson punches out, and then Rutschman grounds out to what should have been an inning-ending double play and was initially called an inning-ending double play. Orioles challenge. Hamilton never touches second base. So now Holiday's allowed to stand at second. Uh, Joely Rodriguez leaves the game. Greg Weissert replaces him. First pitch, two-run homer, Santander. Orioles are up 3-2. Now, Connor Wong ties it in the bottom of the eighth. You go to extras. We see, uh, what's his name? Uh, the reliever who got his brains beaten in that I can't even remember anymore. Isaiah, Isaiah Campbell. Thank you. Isaiah Campbell get his brains beaten in for the second night in a row. So you get smoked. That's where you lost the game. You were out of the eighth. All Hamilton had to do was step on second base, and you're into the ninth inning with the lead and Kenley Jansen. And maybe you would have tacked on a run in the bottom of the eighth, just like you did with that Connor Wong home run. Defense let them down last night. So, before we get to the lineup and going forward, how do we feel about the Red Sox? Are they closer to what we saw against Baltimore these last three days, Mego, or what we saw the previous week out on the West Coast? They're closer to this Baltimore series. I, I'm not going to say that they're so bad that the, that the Orioles should have swept them, but that's much more of the reality of who your team's going to be going forward than what you saw on the West Coast. And by the way, I'm sorry, I don't think we've seen the worst that this team can be. Because guess what? As you pointed out a couple of minutes ago, Jones, the rotation has been good. Like, the rotation has remained good. Now, the rest of your pitching staff is certainly having some issues. You have Isaiah Campbell out there. His ERA is above 12. Like, that's insane. I'm sorry. The last two outings he's had have been a disaster. 
but you haven't really seen how bad things can get because, yes, your defense is letting you down. Devers' bat isn't totally showing up so far. Uh, Cassis actually got a home run, which was nice. But, like, it, it can get worse. And so I think that it's going to be closer to the team you've seen this week at home than the team that nobody was really watching that closely when they were out west and they were 7-3. and three. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't think a lot of the fan base was, but they were playing well out there, and Trevor's story to me should not derail the whole thing. But you're right, they've pitched over their heads, and that should level out. I just think their bats will pick up too, and, and maybe I'm, I'm wish-casting that. But uh, Ryan said this, I think, off the air earlier. They had as many runs in the series as Kowser knocked in on the other side. He had 10 RBIs for Baltimore. The Red Sox scored 10 runs by themselves. So I do think their offense will pick up, uh, but maybe that all washes out if the pitching levels off. Arkan, what do you think they're closer to? I think they're closer to this team they are right now because of what's happened to them, and I think you're right. I mean, it shouldn't be such a big problem to lose uh, someone like Trevor Story, but it already has been. You've already seen it. You're seeing it play out right now. You're seeing the defense take a major hit, not necessarily all at shortstop. Shortstop defense has been bad, too, don't get me wrong, but you're seeing it all over the place. Uh, Duran Duran out there in left field had the one uh, on opening day, and it went downhill from there. No one's really uh, covered themselves in too much glory. I feel like they never make a good defensive play uh, ever anymore. So I don't know. I, it may not uh, be this bad the whole rest of the year, but are they closer to this? Yes, I think they are. I think this is a team that was shaky defensively going into the year. A lot was riding on Trevor Story, just holding it together at shortstop and keeping the other pieces in place where they could do the least amount of damage, and now that's over with. So now you're... Uh, Porked at shortstop, maybe at center field. You got real problems there, and that was a huge problem for the team last year. So, yeah, I think they're closer to that last place team we just saw this week. They're, uh, they're closer to the West Coast trip. And it's not just because they would never win again uh, based on the way you played that Baltimore series. They're closer to the West Coast trip. Bats went quiet. You can have a bad series. You're allowed to have a bad series here and there, not to excuse them and let them off the hook. The defense was terrible. The bullpen was horrible. The bats went quiet. So not to let them off the hook, but... Again, the Rangers, the defending World Series champs, just lost two out of three to the A's. And the Red Sox just swept that team. So they're better than what they showed. They're still on pace for 87 wins, if I'm doing it in my calculator. Ooh, that's a far cry from the 116 you were crowing about last week. It is, but if this is the bottoming out, Mego, and they're on pace for 87, that's a borderline playoff team. So that's not a bad thing. you think thing. they're bottoming out? I mean, right I, is it going to get much worse than that? That well, series? Well, the, the pitching hasn't fallen apart yet. Okay, is it going to get much worse than that series? Um, yeah, I think it could. So I, I, it could. I mean, anything could happen. I would not wager on that. So they're closer to the West Coast, but they better get it together quickly. Uh, 617-779-7937. You can jump in on that along with our big question of the day. On the Celtics, what's your concern level with the Seas? You can apply the same thing to the Red Sox as well. Meanwhile, we still don't have a lineup from the Red Sox. Now, uh, Ryan, I believe, yes, Ryan just dropped in a tweet from Chris Cotillo. Cotillo. Cosillo. Hello. Uh, this is from a few hours ago. He said no lineup yet, but Hamilton will be at shortstop. Yay. Cool. Hooray. And Pablo Reyes is at second base against the lefty Detmers. So I'm guessing Cora just said that in his media uh, obligations. But Bobby Dahlbeck is here. We don't know who's going on IL. I think for Dahlbeck to be on the roster, someone has to go on IL. Unless he's just being called up on an emergency, they're waiting on... MRIs or x-rays or whatever for Devers and Gonzalez. Rafael Devers said it should be a couple of games. He's hoping to avoid an IL stint. So we'll see what they wind up doing. But Dahlbeck could be your third baseman tonight. We still don't have a lineup yet. And hopefully the corresponding move is not Devers to IL. Because that to me would be the kind of thing that can completely wreck your season. Trevor's oh story, Trevor story doesn't rise to that level for me. Devers would. Even if he goes on the IL, even if it's just like 15 day, I, I feel like that is just puts your team it, back in the position they were in when they lost the home opener where guys are smashing their lockers and basically like laying on the floor. You know? like, <laughs> that's just tough to come back from. I mean, it is tough to come back from the emotional letdown. I think the Angels should correct some of that, though, no? Arcan. What? Arcan. I, I think like, are you part sure. of the show? I was looking at what, you. Are you in, serious? I was looking at you. In fairness, but but the but yeah. the, the the angels should help correct that. R can't. They should. What are you doing over there? Are you making bets? No. Are you putting together bets? What are you talking about? You just answered with one word, and now you're yelling at me for not responding <laughs> to a question he was asking you. So chill out over there. I think the Angels should probably uh, help you a little bit, but your record's the same as the Angels. You are the Angels, basically. So I don't know. I mean, I mean they there's, just beat the Angels. They did, but you have the building. same record now. It's seven and six. They're six and six. I mean, this is this is sort of what happens when you when you come back and get your ass kicked so not uh, by a real team. So I don't know. I mean, I think the Angels. 
listen, it was uh, you did beat them two out of three, but uh, there was also the kid who pitched tonight was awesome against you in that la- in that game last week. He had twelve I strikeouts. Mean, the game so. they lost, Devers, you know, booted a routine ball like they easily could have swept. And by the way, I'd say this about the Orioles games too. I'm not giving them two more wins or calling them fake losses or anything like that. But the Red Sox easily could have won two out of three of these Baltimore games. They blew two of these games. Like, easily they could have won these. And so I just don't think they're that outclassed by teams like Baltimore. If this is a bottoming out and they're still on pace for high 80s and wins, then that's a way better team than any of us expected before the year. I think they're closer to the West Coast trip. Yeah, I think you're still waiting to see something happen with the rotation. And by the way, what is this? Uh, Cooper Criswell was called up, so he's probably going to be starting tomorrow. Taxi's yeah, I mean, they already they already needed a starter, right? They Even before Pavetta went to the IL, they needed a starter. So they're, they're going to need somebody to plug in at some point, uh, and maybe it'll be – Something called Cooper Criswell, which I'm not. Something called Cooper. I'm not really Criswell. super looking forward to. Uh, but there you go. Uh, meanwhile, a couple other items here. We mentioned uh, Rafael Devers and his health, which we're still monitoring. Should Sedan Rafaela go to short? We had Allison call in earlier on this. I've moved on this. I initially said I love the outfield defense. I love what he brought to the team from an energy standpoint out west. I'm not screwing with it. Then I had to watch David Hamilton for a couple of days at shortstop, and I'm like, nope, I'm done. Move Rafaela to short. Is that the right move? Yes, you're acting out of desperation now. Like, and, and that's a hard place to be when it's April 12th, but you need a solution there, and I don't even know if a solution's going to come through halfway through the season or anywhere around the trade deadline if you can do something to convince ownership to do something that they haven't done in previous years. Um, but at least in the short term, this patching it together thing with David Hamilton is not working. So even though you would sacrifice something in his natural position, I think it's worth it for what you're dealing with right now. Arkan, right? Yeah, I think it's probably the only move you have left. I can't stand any more of David Hamilton. And uh, Pablo Reyes, I mean, listen, an everyday shortstop? No, you have a young player. You just locked him up. Let's see how versatile he really is. Yeah, go for it. I think Reyes could play it at shortstop, but... You need him at other places right I'm now. not ready for the Pablo Reyes starting shortstop all season era to begin. Like okay. Just, you know, but I, he's a guy you can move around. You're right. He's a utility infielder. Okay, but like right now they don't have a second baseman. Like when Vaughn Grissom comes right. up, maybe Vaughn Grissom's your second baseman and Reyes can move to shortstop and you can put Rafaela back in center field. I can't watch Bobby Dahlbeck at third base. So in the meantime, if you need someone at third base, I know Reyes is at second tonight. Reyes can play third, although he had an error there last night. Like, I think if you had to get by with Pablo Reyes at short, fine but you need him at second and third right now, so you need somebody else to play short. And in the meantime, that's Rafaela. And if in a couple of months, Marcelo Meyer can be called up from double A or a quick stint at triple A and then accelerated to the major leagues, I think that's in play. I I disagree with Brad Foe, who's way more plugged in than me, but just look at all the guys from that draft class that are already in the major leagues. If he's healthy and he's hitting, he's going to get called up. They have a massive, massive deficiency at shortstop without Trevor Story. And so I think you can get by in the meantime and get to the trade deadline or calling up someone like Meyer and piece it together. But while you have a bunch of guys hurt and you need Reyes elsewhere, Rafaela has to go there. And I've moved on that, but I do think that's the right move. You guys can jump in. 617-779-7937. We have Meg explaining. <laughs> he was great. Now he's gone. I mean, the irony is he's tearing it up with the bat and he's playing shortstop for the Dodgers, mm. which uh, is crazy. That'd so be cool to have. No, they could they could certainly use him. Uh, Mega, we have Meg explaining at 530. What's coming up there? Well, it's Friday, so that means that we are going to sit back down to the relationship round table we have some listeners who are seeking advice they're still asking love, advice from you guys after love the lives yep yep love lives and we will be uh counseling them i mean i gotta be honest i think i've given great advice the last couple of weeks so i understand why people are still signing up for this uh, we will get to that in meg's planning right after trending with our kid now here's what's trending on weei Red Sox trying to bounce back after getting swept by the Orioles. They welcome the Angels to Fenway tonight. Tanner Houck will get the start opposite Reed Detmers for the Halos. First pitch is at 7-10. You can catch all the action right here on the Shaws and Star Market, WEEI, Red Sox Network, Shaws, perfecting the art of fresh. Rich Keefe gets you ready for baseball at 6-10 with the Mass Mutual pregame show. Rafael Devers will sit out again tonight. Bobby Dahlbeck was called up from Worcester today, likely in anticipation of an infielder going on IL. Romy Gonzalez also dealing with an injury himself. Celtics continue their limp to the finish line tonight as they host the Charlotte Hornets. Tip off at 7.30. Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Al Horford all questionable, probably all scared of Grant Williams. Mayor Michelle Wu today signed a proclamation officially declaring April 14th as Mike Gorman Day 
day in the city of Boston. Bruins are off tonight. They visit the Penguins tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. And Boston College Hockey will face U Denver in the NCAA Men's Championship game tomorrow. Hey, New England golfers looking for some great courses to play this season? Check out our live auction at TeeUpNewEngland.com for some great golf. The auction is open April 15th until 9 p.m. on April 22nd. Remember, it's TEE-UPNewEngland.com. Better golf through turf research. I'm Christian Arcan, and that's what's trending. You're listening to Jones and Mega on WEEI. Hey, it's Fourier as we gear up for air.
Now, more of Jones and Mego on WEEI. Caleb Williams is clearly number one. And then I think between Daniels, May, and even McCarthy, you get into more of a, you know, what's your flavor at quarterback? What do you want? What do you expect out of the position? What is your scheme set up for? And I think that's when some of this discussion about May or could it be McCarthy or could it be Daniels? I do think it's legitimate because I do think it's a little bit, uh, you know, in the eye of the beholder. You know what they say? What's that? Flavors in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Which one of these guys is Funfetti? Because that's the best flavor. Ooh, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, maybe Drake May? What's your flavor? Mmm, delicious. I'll take it. Uh, whatever flavor J.J. McCarthy is disgusting, I'm out. <laughs> Which, yeah, I hear how that sounds, and I stand by it. Uh, that was Bedard discussing the quarterbacks. Uh, J.J. McCarthy was, it turns out, invited to the NFL draft. Unlike Bo Nix and Michael Penix, your guy Bo Nix, Arkan, not even invited to the draft. Caleb Williams was, Drake May was, uh, uh, Jaden Daniels was, all these quarterbacks you hate. Your guy Bo Nix and Michael Penix, neither even invited to the NFL draft. I don't know if you care to respond to that as a card-carrying fan of Bo Nix. He'll show them. <laughs> he'll show all of them. He'll use it as motivation, and he'll be the best quarterback of the draft. It's fair. You watch. Uh, it could have been motivating to sit in the green room, too, and not have anybody call his name. He could also be motivated that way. I've heard yeah. that one before. Pull the old, uh, what was the Notre Dame kid? Um, Jimmy Clausen. No, not Jimmy Clausen. The uh, the one who married the gymnast. Brady oh, Quinn. Brady, Brady Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, Brady yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's definitely who it was. there all day. <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, Roger sat for a long time, worked for him. Uh, meanwhile, Florio points out the league views quarterbacks Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and J.J. McCarthy. And then he adds in parentheses, who didn't respond to his invitation and had it basically rescinded. The NFL views those four as clear and definite early picks. The league doesn't have the same opinion on Knicks and Penix. He didn't respond? We know this about JJ now. He's quite rude. I mean, that, that is, is a rude move. That is not rude. to even respond. So you send out RSVPs for your wedding, and someone, they say no, <laughs> fine. We call them invitations. I'm sorry, you're right. That's the right word. So you send out an invitation, mm -hmm. and people don't RSVP. Happens all the time. Does it? Yes. People don't RSVP? They don't answer? Yes. Does that happen? You have to like track them down and be like, hey, hey, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Yeah, I guess that probably happened. There's like a already. handful of people. Yeah, I guess that probably happened. That's but, then our, uh, could but you eventually get the answer. You don't think the NFL reached out to him and they're like, hey, JJ, what are you doing? I don't understand this. Like, Arkan thinks that I'm crazy for being like, does this just represent how disorganized he and his people are? So you think that he's just, he's just completely like snubbing them? Yes. I think he's blowing well, them off. What's the he's point doing of that? Not part of your he system, should be man. higher up or something? No, no, not that. Just to sort of say, you yeah, know, I'm doing whatever I want. I'm, 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 I'm not a cog McCarthy in your wheel, man. I don't have to show up and put on a suit and do this whole thing. You I'm know, not a widget want, at the widget fest. Is want that me, really how he is? Up. Is he like a baby Aaron Rodgers? I don't know. I think so. I think maybe. Yeah. Is he little Rodgers Jr.? I don't know. It seems like he needs a lot. He needs a lot. Is he ever? Has he ever pooped in a hole in the ground? Probably. As if so. Okay, but was Aaron Rodgers, similar to what we talked about with Brady the other day, was Rodgers doing that when he was 22? I don't remember him oh being God. like that. Imagine no. how yeah. weird he'll get. Yeah. yeah. So if he's successful, right. Right. imagine Brady, how weird he'll get. Brady got super weird, really good, but super weird. Rodgers got really weird and worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What J.J. McCarthy's weird right now. What's he going to be in like 10 years? I Maybe guess that's he'll go the other way. I guess that's a good problem to have. Like if, he's, normal. <laughs> if he's like Brady yeah. and Rogers level, I guess we'll put up with it. But yeah, he'll he'll just get more weird. Maybe he'll be like most people when they look back on their 21 year old self and they're like, that was really embarrassing. Wow, I'm glad I don't, you know, pretend like I'm meditating in the end zone and walking around barefoot anymore. So I initially thought he wasn't invited. And I thought this was a big smoking gun, like, oh, see, Ooh. the mock draft community and, uh, you know, Holly the other day, oh, he's number one on some big boards. I'm like, well, turns out he's not. Really? The NFL doesn't agree with that. Collusion. And it turns out that J.J. McCarthy is just such a, a pud, he wouldn't even respond. Couldn't even be bothered to RSVP and respond to attending the draft. So the NFL effectively rescinded it. But their intel tells him he's going in the top 15 or 20 picks, unlike Knicks and Penix, which is what's significant there. Were any of the 2021 quarterbacks not there? I'm trying to remember. Mac was definitely there. Mac was there for sure. I don't sure. remember about the other. Remember ones. that wobbly walk he had? Correct. Was, was uh, um, Fields there? I I don't remember Fields going. I don't, I don't remember. He might have. It was, was also not. weird because it was coming out of the whole pandemic situation. We were still coming out of COVID then. True. So yeah, 
It's a little not. different. It was a little yeah, different. Yeah, that's true. But, no, I mean, but I, there's plenty of top flight prospects who elect not to go. I like to think they responded to their RSVP. <laughs> I can't speak to that about every other prospect. Like, if Fields didn't attend, and Ryan said in our ears, I don't know if you guys heard that or if that was on the air, but Ryan said in our ear, Fields did not attend. Maybe it's a COVID thing. I like to think he at least responded. I cited CeeDee Lamb earlier, Arkan. I just know he was at home for the draft, and he was viewed as the top wide receiver in his class. I don't think he actually went first, but he was viewed that way. And he was definitely at home because his girlfriend tried to steal his phone. He took it right back. I just remember that when we were on the draft that year. Yeah, I tweeted something about that, and Lisa Ann responded to it. Wow. Yeah, that was a, that was a big night for me, that draft, the CeeDee Lamb draft. That was, a, that was actual online big start, interaction. Big start to the night and a bigger with finish. A, uh, right, with a personal hero of mine. <laughs> Someone whose work I appreciate, whose catalog I celebrate. What's in that catalog? Uh, Nalen Palin, of course. That's uh, the main one. That's the one. That, that's really what put her on the map. Now, this is something I'm very curious about. How do you do the Palin thing if you're naked? What do you mean? Say what? Glasses. Me, isn't a big part of it like glasses? That's a hair, the hair stuff? and the glasses. glasses. Like I just think of like the Tina Look, Fey thing. Yeah, yeah, no. You think like a girl as a as a man. All all you need was glasses yeah. and dark hair. That's it. Then the doesn't that just the become the like one. sexy librarian? Kind of, but it, it worked. She looked enough like her that it worked. Yeah, it did worked. she like do the voice during it? Um, yes, <laughs> she did. <laughs> There was also an Obama uh, uh, 